Andreas Imperial Square. There is a throne with a man sitting on it and guards nearby. A girl is lying on a pedestal in the center of the square. A beautiful girl with white hair lies bound by chains on her hands and feet. In her hands she has a bouquet of red flowers. King Andreas tells Master Mason that the princess is ready for sacrifice. He asks if the black dragon will come to him. Master Mason replies to his majesty that there is no need to worry. This dragon is really stupid. He came to the gate to grab the princess. The dragon must have been driven out of the dragon's nest, and that's what caused the storm. Mason smiles. A huge black dragon sweeps through the city, scaring people on the streets. They shout that the black dragon has arrived. In the blink of an eye, the dragon appears near the pedestal and grabs the princess with his paw, pulling out the chains holding her. Together with the girl, he soars skyward. When the dragon is in the sky with a girl in his paws, Mason shouts that the monster should be attacked faster. Archers immediately shoot arrows at the dragon. The monster flies away, the arrows do not reach it, so they do not cause harm. Mason invokes magic. The earth around him is illuminated with symbols illuminated with purple energy. The spell hits the dragon. He screams in pain. He flies away, but he is wounded and bleeding. Drops of blood fall down. The dragon flies away towards the mountains. He lands in the cave, lowering the girl to the ground. The creature immediately falls down next to him, covering his eyes. The dragon lights up with blue flashes of energy. He opens a red eye. Immediately, he screams, coughs, and lets out a growl, but asks about who spilled water on his electrical wiring. The dragon freezes in amazement. He closes his mouth with his paw, thinking about what kind of sounds he was making. He just said that. He growls, trying to say damn. He looks at his paws in amazement, not understanding whose claws they are. He takes off in shock, taking off from the ground, and immediately falls back to the floor. He's in pain. He opens his eyes wide in surprise, and he looks at his paws in shock, standing on them. He notices his reflection in the cave lake and looks at the water surface in surprise. He wonders if he has really been reborn into a dragon. He starts crying in shock, thinking about why he is a dragon. Then someone lets out a sigh in the cave, it attracts the dragon's attention. The girl, who has regained consciousness, needs her stiff legs. The dragon leans towards her, thinking about how she is. The girl rubs the bruised back of her head. The dragon thinks about what is not bad. The girl is not badly injured, and if she wants to experience the dragon's breath, an information window appears here, which welcomes the owner. He is informed that the system of war and robbery is at his service. He is also informed that the system of transformation and evolution is at his service. He is also informed that the system of atrocities is at his service. The dragon is thinking about why there are so many systems. He happily thinks that he really was gifted by heaven. A new information window appears, on which it is written that there are too many systems. Integration begins. Integration is complete. Current system, an absolute unmanageable self-transformation, super-evolution, a system of plundering evil fighting dragons. The dragon is studying a new information window. He tries to ask a question about how to use this system, but again only growls come out. He is informed that the owner does not need to say anything. You can say it to yourself. He has a special favor of the female sex, which allows him to activate special abilities. With the help of these systems, he can restore his body and its individual parts. If he kills a player, he will get 1 point, and if he kills an enemy, he will get 0.5 system points. The dragon wonders about what kind of players, what kind of NPCs. He's in the universe of some kind of game. He is informed that his request is being processed. He gets the answer that the system permission is disabled. It is impossible to answer the question. He is informed that he has kidnapped a special female PRS of SSS rank. He should continue the passage. There are some strange sounds in the cave. The dragon is studying something enthusiastically. The girl presses her hand to her forehead. The dragon is reading a book at this time. He starts laughing. He thinks about what time is, and he reads hentai. He thinks that Su Nian needs to wake up. The girl turns over on her side and whispers that she is cold. She's shaking. The dragon thinks that the SSS class is really unusual. It seems that he really is chosen by heaven. He is informed that a rare character has been discovered, a Lolita of SSS rank. They ask him if he wants to check the corresponding panels, if he wants to see the character card. The dragon replies that yes. An information window appears on which it is written that the girl's name is Anna Hathaway. Her age is 18 elven years. Her class is SSS. Her race is a low elf. Her condition, hunger, frostbite, infection. She has only two days left to live. Her abilities are unknown. The level of sympathy for the dragon is minus 80. She feels fear. The dragon is informed that the girl's level of sympathy is too low. 
he can't get system points and abilities, so he needs to raise sympathy to zero to get abilities at the first level. The dragon is amazed that the girl has only two days left. Such a rare character will be wasted. He cries in frustration, realizing that of course there are no freebies. Here the dragon is amazed at something, and opens his eyes in surprise. The girl turns on her side, clinging to the tail of the dragon. She whispers that she's cold, but it's so warm here. The dragon is confused by this state of affairs. The dragon covers the girl with a bearskin found in the bins, so she shouldn't be too cold. This increases the sympathy for the dragon by 10 points. The dragon understands that such a simple thing as just covering a girl with a blanket can increase sympathy by 10 points. It's quite easy. The dragon suggests to the system to arrange that she first give him points, and then he will increase sympathy. But of course they refuse him. The dragon asks the system, saying that there is nothing he can do right now, and he is also dying. How he will find food and increase sympathy. He asks about whether there is any gift for beginners. Tears come to the dragon's eyes. The system informs that the owner is right. The dragon is given a beginner's kit, an emergency healing card. The duration of its action is 30 minutes. But this card draws and uses the life of the owner. Half an hour after using it, the owner will weaken and lose consciousness. The dragon is asked if he wants to use it. The dragon is very impressed by this news. He's thinking about, that's why this circus is. Isn't that the same as rewarding him with his own reward? This card is his only chance. Eventually, the girl's body will weaken. It doesn't look like she's going to save herself. She's so weak she's shaking. A dragon with sweat on his forehead informs the system that he is using a healing card. The system informs the host that the emergency healing card is activated. She asks the owner to take care of himself. The dragon is standing, trying to pluck an apple from a tree. He thinks that he is a dragon. He won't eat enough fruit. He needs to find at least some meat, otherwise in half an hour she will weaken. If he doesn't get enough food, he may starve to death. Then the dragon notices the deer carcass and meat, and is amazed at how much food he found. Night falls on the forest. A flock of birds flies into the sky. The dragon hears a strange sound. Three wolves of the 25th class are approaching him. These are level 3 beasts. They growl and advance on the dragon. He thinks that wolves are very territorial creatures. Do they really eat here? No wonder the wolves ran out as soon as he approached. And yet the dragon is great for simple food. It just won't do. Just why he's so sick of excitement. He gets into a fighting stance, looking at the animals approaching him. One of the wolves rushes to attack the dragon. The dragon's eyes light up with blue fire. He opens his mouth and blue energy bursts out of it. She incinerates the wolf on the spot, leaving behind only a charred spot. The other two wolves are startled. The dragon deals with the other two wolves with the same ease. Blue energy is still swirling around him. Then the dragon glances at the cave. He flies into it and lands, still exuding energy. The girl has already recovered. She lies with her back to the beast and trembles with fear, her eyes wide open. The dragon stands clutching an armful of fruit. He looks at the girl lying with her back to him and thinks that she has not woken up yet. He thinks about the fact that it seems that she is really very sick. He does not understand how to feed a girl if she is unconscious. Anna Hathaway is lying with her back to the dragon, clutching a sharp stone in her hands like a weapon. Then she suddenly and abruptly gets to her feet, and shouts to the dragon, calling him a creature, so that he goes away. She rushes at him with her homemade weapon. The dragon shuts her mouth with an apple. The weapon breaks on his thick hide. The girl's eyes open wide in amazement. She spits an apple out of her mouth. Then, wiping his mouth, he asks Mr. Dragon if he is going to eat her. The dragon thinks that he does not want to do this. He looks completely harmless. But before Anna appears a huge monster with burning eyes, towering over her and raising its paws. The girl falls to the floor from fear, fainting. The dragon does not understand what happened and why the girl fell again. He asks the system about what's wrong with the girl. He is informed that Anna has a fever. Fear caused loss of consciousness. The dragon asks the system about the wolves he killed. He should get points for them. He is informed that of course, the owner killed three second level moon wolves. Since these monsters are only hostile, the system points are halved. He is congratulated for getting 30 points. He is also congratulated on receiving his first points and informed that the system store is open. The dragon decides to find some medicine. In accordance with the current situation, he is recommended to take advantage of a special offer and spend 10 system points to purchase a bakel helmet used in traditional medicine. The dragon is thinking about what the bakel helmet means. Grandpa seems to have often told me that he helps bring down the temperature. He didn't think that there were still earthly things in the system. The dragon asks the system to give him a bakel helmet. A flower appears in front of him, surrounded by golden light. 
The system informs him that the item has appeared. The dragon takes the flower with both hands and thinks about how to use it. The dragon ruefully realizes that it looks like he has no other choice. He takes the flower in his mouth, chews it. He takes the girl with his paw and tries to give her nectar from his mouth. But then the dragon realizes that the action of the card is over. He realizes that he can no longer stand. His whole body is getting heavier. The dragon's eyes are closing. The girl stands up. She closes her eyes. She is very hot and thirsty. She looks at how a dragon is flying at her from the sky. The dragon approaches her, spreading its paws for capture. The girl's eyes open in fear. Tears appear on them. The girl wakes up and realizes that she is lying on the ground and the dragon lies around her, covering her with his wing from the coming rain. The girl feels the taste of something bitter on her lips, similar to medicine. She looks at the sleeping monster and thinks that the dragon saved her. Anna's liking for the dragon increased by 20 points. She notices fruits lying on the side and realizes that they were collected by the dragon for her. Her liking increased by another 20 points. The girl notices that the dragon itself looks cute. Her sympathy increases again and by another 20 points. The girl, trembling, pulls her hand towards the monster, trying to touch its muzzle and asking Mr. Dragon to wake up. But the dragon doesn't wake up. The girl covers her mouth with her hand in shock, wondering that the dragon is dead. Was it because she had stabbed him? The girl puts her hands on the dragon's muzzle. She asks Mr. Dragon to stand up. The system sends a notification that Anna's liking level has been increased by another 100 points. The current level is 90. Sympathy meets the requirements of the first level. The system congratulates the host on receiving the initial level of abilities and absorption, as well as on receiving 2,000 system points. Another notification informs the dragon that he has learned the initial absorption ability. Eating can quickly restore strength, cause a certain level of self-medication but appetite will also increase. Two birds flying near the cave are startled in the air by the cries of the dragon. The monster screams that he wants to eat very much. He doesn't understand why he suddenly wants to eat. He just ate. The dragon studies the information window, where it says that he has received an entry-level absorption ability. He needs to eat something. The dragon is amazed that he slept, got abilities, but he puts his hand on his stomach in frustration, realizing that every cell of his body is asking for food. The dragon looks at Anna sleeping in the cave. He begins to salivate, but he sees that the girl's level of sympathy for him is 90. The dragon closes his eyes. He imagines a dish made from a girl. He's drooling from his mouth. But then the dragon comes to his senses and the dragon turns his head from side to side. He realizes that he can't eat Anna. In addition, the girl's sympathy for him reached 90. Then he realizes that Anna's sympathy is already 90. He just found out. Sympathy has increased so quickly, really. The dragon opens his eyes wide in amazement. He imagines Anna standing next to the dragon saying that he is so tall, big, powerful and strong. The dragon imagines Anna stroking him and saying that she likes him so much. Then Anna starts coughing up blood, still lying on the ground. The dragon receives a notification that Anna has one day left to live. The dragon does not understand why she is so weak. He receives a system notification that receiving this character, in addition to acquiring abilities, will also allow him to get 2,000 additional points. The changes in the body have already reached a peak value. The abilities that change the body have opened. The system store is being updated. The dragon realizes that Anna kind of saved him, but he still doesn't know what kind of illness Anna has picked up. It is clear that the medicine could not prolong the girl's life so much. He opens a system store and studies the goods there. He is offered a comb, a piece of cake, a glass of drink, ointment for bruises, grass from a stab wound, a bakel helmet and a dress for as much as 10,000 points. The dragon in anger shouts to the system that she is a fraud. Anna is ill, and he is offered this. He doesn't understand what kind of jokes they are. That is, the store is open for him, but not for this elf. But the dragon really liked this dress. He begins to study it. He glances from the information window at the sleeping girl. He changes 10 points for a dress. The dress chosen by the dragon appears on the girl. The same one covers his face with his paws in embarrassment. He understands that in the beginning the girl needs to be cured. He asks the system to reveal to him the abilities that change the body. He is presented with a choice of external modifications, strengthening claws and fangs, steel scales, changing the figure, as well as internal modifications, heart, blood vessels, muscles, sensory organs, internal organs. The dragon asks the system to show therapeutic modifications. He is shown a modification of the eye, the initial level of insight. It allows you to superficially learn about some object or condition. The dragon is amazed. 
he tells the system that he wants a modification of the initial level of inside eye. The exchange is completed, 1000 points are withheld from the dragon. The eye modification is activated. The system informs him that there may be unpleasant sensations during the change. The system warns the owner not to try to scratch out his eyes. The dragon ponders this warning. He uses his acquired ability. His eye flashes with bright red energy. He immediately closes his eyes, turning his head from side to side and shouting that his eyes are stinging. He's in a lot of pain and his eyes are itching. The dragon opens its eyes where even the vessels are cracked. He studies the information window about Anna's condition. She has weakness, night sweats, sensitivity to the well, ulcers on her legs, anemia, cough, esophageal spasm, heart failure, pneumonia. The dragon screams in horror that it is a miracle that she is alive at all. Here the dragon hears someone say that they have found the dragon's lair. He himself must be somewhere nearby. The dragon was hiding under the ceiling of the cave, studying the uninvited guests who had come. These are the Black Viper Mercenaries, Class 16-20. Bunch of idiots. Their leader is Wales. He is a Class 21 Chief Knight. It's easy to kill him. And Selina of the 18th class is a Fire Magician. The dragon understands that it is the mercenaries who have come. It doesn't look like they came with good intentions. He asks the system to add to him the strengthening of claws and fangs, as well as steel scales. The system informs the dragon that modifications have been added. These changes are worth 1000 points. The current number of dragon points is 130, Anna's sympathy level is 90. The dragon's claws will be improved. Purple energy flows around them. His scales are also enhanced, boosting his armor. He receives a notification from the system that he has already become stronger, and he needs to attack his enemies faster. The dragon growls frighteningly, his eyes are burning red. Soldiers look into the sky at the dragon flying there and shout that the monster is flying. They found him. Their commander shouts that his soldiers need to defend themselves and prepare for battle. He unsheathes his sword. The dragon lets out a roar and swoops down on the warriors, but does not attack, but flies away. Selina looks at the flying dragon and wonders if it seems to her or if this stupid dragon has somehow changed. She shouts to Wales and the others that they need to stop, there's something wrong. Wales treats her warning with a smile and replies to her that she is just afraid. Such words make Selina angry. Wales turns to the rest of the soldiers and tells them not to listen to Selina. If she had released the spell of the fetters on Henry's square, then who knows, maybe they would have already captured this stupid dragon. These words finally infuriate Selina. Wales points his sword at the sky in the direction of the dragon's flight and shouts that the monster is flying to the west. They need to follow him. Selina also looks at the flying dragon and wonders why the monster is flying to the west. Why is he flying out of the thicket? She thinks with a smile that maybe the dragon's treasure is lying there and he doesn't want them to find it, so he flies in the opposite direction, distracting their attention. The dragon looks at how people follow him on the ground and thinks that they are idiots. He swoops down on the warriors. He lands, crushing one soldier under him with his claws. He grabs another with his mouth. He knocks down some of the other warriors with a powerful blow of his tail. Wales looks in shock at how his squad is smitten in a couple of seconds. He lifts himself off the ground and screams, raising his sword, shouting to the dragon to die. The blow of his sword falls on the dragon's advanced armor and does not cause any harm to the monster itself. Yule is amazed. He asks about what happened, why he didn't hurt the dragon. The dragon with a smile notices that he was thinking why his back itches so much, and here is such a flea. Wales clenches his fist in anger and asks what the dragon will do to him. The dragon replies that this question should be left for Wales to think about for the next life. Then, he shoots Wales in the face with a green substance. The surviving soldiers then run away in horror, shouting that the main knight is dead. They throw down their swords and shields, and they shout that they have to run. Wales at this time stands without a head, which was dissolved after the dragon attack. The dragon overtakes them, and deals with him with the help of his advanced skills. He says they won't be able to escape so easily, his points. He looks at one of the soldiers running away at high speed into the thicket. He receives a notification from the system with congratulations and a message that he earned 150 points in this battle. The dragon thinks that this is somehow not enough. Then he remembers the witch who was not in the battle. The dragon takes off and flies swiftly through the air. He flies into the cave. At this time, Selina treats Anna. Green energy flows from her hand onto the sleeping girl. Then Selina notices the shadow of an approaching dragon. She shouts at Tom to stay away, calling the dragon a monster. Her staff begins to glow with purple energy. She uses the spell of fetters, summoning a web of purple energy. Here Selina leans on her staff and says that she is so tired. 
A dragon surrounded by fetters does not understand what the hell it is. He realizes that he has no dragon breath left. If he had known earlier, he wouldn't have used it at all. Selina, seeing that the dragon is entangled, laughs. He doesn't understand what the witch wants to do to him. The system informs him that the current score is 280, Anna's liking level is 90. Selina hits the dragon with a staff into a gap in the network created by her, hitting him in the stomach. The dragon roars in shock. Then he shouts that he's had enough, calling Selina sick. But from his mouth, the witch only hears a growl. He tears the bonds apart with a blow of powerful paws, which shocks the witch. Then, the dragon with a powerful paw slams Selina into the ground. She loses her staff. The dragon growls, thinking about who this witch is for in general, and why she does not answer him. But the girl hears only a growl and sees in front of her the terrifying face of a dragon with red burning eyes. Then the dragon remembers that he doesn't speak human right now. He asks the system how much it costs to modify the vocal cords. The system responds to the host that the modification of the vocal cords costs 300 points. The current number of points is 280. The system informs him of a hint that a loan service has appeared in this system update. The loan repayment amount has been increased by 50% of the loan. The dragon is asked if he wants to try. The dragon is shocked that he will have to return 50% more points. He thinks that they want to rob him. In response, the system informs him that he cannot commit illegal actions. The dragon, after thinking about it, agrees and informs the system that he is taking a modification of the vocal cords. He receives a notification that the modification of the vocal cords is activated. This time the credit was 20 points. Next time, the refund amount with interest will be 30 points. The dragon turns to Selina with the words that she should speak and answer him who sent her here and why she came. Selina, shocked, asks the monster again that he can talk. The dragon in response shouts to her to answer questions faster, as she does not have much patience. Selina answers the monster with a trembling voice that her, their King Henrius has hired a squad of mercenaries to find and kill the dragon, all for the sake of, for the sake of the prince's health. The dragon asks again about the prince's health. Selina answers him that there are rumors that the prince has a problem with procreation. He needs to eat the dragon's heart and penis to heal. The dragon is very angry with such words. His eyes light up with an evil fire. He shouts that of course the dragon's heart is not enough, you also need a dick. He calls the king an old fart, and then pushes the witch into the ground with his paw. Selina asks him to stop, screaming for him to stop, it hurts too much. At this time, King Henrius, sitting on the throne, sneezes. After that, in anger, he shouts to someone how dare he. He still hasn't found the dragon. He shouts to someone that he is worthless, and he asks if there is any benefit from the bottom at all. A warrior in armor stands before him, humbly bowing his head and listening to his master's displeasure. The king asks about what Master Mason says. The warrior answers in a trembling voice that the master, he, Mason said that the dragon has already crossed the Mulligan Plain and entered the Silver Moon Forest. The dragon is young, he has little strength, he could not go far into the mountains. But using the tracking seal consumes a lot of strength and magical materials, so. The soldier falls silent, not knowing how to continue his words. The king is impatient to ask, so what? The warrior ends his speech with a trembling voice by saying that Master Mason believes that more money is needed. The king, in anger, shouts that here is a Mason bloodsucker, so that he dies. His kingdom is small. Doesn't Mason see that Henrius doesn't have that much gold? He does not have such possessions as the Marquis of Island. He had already given Mason 3,000 gold lions. 3,000. He shouts that he can only give Mason 500. That's all he has. If he refuses, then it will be over with him. The soldier replies to his majesty that it will be as he orders. At this time, in a cave in the mountains, Selina is chained to a stone and entangled in vines that do not allow her to move. She looks at the shadow of the dragon reflected from the walls in the cave. The dragon rummages in the bag. Hoping to find medicines there, he finds a divine light potion that accelerates meditation, as well as a resurrection potion that restores health. The dragon crawls up to Selina and asks her if she knows how to heal. She turns her head away and answers again that she would rather die than heal the dragon. The dragon in response to these words raises his paw with claws. The girl closes her eyes in fright, turning away, but the dragon breaks the fetters that bind her with one blow of his paw. The dragon takes Sultina by the clothes and drags her to Anna's body, covered with a blanket. He asks Selina to cure her. Anna is lying on the ground and trembling. Selina is shocked and asks the dragon that doesn't he know that Anna is not a princess. The dragon replies that he knows. He thinks to himself that any fool will see it. 
Isn't it clear that people will not give birth to a half-elf with fox ears and tail? Selina asks the dragon why then he saves her if he knows everything. The dragon wonders what to answer this question. He can't say that it's because Anna is a rare character. He answers haltingly at the beginning that he does it because they are best friends. Yes, they are best friends. And he thinks to himself that Anna's sympathy for him has reached 90. They are definitely best friends. Selina is shocked to ask the dragon that he and Anna are best friends. After that, the system sends him a notification with congratulations. Selina's liking for him has been increased by 20 points. He discovered a new character. A new character card opens. This is Selina Luther. Her age is 19 years old. Class, SSS. Race, human. Condition, good. Abilities, dark magic. Sympathy level, 30 points. The dragon studies the card, thinking damn. His current score is minus 30 points. Anna's liking level is 90 points. Selena's liking level is minus 30 points. The dragon realizes that again before him is a character of SSS class. He rejoices in this fact, thinking that fortunately he did not turn Selena into system points. He was saying it all out loud. And Selena asks him what the S is. The dragon, raising his paws in a conciliatory manner, answers her that it's nothing like that and immediately asks how Anna is. Selena replies that it's not very rosy. Anna's injuries are very serious. One bottle of resurrection potion is not enough. The dragon asks about what Selena needs then. She answers him that she needs an absolutely sterile environment, enough medicines and food, and one very good. Cleric. This is a magician who specializes in healing. The dragon is amazed by such a request and does not know what to answer it. She shouts to Selena that she thought she was a cleric. She crosses her arms over her chest and answers the dragon that not all people study healing magic. Here they are interrupted with words so that they do not quarrel. It was Anna who woke up, and hand on heart, says that the fact that she can survive is already good news. She thanks Lord Dragon, but she is unworthy of his help. The dragon notices with a smile that Anna has woken up. Selina is also glad that the girl has come to her senses. The system sends a notification that the emotional state of the character is unstable, and the support of the host is needed here. The remnants of the chains are still hanging on Anna's arms and legs. The dragon says with a smile that well, if so, his eyes light up. He grabs Anna with his mouth. Selina shouts in shock that Anna said she was unworthy. This does not mean that she allowed herself to be eaten. The dragon releases the girl, leaving chains in her mouth that bound her arms and legs. He thinks that it's a stupid chain. At least the chain is as heavy as Anna. It looks like King Henrius is ready to go to any lengths to catch him. Apparently, he will have to find a new lair. Selina watches the dragon's actions in shock. Anna, once on the ground, looks at herself in surprise. Here the dragon grabs Anna and Selina's clothes with its mouth. Anna asks Mr. Dragon what he is doing. Selina shouts to the dragon to let her go right away. The dragon answers them that this cave is already unsafe. They need to find a new shelter. And Anna shouldn't say that anymore. Anna responds well to the dragon's words, again addressing him as a master. Her liking for the dragon increases by 10 points. Her current level is 100 points. The system sends a notification that Anna's sympathy has reached 100 points. The dragon has opened a new achievement. He is congratulated and gets 1,000 points. Selena speaks admiringly about how delicious it is for her. She couldn't stand it. Next to Anna, she also covers her mouth in delight. The dragon thinks that he lived only for this moment, eating meat fried on a fire. The girls sit on a log nearby and also eat. A whole squad of two-legged dogs, dressed in clothes and intelligent, is moving through the forest. Their commander stops the movement of the detachment with his hand and says that something is wrong here. The dragon notices them and does not understand what they are. The dog sniffs. At this time, the dragon presses its muzzle to the ground with its claw. Then he starts scratching the dog's head with his claw. He is dissatisfied at the beginning. But as the dragon scratches him, the dog gets excited and sticks his tongue out of his mouth. The dogs surround the dragon, hugging him from all sides. They are delighted that they have seen a real dragon. They would never have thought that they would meet a living dragon in their lives. The commander of the dogs falls to his knees and with loving eyes tells the dragon, addressing him as a great one, that he speaks on behalf of the dog heads of the Krivizub tribe. He prays that he will let them become his family. They will be devoted servants and will do anything for him. The system opens the card of this character to him. This is Soglabitz and Polikli Krivizub. He's a grade 7 character. The level of his sympathy is 80 points, reverence. These characters are weak, travel in packs, blindly worship dragons. The dragon looks at how all the dog heads fall to their knees in front of him. The dragon answers them that they are so weak, what good will it do him if they become his family? 
The girls are still sitting on the log and watching all this in amazement. Soglabbits and Polyclea Krivisub prayerfully clasping his hands answers the great dragon that although they are frail, but they can polish each of his scales, equip him with a magnificent nest. They can find deposits of the rarest metals and make it rich. The dragon scratches his head thoughtfully, thinking about what kind of simpletons are in front of him. And after all, do not be afraid to give everything to the last. The dragon leans over to the dog-headed and crooked-toothed and says that he will look at their intentions. But now he needs a spacious dry cave, they will be able to equip it. He answers the owner that his will will be fulfilled and it is necessary to follow him. He runs happily, stepping on the grass with his paws. He leads the dragon to the deposit of their treats, the booths where the dog heads live, as well as to the warehouse with resources. The dog-headed man Ipolically Krivizub tells his master that the Krivizub tribe lives here, and this place will be the beginning of the dragon's possessions. A notification comes from the system that the current number of dragon points is 970, Anna's sympathy level is 100 points, Selena's sympathy level is minus 30 points. Dragon stands with his wings spread and utters the words that from this day on he Sunyan Water Pardernak accepts the oath of allegiance given to him and swears by his name that he will protect and protect those who give it. In front of him stands a joyful tribe of crooked teeth, who in response issue their admiring cry. Sunyan Water Pardernak asks the dog-headed and round-faced crooked tooth if he will become his sworn brother. He admiringly folds his hands in front of him and, addressing the dragon as the owner, says that he has been waiting for this moment all his life. The dragon brings his claw to the head of the dog head, thinking that he is tired of these damn formalities. He leans a claw against the muzzle of a dog headed and a round crooked tooth. Blood drips from the claw. A red crystal appears in the forehead of the dog headed and crooked tooth dog. He also stands with a smile and closed his eyes. Here the dragon notices a flock of dog heads in the passage of the cave whose eyes, heads and limbs are bandaged. Sunyan Water Parternak asks his sworn brother if there really are so few of them and what happened to these dog heads. Here one of them falls to his knees in front of Sunyan Water Party and asks the owner to decide their fate. He says that not so long ago their tribe was attacked by Eterkin spiders. They plundered their lands, seized their cave with mines. The spiders did not spare the dog heads in their raid. He took the surviving dog heads with him, who, having reached this cave, settled here. In support of his words, his comrades issue a plaintive howl. Sunyan Water Parternak thinks about the cave in Edirakan. He happily remarks that if there are mines, then there will be money. And if he has money, then it means that he can buy a recovery potion to delay Anna's illness and even sleep on gold. Sunyan Water Parternak asks Ipolikli about what kind of mine they used to have and how many Edercaps he saw during the attack. Ipoliklius answers him that they had a silver mine. There were five Edercaps, these creatures are cruel. They are very fond of sucking brains out of their mouths, something like a D. They control the spiders. These spiders. It is not clear exactly how many spiders there are. The dragon asks the system if there is an Edercap characteristics card. The system responds to him that the information is temporarily unavailable to the players. The owner is recommended to purchase an encyclopedia. It has a general description and weaknesses of a large number of monsters inaccessible to players. Sunyan Water Parternak replies that he buys such an encyclopedia. With the system notifying him that the purchase is completed, 900 points are deducted from him. Sunyan Water Party in anger grabs the notification shouting 900. 900 points were taken for one stupid book. He asks the system that it is mocking him. The system responds to him that it is worth being patient. As they say, knowledge is power. Sunyan Water Parternak shouts that such a force has gone to the ass. He wants to return the money. The system responds to him that the goods sold cannot be returned or exchanged. The dragon laments over the lost points. Anna asks Mr. Dragon what is wrong with him, as she sees that he is crying. Sunyan Water Parternak replies to her that nothing. It's just too difficult a task that he can't solve. It opens information about Edercaps. Their general characteristics, they are capable of walking upright, have a strong body, faceted eyes, fangs stand out. They have class 28, these are monsters of the third level. Their features, control over spiders, vulnerability to fire. An external skeleton is used as an external skeleton. Resistance to acid, water attack. Sunyan Water Parternak, having studied all this, thinks about the fact that everything, is over for him. He remembers his attacks, thinking that there is acid in his dragon breath, but even her damage has a limit. One on one with them will not work. They will summon the spiders to surround him. Sunyan Water Parternak understands that if his breath was fiery, Thor would be better. He thinks about the fact that he should buy fire breath. He has two modifications to choose from, a bugle of the first level, 
It is a modification of acid in the poisonous glands. It adds cells that produce magma, the so-called biological furnace, which allows you to exhale poisonous fire. This modification costs 1,000 points. There is also a supply of dragon breath of the first level. This modification allows you to transform the parietal cells of the venom glands, which increase the rate of dragon breath reserve. The cost of such a modification is 1,000 points. Sunyan Water Party finds a solution to how to win the battle. He asks Hypolyclius if there are any bandits or mercenaries of the Black Beast nearby. He scratches his head and answers his great master that there really are two bands of bandits and mercenaries of the Bloody Lion nearby. But he has not heard of the Black Beast. Sunyan Water Parter Nak says and responds to the latter's words that this is great news. Let him gather the warriors and follow him. They will visit the nearest fortress. He answers yes, master, happily wagging his tail. Sunyan Water Parter Nak thinks that according to the system, his enemies are relatively strong, but the bandits do not disperse far. This is a great place to earn points. He informs Anna that the girl should stay here, he will return. Anna replies to him that her master dragon should return as soon as possible. Selina, with her arms crossed over her chest, just speaks well. The dragon leans over to Selina and tells her not to even think about running away. Selina covers her mouth with her hand in response and asks laughing how. In the forest of the Silver Moon in the fortress of the bandits of the Vera, two people are on guard. One of them, looking through a telescope, shouts that the captain has returned. It is necessary to open the gate. The gates of the fortress open, and three horse-drawn carts enter it. A little later, the captain, sitting at the table, raises his mug and shouts to his brothers that he congratulates them. They came back with a huge haul and it's worth a drink. In response, glasses are also raised and shouts are heard to the bottom, and what is worth drinking. Some kid with a glass in his hand, smiling, shouts that their captain is so strong. Today they have stolen a lot. The captain looks at how the chests with loot are being shipped and says that there are hundreds of their brothers here, they can rest this month. The kid who praised him says that this is his gift to the captain, meaning a chest that is pulled by four bandits. Then one of the guys shouts to his captain that a black dragon is flying towards them. He asks in shock what? Sunyan Water Parternak lands on the gate of the fortress. He came down from heaven and roars, which makes all the bandits run away in fear. A notification comes from the system that the current number of dragon points is 70, and his sympathy level is 100 points. The dragon spews energy from its mouth, which falls on the bandits. Someone runs away in fear, someone calls for help. Someone is screaming about their legs. Sunyan Water Party gets 10 points with each victim. There are cries for help and that no one wants to die. The dragon is circling over the ruined remains of the gates of the bandit's fortress. Sunyan Water Parternak soars into the sky, continuing to spew streams of purple energy. The captain of the bandits shouts that they were attacked by a dragon and need to run away quickly. Sunyan Water still continues to receive points for each killed, which multiply. Some of the energy gets on the captain's face and eyes. He stands with his eyes closed and screams that he is in pain and he can't see anything. Other bandits run screaming from the dog heads into the bushes, where they fall into the trap set, bringing another 30 points to the dragon with their death. At the end of the massacre, the system sends a notification that congratulates the owner. In this battle, he earned 1020 points. The dog heads look at the remains of the massacre, and with tears in their eyes say that this is a victory. They shout, praising their dragon, and rejoice in their victory. The system collects the trophies received after the battle. Hypolically approaches Sunyan Water and tells the owner of his report that there are many boxes in which the loot is most likely. They moved everything here. Sunyan Water praises their actions and asks them to take the loot to the lair. Among the trophies are a bag of flour, a bag of silver, a box of apples, a box of gold, a box with bottles of transformation potion. Sunyan Water's eyes light up with a greedy gleam at the sight of the transformation potion. He takes a flask with such a potion. It is capable of turning non-human beings into humans. 10% strength is inherited. The effect lasts one hour. Sunyan Water thinks with a smile that with this potion he will turn into a human and return to Anna and Selina. He imagines how the girls delightedly hug him and talk to him. But Sunyan Water thinks that by human standards he is a teenager and younger than Anna and Selina. But he still decides to drink the potion, thinking that if anything will fall by the death of the brave. He opens the lid on one of the flasks. He knocks down the potion, saying that he still has an hour. In the worst case, he will wait until the effect of the potion is over and then he will return to the girls. The system informs him that he has used the transformation potion, 
and his transformation has begun. A halo of blue energy envelops the dragon. It forms an egg. The shell is cracking on it. A small child with white hair and horns on his head emerges from the egg. Ipolikliai shouts in shock to the owner, how he turned like that when he saw that he had become a child. Sunyan Water covers himself in shock, because he is completely naked and shouts to the system about where his clothes are. He is informed that he must wait, as the potion begins to act too quickly, the clothes are at the loading stage. Here the already grown up Sunyan Water looks at his reflection in the water and says that he is just handsome, and right his age. He continues by saying that he used to worry about the differences between humans and dragons, but now six hours will be enough for him. He asks Ipolikliai if everything is prepared. The same one lifts a heavy box, wincing at the weight. He informs the owner that the last box is loaded into the cart. They finish collecting everything. Sunyan Water instantly transforms into a dragon and says that okay, then he will return to the lair. He thinks that if he is not mistaken, then during the action of the potion, you can switch between the human form and the dragon as much as you want. At this time, in one of the Soglavits homes, Anna is sitting on a bed surrounded by wounded Soglavits. Selina watches them with a smile, thinking that now she has the best chance to escape. She starts to make her way to the exit when Anna asks her where she is going. Selina replies in a trembling voice that she goes wherever she wants, but she confusedly talks about what about where. After she failed to catch the dragon, and the mercenaries with whom she went on a campaign were destroyed. If she returns, she will not be given the post of assistant magician. Here Anna interrupts her, telling her to quickly look at what she found. She sits around the eggs, from which tiny dog heads hatch. Selina looks at it in shock. Anna is surrounded by tiny creatures, some of which climb on top of her and hug her. Selina asks Anna if she is afraid of that vile dragon who kidnapped her. Anna pokes one of the puppies in the nose and replies that the dragon is actually very affectionate. Selina shouts affectionate in shock, thinking about whether she is really talking about a dragon. Then one of the dog heads shouts, opening the door, that they are back. Selina and Anna turn to the door in shock. Selina, covering her mouth with her hand, asks in shock how they could have returned so quickly. The current number of dragon points is 1090. Anna's level of sympathy for him is 100. Selina's level of sympathy is minus 30. Temporarily transformed into a dragon and therefore late, Sunyan Water runs happily, shouting that he is back. Then a staff flies into his face. He removes it from his face, which remains bruised. He shouts to Selina that it's him, and that she fell from an oak tree. Then his eye opens with anger, blood vessels burst in it. Sunyan Water sees the corpse of the doghead. Selina stands among the ruins of lifeless bodies. Webs of cobwebs can be seen above her head among the trees. Selina can't stand on her feet. She hugs herself with her arms. She is wounded and calls Sunyan Water in a trembling voice. He puts his paw to her so that she does not fall to the ground. Selina tells him that Anna was abducted by nasty spiders. Selina asks Sunyan Water for forgiveness, saying that she is completely useless, could not protect her. Selina thinks to herself that the dragon probably thinks she's a jerk. No matter where she is, with the mercenaries or with him, she always spoils everything. Sunyan Water replies to Selina that everything is fine, she did everything she could. He continues, saying that he was the one who failed to protect them. He gently holds Selina in his arms while saying these words. After that, Selina's liking for him increases by 50 points, and her current level is 20. The system sends a congratulatory notification to its owner, since he has successfully won the character's trust. Sympathy has reached the first level, new abilities have been discovered. The system also congratulates the host that he has discovered a new ability Tears of the Sage, and received 2000 points for it. Sunyan Water asks the system to return the first level bugle and the first level dragon breath supply. He is informed that the refund is completed. 2000 points were deducted from him. Returning these modifications causes a lot of pain. He is asked to get ready, so there will be painful sensations in the throat. Here Sunyan Water bends over in pain, tears appear in his eyes. A fountain of blood bursts out of his mouth. Selina, in shock, watching this, screams to Tom that he vomited blood. Sunyan Water wipes his face, which is dripping with blood, saying that he is fine. He asks Ipolyclius to lead him to the nest of Ettercaps. Sunyan Water continues, saying that they dared to kidnap his rare character. They apparently don't want to live in this world anymore. Ipolyclius leads Sunyan Water to the Silver Moon Forest somewhere in the wilderness. He tells his master that the Ettercaps grow their spiders here. Ahead is their cave, where they used to leave after robberies. On the trees above them there are many webs of webs. Sunyan Water answers him that it is good. Then they need to speed up to attack them right away. They don't have time, they're all looking for them. 
Hypoliclitz bows his head, answering that he listens to his master. Then the dragon flies up into the air, flames streaming under his paws, and the blue web closes around Sunyan water. He finds himself entangled in a web and cannot move. Spiders are approaching him from all sides. The spiders are almost close to the dragon when Sunyan water breaks the web, releasing the muzzle. Sunyan water uses dragon breath to burn his opponents. The system informs him that he killed 57 huge spiders, for which he received 312 points. Sunyan water stands surrounded by flames. He is approaching the cave, which is the nest of Ettercaps. He grabs one of the Ettercaps, and with eyes burning with anger, and asks the one where they took the lower elf. He presses one blow of his powerful paw to the ground, and it makes a grunting sound. Sunyan Water stands at the entrance to the cave in the image of a man with burning eyes. He shouts for Anna. He wants to show off in front of Anna and has turned into a human again. Anna calls Mr. Dragon in response. She is wounded and bound with cobwebs so that she cannot move. The current number of dragon points is 1090. Anna's level of sympathy for him is 100, Selena's level of sympathy is 20. Anna sniffs the air and says she can smell Mr. Dragon. Sunyan Water approaches her and grabs her hanging in the air, entangled in cobwebs. He releases her and picks her up. Anna thanks her Master Dragon for coming to save her. Anna looks at Sunyan Water and thinks that in human form he is very beautiful. In response to her words, Sunyan Water smiles and says that she is very important to him. He had to save her. Anna is happy and confused by such words. The level of her sympathy for the dragon increases by 100 points. The current level is 200 points. Now he and the dragon are friends. The system sends a congratulatory notification to Sunyan Water, informing that sympathy has reached the second level. He received a new ability mid-level absorption. New abilities can be fixed. The system also congratulates the host on having discovered a new ability Tears of the Sage and received 2,000 points. Another notification informs that Sunyan Water has received 3,000 points and an average level absorption. Based on the regeneration of the physical condition, the absorption of prey restores strength, accelerates growth, regardless of age restrictions. Sunyan Water is insanely happy that he got 3,000 points. He understands that it is not surprising that Anna is SSS level. He will earn more by communicating with Anna than by killing monsters. But then Sunyan Water asks Anna about how she realized that it was him. Anna, embarrassed and smiling, replies that it doesn't matter what her master dragon looks like. She always recognizes him at first sight. After returning home, Sunyan Water helps Anna drink the potion. He tells her to drink, drink, informing her that these potions are tonic. He still has recovery potions. And this is a herbal tincture, Anna should also remember to drink it. Anna's sympathy increases by 1 point with each sip, health points also increase by 1 point, points increase by 50, 100 and 200 points. Sunyan Water wonders why sympathy is rising so slowly. Here Selina shouts to him that potions are not syrup, it should be taken with food. Sunyan Water happily shouts syrup. He understands that there are probably some fruits among the trophies to sweeten the medicine. He rushes to the reward boxes and starts rummaging through them, looking for what he needs. Then he looks at the closed box, thinking that he is some kind of strange. He opens the lid with his hands. The box turns out to be a girl with dark hair, who is tied hand and foot with a gag in her mouth. This is a girl named Evelyn. She is 17 years old. She is a class of person. She has the abilities of water magic. Her level of sympathy for the dragon is minus 50. Sunyan Water asks in shock what it is. Selina also looks at the box with interest. Then she puts her hand on Sunyan Water's shoulder and asks about what he is doing. She slaps Sunyan Water in the face. Anna asks Mr. Dragon and Selina about what happened. Selina covers her eyes with her hands, saying that this is not a sight for children. She means that Evelyn is lying in a box in a not quite decent position, since she is tied up. Sunyan Water rubs his bruised cheek and says he didn't do anything for Selena to hit him. Anna and Selena are looking at the box with interest at this time. Then Sunyan Water asks them with a smile where they are looking. They are startled by this question. Sunyan Water tells them that if they don't believe him, then let them ask her. He pulls the gag out of Evelyn's mouth and she starts screaming, calling everyone around vile bastards. She screams for them to die, the fucking bandits. She demands to untie her right now. Selena brings the girl a blanket, telling her that everything is fine, she shouldn't cry. Anna tells Sunyan Water that it's all because of him. 
Her sympathy drops by three points. Sunny and Water asks about what kind of injustice. He asks Ipolically about how this box got here. He reports to the owner that he has allowed the box to be dragged onto the cart. Sunny and Water screams that he didn't even know what was inside that box. It was that heavy box. At the same time, a huge force loomed over the world. The game has begun. All living beings of this world will be half digitized. All the slain chosen creatures have increased their level. All the things of the chosen one will be stored in the village of beginners. Creating quests, generating a village of beginners. According to calculations, the chosen one will arrive there in three days. Sunyan Water looks at this notification in shock. He looks at the health of Selena and Anna. Selena is completely healthy, and Anna's condition leaves much to be desired. The current number of points is 4452 points, Anna's level of sympathy for him is 200 points, Selena's level of sympathy for him is 20 points, Evelyn's level of sympathy for him is minus 50 points. Sunyan Water asks Anna if they have looked at what it is. Selena replies to him that this is a vulgar pervert dragon. He shouts angrily to Selena that he is not like that. Sunyan Water asks the system about what kind of party. What a chosen one, what a village of newcomers. He's really in the game. The system responds to him that access is activated. The world in which the host is currently located is real, but some existing effects will only be half game. For example, regarding the fate of the party in this world, if the host fails to eliminate the players, the consequences will be disastrous. Sunyan Water asks again about the elimination of players. He does not understand what kind of jokes. The player is those who play and can be resurrected in the game and he had never heard of any country releasing a game so realistic that it could make the world half game. The system informs him that the players are coming from the aquamarine planet. This is a world with a highly developed gaming industry, similar to his home planet. Sunyan Water thinks about parallel worlds. He is surprised, but decides not to show it. No stress, otherwise it will look like some kind of collective farmer. Even if that's the case, you can't just take out and destroy the players. They will be resurrected. The system informs him that the players can resurrect, but each new resurrection doubles his time. For example, the first resurrection lasts 5 seconds, the second, 10 seconds, the third, 20 seconds, and so on until it reaches the maximum allowed time. Sunyan Water understands that you will be resurrected 23 times with such a Makar and you will have to wait for resurrection for more than a year. And if a player returns after a year of waiting, dying, he will have to wait two years, but then looking at himself from the side, constantly increasing the level. He will wish only one thing, not to die, and the players will weaken. Besides, it's not that difficult. Sunyan Water thinks that he is a dragon. After all, even if he doesn't have any reputation right now, he asks the system if the NPC can resurrect. The system responds to him that, unfortunately, according to the rules, it cannot. Sunyan Water shouts in anger about what idiotic rules. It's unfair. Players can endlessly resurrect, and the NPC must sacrifice his life. He continues, shouting that this is a game. It's clear that this is an invasion. The system does not know what to answer at the beginning, but then it responds that it is possible to perceive such rules in a similar way. But becoming a defensive side at the start he will be stronger than other players. If you look at their strength on the scales, there is no bias. They just have a different shape of weights. Moreover, there is only one way to lose. It is to be destroyed. Sunyan Water thinks about what it means to be destroyed. Why on earth would he be like that? He asks about the fact that this world has been turned into a game. And they asked people whose lives they had put on the line. They play with human destinies. The system does not find what to answer. Here the heart lights up with a bright fire. Sunyan water is absorbed by the system, and a huge dragon appears in its place. Anna asks Mr. Dragon about the fact that he turned back. Sunyan water replies that the effect of the potion has passed, and he hasn't done anything yet, only wasted six bottles of potion. Anna tells him not to get mad. They've already found out everything. It was the work of bandits, and Tom should not blame himself. Sunyan Water replies to her that he is not upset at all because of this. Then he notices Anna's new black clothes and shouts to her what she is wearing at all. Anna, examining herself, answers him that her clothes are completely leaky, and Selena found clothes in one of the drawers, so she changed her clothes. The dragon in anger calls Selena, who is already dressing up Evelina in clothes. He shouts to Selena that he didn't realize earlier that she has strange fetishes. Selena tells him it's a disguise, doesn't he understand? Sunyan Water looks at Evelina, thinking that she only has a class, even S class doesn't count, you won't get many points. But Evelina looks at him with tears in her eyes and pleading in her eyes. Sunyan Water decides that he doesn't care, even if he doesn't earn points, he will be like a pet. 
He thinks that even though he likes it, it's against the rules. He buys clothes for 60 points. Sunyan Water gives the girls clothes, telling them to change quickly. They are delighted with such a gift. Sympathy for the dragon of each of them increased by 10 points. The dragon lies on a hillock and thinks that in this world he alone understands that this is a game. Since fate allowed him to find out the truth, she hinted that he could use this information to confront the players. He gets up and lets out a roar, shouting that there is no rest for him. The dog heads look at their master, trembling. Sunyan Water turns to Ipoliklius with burning eyes, saying that he knows him, and asks him to tell him how strong all the monsters nearby are. And it's better for Tom to make a simple map. He wants to collect them in one place. Ipoliklius readily accepts the order. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is 3825. Anna's liking level is 210 points. Selena's liking level for him is 30. Evelyn's liking level is minus 40 points. Sunyan Water studies his card. He is level 39, has abilities, a kind of dragon breath, primitive hunting, dragon power, absorption, tears of the sage, general experience. Sunyan Water thinks that if the inhabitants of this world kill each other, they will not gain experience. It is necessary to kill the players, only the players do not have such restrictions. Only now there are a lot more residents, but players have more opportunities to level up. Sunyan Water understands that this is an unequal struggle for resources. He imagines someone's hand moving a chess toy personifying him on the field. He understands that both sides are forcing players and residents to fight for life and death. Sunyan Water says that the characteristics increase during training. He understands that this may be a weak point. He calls one of the dog heads sweeping nearby. He approaches the dragon and, bowing his head, turns to his great master, asking about what he can serve. Sunyan Water studies Hawk's card. He is level 4, has the abilities to set traps, simulate caves, mine ore, collect garbage, howl, jump strikes, fake death. Sunyan Water understands that Hawk is also too weak. He tells Hawk that he will now run around the cave for half an hour without stopping. If Hawk dares to stop, the dragon will devour him. He tremblingly accepts the order, answering is. Hawk begins to execute the order, jumping around the cave. At the end of the jumps, Hawk, panting from physical exertion, tells the great master that Hawk ran, crawled. Sunyan Water is happy to note that Hawk's health and characteristics have not improved much. He understands that this is not a bad result. It looks like training really improves performance. Here Anna, Selina and Evelina inform Sunyan Water that they have changed their clothes. They ask about whether it suits them. Sunyan Water thinks that these girls will bring a lot of players to him. He finds it great. Here Anna is thinking about something. The dragon is given a map of the Silver Forest, which was made by the last leader. It depicts the locations of gnolls, blackbirds, beast crows, dog heads, spearmen boars. Sunyan Water thinks about the fact that each tribe has its own leader. He asks Ipoliklius to gather all the dog heads. He also demands to bring him all the weapons, saying that they will do something. In the wilderness of the Silver Forest, a flock of birds flies up. The dragon's paw lands right next to the level 3 beast scroll leader who is crying and trembling with fear. The leader of the level 7 Kurisme bulges his eyes, from which tears are splashing. The leader of the level 9 Spearman Bores falls to the ground, crying. A dragon's paw is visible next to him. Sunyan Water stands over them and tells the three chiefs not to be afraid of him. He won't eat them. He says that he has become aware that this world is on the verge of a crisis. They need to unite. Sunyan Water makes his speech in the presence of all beings from each tribe, saying that the Silver Forest is their home. They will collect all their weapons and fight back, driving away the enemies. The system informs him that this speech of the host is being checked. Activated passive ability, Tears of the Sage. After Sunyan Water's words, all the creatures froze in silence. Then they start shouting that he is talking business, and that long live the dragon. They're all one family. Sunyan Water understands that this is how these tears are used. Isn't that the main character's speech? Whatever the main character says, everyone believes him. He feels at the head of an MLM company. Here the animal king asks the great dragon how they will be able to resist the enemies. They are quite frail. He replies that this is a good question. They will need to pass. And then Sunyan Water finishes the sentence with the words, devilish training with burning eyes. See Veracrawley run. Hearing the cry that they need to run faster, they have 500 laps left. Heroes may shake the press, the score reached 1986. Spearmen boars knock out trees, striking them with tusks. Sunyan Water looks at the sky, thinking that they will still see who is who. He says he's going to win this game. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is 3825. Anna's liking level is 210 points. Selena's liking level for him is 30. 
Evelyn's liking level is minus 40 points. Aquamarine Planet. The bright streets of the city glow with neon signs. There are a lot of people walking the streets. They raise their heads to the sky, asking about what it is. A huge hourglass appears in the sky, inside of which there is golden sand. The system informs that the game of the team of this world has begun. 3,153,559,998 seconds. Daniel Eidson is absorbed by the system. He doesn't understand what is happening to his body. The system informs him that he has been selected. He asks about the player in shock. The system tells him to please invade the world in plenty. The time limit is 10 years. Then Brenny Jerton is also absorbed. The first rule of the game. Those who have started the game cannot leave it until their death. After death, players will be able to wait for the resurrection of the ego in the main square. The system takes the girl. The second rule of the game. Players receive aggression points for completed quests and a long survival time. Aggression points can be exchanged for items, as well as everything necessary for survival. They can also be used to buy resurrection time. Aggression points can be exchanged. The third rule of the game, chests randomly appear in the game world. There are aggression points, equipment, battle rewards and the like inside the chests. Rewards can be exchanged. The system takes another person. The fourth rule of the game, the time of resurrection for the first time is five seconds. For each new resurrection it is doubled. The system asks players to take care of themselves. The fifth rule of the game. In the game, time goes 10 times faster. The system asks players to try to survive. If they die in the main square, they will die for real. The countdown has started. 3,153,559,997 seconds. It was night in the Silver Forest. Ipolikliai reports to his master that the last training session has brought noticeable results. He reports that Knowles and Black Rivermans living nearby have also entered his service and are currently undergoing training. He answers him well. Here, red system notifications appear above Sunyan Water that players are staying. The novice village is over, creating the rules of the world. The first rule, upon arrival, the territory that players can occupy is limited. The automatic protection of the novice village lasts one week. The second rule, during the defense of the novice village, all non-player characters who entered the village will be teleported, and their memories of the village will be erased. The third rule, chests will appear in the world. The first Sakura novice village has already appeared next to the Silver Forest on the Mulligan Plain. Then a chest fell right next to Sunyan Water, which scared the dragon. He looks at the chest, wondering if he himself should guard this chest. He opens it and realizes that it is empty. He thinks that this chest may be the only way to get rewards from. But he can only get these rewards if the player opens the chest. Sunyan Water angrily realizes that not only can he not be human, but he will also have to guard this chest now. The dragon turns to the leaders of his tribes, to the grey wolf, the leather snake and the rest, saying that they should bring here all the chests found in the forest. They readily accept the order. Sunyan Water tells Ipolikli to bring all the bombs and traps with sending gas that they have made here. He also readily accepts the order. Sunyan Water asks the system if it has something like a world map. The system responds to the host that after the arrival of the players, the world map has been updated. Ten system points are needed to unlock it. He asks to unlock the card. The system informs that the card is unlocked. The batches are updated. The location of the Navachok village is marked on the map. Sunyan Water thinks about the fact that really the battle is not equal to the war. Although, at the beginning, the players are weak. They have as many as seven days during which they will train quietly. Sunyan Water decides that based on his many years of experience as a gamer, noobs have a weak spot that ruins them. Curiosity. Ipolyclius informs Sunyan Water that all the chests are here. There are a lot of locked chests on the ground. The dragon asks his servants to open all the chests. He demands to decompose poison gas traps, bombs and other poisonous things. And he also demands to hide them somewhere nearby in the bushes. Sunyan Water asks to hide the chests well, but not to overdo it. Hypolyclius asks the owner why all this is. He replies that he has friends here, and he wants to make them a present. Sunyan Water takes one of the chests, and thinks that those who invented it wanted to make him guard the chests. Sunyan Water laughs. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is 3842, Anna's liking level is 210 points, Selena's liking level for him is 30, Evelyn's liking level is minus 40 points. On the Mulligan Plain in the village of novices, Daniel Eidson lifts rocks into the air. They glow with blue energy. He puts one stone on top of another and they stick together. He receives a notification that he receives a new task, to build a house. He can use 100 pieces of wood, 100 pieces of stone. 
He studies the panel, thinking that there is a world map, a forum, a create team button, five senses adjustment, a task system, but there is no exit profile button. He understands that this is for real. There is a world that has been turned into a game. In the dragon's lair, Selena practices magic. She is studying her book floating in the air with a staff in her hands. Evelyn, watching her, thinks that she must be angry. She thinks that everything is because of her. She ran away with Blyde, and this jerk sold her to bandits to save himself. Evelina thinks it's a good thing she won't see Blyde again. And if he sees it, he will kill the thief himself. Sunyan Water looks at Evelina and thinks that such fragile girls, and they all have goosebumps. He doesn't understand how Evelina can have such an animal look. He says that Anna will definitely not become the same as them. He tells her to take medication to heal her health. He gives Anna a cup of medicine, and her sympathy increases by 10 points. She thanks Mr. Dragon for his care and help. Hippolyclius reports to the owner that the heroes have come out of their strange basket. Sunyan Water rejoices, saying that there does not seem to be a person who could resist the temptation to explore a new world. On the Mulligan Plain, the players came out of the novice village. Daniel Eidson says he never would have thought it would be so easy to level up. Built a room, got level 5. The girl agrees with him, but says that this village is so boring. Maybe there are some artifacts in the silver forest. Another player says that it would be nice to kill a couple of small monsters to fill your hand. Daniel tells his companions that it is very dangerous to leave the village, they should not leave it. In response to which the player with red hair replies that they took him with them because they treat him well. And when a week has passed, how will he survive outside the village alone? He will ask them to take them with him, but then they will definitely not agree. The girl laughs and says that's it. If they need bait, they will use Daniel's bones. He is shocked by such words and opens his mouth. He tells his comrades that there seems to be a chest in the bushes. A girl and a guy with red hair delightedly clench their fists with burning eyes, shouting that this is a treasure chest. It's awesome. A huge snake jumps out of the chest at them. The girl runs to the guys in fright, they are in shock. Poisonous gas is streaming from another chest. Then, a swarm of bees flies out of the third chest at them. They run away screaming. A guy with red hair cuts a bee with a swing of his sword, saying that there was some crap in the chest. He stands surrounded by the bodies of dead bees, and begins to turn his head from side to side, not understanding where his companions have gone. Daniel sits trembling with fear, with tears in his eyes. He covers his head with his hand, thinking about where they have gone. Here Sunyan Water lands in front of the guy with red hair, opening his wings and growling. After killing the player, he earned 10 points. Sunyan Water asks in amazement that the player died of fear, what a weakling. Then Daniel notices the dragon and screams. A dog-headed man with a spear approaches him, shouting to the man to get out. He brings him to Sunyan Water. He asks the person about who he is. Why did he enter his territory? Daniel, raising his hands and trembling, replies that they are travelers, they are here for the first time. Sunyan Water replies that he should not lie to him. He should be more careful because a person has such a fragile skull. Daniel, still breathing, says they were just passing by, they didn't think. They didn't think to disturb the dragon's peace. Sunyan Water tells Tom not to even think about it anymore. The guy should drink the acceleration potion and run faster. Daniel realizes that the acceleration potion is his way out. It is sold in the store, he will be able to escape from it. He buys an acceleration potion and escapes. Sunyan Water let him escape. Seven days will be enough. It's enough for the players to have time to build a prison for themselves. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is 3852. Anna's liking level is 210 points. Selena's liking level for him is 30. Evelyn's liking level is minus 40 points. The guy sighs ruefully, walking through the forest. He is very upset and very depressed. He talks about what kind of bad luck. The damn trunk turned out to be bullshit. There was nothing worth anything in it, but nothing at all. Then he notices a silver chest in the bushes. He thinks that the silver chest is a freebie. There will surely be something valuable and important there. He receives a notification that there is no key to the chest. It also says that to open a silver chest, you need a silver key, which can be purchased for 1000 aggression points. The system asks him if he wants to make a purchase. He thinks about the fact that he still needs a key and 1000 points of aggression. Isn't it too expensive? Since the treasure in the chest can cost much less than 1000 points of aggression. He begins to look around with caution, thinking that given past games, the key may fall out when killing monsters guarding treasures. As a prize for defeating a strong opponent, the leader of the level 3 B scrolls appears from the bushes. The guy with a smile rejoices that in front of him is just a rabbit. Besides three levels, it's even too easy. 
He smiles and thinks that he can easily cope with it, even without putting much effort. The guy naively believes that if he quickly finds the beast scrolls and finishes them off, then everything in the chest will be his. All the riches and treasures will go to him alone personally. He draws his sword, and looking at the tail of the animal king, he thinks that the rabbit will die. He shouts about it in order to intimidate his opponent in addition to attacking. The leader of the beast scrolls turns his head, his eyes burning red. He is angry and angry because of the unexpected attack on him. He smashes the guy's nose with one blow of a powerful fist. Blood gushes from the wounded nose. The guy covers his nose with his hand in horror and calls his mother. The leader of the beast scrolls becomes human-sized. This is a huge, pumped-up rabbit who clenches his fist in rage. He is clearly unhappy with the attack on himself and is determined. The leader of the animal kings tells the guy, calling him a puppy, that he thinks he can steal the chest, as if it could be that simple. He stammers no, raising his hands in fright, making it clear that he did not want to anger anyone at all. The animal king strikes the guy blow after blow in the face. The guy's head is swinging from side to side. He can't do anything against his opponent. The guy, receiving blows, thinks that no, level 3 can't have such strength, it's impossible. A third level creature could not repel his attack and beat him so that he could not oppose anything. The guy stands with a broken nose and bruised face and thinks about what he should do now, call for help but he doesn't even have anyone to call and no one to turn to. The rabbit puts his paw on the chest and tells the guy to open it, and he will think about whether to let him go. The guy, out of desperation, realizing that there is nothing left for him anymore, opens the chest with tears in his eyes, saying that it's fine. He will fulfill the order. He receives a notification from the system that the key to the chest has been purchased. For the purchase of a key, 1000 points are deducted from it. In the chest there is a bomb with a lit fuse, which is about to burn out. A monstrous explosion is heard. The forest around and the guy are captured by the explosion. Another player receives a notification with congratulations that the task to build a building has been completed. For the successful construction of the building, the player earned 500 points of aggression. This is a beautiful house with flowers on the roof, small and cute windows. The walls of the house are painted in pleasant bed tones. A girl with short dark hair enthusiastically presses her hands to herself, saying that this is her dream home. Her gaze burns with admiration for the new building. She is delighted. Also, a notification comes from the system congratulating the player on the construction of the tower. For the construction of this structure, they earned 1000 points of aggression. Also, a notification comes from the system with congratulations on the construction of the fortress wall. The height of the wall is 10 meters. 500 aggression points were earned for the construction of such a structure. The girl jumps admiringly near the house. She can't get enough of such a building in any way, expressing her delight and admiration in this way. There is a guy sitting on the cross wall who is completing it using construction tools and materials. Then the construction guy notices how another guy player is running towards them as fast as he can. The builder asks the other guy about what happened to him, as he sees that the player is rushing towards them with all his legs. He's obviously scared and excited about something. The player gasps and says that everything is gone, here, here. He is so out of breath to run that he can't finish the sentence right away. The builder guy asks the player what his words mean here. The guy with tears in his eyes shouts that there is a dragon. A dragon. He shouts the last word very loudly. He continues, shouting that they all need to run away as soon as possible. The builder asks about where the dragon is, and he thinks that this idiot is stupefied with fear. He needs to finish joking jokes, there's only a beginner village here. The guy shouts that it's true, pointing to the forest behind. There in the forest, an evil dragon killed Gary. It was only thanks to the acceleration potion that he escaped. The builder tells him that if the dragon really existed, then as soon as the protection of the newcomers was removed, they would be finished. They will build another tower and a fortress wall using wood and stones from that house. With their help, they will repel the dragon. A girl with tears in her eyes shouts that for what reason? This is her house. She does not want it to be destroyed and materials spent on building a wall. In the cave, the dragon is sleeping, and Selina Luther and Evelyn are sitting on a rock. They are upset and thoughtful about something. When Sunyan Water wakes up, she asks about what's wrong with them. The girls are silent, Anna is responsible for them. She tells Sunyan Water with a smile that Selina is sulking because of a failure in magic, and Evelyn because she wants to kill someone. Sunyan Water asks again in shock about killing, since he does not understand such desires and what they are caused by. He thinks that this was probably said in jest, since this is the most logical explanation he can think of for himself. In fact, Anna was badly influenced, because she finds it all very funny and funny. 
he is informed that his relative killed the player, he gets 10 points. A relative is one of the creatures subordinate to him. Sunyan Water looks at how a chest appears in the cave, which was also received as part of the reward for killing the player. And Polyclius tells him with a smile that they have brought all the chests. These are the chests that appeared for the players, and were stolen by the creatures subordinate to Sunyan Water after killing the players. After people opened them, there was so much in them. In front of him are three chests of different colors. Sunyan Water opens each of them. In one of them there is a roasted ham of mountain sheep with a golden crust. When opening another chest, there was a book with water spells in it. An ice spike is found in the third chest. The purple chest attracts the attention of Sunyan Water, as its contents are the most valuable for him. He takes what is in the chest and looks at the drawing of the flamethrower tower in shock. This is a canvas on which a drawing of the tower is depicted. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is 3862, Anna's liking level is 220 points, Selena's liking level for him is 30 points, Evelyn's liking level is minus 40 points. The system informs Sunyan Water that he has not met enough conditions, so he cannot use the drawing. He thinks about whether this is serious, what conditions there may be, and why he can't use the drawing. He thinks that players can probably use it, or there are other conditions under which the use of the drawing becomes possible. Selena is shocked to notice a book with water spells. Her eyes widen with shock and delight. She gently takes it in her hand, calls Sunyan Water, and asks to give her this book. She smiles at the dragon, reinforcing her request so as to achieve the result she needs. Sunyan Water agrees to give her the book. Selena asks Sunyan Water about his gone because I am amazed that he agreed to give the book so quickly. Selena does not wait for an answer and taking the book, leaves, finally saying that okay, she will go read. Sunyan Water is confused and amazed by this response. He thinks about the race, blushing and embarrassed by his thoughts. Sunyan Water starts to get angry, thinking that you don't have to answer anything, you have to endure this rare character. Since Selena's words hurt him, but he doesn't want to start a quarrel with her and lose her sympathy points. Then an idea dawns on him. Selena smiles and winks at him, as she is very grateful for the borrowed book. Her sympathy increases by 20 points. Sunyan Water is flying towards the only way to the dragon's lair. It is already evening and the sun is setting, illuminating the surrounding landscape with the last rays. Sunyan Water lands on a rock. In his hands he has a drawing of a flamethrower tower. The system informs him that the analysis of the openness of the terrain is completed. The analysis of the drawing of the flamethrower tower is completed. The quality of the drawing is purple, so it can be used five times. He needs to determine the construction site of the tower. Sunyan Water is amazed that the blueprint can only be used outdoors, realizing the reason why he couldn't use it in the cave. A building block appears in front of him, as in the game, glowing blue, which he must place at will. He just had to find a suitable place for the tower. He places it on a rock so that there is a better view, the ability to hit targets and defend. The system informs him that for the construction of a flamethrower tower it is necessary, 10 pieces of stone, 2 pieces of wood, 20 workers, 5 kilograms of food. The entire time to build the tower will take 12 hours. The foundation of the tower appears on the rock. The system tells him the possible races of workers that can be used in the construction of the tower. In the case of attracting people, after the completion of the construction of the tower, its efficiency will increase by 20%. If Soglafsi are involved in the construction, then at the end of construction, the tower's defense capability will increase by 20%. If goblins are used in the construction of the tower, then the mutation rate increases by 20% at the end. If dwarves are involved in the construction, then all the characteristics of the building are increased by 20% after the work is completed. But the system informs the owner that he must supply the workers with everything necessary during construction. After the workers arrive at the site, construction will begin automatically. After the construction work is completed, the workers will go back with erased memories and will not remember anything about the construction of the tower. Sunyan Water carefully studies these messages, trying to understand how and who is better to attract, as well as what it means that he himself should supply workers. While he is thinking, night is falling on the neighborhood. The moon and the moon are shining brightly in the sky. Sunyan Water continues to ponder what it means that he himself should supply the workers. While he is thinking, Hippolyclius climbs up the cliff. He climbs onto the parapet to the dragon, thinking that he and Polyclius swore to follow his master with his life, so he follows him wherever he is, spending his last strength on these. Hippolyclius suffocates, but still strives for his master. Hippolyclius is sweating all over, tired and shouts to the owner that he climbed in. 
He is very happy and delighted with this fact. Sunyan Water tells Ipaliklii to bring him 20 strong dog heads who will help him build a flamethrower tower. He answers his master that he listens to him. He is ready to execute the order, but does not count his strength. Ipaliklius immediately after that falls to the ground from fatigue, losing consciousness. Sunyan Water, seeing that his servant fell to the ground without strength, says that his order can be carried out tomorrow, as he understands that Ipaliklius is very tired and is not ready to run and collect workers now. Sunyan Water looks at the stars and the moon in the sky, thinking that Anna must be resting now. Thoughts about a girl make him smile, make him blush and be embarrassed. At this time, Anna and Selina are sleeping in a cave, covered with a blanket. They sleep soundly right on the ground, and dreaming. Selina laughs in her sleep and says that she is an honorary magician. These thoughts make her smile happily. Evelyn tells someone in a dream that she will cut him up for the pigs to eat. She also really likes this dream, she smiles in her sleep. But then Sunyan Water hears someone shouting Dad, Mom, no. Sunyan Water realizes that it is Anna who is shouting, as the other girls are sleeping peacefully. He turns his head to the source of the sound, trying to figure out where Anna is sleeping. She shivers in her sleep and repeats the words Demon out. Sunyan Water wonders why she says Demon, what it might mean. He studied this question, and if everything is correct in the Encyclopedia of Monsters, then 1500 years ago the demons were already destroyed. He doesn't understand how demons can exist now, because Anna is clearly not 1500 years old. The system determined her age. Anna opens her eyes, they burn with a red light and her pupils are like a snake's. Her eyes are like the eyes of an animal. The red fire from them burns with a demonic color. There's a fire in the village. The flame is very strong, because of it you can't even see the sky. Trees, buildings, flags and trees from the forest behind the houses are burning. Everything is blazing and colored with orange light. Demons with horns and red eyes kill people. One of the demons hits a man in the head with a paw. Blood spurts out of him. The demon next to him smiles and prepares to grab the man with his paws. Another demon also hits a woman in the head. A pillar of blood hits up. Little Anna stands on the threshold of her house and looks at it, thinking that it was attacked by demons. She's very scared. She cries and tries to call mom and dad, but someone shuts her mouth and tells her to be silent. There are tears in her eyes. The girl who covered her mouth bends down to her ear and says that she is with her. A little later, she opens the closet doors, puts Anna in there and tells her to hide here and never come out. She doesn't have time to finish the last word when her stomach is pierced. She only manages to say the word D. Blood is spurting out of it, from a wound in the stomach and from the mouth. Her eyes widen in horror. Anna opens her mouth in shock and fright. Tears are spurting from her eyes. She stammers for her sister. The demon shouts boo to her. His eyes are burning red. His mouth opens in a smile, exposing sharp teeth. He laughs at her in her fear. Anna is sitting in the closet, frightened, pressing her hands to her body. Her eyes are wide open in shock. Tears are pouring out of them. She's trying to tell the demon not to come near her. In front of the entrance to the closet, the body of her dead sister lies motionless. Her heart starts beating fast. Red energy begins to swirl around him, the streams of which go straight to her heart. Her eyes light up red, the pupils become snake-like. Red energy continues to swirl around her. She holds out her hand, tears glisten in his eyes. But she clenches her teeth in determination, preparing to fight to the last. Obeying her movements, red energy rushes towards the demon. Sunyan Water realizes that Anna is having a nightmare, as her behavior does not look like she is having a normal dream. He is sitting next to the sleeping Anna. Sunyan Water clutches Anna's body with her paws. Her health icon is green, but there is very little of it. Sunyan Water thinks that he has been giving her herbal tinctures and potions for several days and finally her strip of life has turned green. He is studying information about Anna's health. The system informs him that Anna is in serious pain and she has 63 days left to live. Sunyan Water is upset and dissatisfied with the fact that no matter what medications he feeds her, he still shows that she will live only 63 days. He thinks irritably that there are no signs of recovery. Sunyan Water wonders if it's because of her heart failure. Anna abruptly opens her burning snake eyes. She gets up and Sunyan Water shouts to her that she is awake. He doesn't see what condition she's in. Anna with burning eyes attacks the dragon with purple energy. Sunyan Water is shocked by this, he flies into the wall from the attack, which causes stones and dust to fly to the side. He is in a lot of pain, he leaves a dent in the stone wall, so strong was Anna's attack. This noise wakes up Selina and Evelyn, who at first cannot understand what is happening. 
Selena gets up and shouts that Sunyan Water saw what time it was, why he was making so much noise. She asks about what he is doing here and has something in mind, since he is standing close above the girls and obviously watched them sleep. Evelyn sleepily asks what the sounds are, as she still can't figure out what's going on and why she woke up. Sunyan Water says with tears in her eyes that Anna is missing. A little later, he flies over the night forest in search of Anna. On his back are Selena and Evelyn, who are exploring the area in search of Anna helping Sunyan Water find the girl. Then one of them notices something. Selena says that Anna ran away deep into the swamps. They see Anna beating up a huge crocodile. There is a full red stripe above her. That is, her health is full, but it is red. The dragon is glad that he found Anna. He smiles, realizing that everything is fine with the girl. Sunyan Water thinks that it is amazing that her stripe is full, although red. He has not heard of such a thing and does not know what it means. Sunyan Water is amazed at how Anna fights with the enemy. Before that, she did not show the skills of war and fighters. And Anna's opponent is not just some kind of animal, but this is the Swamp Lord. Anna fights with a crocodile named Stone Helmet. He's level 15. The crocodile is a creature of the second stage. And it seems that Anna easily beats the crocodile with a stone helmet, throwing it from side to side. Anna turns to Sunyan Water, realizing that he has come, and turns to Mr. Dragon. Her eyes gradually fade and she falls unconscious. Her strength was exhausted. Sunyan Water screams damn as Anna fainted during the battle. And she was in the air at that moment as she was fighting on the fly. The crocodile opens its mouth to meet her, preparing to swallow Anna flying down. Sunyan Water sets the crocodile on fire with his fiery breath, preventing him from devouring the girl. And Selina and Evelyn prepare to catch Anna sitting on his back. They put their hands up to grab the girl flying down. The crocodile screams in pain as it is consumed by the flames. A little later, Sunyan Water lands on the shore near the swamp. Selina and Evelyn are sitting next to Anna lying on the ground, who has lost consciousness. Here the dragon is bitten on the wing by a crocodile that got out of the swamp. Sunyan Water didn't expect such an attack, and screams your mother. He realizes that this piece of shit ambushed him. He jumped on him from the water abruptly, taking advantage of the fact that Sunyan Water had his back to him and did not see the attacker. The crocodile drags the dragon under the water, holding the wing with its mouth. Sunyan Water's claw only slightly scratches the crocodile. The thought of no slips through his mind. The crocodile has a thick skin. He can't pierce it hard enough with his claws to cause the monster great harm. At the same time, Sunyan Water understands that in the swamp, dragon breath will definitely not be used to its full potential, since water neutralizes its effect. The claws of Sunyan Water barely touch the enemy without causing him significant harm. Sunyan Water shouts to the system that he is changing, realizing that this is his only chance. Sunyan Water asks to change his modifications to a high level of scale strength, as well as a high level of reinforced claws and fangs. He also asks the system for an underwater breathing bag. Sunyan Water shouts to the system to do it as quickly as possible, since he will not be able to fight underwater for a long time. The system informs him that these modifications are worth 10,000 points. The system knows that he doesn't have enough points, so it asks Sunyan Water if he wants to take out a loan. Sunyan Water, without hesitation, shouts yes, because he does not have time to talk. The system informs him that it draws his attention that the loan percentage is 50%. That is, he will have to return more points than he will borrow. The system asks if Sunyan Water wants to activate the modifications. Sunyan Water shouts that stop talking bullshit. Let the system activate the modifications, as he is about to choke and lose. The system informs him that it draws his attention that acute pain may occur during the activation of modifications. The dragon's eye turns red and abruptly opens. Sunyan Water goes under the water, thinking that he is in pain, as the changes begin to take effect, changing his body and causing him pain. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is minus 93 points, Anna's liking level is 220 points, Selena's liking level for him is 50 points, Evelyn's liking level is minus 40 points. Selena bends down to the water, calling Sunyan Water and shouting to Tom if he is still alive. She can't see anything because of the muddy water, but she doesn't find any signs that Sunyan Water is alive there. She happily thinks that this means that she cannot return the book with water spells if the dragon does not return in the end. Here, Sunyan Water flies out of the swamp, and with one blow of his paw, he punches through the crocodile, while spewing flames into it. 
His modified claws and breath did their job, allowing him to easily win. Selina and Evelyn are shocked to watch the battle from the shore, open-mouthed and surprised at how much Sunyan water. Strong, the dragon throws the crocodile back into the swamp, as he had previously fought with it in the air. Then Sunyan water throws the monster aside with one powerful blow of his tail. He flies away unable to cope with such an attack. Sunyan water takes the crocodile by the mouth. He shouts to the beast to die, fascinated by the battle and anticipating victory. Sunyan water pours flame directly into the crocodile's mouth, which he holds with his paws, not allowing it to close. Then, Sunyan water throws the crocodile's prostrate body onto the shore. He died and shows no signs of life. At the same time, because of the dragon flame, he was fried. Selina can smell the burning corpse of a crocodile, and she likes it. She sips her nose with a smile, because she is hungry. Selina and Evelyn tear the meat from the crocodile, and begin to eat it, smacking their lips. They eat it with their bare hands, finding it very tasty. Evelyn and Selina fall to the ground after eating, holding their bellies. They've eaten too much and now they can't even get up. Sunyan Water also ate a crocodile with them and ate too much. After that, he goes to sleep next to them. The system informs him that the owner killed the crocodile stone helmet. For defeating the monster, Sunyan Water received 60 system points. Also, in addition to the points, he received one magic core. At the same time, he is also given a reward for absorbing the crocodile stone helmet. After absorbing the monster's body, Sunyan Water's health recovery rate is increased. An elementary core of the lowest level appears in front of him. Sunyan Water looks at him admiringly. He picks it up, happily shouting the magic core. This evil will grab the core and then Anna will return. He notices that Anna's health bar has become the same as in the beginning. She is red and there is very little of her, that is, the girl's health has weakened, and very sharply. The system informs him that Anna is in serious pain. She is very weak. The system also reports that Anna has 24 hours left to live. Sunyan Water asks the system if she knows what kind of illness Anna has. The system tells him that it doesn't know. She does not have the function of examining a sick person instead of a person, since she is not a cleric and can only assess the health of the character. Sunyan Water is crushed, tears appear in his eyes, as he does not know what Anna is sick with and how to cure it. He remembers what Anna was like with red burning eyes and surrounded by the same energy. Sunyan Water is sure that this has something to do with her behavior, escaping from the cave and attacking the crocodile. He understands that he needs to find out exactly what kind of illness Anna has and why she went berserk, since there is only one reason for this. Sunyan Water wonders where else Anna and this destructive power came from. Here the dragon is illuminated by the idea of a cleric, since the healer must tell exactly what is with the girl. He asks Selina if she knows there is a strong cleric here somewhere. She replies that she has no idea, since when she was with the mercenaries, they all bought potions without resorting to the services of clerics. Here one of them says that he knows. Evelyn said that. She says she knows a cleric who lives in the kingdom of Henrius. But after thinking a little and assessing all the chances, Evelyn continues, saying that only Sunyan Water is likely to be killed if he approaches the city walls in this form. After all, there are bounty hunters all over the city, and neither the residents of the city nor the guards will be very happy with the dragon. Sunyan Water looks at his paws, thinking that this is true, since they will probably start shooting at him even when approaching the city walls. He thinks about the fact that he still has six bottles of the transformation potion left, which can help him get into the city unnoticed. He understands that this amount of potion can be enough for half a day. If Sunyan Water manages to visit the cleric with Anna during this time, then there should be no problems. Evelyn looks at the dragon, angry and thinking that it really doesn't matter if a man or a monster is selfish, because the idea to go to the city belonged to her. But she is ignored. She closes her eyes, from which tears of resentment are splashing. She thinks that as soon as a problem arises, she will be abandoned without hesitation. Sunyan Water calls her, asking what she is frozen for. Let Evelyn jump in and think about his words in shock, since she did not expect him to take her with him. She is very touched by such an act. The system informs Sunyan Water that Evelyn's liking for him has increased by 40 points. Her current level is 0 points. The system congratulates the host, saying that Evelyn's sympathy has reached the first level. For this, Sunyan Water received 300 points. The dragon flies over the forest towards the town where the cleric lives. Evelyn and Selina are sitting on his back. Sunyan Water thinks that Evelyn's liking has increased. He thinks it's because she saw him so brave in the middle of a battle, so she took a liking to him and respected him. But the dragon is angry because he got only 300 points. He does not understand why there is so little if sympathy has ceased to be negative. Sunyan Water tells the system that they agreed on the skills, did they really take everything away? 
The system responds to him that the sympathy of a special a level character must reach the second level in order to gain new skills. The system deducts 350 credit points from him. After deducting the points, the system informs Sunyan Water that he has 9,000 points left to return. Sunyan Water shouts 9,000 points in shock, as he is horrified that he owes so many points. Selina then shouts in shock about what is wrong with him, not understanding why he sharply shouted these words. Sunyan Water replies to her that it's okay, he's fine, and Sunyan Water thinks to himself that this is all strange. He sadly understands that in this world it is still necessary to repay the loan, given that he is not even in the real world. Sunyan Water flies up to the city walls of Henrius in the night. The city is sleeping. He lands a little further away so as not to attract attention to himself. He lands holding Anna in his arms. She is unconscious and does not react to their landing in any way. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is minus 9,000 points. Anna's liking level is 220 points. Selena's liking level for him is 50 points. Evelyn's liking level is 0 points. In the morning, a procession goes through the streets within the walls of the royal city. A man in shining armor riding a horse rides past the crowd joyfully greeting him. Behind him are his warriors, also dressed in armor. People raise their hands, rejoice. They greet not so much the warriors as the knight with long blonde hair who leads the entire procession. Shouts can be heard from the crowd cheering the valiant knight blade. Someone says that he single-handedly dealt with the whirlwind gang and beheaded their leader. Nightblade happily waves back to the crowd. He is pleased with such attention to his person. Also, someone from the crowd says that Knight Blail, along with the great magician Mason, staged a campaign against an evil dragon. Among the people in the crowd is Sunyan Water in human form with an unconscious Anna in his arms. He is not happy because he listens to people's conversations. He thinks angrily that Nightblade has dealt with the whirlwind gang and it's okay that he killed them, and his act was simply appropriated. Sunyan Water angrily thinks that Nightblade is a good fellow, stole someone else's merits and even managed to steal the dragon's skull. Sunyan Water looks with hatred at the joyful Nightblade surrounded by an enthusiastic crowd, and says that if he wasn't busy, he would have smashed his head. But he should think about Anna, who needs help. A little later he comes to a small modest house standing alone on the outskirts. Sunyan Water remembers what Evelyn said to him. According to her, the cleric's name is Rob. His hut is located in the western part of the city. There is a flowering tree on the door. The house he found fits all the signs. Evelyn herself did not go to town with them. Sunyan Water knocks hard on the door, asking if cleric Rob is here. But there is no reaction to his knock and words. Sunyan Water realizes that he has not been opened yet. He thinks that maybe the old man didn't hear. Anna never regains consciousness in his arms, still remaining unconscious. Sunyan Water kicks the door hard. The door swings open, and Sunyan Water finds himself on the threshold with Anna sitting in his arms. From their arrival, the nurse girl falls to the floor in shock, as she did not expect such a visit to the house. This is Varvara, a student of the doctor, who covers her mouth with her hand in shock at the sight of visitors. Sunyan Water apologizes with a smile, saying that they are looking for Cleric Rob. Varvara gets to her feet and replies that it's okay. Let him just pay 50 silver coins for the broken door. Sunyan Water is amazed by this answer, as here he has to pay something. Varvara introduces herself to him, also asks for forgiveness and asks why they need a cleric. Sunyan Water replies that for treatment. Varvara tells him that unfortunately, due to the fact that he could not cure the impotence of the prince, he went wandering. Sunyan Water is shocked. He asks her if she knows where he went, or at least when he comes back. Varvara replies that it is not yet known. Then he pays attention to Anna and joyfully shouts wow. The sight of the girl amazes and delights her. This is a low elf. She touches her ears and tail, talking about how cute Anna is. Here Varvara bends down to Anna's face and says that she is ill and will die soon. Sunyan Water asks in shock that Varvara is also a cleric. She replies with a smile that she is just studying, but she can also examine her. Sunyan Water asks her if she can identify Anna's illness. He tells me that last night Anna suddenly went berserk, and then lost consciousness. Varvara tells him to put the girl on the table first. Sunyan Water puts Anna on the table, Varvara begins to examine her. She bends down, listens to her heart. Sunyan Water observes her actions, thinking that all clerics do this inspection because he finds her actions very strange. Sunyan Water, seeing such an examination, believes that now he understands why the prince's illness has not been cured. Suddenly Varvara screams about what she has found. She tells Sunyan Water that there is a curse on Anna. 
The seed of the curse is in the heart, and all other diseases occur because of it. Sunyan Water asks again about the curse, as he did not understand what exactly it means. Parvara replies that the curse is very powerful. It takes all the powers of the damned. Such a curse drives people crazy. Sunyan Water screams that because of the curse, Anna may weaken or go crazy. And if Anna goes crazy, she will lose her health. Farvara answers that it is true, everything is very logical. That's how the curse works. Sunyan Water asks Varvara if she can cure Anna. She asks for forgiveness and says no, spreading her hands in despair. Varvara continues, saying that she can only stabilize her for a while. But Sunyan Water should know, if Anna has resistance, her body will collapse. Varvara continues her speech about Anna's illness, raising her finger up and saying that there are two ways to remove the curse. The first way is to kill the one who cast the curse. The second way is to remove the container. That is, in the case of Anna, it is necessary to change the cursed heart. Varvara comes up to him in a tight and pointing at him with a finger, says with a smile that it is best to change the cursed heart to the heart of a dragon. She understands that he is not who he claims to be. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is minus 9,000 points, Anna's liking level is 220 points, Selena's liking level for him is 50 points, Evelyn's liking level is 0 points. Sunyan Water, looking at Varvara, thinks that your mother. He understands that she can sniff out everything, since she somehow realized that he was a dragon. Sunyan Water thinks about the fact that since Varvara has such a good nose, then maybe she is a dog or something. He laughs shyly, asking again about the dragon heart, pretending that he does not understand what it is. Sunyan Water continues saying that it is very difficult to find and get it. And is there no other equally effective way? Varvara thinks about the words about another way. She says that there is no other way except to dip into the legendary elven spring. This should delay the effect of the curse, but the source dried up a long time ago. She says it's also possible to go north to the Winter Empire. There is a high cleric who has achieved perfection in the art of purification. But the patient doesn't have much time left, so she can't take such a trip. Farvara spreads her arms to the sides, making it clear that this is the end of her knowledge, and Sunyan Water looks at her in frustration. But then an idea dawns on Varvara. She remembers about the witches and says that you can find them. They always have a bunch of weird treatments, only they are very difficult to find. She only knows that they were seen in Santalista. Sunyan Water asks again about Sint. Allist, witches. He asks Varvara if she is sure that witches can really help. He asks her to magically treat Anna better, and then they will discuss what to do next. Varvara asks him to wait. She starts flipping through the book. Sunyan Water asks her what she is looking at there. This book is a magical treatment for dummies. This scares him, because he understands that the girl is not an experienced healer. Varvara puts her hand on Sunyan Water's shoulder and tells him to relax. The first time is always nervous. He answers her in a frightened way that why does he have the feeling that she is talking to herself that this is her first treatment. Varvara points her hand at Anna, and she is surrounded by green energy that heals her. Anna opens her eyes after the magic ends. Sunyan Water happily shouts to her that she has woken up, which makes him very happy. Anna asks Mr. Dragon about where they are, as she does not understand where they ended up. He answers her that they are in the royal city. She suddenly fainted and he brought her to the cleric. Varvara asks about the dragon, since that's how Anna addressed him. Laughing, she covers her mouth with her hand, saying that of course she was not mistaken. Sunyan Water is really a dragon. She continues by saying this elf. Varvara asks him that he is by chance not the same dragon that was recently raided. He answers her in a calm voice and so what, lower, that the girl has already guessed everything herself. Varvara appears in the form of an angel with wings and a halo and spreading her hands tells Sunyan Water that he can be calm. She will not give them up. After all, she is a cleric, she promised to treat all those in need. She takes one of the medical instruments and says that she is now studying the treatment of the body. Varvara says that even without magic, you can successfully transplant a heart. Sunyan Water can get a 20% discount. He definitely did not think about the operation to transplant his heart to Anna. Sunyan Water thinks that Varvara is very similar to a modern surgeon. Aloud, he says thank you to Varvara. But it's better for her to get ready first, and he and the patient will prepare for a heart transplant. Anna asks again about the transplant, not understanding what it means. She tries to ask about the transplant, but Sunyan Water puts her hand over her mouth. She tells her to keep quiet and leave. Varvara, at this time, humming a cheerful tune, is preparing for surgery, laying out medical instruments on the table. Sunyan Water thinks that Varvara even flipped through the treatment for dummies, they didn't think of anything. 
he is not going to take part in her operation. Outside the walls of the city, Sunyan Water asks Anna how she feels. Anna asks Mr. Dragon if her illness is curable. He tells her that it's just a simple curse. He swears by his dragon name to her, she will definitely recover. Anna thinks with gratitude that Mr. Dragon even gave her an oath. She thanks Sunyan Water. The system tells him that Anna's liking has increased by 50 points, and her current level is 250. Anna says that he gave her his word, but he should not sacrifice his health by saving her. Sunyan Water tells Anna to relax, he will find a way to remove the curse. The system informs him that a rare character has been detected. He calls him, whether he wants to answer him. This is a blonde elf. Sunyan Water is amazed that a rare NPC is calling him. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is minus 9000. Anna's liking level is 250 points. Selena's liking level for him is 50. Evelyn's liking level is 0. In the Sanctuary of Sin. Aulist, an elf with a staff stands in front of a stone statue of a woman. She turns to the great goddess to hear her prayers. Yellow energy flows around the girl. The girl asks the goddess to show her a miracle. She presses her hand to her chest and says in frustration that she has failed again. Sunyan Water looks at the notification panel and says there is no response. He thinks that although he really wants to go see, but there are more important things to do. Dog heads walk behind the dragon's lair at the construction site of the fire tower. One of them notices the return of the owner and tells him that he has returned. The tower is built. Sunyan Water replies to them that they are fast. They, the Soglavits, definitely have a talent for construction. He tells them with a smile that with this Makar, they will quickly build the remaining four towers. The system sends him a notification that the building is a level 1 fire tower. Its protection is 10,000, range is 30 kilometers. Rate of fire, homing, 1 arrow divided by 10 seconds. Manual aiming, 1 arrow divided by 1 second. This is the fastest option. The speed depends on the number of soldiers. Technique, rain of fire arrows, range 5 by 5. Sunyan Water studies these characteristics and says that one arrow in 10 seconds is too slow. He needs to first check what power the tower has. He orders Ipoliclius to aim at the rock and points at it with his hand. He accepts the order with a smile. He aims the target at the rock. Sunyan Water orders fire. A projectile flies out of the tower. There is an explosion. Fragments of stones fly in different directions. There is a huge hole in the rock, from which smoke is coming in different directions. Sunyan Water opens her mouth in shock and screams about what it was like. And this little thing is a fiery erased. This is definitely not a simplified version of the rocket. He thinks that it is no wonder that the tower is so slow, such a huge crete. He will reflect on the fact that if the builders of the towers are different, then the effects should be different. He doesn't know if this is true for soldiers. Sunyan Water asks Ipoliclia to bring him 20 animal skins. He wants to conduct an experiment. He readily accepts the master's order. Sunyan Water, with a smile, calling the animal king Bugs Bunny, asks him to test the tower with other animal kings. They readily follow to the flamethrower tower. The system informs him that there are 20 soldiers in the tower. Since the soldiers are non-standard, there will be changes in the flamethrower tower whether Sunyan Water wants to continue. He says to continue, happily thinking that he really guessed right. Sunyan Water looks at the attack of the beast scrolls from the tower and thinks about what it means. Depending on the abilities of relatives, there will be different changes. He thinks with a smile that with these towers, the defense of the cave will not be a problem. It remains to increase its speed and range. He asks the system about what is needed to raise the level of the tower. The system responds that you need 10 magic cores of fire monsters 3 stages. Sunyan Water says that last time he killed the crocodile stone helmet in the swamps near the mountains of the silver forest to get the core of the lower stage. It looks like it's hard to find so many stage 3 monsters in the silver forest. Perhaps there are more of them in the mountains. Sunyan Water thinks that he should visit the mountains. Then Anna appears behind him and shouts to Mr. Dragon that Selina and Evelyn had a fight. He asks about it again. Evelyn holds Selina, who shouts at her to let her go, please. Then Selina presses Evelyn to the ground and she shouts no, that's enough. Evelyn rushes to Sunyan Water and calling him Brother Dragon, says that she is in great pain and cries. Selina approaches him from the other side and says that Evelyn started it first. It was all Sunyan Water's performances, who laughs and thinks it's cool. Anna sternly shouts to Mr. Dragon that if he does not stop them, they will blow up the lair. He asks in shock what she is talking about. He shouts that he has forgotten that they are both sorceresses. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is minus 9000. Anna's liking level is 250 points. Selina's liking level for him is 50. 
Evelyn's liking level is zero. Sunyan Water comes to the cave where Selena and Evelyn are fighting. They hold each other by the hair and scream. Sunyan Water shouts at them to stop. Stop fighting and get out. Anna is standing behind him. Sunyan Water is angry that his words have been ignored. He shouts at them to stop, turning into a dragon and bursting between the girls, spreading their paws to the sides. Anna tells Mr. Dragon that Selina and Evelyn had a fight over a book of water spells. Selina didn't get the exercise, Evelyn just took a look, then they got into a fight. Sunyan Water angrily tells them that it's a shame to fight over such trifles. On his territory, they must obey him. He continues by saying that next time, and then he calmly says that they should fight hand to hand and not use magic. Evelyn and Selina cross their arms in anger and turn their heads to the sides. At night in the forest, Selina, in anger, hits the tree with her fist. She screams about how everything pisses her off. Why can't she do anything? She's not armless. Because of her blows, stones are raining down from the ceiling of the cave on Sunyan Water's head. One of them hits him painfully on the head. He screams in pain. Sunyan Water appears behind Selina and shouts at her to stop and stop. Selina, crossing her arms over her chest, tells Tom that what is it? Didn't he himself tell them to fight on the street? Sunyan Water massages his head and says they have to swear. But it is not necessary to run and beat trees at night. She'll let people sleep. Selina looks angrily at the remains of the tree. Selina is upset saying that she just feels like some kind of non-entity. Sunyan Water tells her that if she can't follow the beaten path, then it's worth finding her own. Selina asks again about finding her own. Sunyan Water replies to her that he thinks that since she is so cruel, it's better for her to try her in black magic. Selina says that black magic is not for people, it definitely won't suit her. Sunyan Water whispers to her that oh lie. In his opinion, she is also not like other people. Selina, after thinking about it, says that after all, thanks to the dragon for keeping her company. The system reports that Selina's liking has increased by 50, the current level is 100. Somewhere in the forest, the day has come, the sun is shining brightly. Three beast scrolls are grazing in the clearing. Three girls with wings behind their backs are watching them from the bushes. One of them tells the head that these animal rabbits are so fat. The other supports, saying that exactly. One bite and the fat will flow. The girl with the ponytail says that the animal king has a gold chain around her neck. She is very beautiful, and she also wants one. The girl with the square answers her that when there were such large animal rabbits in the forest. She asks the question that these rabbits usually eat so well and wear chains. But then she says she doesn't care. In any case, even these strange beast scrolls will not be able to defeat the harpies. She turns to the others and says that there are rumors that there is a dragon in this part of the forest, so it's worth being careful. They will attack about three. The girl immediately says three. Two. The harpies are preparing to attack. Then, they rush to attack, the girl with the square laughs, shouting to the rabbit to jump into her stomach. The eyes of the beast scrolls light up red. They grow in size, they have muscles and claws. The harpies land on the clearing in shock, stopping the attack. The beast crows appear before them in all their glory. The harpy with the square screams for help when the beast king hits her in the face. She screams that they can't stand it and have to leave. Then a blue energy network rushes at them. They are screaming in horror at her. Later, in the dragon's lair, Sunyan Water looks at the captured harpies and asks them that they wanted to attack his relatives. The harpy with a square turns to the great dragon, saying that they did not want to offend him. They really want to eat. Behind her, her sisters are sitting and crying. She continues, saying that a few days ago, a flock of parrotons came from somewhere in the forest and took away their cave. They took the mountain sheep and killed their tribesmen. Sunyan Water is thinking about the other side. He understands that apparently there is a village of newcomers there too. The harpy begs the great dragon to help them return their home and rescue their tribe. She introduces herself as Hannah, the head of the harpy. Hannah swears to Sunyan Water that she brings her tribe under his wing of her own free will, and will donate a whole sheep to him. Hannah falls to her knees in front of the dragon. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is minus 9000. Anna's liking level is 250 points. Selena's liking level for him is 100. Evelyn's liking level is 0. Sunyan Water is confused and tells Hannah that he understands everything, but trying to eat the beast scrolls when they were shitting. Hannah is shocked to ask again about it, since they did not notice what exactly those creatures were doing. Sunyan Water looks at the leader of the Harpies. The system shows him all the information about her. In front of him is the head of the level 17 Harpies, Hannah, a second stage creature. Her current level of sympathy for Sunyan Water, 30. She is in awe of him. Hannah is strong in flight, jerks from a height, 
has a sweet voice. Sunyan Water studies the characteristics of the harpy and thinks they are not a bad air force. He also thinks that the harpy's cunning is well suited for scouts that can be used against opponents. And with a sweet voice, they can disorient players. Sunyan Water brings a claw to her and drips blood on Hannah's head. He says by giving his name that he is responding to her plea. Sunyan Water declares Hannah and her tribe to be her relatives. She smiles shyly, closing her eyes, rejoicing at this outcome. She presses her hand to her heart and says yes master. One of her eyes lights up red. Anna is sitting next to Selena. Evelyn is standing next to them. Anna turns to Mr. Dragon, saying that he wants to go to the Silver Forest, they want to go with him. Sunyan Water shouts to them that he will go there to fight. It's not for them to go on a picnic, they're not going anywhere. Those from his roar close their eyes. Anna says in frustration that she wanted to spend the rest of her time with Mr. Dragon, no matter in battle or somewhere else. Selina raises her hand and shouts that she can also help in the fight. Evoin supports, saying that she too. Sunyan Water looks at the readiness of the girls, thinking that Anna has been so clingy lately. She thinks about the fact that her behavior is caused by illness. Sunyan Water tells the leaders of the Dog Heads and Beast Scrolls that while he is away, if anyone enters the forest, they should do everything as usual. They should put traps or something else in the open chests, but not allow players to go deep into the forest. They readily accept the master's order. The dragon flies to the rocks, followed by harpies. Hannah shouts to Sunyan Water that this is their cave, pointing to the one that can be seen ahead. They are approaching a cave in the rock. Sunyan Water lands in front of the cave entrance. Anna is seen in Nigo's hands. Hannah tells him that these paritans are ferocious and treacherous, so he should be more careful when fighting with them. She asks the owner to be careful. He answers her that he understood. He thinks about the fact that he brought Anna in vain, since it can be dangerous here, and she has not recovered yet. He sniffs the air and realizes that the cave stinks of blood. Sunyan Water tells Anna that it is dangerous to go further and she should wait for him here. He orders Hannah and the other harpy to stay at the cave entrance and protect Anna. They readily accept the order, responding to him there is a master. Sunyan Water rushes deep into the cave. In the cave he meets seven paritans, level 28. Sunyan Water is amazed, he thinks your mother. It turns out there are so many monsters of the third stage in the Silver Forest. He understands that it is not at all surprising that the tortured harpies escaped from the cave. Sunyan Water is upset to realize that even though he is stronger, he will not be able to withstand a battle with so many. He decides to leave, thinking that okay, next time he will bring more people. But his movements are touched by a stone, and he jumps around the cave. Peritons wake up. A lot of burning red eyes are rushing at Sunyan Water from the darkness. Sunyan Water thinks damn. Peritons, creatures with deer heads and wings begin to circle over Sunyan Water. His eyes also light up with red fire, and he realizes that since he couldn't escape, then it's worth starting a fight. The Peritons, roaring, rush at him, Sunyan Water meets them with a roar. With one blow of his paw, he pierces the neck of one of the Peritons. In others, he releases fire. He attacks another one with a powerful blow of his tail. The system sends a congratulatory notification to the owner and informs him that he has received 23 stage 3 fire cores. He also received 345 system points. Sunyan Water happily thinks about fire cores. It looks like these monsters have accumulated cores inside. He exhales steam from his nostrils, thinking that what you want, you will get. Then the stones begin to fall. Sunyan Water's eyes light up red with anger. He thinks yes, damn, another one. A huge periton with burning eyes rushes to attack, releasing its claws. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is minus 8655. Anna's liking level is 250 points. Selena's liking level for him is 100. Evelyn's liking level is 0. Sunyan Water realizes that he is facing a mutated peritonium. He thinks that although it is the same stage, the monster that has been motivated has a bigger body, and the speed and strength are superior to the existing ones. Sunyan Water says that this peritonium will be more difficult than the others. The monster rushes at him to attack. The dragon hits him with a pillar of fire. The periton rushes into the attack, thrusting forward sharp claws. He aims at Sunyan Water's neck and wounds him with one claw. Sunyan Water understands that his opponent is fast. A drop of sweat rolls down his temple. Periton rushes into battle again, thrusting his claws forward. Anna, with tears in her eyes, shouts to Mr. Dragon to be careful. The monster bites the dragon's wing, tearing it apart. Sunyan Water growls in pain. He flies off to the side, thinking to himself about what the hell. His wings lost their balance after the attack. 
Periton rushes after him, rushing rapidly towards his opponent. Sunyan Water squints his eyes angrily and shouts to his opponent, fuck him. Sunyan Water uses the technique of a hair kicking a kite. This is a deadly movement in Washu, namely a kick with two legs in the stomach. The peritoneum opens its mouth and screams in pain. He raises his head and lets out a roar, from which stones fly to the side. Sunyan Water attacks him with fire. A monstrous explosion thunders, Sunyan Water flies away. Anna, terrified, calls Mr. Dragon and sitting on Hannah's back, fly faster to where her master falls. Hannah shouts to her well. They land at the crash site of Sunyan Water, who lies unconscious with his tongue sticking out and his eyes closed. Anna asks Mr. Dragon why he is fine. She asks about why it's bleeding. Sunyan Water opens one eye slightly, hearing his name. Anna, with tears in her eyes, bends down to him and asks Mr. Dragon not to die. He gets up and starts waving his paws, telling Anna not to cry. He's not dead, she can see that he's okay. Anna cries, saying that he is bleeding. He tells her it's bullshit. He's just hungry. Sunyan Water continues, saying that he will eat and everything will be fine. Anna wipes away her tears, asking if what he says is true. The system sends Sunyan Water a notification with congratulations. He defeated the mutated monster. His reward for completing the quest is 500 points, one black core. Sunyan Water carefully examines the resulting black core. He thinks to himself that it is good that there is still a takeover. Not only can he not speed up recovery, but he can increase strength with growth. It goes to the body of the peritoneum to absorb it. The bodies of other elephants are lying in the cave. There is a sound. One of the peritons raises his head, sniffing. He rushes to attack Anna, who is standing with her back to him and does not notice anything. He grabs her with powerful paws and lifts her into the air. Anna screams in horror. Sunyan Water raises her head, seeing that Anna has been grabbed and shouts for her. He attacks the peritoneum with fire, releasing it into the air. He unclenches his paw, squeezing Anna. She plummets down, closing her eyes in horror and calling for Lord Dragon. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is minus 8155. Anna's liking level is 250 points. Selena's liking level for him is 100. Evelyn's liking level is 0. Anna falls down rapidly. She falls right into the swamp, on which the face appears. There is a splash. Anna emerges from the water, saying in a startled voice that she is alive. She rakes the water with her hand, rising up and saying that the water is so pleasant. I wish Mr. Dragon was here. Anna smiles. She sees how energy begins to swirl out of the water in front of her, rising up. Anna asks about who is here and let him come out. A silhouette emerges from the water, which informs that it is so joyful that finally someone has found this place. Anna asks fearfully about who is in front of her. The silhouette turns into a beautiful girl who smiles and says that she is the keeper of the great elven spring. She reports that her powers are great, but it seems that something terrible is limiting them. Anna asks about the fact that her sister is in front of her. Tears are streaming down her cheeks. She screams that you are the sister. She asks if she is alive. The guardian of the elven spring hugs Anna by the shoulders and with a smile answers her that she is not her sister. In Anna's memories, she can only assume this appearance. Anna looks at the keeper's hands in fright. The girl continues, telling Anna to forget the suffering. The girl bends down to Anna and kisses her on the lips. Anna opens her eyes wide in amazement. She is surrounded by magic-soaked water that flows around her. Anna sinks to the bottom. She sits in the depths, looking around and admiring the fact that there are so many treasures at the bottom. Sunyan Water is flying in the sky, calling Anna. She looks up at the sky, waves to him and shouts to Mr. Dragon that she is here. He immediately sinks down in front of her. The system evaluates Anna's condition. Her condition is still ailing. She has 62 days to live. But the elven power appeared, the duration is 3 months. Anna also studied the water ball spell and the light spell on her own. Her abilities, supreme harmony with the elements of water, supreme harmony with the elements of light, incomparable beauty, beautiful figure, fragrance. Sunyan Water opens his mouth in shock, thinking about what this elven power means. He does not understand what kind of incomprehensible crap it is. The elven power not only cancelled out all the negative effects, but also added so many abilities. Sunyan Water he asks Anna how she is and what happened to her. Anna replies that everything is fine. She met her sister. Sunyan Water looks around, thinking about Anna's sister and realizing that his sister-in-law has come. Aloud, he asks about where her sister is. Anna rushes to him, telling Mr. Dragon that he is so worried about her. She hugs the dragon by the muzzle, embarrassed. Sunyan Water is also confused. He replies with a smile that of course he is worried. 
Anna pulls away from him and looking at his muzzle, tells Mr. Dragon that let all liars eat a thousand needles. There are needles, this is Taiwanese slang, they say this to a liar is punishment. The system sends a notification to Sunyan Water that Anna Hathaway's sympathy has increased by 500 points. Her current level is 300 points. The system congratulates the host that he has reached the third level of sympathy. He gets a top level takeover. The level of special skills can be immediately upgraded. The system congratulates the owner, who receives 5,000 system points. The absorption of the highest level means that the absorbed game can increase growth without increasing age. Also different materials can lead to different effects. For example, by absorbing iron ore, Sunyan water will increase the iron content in the scales. Sunyan water's eyes light up happily. He is delighted that he has received the highest absorption and 5,000 system points. The system also informs him that the loan has been paid. The debt is 3155 points. Sunyan Water, disappointed, asks the system to wait. Smiling, he offers the system to negotiate and asks it to reset his credit. The system responds to the owner that this is a violation of the rules. Sunyan Water angrily thinks about what the system tells him about the rules. Isn't his whole existence a violation of the rules? If other players find out that he has system files, then what will happen? The system responds to the owner so that he please does not do stupid things. Sunyan Water continues, telling the system that if she is not mistaken, then she is cheating. The system doesn't know how to respond to this. The system informs Sunyan Water that his current score is minus 8155. Anna's liking level is 300 points. Selena's liking level for him is 100. Evelyn's liking level is 0. Sunyan Water laughs and tells the system that they have all been reading. He continues, saying that why don't they hang themselves yet? Sunyan Water asks the system that it will really be fun. She tells him that whatever it is, it's not an exam with an open book. An exam with an open book is an exam in which, when preparing an answer, it is allowed to use reference literature. But the system continues, saying that looking at the hardships of Sunyan Water, it can change its debt to a phased modification plan. Sunyan Water asks what a step-by-step -step modification plan is, since he has not encountered such a thing and has no idea what it is. The system responds to him that it is a system based on the orientation of the modifications of the host. It divides the modification plan into time segments. In each segment a payment is made for the costs of part of the modifications. Sunyan Water finds this option not bad. He understands that this is an installment payment. At least compared to the Exploiter Zhu, he has more debt. Exploiter Zhu is a negative character in a Cultural Revolution era short story. Sunyan Water squints his eye and asks the system if there are any percentages there. The system responds to him that of course not. He can already use the plan, since he has paid part of the debt. Sunyan Water responds to the OK system. He thinks to himself that his opponent is too young to compete with him. Anna bends down to one of the chests and calls Sunyan Water to look into the chest. There are amazing treasures there. Sunyan Water opens one of the chests with his paw. There are skeletal remains lying there, from which a cadaverous smell emanates. He's thinking about what the hell it is. Sunyan Water shouts at Anna not to open the trunks. Anna is standing in front of two open chests. In one of them there is a purple spell book of water magic. Another chest holds a purple light magic spell book. Anna turns to Sunyan Water, telling Mr. Dragon that he said something. She didn't hear it. Sunyan Water is amazed by her findings, and tells her that it's okay, she should continue. Sunyan Water thinks about what a freebie it is. He thinks about why it seems to him that Anna has the luck of the main character. He asks the system if it is sure that Anna is not the main character. The system asks the host to be calm. Anna opens another chest and calls Mr. Dragon to come to her as soon as possible. She asks about what it is. Sunyan Water looks at the fact that Anna has found a level 3 fire core. He gets very upset thinking that the system is asking him to be calm. Tears flow from his eyes when he thinks that he put his life to get cores, and Anna just opens the chest here. Sunyan Water thinks that it looks like he is a loser. The system responds to him that the owner has always been one. Sunyan Water asks what, his eyes light up with an unkind red fire. The system responds that it is nothing. She just said that there was a system in his body. He just needs to follow the rules, and he will definitely become a great hero. No, not even the great dragon. Sunyan Water thinks about the rules. He understands that there are a lot of oddities here. If he had been in an internet cafe at the beginning, then the water would have got on the wiring of the girl sitting next to him and then that girl would have died. Sunyan Water thinks further that then it would be possible to pierce the pelvis of the dying Anna. 
but next to her there is the same dying dragon, then it will be easier to get his heart. You just need to remove all the buffs. The system clears its throat and asks the host not to try to guess. She asks him to believe in himself, he is in the heart of the world, at the end of the universe. Sunyan Water remembers the inventory in the store. He asks the system what she wants to say, that the fact that all the things in the store are women's is so that he believes in himself. The system tells him that it seems the owner is talking business. She continues, saying that the cancellation of the loan is possible. The current score of Sunyan Water is zero. He wipes his sweat and thinks about what a surprise this is. Hannah comes down to him from heaven. She lands in front of him and falls to her knees. Hannah tells Sunyan Water that she thanks the host. All her tribesmen are saved. She took a ram to his lair. Sunyan Water replies to her that he knows. He tells Hannah to go ahead, saying that he and Anna will leave soon. Hannah answers him well master. Anna smiles at these words. In the village, a man is heard shouting to be listened to. This is shouted by a guy who continues with the words that there is a real dragon in the silver forest. Other players laugh at these words. One of them answers him, calling him a coward and asking about where the dragon is there. He didn't even see a rabbit there. The other guy laughs, saying that he was probably scared of the trees. One of the girls continues saying that he also destroyed her house to build his stupid tower. The guy shouts in anger that how to explain the fact that Gary and Chelsea did not return. The player mocking him replies that this is how they saw the treasure, so they did not return. Or those two stooges, like him, died of fright. Here their skirmish is stopped by another player who tells them to stop. They really need to do a search. A thousand people will follow him into the forest to check this information. The guy clenches his fists in anger in response, thinking that since they are all laughing at him and do not believe him, they will all die there. A status window pops up, which informs that this is a top-level takeover. Ingested game can increase growth without increasing age. Also, different materials can lead to different effects. For example, by absorbing iron ore, he will be able to increase the iron content in the scales in this way. This makes the dragon think for a while, as he enthusiastically reads what appeared in front of him, and then picks up a small stone from somewhere, lifting it to his face and thinking that, apparently, once absorbing materials, he can pump. It looks like it's going to be pretty cool. If iron ore is useful, then stone must be, too. He instantly throws this very stone into his mouth, starting to crunch this rock, which makes a crackling sound, before the hero spits everything out abruptly and begins to spit with all his saliva and stick out his tongue, saying how disgusting everything is, and the stone is completely bland. The status window pops up again which is indicated by a notification and informs that a rock of 537 grams has been absorbed by it. The rock will strengthen the scales by 0.0001%, the body will petrify by 0.0002%, but the speed will decrease by 0.0005%. This instantly makes him think and scratch his chin, noticing the last point. The body will become petrified and the speed will drop. And damn, it seems, you don't have to eat anything. But then he frowns and looks away, concluding in his head that he seems to have managed to understand exactly how top-level absorption works. Therefore, it is worth looking at the influence of different types now. When he manages to absorb a couple of dozen coins, loudly crunching them and ringing, a notification pops up again with a characteristic sound, which says that he managed to absorb gold in the amount of 36 grams. The breed will strengthen the scales by 0.00008% but the resistance to fire was increased by 0.00012%. Then he has to put some kind of silver glass or even a glass in his mouth, immediately chewing, which is why a notification pops up again and informs him that 36 grams of silver has been absorbed. The breed will strengthen the scales by 0.00008%, but the resistance to poisons was increased by 0.00012%. Then there is a notification again where they write that a mountain wolf was absorbed in the amount of one piece, and the hunger time from this was increased by 0.0002%. But then he jumps up abruptly and starts screaming in pain, sticking out his tongue, which he accidentally bit and from which blood was now gushing in full force, which naturally got into his mouth. Here a notification pops up again with a characteristic sound, informing that the meat of the black dragon in the amount of 50 grams was absorbed. Now the purity of the dragon genes belonging to Korn Naorid Waters Parternak has been increased. He just grabs his painful tongue and thinks about what the hell and what kind of root is this at all. The head of the dragons. And besides, judging by what has been said, they are relatives. If it is a male, the dragon continues to ponder, then it can be his great-great-great-great-grandfather. If it is a female, 
then, most likely, great-great-great-grandmother. The first stage of experiments has been carried out. He finally concludes. Only gold and silver ores have no side effects, both can strengthen the scales. Gold increases resistance to fire, and silver increases resistance to poisons. It's good that there are silver mines developed by the Soglavsi near the lair, but unfortunately, there is insanely little gold. Then, as soon as possible, he will go to the kingdom of people, walk through their treasury. And if he can win, he will swallow it in front of everyone. And if it turns out that he can't, then he will swallow and run away. Isn't that a great plan? At least, he assures himself of it. But then the girl who stands behind him sharply calls out to Mr. Dragon and asks him to look at what she has there, and then throws up her hands with a wide and satisfied smile, in which there were a variety of books and even some writing with crystals and minerals. She cheerfully shouts that she found it all in the chests, but she just doesn't know if her finds are useful. His jaw drops as he looks at her with wide eyes of surprise. Of course, isn't she too lucky? After some time, when the moon and stars were already shining over the dragon's lair, Hippolytus comes to him, who calls out to the owner and sits down on his knee over him, saying that he did everything as he asked. He and the others spent these few days in the forest quietly watching where the heroes were moving, opening chests, and filling them, then hiding them in the forest again. He smiles sweetly and lifts his clawed paw slightly, answering his friend that everything is wonderful in this case, and then asks if they did not put expensive things in the chests, to which he looks at him attentively, slightly pursing his lips and looking not at all impressed, telling him to be calm, because they just put some pathetic fried guts with stuffing that will definitely be able to amuse the heroes. Meanwhile, he himself has an image of a man shouting at someone, outraged how they could serve stewed guts in brown sauce, since they taste just awful. This is indicated in such a way that in Chinese MasterChef one participant served this dish without washing most of the intestines in order to preserve their authentic taste. Naturally, the dish tasted worse than ever, and the expression on the judge's face immediately after eating this something dispersed into funny pictures. And the dragon himself almost cries to himself, because he did not think that Hippolytus was such a pervert. And then suddenly another girl descends to them on wings who again calls out to her master, informing him that there are movements near the borders of the Silver Forest. The dragon looks up at her as she continues to talk about them finally coming. Apparently, the players can't sit still at all that they are ready to fall for something like this. And then, for some reason, their owner gets into a real rage, clearly dissatisfied with such news, instantly frowning and opening his mouth wide, flashing bright red eyes and threatening them with huge claws, calling out to the Ipoliclea and the Beast Scrolls, ordering them to send all the fighters to the Flamethrower Tower. And then he switches to High Shui Man, saying that let the Kuras may prepare traps for an ambush, and the Knolls and Boar Spearmen should just start preparing for the offensive. Immediately, everyone jumps up to him, literally everyone he listed, before shouting that they are ready to fully carry out his orders, to which their owner only frowns and flashes his red eyes, simultaneously grinning and shouting to the players in the void that, they say, let the game begin. Meanwhile, the status window shows that the current score is zero, Anna's liking level is 300, Selena's liking level is 100 and Evelyn's liking level is 0. And also, the players are already making their way through the Silver Forest, while one of them asks the other not to talk about monsters, claiming that there are not even pheasants here. But only the guy is not ready to agree with his interlocutor, because he turns his head to him and shouts discontentedly to be careful, because if something happens unnatural, then there are certainly evil spirits, and then warns him to take better care of traps, to which the latter only grins in a relaxed way and calls out to him in the same way, informing him that there are no intelligent monsters here, since they can then set traps. But the answer comes out of nowhere, as several snakes immediately pounce on them, opening their mouths wide and heading towards them, before they even pick up two girls from the spot, pinching their mouths and squeezing their limbs and not only, while they are trying to scream and even start crying desperately, trying to get out of their strong the grip. And it seems that this is noticed by the hero, who turns his head back and opens his eyes in surprise, wondering if the interlocutor has heard any terrible sounds, to which the purple-haired man only puts his hands on his sides and asks in response what other strange sounds. And then he grins, covering his eyes and informing that if he is going to be a coward, then it's time for him to get out. But he clearly does not realize that a very characteristic silhouette with bright and red eyes is sticking out of the bushes behind him, which do not promise anything good from the word at all. And at the same moment, a knoll or an Ipoliclius pounces on his head, pinching someone else's crown between his powerful jaws, while the victim in his mouth then manages to finish from here, giving a thumbs up, while his body begins to gradually dissolve into small particles of the system. 
and then the rest of the group immediately notices how the gnolls are running towards them with all their stupidity, opening their mouths and showing sharp fangs, from which the unfortunate teenagers have everything pinched up and they just open their mouths wide, trying to run. But nothing happens to them, because they are almost all monsters are captured, beating them with a ringed bat on the head, then just scratching with claws, then giving them a slap on the back of the head, as if there was nothing wrong with it, while the guys are desperately begging for help and salvation, crying with might and main. Meanwhile, the guy himself swings his sword and shouts into the void why it is so difficult to defeat such simple gnolls, to which, of course, he does not receive an answer, but a system window pops up that congratulates him on the first murder of the monster, for which he receives 500 aggression points, and his own level has increased to 30. And then the remaining part, which managed to somehow hide its presence and existence from the cruel gnolls, immediately begin to run away from the battle, shouting to themselves that it's time to tear the claws while the hero turns his head to them and asks with a loud shout that they wait and do not run away, but fight with a weapon in his hands, but apparently it doesn't have any effect, because he clenches his jaws and growls, calling them all idiots, clearly dissatisfied with everything that has happened. Meanwhile, another group is in the gorge, outside the Dragon Ridge, or at least they manage to escape. The guy proudly raises his hand and orders all those who follow him so desperately, like a crowd of sheep, to stop, because it seems that they were not caught up. And for a brief moment he thinks, scratching his chin and coming to the conclusion that these monsters are very aggressive, and they were driven only here. So are there or could there be much scarier monsters ahead? And then one of the guys with a mohawk points his finger up, ordering everyone to look and asking what is so long on the rock. And it looks like a tower or some unknown artifact. Immediately, a girl immediately steps forward and stretches out her hand, which immediately lights up with a blue aura, which stretches forward with swirling rays, while she herself screams that she uses a recognition spell. And the swirling sphere tends forward and upward, reporting that there is an ordinary vine and ordinary foliage that wrap around this something but it itself is not recognized in any way. The girl is no less surprised by this than everyone else, while the guy himself thoughtfully continues to press his fingers to his chin, and then adds that this is very strange before asking her to check again, to which she immediately obeys and shoots her own recognizing ball again, which makes him instantly show what is hidden behind the whole this greenery, and similar new information makes them all realize that something is wrong here. One of the teenagers immediately notices that there is a tower of archers here, so it turns out, does a feudal lord really live here? The guy himself opens his mouth wide, shouting out how is this even possible, because this is the land of monsters in general. But then a recent acquaintance appears from somewhere, who proudly folds his arms on his chest and complains that they have clerics and magicians, which means they are not very worried or there is something to be afraid of, which is why the others immediately pick up this idea. But they didn't have to rejoice for a long time, because literally at the same second something sharp flies right in front of the young man's nose, which is why he only opens his eyes in amazement, looking at this object, which subsequently also left a plume and a whistle in the air, and then completely crashed into a tree, causing everyone present to have their mouths already open. It's probably not every day that you can doubt whether a thing that looks like fireworks will kill you today. But the arrogant and the most pretentious here just shrugs his shoulders, trying to hide his sweat from fear, and telling the others, they say, do they see, because everything happened as he originally intended. It didn't even work out, the arrow was rough, not a single plus, but the others don't seem to share it at all thoughts and fleeting joy from avoiding death. And as soon as the tip of the arrow, which was indecently similar to fireworks, suddenly abruptly opened the back cover with a characteristic sound, causing huge clouds of green smoke to suddenly appear from the bowels of the arrow, which spread at breakneck speed, and one of the teenagers immediately closes his mouth, shouting to the others that it is poisonous gas and immediately ordering them to run away, but cover their nose and mouth, to which the latter only open it wide, clearly in shock that even something like this can kill them. But as soon as they raise their heads, they notice that not only those strange arrows are flying in their direction from the sky itself, but also roasted and set on fire carrots that look completely unfriendly, which makes them immediately open their eyes in surprise from shock, before they instantly begin to run away. Who were, hiding from the big explosions that were produced from those same carrots or from the poisonous gas, which made them almost cry and not die on the spot, while they themselves also asked for help and tried to hide anywhere. 
Meanwhile, a dragon is watching all this in the distance, laughing a little and praising himself, saying how good it is that he has improved the flamethrower tower, increased the rate of fire and power, and also added different types of arrows. And then Anna appears behind him, to whom he immediately pays attention, while she smiles sweetly at him and runs closer, stretching out her hand, which immediately forms a sphere, and then calls out to Mr. Dragon and asks if she needs help, since she just learned the spells of the water ball and light. He opens his eyes in surprise and immediately turns to her, worriedly saying that the girl should not, especially since it is better for her and Selina to stay in the cave since it is much safer this way. And there is a real rush going on below. At one point, the teenager stretches out his arm and orders everyone else not to panic before switching to the magicians and advising them to form a shield and the clerics should start healing. And it's not surprising, but many really took their hands and heads, which is why he soon found himself under the protection and support of the Hillers, while he thinks to himself with a grin that everything worked and now all that remains is to make sure that they are not aimed directly at them and then we can assume that they will stand. That's just, unfortunately, the plan, apparently, is simply not destined to come true, since a huge silhouette of a dragon flies over them whose wings literally cover the moon, which causes panic to immediately pass through the crowd and they just look up in surprise, continuing to shout what it is and answering each other that there really is a dragon here, and it seems to be completely black. And in an instant, the image of a terrible and evil monster is immediately built up, which shows them not only its sharp claws, which it may well use, but also fangs, before it shouts and welcomes these insignificant bugs in its possessions. And the guy who is standing below begins to tremble uncharacteristically, clutching the hilt of his sword and opening his mouth wide in shock, while circles of blue aura form around him, and he himself notices that this dragon, apparently, has an aura of Kai, which no longer promised anything good. And the arrogant one, who only recently was rude and snarled at everyone, suddenly clenched his jaws so sharply that his veins swelled up, apparently from anger, while he thinks to himself, what does it mean that this coward did not lie about the dragon after all? But the other only tightens his grip on the hilt of his huge sword and thinks only that it is just a young dragon and nothing more, before his weapon tip begins to glow with a bright red light, almost fiery, like his eyes, while he continues to think about what he brought with him this time anyone who can quickly increase their strength. And if he kills this black dragon now, he will become the best player in this world. The status window is displayed again, which notifies that the current number of points is zero. Anna's sympathy level is 300 units, Selena's sympathy level is 100, but Evelyn's sympathy level is still at zero. The dragon, meanwhile, begins to dive down sharply, thrusting forward its fiery, large and sharp claws, opening its mouth wide and shouting that this bunch of garbage is preparing for its death, while everything continues to spray fire, and the guy who is below turns to his friends and advises them to be careful, shouting that the dragon attacks, and then ordering everyone to hide, while teenagers can only look at it all in surprise, and the monster itself meanwhile uses dragon breath, from which a large and fiery sphere immediately begins to form in his mouth, from which sparks radiate in all directions. And at the same second, he spews out a huge stream of flame, a whole plume, from which, probably, an ordinary person would not have managed to survive, but instead of multiple murders, he fails to kill anyone, because at that very moment the guy substitutes his weapon, spinning it and forcing the flames to disperse along its perimeter. That's just, it seems, everything is not so simple, because at some second he just throws away someone's lifeless and burnt body, while he continues to look at the monster with a grin and reports that the dragon has just flown to the very bottom, and has already used his breath. The player concludes that he is even very angry, and if they all want to live, then let them listen to his command. And as if to confirm his words, he presses his finger to the window that appears, on which the inscription says to open the command channel, while he continues to order everything with the same evil grin, saying that let all the magicians disperse for a joint attack, covering the soldiers, and then let them go back for a surprise attack. And in an instant, he takes out a couple of cones from somewhere, while the system reports that he drank a potion of strength, which doubled his strength. Then he drank a speed potion, which caused this characteristic to also increase together, and then protection, in order to double its performance. Soon, the girl magicians all gather in one direction, pointing the ends of their staffs directly at the dragon which caused blue sparks to form on them, which looked like spheres, then on the other side, or it was other magicians who used their fire powers with might and main, shooting flames from the ends of their staffs, desperately squinting and opening their mouths, while the black dragon just continues to stand still with an unreadable expression of the muzzle, since he was not wounded at all, neither by fire nor by water, and he himself innocently asks them, 
they say, and is this an attack, but it's too weak. But then he gives up and says that so be it, he will smash everyone at once and kill them. But then, suddenly out of nowhere, a guy with a sword appears behind him, who jumps up and brings his weapon to strike at the very back, calling out to the dragon and wishing him only death, which is why the latter only throws a glance at him, and then quite calmly ruins the plans of teenagers, starting to pour out a bright light, which is why the latter even slightly it stops, and this flash only gets brighter and spreads faster, while everyone around is trying to close their eyes and somehow cover up, shouting that their eyes hurt from this, and it's shining so brightly that it's just terrible. But the dragon, it would seem, is completely useless since he just turns his head and looks in surprise at what happened while the dust and fog are spreading around him, gradually dissipating, and then he manages to notice that the player who so desperately and confidently rushed at him was suddenly pressed against the ground as some kind of bright grid completely being out. And suddenly, out of nowhere, Anna and another girl appear, while the latter smiles broadly at him and waves her hand, calling out to Mr. Dragon and informing him that they have come to help, while all the other heroes only look in complete shock at the unexpected addition to the opposing team, while they notice to themselves that they have lost, completely, and the others agree, shouting that they will not take them by force, and then immediately order them to run away from here as quickly as possible, but the dragon himself does not think so. He flies up on his wings slightly upwards until his body gradually begins to light up with a bright and red flame, and he himself says with unusual severity that, fortunately or unfortunately, it will not be so easy to escape from them. And from somewhere at the same moment, other monsters appear, barking loudly or hissing like snakes, pouncing on the players, waving their spiked bats, which makes the latter literally run away in fear again, shouting loudly and begging for help while they all almost have tears in their eyes from such an unexpected the appearance and complexity of the task. Snakes pounce on the rest of the group, also forcing many to huddle in fear, and start running away wherever they look, while they even start calling for their mother, trying hard to avoid dangerous monsters who tried to kill them with might and main, but also completely discourage any desire to continue. A couple of players, fortunately, still manage to escape to the plane. True, all that was left of their group were three people who were trying to catch their breath, but then one guy abruptly raises his head up a little and asks the others in surprise why it suddenly became so dark while someone's huge shadow was on top of them, which did not bode well. Actually, this is what happens, because the black dragon literally hangs over them and opens its door wide, from where fire and dragon breath come out in an instant with a furious sweat, which not only burn, but completely burn all the survivors, as if they were nothing more to him than some ants. Meanwhile, another status window pops up, which congratulates its owner on his first victory against the players and his reward for this is 2,000 points. With the murder of each player, he gets 5 points, this time he managed to get 49.95 points for killing all players. After some time, he returns to the dragon cave again, still surrounded by a fiery aura that continued to accumulate around him and as soon as he manages to land, he immediately opens his eyes in surprise when Hippolytus appears next to him who looks at him admiringly and almost waves his tail, calling out to the owner and loudly announcing that they won, and then points in the direction of the bound guy, who also had it in his mouth, before finally wondering what to do with the remaining prisoner, which the hero really thinks about, stroking the chin of his mouth and at first thinking that this cheater actually wanted to deceive him, before issuing his verdict, ordering him to tear off his limbs and then lock him up. This immediately causes an appropriate reaction, as the teenager instantly begins to twitch in the ropes, and with might and main to bite and mumble something, bursting into his pathetic tears and trying to say something, or escape, but then the dragon looks at him in surprise, noticing that something is wrong. What is it? What is this stun? And then he calls out to the system and asks to check his health, which immediately pops up a window that informs him that his full name is Sunyan Waters. Now he has level 32, that is, the fourth rank, level 31 minus 40. Meanwhile, he himself does not seem to feel very well, since his eyes are unfocused, and then he himself falls forward with a crash, which is why the remaining monsters, who have already managed to crowd, only look at their master in surprise, clearly not expecting anything like this. Even Anna herself jumps up, opening her eyes and covering her mouth with her hands, calling out to the gentleman and asking confusedly what is wrong with him, while a notification is displayed again, which says that the current number of points is as much as 6995, and the levels of Anna, Selina and Evelyn's sympathies remained at the same level, 300, 100 and 0. The girl immediately runs up to the dragon with concern and sits down near his huge muzzle, putting her hands on it and immediately trying to examine him, 
clearly being very scared by what happened literally just now. And then Selena joins her, who is surprised to notice that, they say, the dragon was not wounded, to which Anna instantly reacts, asking if she understood correctly, while she presses her palm to her mouth and tries to hold back her tears, but then immediately loses them, pressing her chest directly to someone else's muzzle, putting his head on her lap, which is why Sunyan even blushes in a sense, why the magician is interested in what she is doing, while the elf calmly and with a happy smile replies that, according to their elven legends, when they put their head on their knee, then it cures very well. Moreover, that's how Mr. Dragon woke up last time, and immediately all the girls, apparently really believing in such legends, begin to join her, soon plastering the poor hero from all sides, stroking here and there, while some serious Hippolytus suddenly thinks, stroking himself under the chin, while still uttering his guesses aloud. There are no signs that he is fainting, and light is dissipating from his body. Could this mean that this is then the ascent of the true dragon described in the precepts of the ancestors? He immediately admires this very possible ascent, blushing and looking towards his master with his mouth open, literally glowing with happiness, to which the girls immediately react by turning their heads to him and immediately asking if they understood everything correctly, continuing to sit near the dragon before the elf finally rises from his seat and thoughtfully presses his palm to his cheek, adding that they absolutely do not want to disturb Mr. Dragon. But then, as if sensing that they are talking about him now, the hero suddenly opens one eye and instantly calls Ippolyclea to himself, ordering Tom to approach him, as he urgently needs to tell his friend something, to which he immediately reacts, slightly surprised to open his mouth, but then his face changes in a second to a more admiring and enthusiastic one when he looks with awe at the black dragon, thinking that really the owner wants to have him serve beside him. Wow. And of course, the monster instantly squats down on the side of waters, still continuing to smile, clearly being sure that now he will definitely be assigned something important. And if he is not assigned, then working for the owner himself and serving him was praise in itself. But only when he sits down close enough for the dragon to finally whisper something, then his face immediately turns red with horror and complete incomprehension when he tells the beast to roll away from here. Otherwise he will take it and eat it. Not the nicest thing to hear, right? and Ippolyclius immediately begins to run away as far as possible, looking back only nervously at the completely surprised girls, before immediately starting to come up with all sorts of excuses, saying that he just accidentally remembered that the owner ordered him to lead his relatives so that they set traps around the human village. Yes, and gnolls, beast crows and curasmae should come to cover them. And then, after all, the hero shows signs of life, adjusting his head closer to Anna, smiling gently and informing her that in fact, the dragon's ascent is very dangerous and probably he will not wake up. Which is why the latter immediately grabs his nose with concern and almost cries, wondering if her master is really the dragon still won't wake up. To which he sticks out his tongue and sweetly runs it over someone else's cheek, wiping and licking the tears of the elf, who immediately smiles happily while he himself says that this is a mandatory stage in the life of dragons. Because during hibernation they gain knowledge, they get stronger, and then Sunyan literally falls headfirst to the ground, causing a loud roar, before he begins to mutter almost sleepily that they should not worry and just wait until he wakes up. To which Anna just sits silently next to him and then falls down and presses her whole body against his shiny scales on his neck, hugging and saying that she will definitely wait for him, and then so sweetly and simply adds that she will be able to protect him by snuggling closer to him. Meanwhile, in the village of novices number 6, for some reason, a whole huge crowd of people is gathering, three of whom were on horseback, moving along the roads and clearly heading for one of the doors, which, by the way, was followed by very strange sounds, because there someone was desperately shouting for the other to stop, since he had already taken it out, and one of the riders notices this, clearly not expecting something like this. Meanwhile, in the room, the girl sends air kisses to her brother, deeply thanking him for so many points of aggression and saying how much she loves him, while the window of the system is displayed in front of her, to which she soon turns her attention opening her eyes in surprise, since it said that the removal is not it is possible, since she is the only person with this information. The dragon has gone into hibernation, he is in the depths of the silver forest, so she is asked to go there faster and kill him. But it turns out that this is not a system at all, but someone's messages, from which the pink-haired woman immediately resents, folding her arms on her chest and asking herself what kind of stupid messages these are, and then asks the system to delete it, which requires a separate confirmation but she doesn't have time to give it, because for some reason the door to the room begins to open, showing first a hand, 
and then a silhouette with a staff, which gradually penetrates more and more into the room and informs that they sent the royal army to the Black Dragon, thinking that he spends the night here. From this strange visit, the pink-haired girl only opens her eyes in surprise and looks in that direction, covering her mouth with her hand, before her emotionality becomes even greater when suddenly a whole horde of status windows pops up that make her even jump on the spot. The system asks you to pay attention to the fact that the plot character Mason entered the territory of the newcomer's village managed by her and she has three options for the development of events. Option number one suggests killing the Mason character and replacing the main quest. After completing the quest, she will receive a huge amount of aggression points. Option two offers to help the character Mason wait for the completion of the main quest, after which she will receive aggression points depending on her own participation. And option 3 offers simply not to participate in the main quest at all. The girl, considering all these options, does not even know what exactly she should choose, even thinks about it decently. Since it says both about killing dragons and about the character of Maisont, it turns out that there was truth in those messages after all. In that case, she turns towards the door with a sly and slightly malicious grin, slightly covering her mouth with her hand, before finally getting up from her seat and walking towards the man, not at all shy of her frank attire and subsequently calling out to the gracious sir to inform him that she is the head of this village, and then cordially welcome. Meanwhile, in some corridors, some half-naked knight just starts getting up in all sorts of poses, bragging about his body and telling himself that what perfect pectoral muscles he has, and then notices that there is clearly not enough girl here and, as if by his order, a pink-haired one bursts in, to which he instantly turns his attention, opening his eyes in surprise, while she immediately begins to approach him, pressing her palm to her chest and looking somehow too pathetic and pitiful, showing her tears with might and mane and calling out to the dear knight begging him to save her from something. And it's also very frank, why the guy just opens his mouth wide and starts to blush insanely, even stuttering, asking Melinda, they say, didn't she communicate with the supreme magician Masont about the basics of magic, but she doesn't really listen, immediately approaching his chest, on which she puts her hands and everything tacky agrees, adding that here is Masont. He kind of beats her, but she doesn't listen to him and just wants to kill this magician. He only blushes more from such an answer and such proximity, while he frowns and immediately exclaims that she means it. Has this old man completely lost his fear, to raise such a beauty, to which the girl only clings to him more and uses her seduction spell, again turning to her dear knight and so sweetly convincing him that he will definitely be able to protect her, to which the latter already has hearts in his eyes, that, apparently, it indicates that the spell went well, while he immediately convinces her not to worry because she is his woman, after all, so he definitely won't let the old man climb to her, and then instantly orders her to wait here, since he will go and kill him, and into the room where the magician was sitting over a cup of water, suddenly the door opens with the help of his foot, which makes the character even jump up in his place and pour out all the water, opening his eyes in surprise, before turning his head to the one who appeared in the doorway, and then asks Blade what he is doing while demonstratively squeezes his fist and threatens the knight, while the latter only frowns and tightens his grip on the blade of his sword, calling out to Mason himself and speaking about him quite unflatteringly, saying that in Andreas, raping girls is punishable by death. This only makes the magician even more surprised at what he is accused of and what will happen, which is why he immediately asks in high tones what kind of rape of girls is and what kind of nonsense he is talking about at all. But the hand that immediately grabs him by the fabric of his robe does not let him finish, and then the knight and he pushes him sharply and quickly into the wall with the edge of his boot, which is why Maisant literally drives into the wall, while Blade himself frowns only harder and shouts that he understood everything perfectly well, what he did, while he is clearly not so friendly, but the magician himself is clearly not going to give up. He frowns and grabs his chest with one hand, trying to hold back the blood that gushes from his mouth, and turns the other back, which instantly makes a bright sphere appear in it, to which white lines of lightning stretch, while he hisses that since he is looking for death, then let him not blame him, and then use that the lightning spell itself. But as soon as he is going to use it, the sphere with lightning instantly disintegrates, leaving behind only small fragments of lightning. While the magician is only surprised and can only mutter and ask out loud why this spell did not work, which he immediately decides to use, pointing the tip of his sword at him, which makes the latter even horrified pressing himself harder against the wall, 
while the knight screams that he didn't even think that he was so hardy, and then starts laughing loudly, wishing that he would die as soon as possible, while Masont frowns and drills him with a look, squeezing his hand and saying, so that he would not forget that he came on the orders of King Andreas with a punitive expedition to the dragon, as if this fact would help him avoid death. But Melinda bursts into the room, who again calls out to her dear knight and says that this magician is generally so insignificant. How will he kill the dragon? Both men turn to her while she gets into an erotic pose again, stroking her breasts, and with a slight smile informing that if Blade kills him, they will go together with him. And naturally, she hopes for an appropriate reaction. But then Mason gets into the conversation, who points at her with his finger and almost turns over from fright, raising his leg at the same time, shouting that she is just a pathetic student of a magician, and she can't even be considered a magician. He is the great magician of the kingdom of Elland himself, and let this knight not dare to be seduced by the charms of this girl. To which the latter, by the way, literally reacts immediately, turning her head towards him and grinning broadly and then leaning closer, almost to the magician's face, the candle with all the necessary shapes that it is possible, before wondering if he drank soothing tea today. And if he drank, she still maybe do him a favor and add more. But Masont reacts quite unfriendly, which is understandable, so he immediately calls her a girl of easy virtue, literally growls what she is, this and that, and then sincerely wonders what she added to the water, which, by the way, was just in the mug that he dropped from the very beginning and which finally broke up, and after that he almost rushes at her when he doesn't get a proper answer, and even clenches his fist, clearly intending to hit the girl, and covers up that he will kill her at all. But she doesn't really react to such a circus, just turns sideways to him. She looks at him and smiles softly, as if she, to some extent, even felt sorry for him. But then a knight appears out of nowhere, who rushes at the magician, kicking him in iron armor right in his face, shouting that he should not dare to insult Melinda. And he looks terribly evil in general, clenched his teeth, but continued to drill him with his gaze, clearly intending to finish him right there. The man, who clearly did not expect this, begins to fall back and crashes to the floor with a loud thud, but the pink-haired one, who initially seemed completely defenseless, suddenly abruptly substitutes her dagger and sticks it right into the chest of the character, causing the latter's eyes to open wide in surprise, and he himself can only mutter that she was to blame for everything, and to call out to her, choking on her own blood. That's just that she herself continues to pretend to be different from everyone else, and even the whitest and fluffiest, which is why a second later she is already sticking to Blade's chest with might and main, laying her palms on it and almost with tears in her eyes shouting to her dear knight that this old man wants to kill her. And then she also begins to put pressure on pity with might and main, begging him to save her from all this, while the guy only blushes and still clenches his teeth. And literally after a couple of seconds, a huge sword enters the character's chest almost completely, which pierces the mason through, causing the latter to bleed violently, a tense expression on his face and, perhaps, instant death. And Melinda personally watches this picture completely silently, while the blood splashes from the sides and even gets on her face, gradually baking. And immediately, with a characteristic ringing, a status window appears in front of her, which informs her that she killed the main plot character of Mason. The powers of this magician have passed to her, and before the end of the main quest, within a week, she will be able to use them quite for herself. She also replaced the lead role of Mason in the main plot. After completing the plot, the girl will receive a huge amount of aggression points and will completely inherit the powers of this old man. But if she fails, she will receive a small amount of aggression and will lose the powers of the character. The goal of her quest has already been generated and this quest is the only one. It cannot be shared with anyone. The purpose of this very quest is a punitive expedition to the Black Dragon. And after a while, almost a whole horde marches along the forest, heading deeper with large and bright flags, being fully armed and ready for anything. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, a girl with wings appears, who noticed all this and decided to inform her master dragon, whom she calls immediately, and immediately informs him that a disaster has occurred and a human army is coming to them. He instantly looks up at her, opening his eyes wide and immediately asking how and what happened, while next to him is the same completely shocked Anna, who does not even know what to add, while the girl opposite them again exclaims that this is a human army, which should have already brought them at least into some feelings. The hero's current score is 6995, Anna's liking level is 300, Selena's liking level remains at 100, and Evelyn is at zero. The black dragon is located right in some place that was filled up to the sky with crystals that were purple or pink in color, sparkled brightly in the sun and in general, did not resemble any that had been seen so far. 
and he himself only continues to look around and asks himself, they say, is this really the same hereditary kingdom of sleep? Before he flaps his wings and soon begins to fold them little by little, straightening his hind legs and stretching them to the ground so that he can finally land, which the hero soon does and then, as soon as he felt at least something under his claws, he proudly climbs his head and slightly tenses up when he bumps his muzzle almost on the same crystal, which seemed to have only become brighter and looked wrong up close to be very distinctive, but still. And then a huge dragon appears in front of your eyes, lying on the ground with its huge paws folded. His eyes are glowing. He is red in color. He also has huge wings and a body. And this is Korn Naorid Waters Parternak. A hero sits down in front of him, who seems to be a complete bug compared to him. He immediately has a hundred questions in his head, by type, this is his ancestor, and if so, then, damn, a very good form. Sunyan is just about to call out to him, and, moreover, he addresses him in a very polite form, when immediately this very huge dragon looks at him with completely pure and blue eyes, telling him whose blood flows in him and someone else's, and, interestingly, very pure. He, apparently, communicates with him with the help of his thoughts, because he does not even open his mouth, although his words still sound. Waters says that he will grant him an incomparable legacy, let him live and expel them from their own ancient lands. And apparently, he is extremely confident in his words, since soon some small piece of crystal appears in front of them, which even looks more like a mineral, and even glows so brightly, which is why they both open their eyes in complete shock clearly not expecting something like this. At least, the hero is for sure, and this very crystal goes straight to his clawed paws, continuing to glow as brightly as he looks at him in surprise, and Waters SR finally continues his speech again, saying that everything is fine now and now he has to leave. The younger one, of course, is not very happy about it. The dragon instantly opens his eyes and raises his head. I open my mouth wide and cry out please for his ancestor to wait while he tries to call out to him in tension, and then adds that he has another question for him. But that's just the answer he, apparently, will not receive. Because at the same second, either a big explosion is heard, or he is simply sharply and violently struck by a bright and yellow ball lightning from which he jumps on the spot and immediately answers further to the side from the force of the blow, loudly shouting to his ancestor that he already has a fifth point from such a sick and apparently, it will not stop hurting in the future. And after a certain amount of time, Waters again finds himself near his shelter, and the forest, rubbing his ass, on which there was a burn and from which smoke is now pouring out with might and main, while he is dissatisfied and painfully hissing, rubbing it, while the crystal is still shining brightly in front of him, shimmering with different colors. Remembering everything that happened, he suddenly realizes that apparently, the Elder and the Red Dragon must have meant players by them, since he so fiercely asked to protect their territory. From this, he even has to involuntarily strain himself, while he thinks to himself that, of course, he will drive them away, they will not go anywhere from this, before surprise descends on him again when he finally manages to see what is around him. Sunyan immediately begins to quickly shake his head back and forth, trying to figure out where he is, and in the end, notices that this is a silver forest, so did he really manage to wake up and get out of the realm of dreams? But then why doesn't he see Anna or the others? These questions continue to spin in his head, until the dragon finally turns his gaze back to the crystal, which he managed to take away, continuing to conduct his monologue. This ancestor is really very original. Perhaps that Waters was female, and he realized it only now. In any case, she is very original. She just took him and dragged him here, now she has given him the opportunity to complete all the business, without further ado, just like a yo-yo, back and forth. I haven't told you what's inside that purple crystal yet. And finally, after finishing his inspection, the hero simply raises his huge paw, and sharply squeezes it on the mineral which is why it simply cracks and crumbles into smaller ones, and a characteristic crack is heard, and after that a bright glow appears at all, which immediately frames it with its red and yellow color. Immediately, the status window informs its owner that a century-old memory of the dragon family is being inherited, and he receives a special Tom legacy. There is also a password for breathing Lassionir, which is explained by the fact that with the help of a low voice he can distinguish all the life forms and landscapes surrounding him, as well as any disguise will disappear. Next comes Zyrkalzor, the power of inspiration, which is explained by the fact that with the help of a joyful shout or roar, he will be able to inspire his relatives, and under the effect of Tum, relatives will receive an enhancement of all abilities. During this time they will not be afraid of death, there are no side effects. Followed by Zunhalvik, the removal of armor. With the help of Tum, other things are broken, 
When the enemy is not on guard, armor can be removed and weapons can be taken away. And immediately, out of nowhere, suddenly a black and leather whip whistles sharply in the air, cutting through it, which does not bode well. Is it Anna? A girl in a very peculiar outfit, with this type of weapon looks not that scary or even outrageous, but quite the opposite. And there is also a satisfied grin on her face, while she continues, apparently, to look at the main character, holding a whip in her hand. Naturally, this causes a corresponding reaction in the dragon. He immediately sticks out his tongue, opens his mouth and eyes wide, looking at her almost with the pupils of hearts, drenching himself with saliva and loudly asking how he got here at all and why the hell is she dressed like that. But the girls only come closer to him, still grinning quite and wiggling their ears, before telling him that Anna, that is, she herself, came to help her brother with Tom training, and then calls out to Sunyan and asks if he likes it at all, to which the latter is only still he opens his mouth more, continues to literally stare at her, drenching himself with his dragon drool, and pronounces slightly languidly, and with a trembling voice that yes, he quite likes it. And then the elf raises her hand, in which there was just a whip, and then holds this very leather and erotic thing on his chin, forcing him to lift his head up, while she says that this is how it should be, then they agreed, and until he learns everything, he will not leave. Meanwhile, the hero blushed already, and then began to pour himself, swallowing loudly, which made his Adam's apple jump up, before he agrees and adds that he, of course, will not go anywhere. And an image already appears in his head of how Anna tied herself up and made almost a shibari, wriggling in ropes in every possible way and bending in different ways, turning to him in the most erotic place, while with a reddened face she almost whimpers, calling out to her brother Sunyan and asking him to be easier since she has not yet got ready. From these thoughts, the dragon already blushed more and more. But then he is distracted from this by the girls, who grins and clearly looks different from his fantasies, at least not now. She immediately comes closer to him and informs him that the training begins, while six steel swords immediately loom behind her, which are illuminated with scarlet and yellow shades, and even levitate in the air, which makes the black dragon only open his eyes in surprise, clearly not expecting something like this, especially from Anna, which he represented this way and that in everything that was possible, but now it's completely different. These swords, which appeared only at her will, instantly point their sharp ends directly at him, flying closer and closer, which makes Waters straighten up and stand on his hind legs, trying to defend himself with his front paws, opening his mouth wide and continuing to look at all this with wide eyes, before cursing and loudly exclaiming offers her to stop. Then he starts shouting even louder, calling out to Anna and again begging her to stop, and then adding that he has not even prepared himself yet, especially since this is not the training he originally thought about. Well, yes, she is quite different from his fantasies. And then he starts yelling loudly, trying to call the system, but it does not respond and does not react to him at all. Maybe she's still in a dream. At least, that's what I want to think, since she is most lacking right now. And then the girl finally gives her voice, who calls out to brother Sunyan and shouts to him not to be lazy, since she is watching him, and she smiles brightly and fervently, getting into a pose while the seats continue to fly away from her towards the hero who, apparently, continued to stand in full shock. Meanwhile, the hero's glasses, his relationships and sympathies with many remained exactly the same. Meanwhile, some real bedlam and fuss is going on in the dragon cave. The girl begins to talk about the fact that now the head of the gnolls with most of the monsters is not in the dragon's lair. Only Anna and Kurisme are left, even the beast scrolls are all gone. But the dragon is still in hibernation what to do. Selina is almost going crazy, starting to move her head back and forth, trying not to panic, but it turns out badly, because she's still twitching and starting to think about something, well, she's going to at least. Meanwhile, Anna is sitting by herself next to the dragon, still gently holding his muzzle and thinking about what she would do if she were Mr. Dragon, while she looks worried enough, still looking at how he peacefully sleeps before lowering his head, rigidly concentrating and concentrating on myself and my emotions. And apparently, this is working because she is gradually beginning to be surrounded by black stripes that surround the elf more and more, and behind her there is a silhouette of a black dragon, which seems to have reincarnated into her, then definitely endowed her with a little of its power. She immediately shouts out her own name and opens her eyes wide, in which you can see a narrow black pupil, which usually happens in all kinds of reptiles and in particular was also in waters, that she knows something for sure. But apparently, they didn't exactly fix her by force, but they gave the appearance that she herself imitates her dragon master, as evidenced by the small horns that appeared and a confident look, while she continues to shout and points her finger forward, 
ordering to immediately send two harpies to find the head of the Grey Wolf Knolls and let them say that on the dragon the lair has been attacked and urgently needs help, and let Brother Rooster bring the Beast Scrolls, letting them prepare for defense in the Flamethrower Tower. And besides, she suddenly adds, let the Curas may disperse along the road in the Silver Forest and hide. They do not go out to fight with people. You need to anger them so that they attack and retreat. The rest of the girls immediately call out to Anna with admiring and slightly excited faces and notice that this is very, very cool. And then she abruptly stands with her foot right on Sunyan's head, shouting that now it's their time to protect Mr. Dragon, which makes a booming sound, because of which even the other girls opened their eyes in surprise and covered their mouths wide open, clearly not expecting that she could really do or do so, and maybe the fact that she will be too determined and confident in this plan. And after some time or at the same time, the same Melinda appears right in that very silver forest, who is already in full dress, normally dressed and not in her typical white and transparent outfit, and even with a staff, simultaneously landing and looking around, outlining a circle before abruptly revealing he turns his eyes and turns his head to the side, immediately noticing that something is wrong, as he hears some rustle, before abruptly decides to move and jerk to the side, until some guy suddenly flies, right in the face, some huge something that, judging by everything, completely smashes everything there and causes a flow of blood. And the teenager standing behind him immediately opens his mouth and eyes in surprise while she screams that enemies are coming at them. And indeed, right in front of them, there is a curismia, which sits on a tree branch, which makes them instantly look up and notice exactly where their location is, and all this does not bode well at all. Blade, meanwhile, shouts and reports that these monsters like to attack the head, and then orders everyone to pay attention to it and protect their crown. At the same time also shouts curses, shouting that they also cling to the fifth point while he swings his huge sword, and behind him at all looming is the very snake that rushes at him and opens its mouth wide, trying to frighten someone with its fangs or even bite the heroes and finally kill them. Meanwhile, the pink-haired girl frowns and rests her palms on her knees, drawing all the necessary shapes, while she thinks that after she received the powers of the Archmage, whom she killed almost with her own hands, because even her speed and agility will greatly increase. And then a grin appears on her face as she looks forward and an aura with a red flame begins to loom around her, while she resolutely looks forward and thinks that all that remains is to finish off the dragon and then the power will finally be hers. And apparently, such magic will definitely not be superfluous to her. She immediately makes a sharp leap forward, pulling her staff forward, it seems, using the same magic, at the same time with her own, which causes a sharp explosion and huge clouds of smoke begin to spray all over the nearest perimeter, which were sometimes interrupted by bright and red stripes after the fire and apparently the explosion, the force of which was simply enormous, yes, such that, apparently, all the Kurisme were destroyed or just scared of this and decided not to show it at all anymore. Blade shows up behind Melinda after a few moments, smiling broadly and calling out to his beloved, cheekily shouting that he didn't even know that she had such cool magic, while she doesn't seem so happy about it at all, continuing to look only ahead, apparently, not wanting to turn to him, and then at all, as if not bragging at all, she says that she set fire to the surviving monsters in the forest from the city in order to speed up their pace, but she still grins and still turns her side slightly to him, being in a very erotic pose, while behind her the same bright flames begin to develop with might and main, which Blade is watching clearly delighted with all this. And after some time, their entire small army was heading along the gorge behind the dragon's lair, passing by a huge mountain, looking not at all as happy as before, and their number naturally decreased. Melinda immediately steps forward of all the guys, pulling her staff forward, the end of which begins to glow bright red, almost scarlet, which was heading forward using a search spell, before frowning and looking cruelly ahead, shouting that there is a dragon's lair ahead and then orders everyone to attack. Why immediately, then either in them, or they themselves direct their attack forward, which is reflected by a huge explosion and large plumes of smoke and many sparks with lightning that bounce off the magic of the staff while the girl stands confidently on her feet, frowning slightly and clenching his jaws. And apparently, this attack was really intended in their direction, since Blade, the same powerful knight who only recently bragged about his muscles and thought only about girls, suddenly abruptly appears at her side, trembling and almost crying, calling out to his beloved and beloved in a trembling voice, saying that he was so worried about her, and in general he would definitely be able to protect her, even if it didn't look like it at all. 
but she only frowns, not wanting to answer him and continuing to look exclusively forward at the attackers, continuing to hold her staff, which still glows with bright and scarlet lightning, while she thinks to herself that what kind of knight is a loser after all. And then he adds that she still underestimated these monsters. Do they have firearms? If they continue like this, she will definitely not have an army left, and then she will figure, and not kill the dragon. Actually, everything will be very, very bad. And then all of a sudden, for no reason at all, she just sharply hits Blade on his back, forcing the unfortunate guy, who has been under her spell until now, to thank his dear knight for covering her, while the latter only opens his eyes in surprise, resting his palms forward, about to fall. But instead, the girl suddenly jumps abruptly on his back and immediately pushes off with her foot from his back on which she only recently stood up and rested, which instantly flies up into the air, frowning and looking up, continuing to hold her staff behind her while a bright smile was visible on her face. Behind her, the air is whistling with might and main, and then she suddenly abruptly pulls her staff forward, fully straightening up, while bright and fiery spheres begin to form around her, of which there are four in general, but they continue to spin at all, dispersing the air, and clouds around, while Melinda herself shouts that she is attacking with a spell of a fiery explosion and immediately, all these four huge spheres are sent in an instant towards the very tower from which, apparently, the initial such operation was conducted. But unfortunately, it is probably no longer possible for it to exist, since these fireballs crash into her with great speed, causing a huge explosion and a plume of fire that completely covers her, which even makes a loud roar that reaches the dragon's shelter to the cave itself, in which, by the way, Anna is hiding, who looks anxiously in the direction of the roar, which comes from outside, before loudly saying that the army is approaching them so quickly, and then suddenly sits down next to the black dragon whose muzzle she hugs with her hands and looks at him sadly, clearly completely tense about what is happening somewhere there, along the way, addressing his master dragon, saying that if he hears her, then please let him wake up. She repeats her loud and plaintive request again, while Sunyan is still in the same specific space intended for training, before he raises his head in surprise and opens his eyes when he hears all this, because other people's words reach him, as if through some prism, and in the meantime he is generally sharp swords continue to fly, whose blades cut through the air, but he does not pay any attention to them at all, clearly focusing more on someone else's voice, before finally something reaches his consciousness, which makes the hero open his mouth in surprise, soaring their wings into the air, and shouting loudly that this is Anna's voice. So are they really in danger? At least, that's how it makes him think about all this while he flaps his wings, still trying to dodge the same swords, and then finally soars into the air using his new ability, namely Zunhalvik, removing armor while the sharp ends of weapons are directed at him. But when he manages to use his own with a new tune, then those with loud pops and a crash just fall to the floor, wringing their blades and glinting metal in the sun, until Anna, who, apparently, is no longer real for him. What else can explain the presence of such a suit on him, which looks very erotic, while the girl herself smiles sweetly and puts her palms together, calling out to Brother Waters and saying what a cool guy he is. He learned the technique of removing armor so quickly, let him continue in the same spirit while the dragon himself he only frowns slightly and still Still looks ahead, flashing his sharp pupils, clearly not going to pay any more attention to his old and at the same time new acquaintance, who, by the way, gently smiles and blushes slightly embarrassedly, covering his eyes and circling his chest with his palm, standing up in front of him in another pose. He first tells her to leave here, and at the same time asks if she can walk at all, to which the latter only grins and says that Brother Sunyan should not worry about her, and then adds that he himself told her that until he learns, then it won't go away. At least, that's how she tries to remember him. But then she turns her head and opens her eyes in surprise when she realizes that the place where the dragon was supposed to be, which, well, was there only recently, but now he just took it from there, disappeared and disappeared, disappearing from sight. And just a couple of seconds later, when she turns her head in the other direction again, twitching her ears, she notices how her friend and, in fact, an ordinary student is already far away somewhere in the sky, continuing to fly away and flapping her wings, simultaneously shouting that she should not pretend to be who at all with her. He will be able to finish this fucking workout. And then he adds that it is necessary to go, go. But just like that, no one will really let him just leave this training session, because Anna in a vulgar suit suddenly jumps sharply and finds herself in the air right in front of the dragon clutching her whip, while the dragon who caught her only opens his eyes in surprise and freezes briefly in the air, spreading all his limbs, 
continuing to soar and try to somehow move the wings, clearly not expecting to see her so close and even in this position. And now the girl doesn't seem so attractive to him, or at least cute. Her eyes have turned a dark shade, the irises have turned yellow, and she herself swings her whip, looking not so friendly, saying that if he wants to leave, then let him win first, and then let him speak. The dragon only gets more tense from this and continues to look at her, clearly not expecting that something like this could happen probably not even allowing the thought of something like this. A notification is displayed again, stating that the current number of points is as much as 6995, and the sympathy levels of Anna, Selena, and Evelyn remained at the same level, 300, 100, and 0. Meanwhile, in the real world, everything is going on the same turmoil, a whole real bloodbath and slaughter, which does not bode well. The small army that Melinda had is coming forward, and she herself orders them to go to the dragon's lair and kill the damn black dragon, and with such confidence, and still continues to add phrases about them moving forward, and people don't mind obeying. They defend themselves from beast scrolls and gnolls with hypoclias while they substitute blades or even huge shields for their blows and attacks, continuing their little battle while the girl stands somewhere behind them all, clutching her magic staff and frowning slightly, looking forward and thinking about what is strange, because they are already so far away gone, so why hasn't the black dragon come out yet? Apparently, she does not know how to do the tasks of the system at all, because earlier in the status window everything was written and told in black and white. Before she continues to ask questions in her head, why is it so? Did he run away while she continues to walk on, clearly intending to leave all her comrades behind before she comes in he enters the cave and notices the silhouette of a dragon in front of him, which is sometimes illuminated by bright fiery sparks, while Melinda is already allowed interested in herself. They say, is he really so huge and he only has the 20th level. She shouts out that she is using the recognition spell, passing on and still holding her staff in her hand, continuing to move forward as well, while the black dragon is sleeping peacefully and completely unaware that someone has broken into his lair. And then a huge grin appears on her face, while she proudly throws her head slightly back, looking down at him, noticing to herself that he is really in hibernation, which is not surprising at all. Melinda begins to laugh loudly and loudly, clearly enjoying this fact, and then notices to herself that it looks like heaven is on her side. But then, apparently, something happens or someone notices her, because in the same place where she just stood completely calm, completely unaware that something could happen, before a huge sea wave abruptly flies into her, which completely knocks down the pink hair the girl is knocked off her feet, forcing her to fall back while water suddenly splashes all over the perimeter, also scattering small stones on the sides, before she finally disappears completely, and then finally she falls to the ground, covering herself slightly with her hand, while you can immediately tell from her clothes that what she got is quite normal, while she herself frowns and clears her throat to the side, asking loudly who dared to attack so stealthily, and then a pair of heels with shoes suddenly knock sharply in front of her, and then another girl appears in front of her, namely Anna, who stands right in front of the dragon's muzzle, so stoically and confidently protecting him, standing in a peculiar pose and drawing with his own hands characteristic symbols and signs with his palms, which causes large drops of water and characteristic splashes to appear in front of her, while also eating multiple bright sparks and stars next to her, which even look like snowflakes, while she herself is frowning and shouting, ordering her to get out of here far away before she soon sinks to the ground, and the team that is free from the battle is watching everything, which looks with great enthusiasm and admiration at the blonde who appeared in front of them. Many of the guys even blush, and one of them notices with a curious look that there are girls in the dragon's lair, and even such beautiful elves. Apparently, they don't give a damn about the dragon at the moment. Meanwhile, a characteristic battle breaks out between the two beauties, and Melinda herself suddenly rises into the air, lifting her one leg and looking down at the new opponents, frowning slightly and calling out to the darling, saying that it's very cute, and then decides to ask, they say, does she really want to confront her with a simple water ball and a spell light? But while Anna is watching her, watching everything from the side, the other girls immediately appear behind her, shouting, she just has them and they look completely confident that they will actually cope with everything and do everything. Although the elf herself looks tense, obviously not very happy about that what happens right in front of her and will happen after. And even more so, the pink-haired girl suddenly grins and puts forward her staff, which grins and informs them that she is too tough for them, and then uses her magic sharply, moreover, several different ones, which is both fire and air and even frost. 
The fire immediately hits Anna, burning her badly and immediately forcing her to crouch and cry out painfully in pain, while her clothes instantly begin to dissolve and tear off her body, leaving only some pathetic pieces of fabric that just stuck to her. Other girls are struck by lightning and frost, which makes them have to shrink and shrink from pain, cold and piercing sensations that were not at all satisfactory or something like that. They even have tears in the edges of their eyes, which indicate that everything is really painful, and it's not a joke at all or something like that. Immediately Melinda gives her voice again, who points forward at the girls and shouts to her army, ordering them to kill the dragon, and in general, this elf has nowhere to run, the time will come and they will go over to their side. At least, that's what she promises, although we all probably understand that it will be completely different. Her army, consisting exclusively of guys, are smiling maliciously, advancing closer and closer and clearly going not only to kill the dragon, but also to do something not very right in relation to the lovely lady. And as soon as they get closer, as soon as their eyes glow in the dark aura of the cave, which did not portend anything good, Anna bends down next to the black dragon, sitting on her knees and trying to cover her chest, on which there is really no fabric left, while she begins to cry desperately and bitterly, pitifully lowering her eyebrows at home and barely audibly calling out to Mr. Dragon, asking him for forgiveness for the fact that she failed to protect him, while he continues to lie humbly and sleep right in front of her. And while such passions, horrors and so on are happening outside, it is not at all easier inside him. Anna, who was there in her sexy and erotic costume, was jumping around him with might and main, writhing and increasing the radius of her jumps in the air, trying all the time to direct her attack at Waters Jr or vice versa, to force him to attack, all the time shouting that he caught her and that she did not feel him at all while the black dragon loudly calls out to her and adds that everything is enough, and asks her to calm down while he waves his huge wings, watching her with glowing red eyes, and at some point he suddenly grabs her by the waist with his huge paw, squeezing her whole body, which is why the girl, who was completely confident in herself and her abilities before, suddenly opens her eyes in surprise and opens her mouth, clearly not expecting something like this, because she jumped as fast as she could, and in the end she was still caught, and the dragon literally sits her on his lap or at least some semblance of them, forcing her to turn forward and back with her fifth point, before, without any hesitation, which was surprising, she begins to slap her other paw on this very soft spot, which caused ringing slaps, and Anna, everything lying with the same wide eyes, she only blushes and opens her mouth, while Sunyan continues to hold her and spank her, frowning his bright and scarlet eyes, asking if she has played enough, and along the way orders and at the same time tell him how to get out of here now. And suddenly the girl almost screams, making a face of a hegao, whimpering with might and mane and sweating with small drops of tears, throwing her head up and exhaling hot steam from her mouth, shouting that he did not beat anymore because the ass hurts, also from such a huge, huge paw. A few seconds later, they find themselves on the ground, where an unhappy girl, who, to put it simply, was just taken and punished, only awkwardly presses her knees to her chest, lowering her eyes and ears down, feeling offended and sad, maybe a little embarrassed, before she starts talking about how since hardening the legacy is not yet complete, then if he wants to leave, there will be terrible consequences and the magic will not be stable before he decides to ask if he really wants to leave still. The dragon hovers over her and frowns slightly, looking down at her and covering her with his shadow, and then adds that yes, he really still wants to leave, so he asks her to finish quickly, while he thinks to himself that he is still restless, and this feeling of anxiety is gradually getting stronger and stronger. He can only hope that nothing has happened to Anna and the others. And in an instant, the girl, apparently considering the recent punishment for a special moment of eroticism, or something like that, gently waves him off and smiles sweetly, exposing her bare shoulder, and blushing slightly, immediately casually adding that if he wants to find out how to get out, then let him come closer to her. And Waters Jr. bends down, stretches his lips forward and also blushes slightly, covering his eyes, and is so pleased that you can't tell from him that he really wants to leave here, while the hero himself thinks about how shameful it all is, just like in fairy tales. Is he really going to be awakened by a kiss of sincere love, or at least just a kiss? But apparently his fantasies are not destined to come true again, since Anna, noticing such a gesture from her friend, only looks at him in surprise and questioningly, instantly pricking up her ears and slightly taken aback for some reason. Before for a second, a sharp and very cruel slap arrives on the dragon's face, 
forcing the latter to fly away a little, while the elf herself looks as if she is going to vomit now, looking to the side and shouting loudly that it's all foo and how he just had to climb into his head with something like that. And after some time, perhaps only a pitiful seconds, suddenly his eyes in the real world open abruptly and quickly, showing his huge and red narrow pupils, looking forward, before he notices or emits a sharp hum, from which Melinda immediately shudders, looking in surprise towards the place from which he comes this very sound, before squeezing his staff again, clearly not expecting something like this. A notification is displayed again, stating that the current number of points is as much as 6995, and the sympathy levels of Anna, Selina, and Evelyn remained at the same level, 300, 100, and 0. The dragon touches his cheek, which is still burning after a recent slap, while he only whimpers softly and grabs it, clearly still feeling a sharp pain, from which he hisses, telling loudly that it really hurts, even if physically you wake up from sleep so erotically, and to admit, he did not expect this at all and then his gaze is directed towards the exit and his mouth and eyes open in surprise when he notices that several people with iron armor and huge swords are running at him, clearly rushing towards Waters J.R. to kill or at least maim, before Sunyan notices out loud that the soldiers are already in the cave and damn, where is Anna? What happened to her? Meanwhile, behind the dragon cave, what happens is that all three of these soldiers are suddenly pushed back by some large and bright blue explosion, completely falling back and falling somewhere outside the stone cave, which provokes a large and loud rumble, which is clearly heard by everyone who is in the nearest radius. From this, of course, even Anna, who was standing somewhere outside, turns her head in his direction opening her eyes in surprise and suddenly raises her ears, notices that her master dragon has woken up, but it turns out that either she was originally still in the cave, or Waters J.R. Himself he managed to find her himself, because they both collide together and she bows her head down sadly, and apologizing to him, since she herself completely failed to protect the cave while the black dragon looked at her from the side, standing right next to her. And then the black dragon's tongue suddenly gently passes over her lower eyelid, licking the tears from her face, adding along the way that she did a good job while the girl blushed slightly, before at the same second Sunyan is suddenly grabbed from the other two sides by the other girls, who hug him and begin to cry. They start doing all this and shout that the black dragon has finally woken up, and then add that it's all bad people who offend them in general. He immediately exhales malicious gusts of steam, and then says that he immediately understood everything and would be happy to avenge them all, while two girls, apparently Selina and Evelyn, have 50 points added to the level of sympathy. One of them points in the direction of Melinda, saying that it's worth taking revenge and beating her especially, because this trash herself electrocuted them and burned all their clothes, while the pink-haired one they point to only opens her eyes in surprise, very amazed, still clutching her staff and slightly clenching her legs. A status window appears in front of him, which informs him that this is the player Melinda, the great magician of the third stage, Six Heaven, while he is surprised to notice for himself that she is still a great magician and at the same time is still the same player. And then the magician begins to tremble even more, stretching his palm forward and pulling the staff closer to him. She herself exclaims that this can't be, isn't he in hibernation? And even more so, why did he wake up so quickly at all? And then a memory from the past appears in front of her, namely a status window that informs her that it is impossible to delete, since she is the only person with this information. The dragon has fallen into hibernation. He is in the depths of the Silver Forest, and how this very notification asked him to go there faster, and now she continues to think with a tense look about what, after all, according to this message, since hibernation should have lasted at least a week, and what kind of spam was it anyway? The dragon is thinking about how she even knows that he was in hibernation, while a sword is trying to penetrate his shoulder, which only hits the hard scales and then pushes aside. Meanwhile, the guy shouts out to his interlocutor about what a jerk he is, since he dared to throw his sword, while the latter only smiles awkwardly, laughing loudly and saying that it's not him. And then the black dragon is already paying attention to their little quarrel, shouting that not only are they just pathetic bugs, they also dared to invade his territory and they immediately both jump up and instantly change their faces, about to rush to run. The hero himself immediately pushes off with his hind paw from the ground, which provokes all the other people to immediately jump up in their seats and start rushing to run far away, while they were shouting along the way that they should run, that this dragon was mad and all sorts of other pleas for mercy. A huge paw immediately catches up with one of them. Meanwhile, Blade suddenly abruptly approaches Melinda, simultaneously calling out to his deer, 
and informing them that they should run. Since this dragon has awakened and they are now definitely not his rivals, but she informs that she will not miss such a good chance, and even if it happens that she loses, then he will rise again anyway. But then the girl screams loudly that it's him, the same trash who abandoned her and sold her to bandits. But then soon the pink-haired one shouts something like choke de haladas, which means a freezing spell, until a blue sphere appears in her palm. Anna immediately draws attention to this, calling out to Mr. Dragon, informing and warning him to be careful, since he will now be attacked from behind. And apparently, her cry brings Sun Yin to his senses, as he instantly turns his head. The beam coming from the very end of the staff just hits him on the wing. But after a couple of moments, he immediately turns to his new friend, asking her what. They say, it turns out, so she is the culprit of all this. She suddenly grins sharply before shouting out new spells, La Père de la Lama, which means a wall of fire and a spotted a dragon DW Fuego, which means a knife of a fiery dragon. And then all those fire spheres that she made with magic are instantly directed towards the black dragon. They hit his body, forming huge clouds of smoke along with steam, and then his muzzle sticks out. The system counted the blunder for everything. She immediately starts shouting, saying, well, why, why did all the spells pass by, thinking that really after climbing, his resistance increased so much, how else should she hit him at all? The dragon opens its mouth with fire, and the girl shouts a scudo arcano gulk, which means dark shield. But after some time, the fiery breath still ceases to work and she has the opportunity to look up, while she quietly tells herself that she tried so hard, spent so many spells, so why was it all completely meaningless? And in an instant her protective ball is overtaken by a huge paw. The ball just cracks after a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, the dragon leans closer and closer, reports that his own anger will be much more terrible than any death, because they touched his sore spot. Meanwhile, the status window shows that the current number of points is 6995. Anna's liking level is 300, Selena's liking level is 150 and Evelyn's liking level is 50. The girl has a large dagger in her hand, the blade of which glitters from the light, and she herself thinks that there is another game mechanic that will definitely play into her hands, she can retreat herself, reborn. And then, apparently, noticing her weapon, the dragon shouts out Zunhalvik, which means Tuum, the removal of armor, and instantly someone else's dagger just falls out of the girl's hands, and the shield crumbled. Melinda puts her hands back and asks why all this was done while Sunyan looms over her from above, before he informs her that she will not be able to die so easily. And then his mouth suddenly opens wide, but everything is suddenly interrupted by Anna, who calls out to her master dragon, informing him that Evelina is missing. The dragon begins to say that everything is fine. With her magic, the soldiers will not be able to cope with her for sure. Meanwhile, beyond the silver forest, Blade raced along a clearing with trees and other vegetation, running away from the crystals. One sharply cuts the sharp end into someone else's buttock, causing the knight's body to jump in pain. And then he is overtaken by Evelina herself, who says that here is the garbage running like a rat. The girl stands in front of the guy, as he fell face forward, buried in the ground. Blade finally turns his head completely to her, and then exclaims how it still hurts, and then calls out to the beauty and asks if they know each other. She shouts out that it turns out, he also forgot her, well, this is absolutely unforgivable. He points in the direction of Evelina with his finger, and then gives out in amazement that it's her, and he thought that the bandits didn't leave a bone from her. It turns out that the black dragon has grabbed her, and after a couple of moments, the guy is already getting up from the ground, adding that if she hadn't followed him, he definitely wouldn't have left her. And the girl, of course, it only angers her more when she is just about to say how disgusting he is, before she quite easily agrees with Blade and after that asks him to come closer to her in this case. And the knight starts smacking his lips, muttering all sorts of kissing sounds about himself along the way, and even calls her his golden one. The girl directs her clenched fist directly into his face, shouting that he should die, and he will have a golden death. Blade takes a flask with a bright and pink liquid and begins to say, addressing and calling the girl, that since she dared to hit him like that, then let her not blame him for the fact that, apparently, now he will hit her back. In the next second, he instantly waves his palm in her direction, causing bright pink drops to splash and fall on her. Evelina blushed all over and said, like, damn, because now her energy was suppressed, and then she wondered what a scumbag like him had done to her. He says out loud that he did not think that the things stolen from Masont would be so useful. When she falls to her knees, he puts a sword to her neck. The guy starts talking about the fact that his sister in Andreas is a teacher at the Magic Academy of St. Roland. And if it so happens that she decides to kill him, then isn't she afraid that this whole academy will avenge him? 
Blade casually adds that since it is so that when her sister comes to ask him how she is, he will simply say that the dragon has played enough and devoured her. And Evelina uses her dying words to send this asshole to hell, for which, in the end, she pays with her own life. Meanwhile, behind the dragon Sunyan notices the trio, who for some reason tried to escape. He asks almost himself what happens, they want to escape. Well, if that's the case, then now he will act. He starts shouting Zyre calls Orin Zunhalvik, using the power of inspiration and removing armor, instantly forcing all their weapons and clothing items to fall down completely, while they immediately begin to call to each other, wondering why the clothes fell and what happened to someone's sword, which also fell out of hand. Anna calls out to her master and master, informing him to look in that direction, since Hippolytus is there and apparently they have returned. Sunyan decides to warn them not to look, since then both will have barley, and then adds that they should fly back to the cave, since as long as he is here, everything will be fine. After some time, he finally lands back on Earth, while two of his servants appear in front of him, calling out to the owner and sadly informing him that they were late, and now quite calmly admit that they really deserve to die, to which the Black Dragon informs them that it is absolutely not their fault, and judging apparently, he wasn't going to kill them anyway. That's why soon one of the Hippolytes suddenly rises and pulls the bound blade forward. The monster reports that on the way back in the forest they found this person along with Evelyn's corpse. He presses him to the ground with his paw and asks him if he killed Evelyn. The knight mutters to himself that it wasn't him at all. The girl just abruptly fell on his sword. He will ask him to let him go, and in that case, so be it, he will tell him a secret that he will definitely be interested in. Meanwhile, the status window shows that the current number of points is 6995, Anna's liking level is 300, Selena's liking level is 150 and Evelyn's liking level is 50. The paw pulls away from him, slightly untangling the rope along the way, and he starts saying that it's all because of the seduction of Melinda, that it was because of this that Blade came to kill the dragon, and also this little girl killed the high magician Masont. Besides, she is the head of the village of beginners number 6. He continues to say, adding that there are about 5,000 people in this very village who want to kill a dragon. He strokes his chin, frowning slightly and squinting his eyes, thinking about the village of newcomers at number 6. It seems that he should worry about more than just one village boss. Suddenly, Blade speaks up again to ask if this secret will suit him, before Waters adds that so be it, it will do fine. He immediately starts running away with a happy face, and the monsters call out to their master and ask if he really will let him go so easily. Sunyan immediately uses his dragon breath on him, and then calmly reports that he did not say that he would let him go, to which the Hippolytes immediately inform each other what a worthy master they still have, learn from him and learn. Evelyn's ghost appears in front of his muzzle, Waters Jr. somehow utters quite pitifully that he died, so let him think that he himself managed to avenge her. She thanks him quietly, and then suddenly a notification with a status window pops up, informing that the owner managed and helped to realize the character's dream and achieve a dying blessing. It congratulates him on receiving a special ability, namely the teleportation field. Then another notification pops up, which informs that he received 6,000 points in this battle. Sunyan is interested in the teleportation field. And then he adds, asking if the system can move him to the village of newcomers, to which another notification immediately appears, which states that the teleportation field itself can teleport him only to previously visited places or to places marked by past generations of dragons. That's how it is, Waters Jr. notices in surprise, before a light bulb suddenly appears next to his head. He remembers all the corpses he saw and then reports that the biggest trouble was the hereditary ascent, when he was forced to hibernate. And if he had woken up at least a little earlier, there would not have been such a huge number of victims. The hero calls out to the system and asks her if it is possible to somehow shorten or even remove this ascent, to which a notification immediately pops up in front of him, which informs him that 5,000 points are needed to reduce the hibernation time by a small amount and increase its efficiency, which, apparently, waters JR. Immediately it consumes, since another notification appears in an instant which informs that 10,000 points are already needed to reduce the hibernation time by an average amount and increase its efficiency. With a characteristic sound, another one pops up, which informs that 20,000 points are needed to reduce the hibernation time by more and increase its effectiveness, and then another one, which says that 10,000 points are needed to completely remove the hibernation time without taking the legacy. He himself is frowning and wondering what that is, it doesn't matter to him how, but he will sleep anyway or this way he simply won't get the legacy. 
and then a fantasy immediately climbs into his head, where it seems to him that Anna is hitting him on the ass, viciously shouting that he is a bad dragon and that it is impossible not to accept the legacy, otherwise he is just finished. Sunyan only asks himself why he thought of her at all, before asking the system if she knows why other people appear in the inherited dream realm. The status window immediately informs him that most often strangers do not appear in the realm of sleep but in rare exceptions, accompanying spirits may arise. This seems to cause him only more questions, because Waters Jr. asks again if he understood everything correctly and what kind of accompanying spirits are in general, and the system instantly informs him a second later with a positive answer that yes, accompanying spirits appear according to the desire of the Lord of the Kingdom of Dreams, help him finish the ascent. And then he adds that they also try to attract the master into an even deeper sleep, and this already depends on the willpower of the master. And the image of Anna immediately appears in my head, who blushed and turned her head to him, so quietly and shyly calling out to Brother Sunyan and offering to come to her faster. The dragon immediately presses his paws to his mouth, starting to giggle stupidly and loudly, which is immediately noticed by one of their Ippolikliv, who loudly calls out to the owner, and then wonders what is wrong with him today and now, which makes the latter quite awkwardly and confusedly interested in what happened. The monster calls out to the owner again and says that it was there that the people surrendered, and then adds whether this means that they should be killed, to which the black dragon instantly reacts, simultaneously wondering if he understood everything correctly. Captured, but then he begins to say quite calmly that if these people do not surrender, then let them kill them, otherwise let them lock them up first. And then he opens his paw and lets the girl out of it, while waters Jr himself adds that they should follow her, let her live until he returns. The monster informs his master that he is obeying and will immediately execute his order, and then still decides to ask if he is going to return to the dragon's lair. The dragon answers in the negative, saying no, and then adds that this is because a week has already passed, and today he will personally become a crematorium. The hero allows himself to think that he, Sunyan Water Parternak, knows how to be grateful, so why wait for the night? Meanwhile, the status window shows that the current number of points is already 12,995. Anna's liking level is 300, Selena's liking level is 150. The dragon watches the sunset, but then two girls run out from inside right to him, waving their hands and trying to call out to their familiar master, Waters Jr involuntarily tenses up from this and immediately calls out to Anna, asking and at the same time wondering why they came out. Selina once again calls out to the black dragon with a trembling voice and asks him if it is true that Evelyn will not return to them or anywhere else. The dragon quietly asks them if they really already know about it, before adding more to himself that Ippolyclius, such a dog, has already managed to tell everything quickly. Anna is interested, having previously called out to her master dragon. But if she herself dies one day, will he grieve and mourn for her? The dragon asks what kind of question this is, while even a drop of sweat appears on his temple. The elf begins to say that if it so happens that there are people who grieve for you, then death makes more sense and in general, isn't that how it should work? But then the dragon, it seems, having listened to her completely and having understood in which direction she begins to incline, suddenly calmly gives out that death has no meaning at all. And when these words reach Anna, she opens her eyes in surprise. And Sunyan, getting up from his seat, says that since death cannot be avoided, he will become so strong that he will stand at the head of the food chain so as not to die because of his weakness. Selina mutters to herself that he will become even stronger, while a slightly bluish and transparent status window reports that her sympathy has increased by as much as 20 units. It will soon be late at night. Mulligan Secura Plain is the village of newcomers number 6, and it is to her stone gate under the gaze of the night that you can see the dark silhouette of a flying dragon, while the guard on duty does not pay attention at all to the numerous warnings that begin to arrive. Status windows and notifications that pop up constantly and ask you to pay attention to the fact that an approaching strong creature has been detected. Then another one pops up, informing and asking to pay attention to the fact that the monster is attacking the city. Then another one, which says that the protection of the novice village has begun, so the system needs to scan the current level of the novice village, which it does, along the way reporting that it increases the level of protection. After the following, which says that the monster has penetrated into the territory of the village, therefore all characteristics are reduced by 50%. The sentry shouts loudly to everyone that they have an enemy here, while he continues to shout and repeat about combat readiness. The dragon finally notices a slightly transparent blue notification that informs that protection has been activated in this novice village, 
which means that all characteristics have been reduced by 50%. He begins to say to himself that there is also a protective mechanism. I wonder if it has a specific range at all. With a characteristic sound, another notification arrives, which informs that the range of the protective mechanism is a circle with a radius of 500 meters centered in the center of the village. Waters Jr. asks himself if he understood the entire radius correctly and whether he heard the figure before adding that this is quite enough, and apparently, now you can definitely start. The black dragon instantly and furiously begins to dive down. Its huge wings swing through the layers of air, raising dust and small clouds behind it, opening its huge mouth wider and wider, and soon a large, bright and fiery sphere begins to appear there, which is full of sparks. These very sparks soon turn into one and a huge one, which, like the sun, burns brightly in the middle of the starry sky, forcing the villagers, who probably only recently left their homes, hearing the alarm, immediately start to make a run for it. One of them even looks back a little, opening his eyes wide and shouting that the dragon has arrived, and this very fiery spark is his dragon breath, which he is definitely going to use. He opens his mouth wide before several different fiery spheres immediately fly out of it, which, like meteorites, immediately begin to fall to the ground. Those same fiery spheres crash into the roofs of houses with explosions. The dragon notices to himself that the forces, in fact, weakened, not explosions, but chickens pecked. One of the players in iron armor only tightens his grip on his huge sword before asking why the dragon sneaked in unnoticed at night, while whole columns of flames begin to rage behind him. The knight, turning his head to his brothers, telling them not to be afraid, since the black dragon is weak which could be said even by those awkward and huge spheres that only cause damage to roofs and houses, but in no other way, and then adds more loudly that if they attack together, then they will definitely be able to destroy it. Immediately, a bald guy with a shield and a sword rushes forward, only to shout to them to move faster to the center of the square, since they should attack from there, and then just warriors with magicians who use this very magic shield to provide at least some opportunity to survive follow him all of them together. And literally in some miserable fractions of a second, they all find themselves already in the center of the square, while some bright and bright stripes begin to swirl around them with might and main, which even attract the attention of Waters J.R. With their glow, he says, so this is just another remark that they have already managed to put up a shield so quickly. Magicians are standing at the bottom. A bright line of the same color suddenly begins to burn from a pink staff, which begins to move forward quickly and sharply, intending to reach the dragon. The attack with a pink explosion falls on the very wing of Sunyan, who barely managed to cover his chest with it. Noticing his reaction, one of the girls loudly exclaims that the attack worked, and the dragon was scared, before ordering the others to aim in a flash. While the dragon himself adds to himself that yes, perhaps he was really scared, what kind of jokes are these at all? And then he calls out to the system, asking it to create a teleportation field, to which it immediately reacts, asking him to clarify the place of teleportation. Waters Jr. clarifies that first it is worth doing it over the village of beginners number 6, which immediately begins to form a huge, bright and blue circle that covers his entire body. A real huge and fiery sphere appears, which begins to grumble down with a large stream of flame. And then, at the place where such a blow was originally intended, a huge, bright and blue circle begins to form. People even made way for its diameter. The dragon just looks at this very blue and bright circle, into which exactly the same fiery sphere is directed which almost splashes out like lava on different sides before a large stream of flame begins to fly directly at him. And then that portal, which was on the ground next to people, begins to vibrate with might and main, and fiery sparks begin to appear from its middle, diverging on different sides. And then, suddenly, the fiery sphere created a colossal explosion. A wave of heat and blinding flashes of light filled everything around. The shock wave even reached the dragon who had to close his eyes, while he says to himself that the power is still great, and if the players really have no restrictions on increasing strength, then the power will also increase. When the moment of brilliance and noise passed, there was only a smoking trail, and the smell of burnt grass in the air. A notification of the system immediately pops up, which congratulates its owner on the destruction of the Village of Newcomers. The Village of Newcomers number, Sakura Island, has been erased from the map. 
Then another notification pops up, in which the system again congratulates its owner on receiving the first fragment of the core of the village of newcomers. And after that, she also informs that all the players from Sekura Island from the village of beginners at number 6 will randomly be reborn in other villages, which she will now begin to determine the location of. Meanwhile, the very core that was of bright blue light and radiated its glow with might and main, even on waters JR almost falls into the dragon's paw. Meanwhile, the status window shows that the current number of points is already 12,995. Anna's sympathy level is 300, Selena's sympathy level is 170. After the pogrom of the village, a sad and ruined landscape remained. Buildings, houses and structures were burned or severely damaged by fire. The dragon suddenly sharply asks, they say, is this really all, is she really destroyed, before adding that it was somehow too simple even suspicious. But then he calls out to the system and asks it to repeat again what this fragment of the core is and whether it can be useful in any way. And the crystal, which was now completely in his huge paw, for some reason abruptly changed its shape. Meanwhile, a notification of the system pops up, which informs that four fragments of this very core of the village of novices can be combined into one clean order for the construction of the village. The owner can use them to establish his own power. This is a very important thing. And then the system adds that it advises its owner to keep it and even if he does not think to put this fragment under his scales. The dragon looks at the blue window of the system that appeared in front of his eyes, before slightly intensely wondering if this is really all that this core is capable of. Under his command, there is already a village built by the dog-headed magicians, and they are expanding quite quickly. He also needs an order for the construction of this very village. This is some kind of nonsense of a grey mare. But right there, even the system itself almost tearfully begs its owner not to neglect the order to build the village, and then begins to add that. As he has already noticed, the defensive ability of the novice village is very high, which in fact, you can't even say, since it was destroyed in one a moment. But the system does not stop talking, explaining that this is because of the force of law contained in it. And if the owner has an order to build a village, then waters JR will also be able to build such a strong structure. Also, under the influence of the village construction order, the structure will have many special abilities. For example, a more convenient location, a more efficient speed, and so on. As the level of the city increases, the owner will have more and more rights. And now this information makes him think hard and rethink everything he said about this very core. He thinks that then why does it seem to him that this is some kind of system bug? Isn't it difficult for the system to extract the fragments of the core of the novice village? Before the order was the word clean, which means that the power was taken away from the players, so it's not surprising that the system in front of him is so worried and nervous. But then, suddenly, out of nowhere, another notification of the system pops up with a characteristic sound, which informs that the calculation has been made and this time it receives 25,000 points. Damn it, 25,000 points. He begins to really resent, starting to complain and say that, that is, after waiting for some system chan, they will again go to destroy several villages, and then all his animals will work continuously. The system seems to strain only more from this and then calls out to the owner again, saying that this system does not recommend such actions before deciding to explain its point of view right now. The constant destruction of newcomer villages will maximize the publicity of the owner. And if his publicity becomes too high, then he will be marked as the boss of the world and his coordinates and level will be made public. With his current strength, she is afraid that it will be difficult for him to resist the players. In his fantasy, he immediately saw an image of himself and how he would be standing right in front of a hundred or more players who would run towards him with all their legs and threaten him with real weapons, starting from swords and ending with spears. Waters JR awkwardly adds how exaggerated it all is before he decides to ask his friend if in this case he will be hunted every day. But now he is not waiting for an answer. The black dragon immediately appears in the form of a Buddha, immediately asking the system to forget about everything, before adding that he is, after all, merciful, so he will calmly just spare them. The system that is watching this whole circus is only silent. After some time, Sunyan calls out to his friend again, saying that since the destruction of villages will increase publicity, then how can he then collect the fragments of the cores of the rest of the newcomer villages? And she almost immediately gives him the right answer, literally simultaneously begging her master to be more patient, since the invasion of players will lead to the entry of the whole world into the war. But during this very war there will be a myriad of different soldiers. The village of beginners, she decides to continue, this is just the beginning. 
more villages will be destroyed in due course. Until the full maturation of the host, you can temporarily hide behind the glory of the heroes. Waters JR himself only looks away and says that now he is translating everything into human specifically for her, if she can't, then let her not even try. But after some time, he decides to ask, so how can he find out if something large scale has happened in this world? Because, in the end, he will be in some backwater without news at all and understanding what is happening outside of it. The system immediately informs that the owner has a decree, namely the sacrifice ceremony, and then explains that in fact, it can be passed on to his developed followers, because with his help he will understand what is happening on the whole continent. The hero smiles and says that at the sacrifice ceremony she mentioned the call, to which the system immediately agrees, adding that everything is correctly noticed. But Sunyan himself adds another question, wondering when he will be able to get it, to which his interlocutor again gives an answer. She says that since the current level of the owner is too low, he himself cannot choose, therefore he can only do what to wait. He just keeps quiet. The dragon continues to fly, but then abruptly opens his eyes when he notices the silhouette of a girl looking ahead and standing on some kind of mountain ledge. And apparently, having thought of something to himself that the girl after his speech would decide to commit suicide or just suddenly panic, the dragon opens its mouth wide and immediately begins to dive down, calling Anna and begging her not to jump. The girl from such a loud scream only turns her head in his direction blinking her eyes in surprise and clearly not expecting his appearance. Because apparently, she did not even initially intend to do this, since she was only in one towel or some rags. But apparently, such a sharp movement on her part was enough that then, accidentally due to the wind or her own awkwardness and clumsiness, she suddenly slips her foot on the ledge of the cliff, which provokes the subsequent fall of the body towards the abyss, which makes her open her eyes in fright and immediately scream, trying to rest her hands go ahead or do something so as not to break completely. But the weight of her body still pulls her down, and then waters JR like a real hero, instantly rushes to dive down to this very concession, waving his wings wide and fast, striving after Anna, whose body still continues to fall down and even loses the very towel that previously covered her nakedness. And like a bolt from the blue, the girl, almost a pink ray that pierces the air, rushes straight into the water, which immediately begins to splash out of the banks, splashing another girl, who was also half-naked and screaming loudly, begging for help. That's just on her face there was a blush and a bright smile that she testified that the situation was not as serious as Sunyan had initially betrayed her. But such a huge splash, as it turns out later, was caused not only by the fall of the elf, but also by the black dragon himself, who landed in the same crater with water, in which the girls were now completely calm. Surfacing to the surface, he opens his eyes in surprise, but begins to blush, clearly not expecting something like this to happen. Before he even decides to ask awkwardly, they say, are they really washing? Why the brunette's veins are already swollen with anger and most likely from the understanding that their master is just like that took and got into the girly society. And then Selena's loud voice is heard, shouting that there will be a bomb, and then immediately jumps from above, rushing straight down with her fifth point, counting on the water, but clearly not expecting what will happen next. Anna, who is watching this, opens her mouth wide and even blushes, shouting and warning her friend to be careful. But apparently it's too late, and it simply won't work to return the jump back. And as it was clear, her buttocks rush straight to the dragon's nose, which can only do just slightly open its jaws in surprise and look at this show with complete misunderstanding of what is happening. That is why there is a collision, marked by some kind of loud sound, since the entire dragon's muzzle was completely submerged at the bottom of their joint bath. And Selena, completely not understanding what is happening, can only continue to sit on top and look down in surprise, clearly not understanding what is happening right now it happens before she opens her eyes wide and finally decides to ask why it is so shallow and so warm at the same time in their peculiar pool. And immediately Anna turns out to be next to her, who instantly blushes even more, continuing to stare with confused eyes at how some sharp horns, along with bubbles, peek out from under the water, while she herself slightly raises her hands and tries to call out to Mr. Dragon in a trembling voice. And apparently, after some time, everyone calms down and finally the magician decides to get off someone else's muzzle in order to sit somewhere to the side huffing and blushing in every possible way, trying to pretend that she has absolutely nothing to do with it, while the black dragon himself barely emerges from their crater, and then, not completely, but only with his muzzle buried in the ground, while the stars are spinning on his head, and saliva flows out of his mouth, while Anna, already fully dressed, is sitting next to him on the shore, 
who again calls out to her master and asks how he feels before asking him to wake up, to which her friend only replies in an awkward and trembling voice that it actually serves him right, because there was nothing to peek at how the girls wash, but waters Jr. himself only looks up while his pupils are spiraling, indicating a recent collision, while he himself can only mumble the name of a girl he knows, and then adds that he seems to look very cute. The elf, of course, did not expect such an answer in any way, that's why she can only look at him in surprise, still blushing and sweating a little, not knowing that it's even worth answering such a thing, while some other girl appears in front of them in a very elegant outfit, and with a stately gait. Immediately, the system notification appears again with a characteristic sound, informing that an invitation to him from a special character has been detected, so does he respond to it. Meanwhile, the status window shows that the current number of points is already 37,995. Anna's liking level is 300, Selena's liking level is 170. The elf, apparently deciding not to pay attention to the new guest at all, suddenly snuggles up and grabs their black dragon by the muzzle, anxiously looking at him and twitching her ears, plaintively shouting, they say, no, he already has exactly near-death hallucinations, and then suddenly calls out to Selina, wondering if it's because of that this is that she just took and crushed their lord dragon, to which the latter only smiles awkwardly and looks away perhaps even giggling a little nervously, while adding that this cannot be, because she is completely light. While Sunyan continues to lie in a coma with characteristic spirals in his eyes, clearly not oriented and not understanding what is happening. But then suddenly the voice is again given by the magician, who for some reason blushes sharply and slightly squints her eyes, turning to face Waters Jr. before she informs that she was taught by mercenaries how to save a drowning person but she does not know if it will work on such a huge monster as a dragon. Anna, apparently, catching herself for such an opportunity, twitches her ears again and immediately looks at her with wide open eyes, before adding that it doesn't matter now, because it's still worth trying to save him. But her friend seems to have doubts anyway, as she then adds that this will require contact with the body. And our hero, of course, is no longer in a pre-fainting state and does not experience any dizziness at all. His eyes were still open in a normal way, his cheeks were covered with blush, and saliva continued to flow from his mouth with might and main, while he significantly moved his eyebrows, thinking and asking himself if this was artificial respiration. And then he giggled in his head, clearly intending to get a kiss, and not that what happens next. Selena leans towards him very erotically. A light steam comes from her breath, which immediately forms in the air. Her cheeks are as red as his own, her mouth is slightly open, and, naturally, very, very massive forms appear in the foreground, in which, apparently, he I just want to drown, that's just the desired kiss will not pass. Selena, who only recently was so close and seemed about to kiss him and really try to do artificial respiration, suddenly, for no reason at all, sharply punches someone else's chest in the area of the heart, and with such force that the unfortunate black dragon opens his eyes wide and coughs up the last volume of oxygen from his lungs, completely deprived of anything else, and apparently, the blow was not won, as Waters Jr instantly jumps off his seat and raises his huge paws in the form of surrender, smiling awkwardly and nervously squinting his eyes, pouring with another rush of sweat, because it seems that he is afraid of this magician even more than the players of all the villages combined. He immediately begins to cry out fearfully and imploringly for her to stop and stop, before instantly assuring everyone present that he is perfectly fine, while he is almost begging for salvation in his head, asking what the mercenaries taught her at all, while Selena herself only looks at him intently, wide opening his eyes and swinging his fist again for another blow, which, as it turns out, will not come anyway. But the situation has noticeably tickled the dragon's nerves. That's why he turns his head towards the blue window of the system, mentally calling out to her and asking, does it seem to him or did he really miss something? while drops of sweat were still running down his face, and the memories of recent blows were still present. But then the system informs its owner that while he was pretending to be unconscious, he missed the call. Realizing that this is, in fact, a nightmare, the black dragon again approaches the tree and rests against it with his paw, covering his muzzle with the other and leaning forward in a pose full of despair and bitterness, before muttering to himself that all this is very bad and after all, it has also affected his lands. And then he decides to call out to the system again, saying that it cannot wake him up or automatically accept the call, 
Well, okay. While he himself is thinking about how he still misses the times when they swam together in the royal city. When steam envelops you, it seems that you are walking among clouds. Apparently, such a rejection of the call hit him hard that he already forced him to regale his memories from the past. Standing still at the tree while the system watched him, after being silent for a few seconds, and then adding that he never said anything. But then Selina abruptly approaches him, which makes the dragon literally light up and turn his head to her, smiling broadly and opening his eyes, paying attention to her and asking about the shared bath. The girl just smiles at him and tells him quite calmly that yes, there are hot springs in all the cities of the kingdom. Sometimes they arrange tug-of-war competitions there. And immediately a picture appears before his eyes, where both familiar girls are sitting in the water, only in towels, which barely covered their bodies, with red cheeks and slightly plaintive glances, while steam from hot water was swirling around them. Naturally, such a picture evokes the corresponding emotions in the black dragon. That's why Sunyan is shouting out that they will have a tug-of-war competition today. That's just such a reaction for some reason makes Selina, asking him where in that case he will be able to find the source and he just as confidently and pathetically replies that it will not just be a source. And then Waters Jr. turns his attention to the window of the system, calling out to her and asking with a more serious look if she can update the available items, such as something like a heater, while his old friend decides to answer that this system mainly provides modifications in clothing, but the very purpose of the store is increase the happiness of the host. He looks away, hovering over that very blue window, before he starts ranting about how happiness, the body, and the like are all unequal, and then decides to ask if she sees him happy at the moment, before adding, as if by chance, that if the system has the complaint book, then he will immediately complain there. But the window is only silent, either being ashamed, or just a little offended for all those harsh words in his address that her owner has just blurted out. That's just, it seems, the conversation immediately turns into another channel, as the black dragon instantly leans towards her again, even somehow slightly straining. His eyes are wide open, a little drop of sweat runs down his temple while he adds, just being interested in calling out to the system, but how much you need to spend those very points to increase the modification levels with an explosive fight. First, an old acquaintance decides to open to him a list of absolutely all the modifications that are only present, where the same explosive dragon is visible, then a dinosaur and finally deafness, and only then decides to answer his question, because at the same second, a notification window is displayed with a characteristic ringing, which informs that 9000 points are needed to increase the level of the explosive dragon modification, and then adds that he already has enough points, so does he want to activate the modification? Naturally, the answer does not have to wait long, since the black dragon almost immediately shouts out in an imperative tone so that she activates everything, and the system is unable to resist the orders of its master. Therefore, soon a new notification is displayed again, which asks him to pay attention to the fact that in order to successfully activate this modification, it is necessary to increase the effect of the heart of the melting fire on the figure and muscles of the host, which will provoke acute pain. To prevent damage to the vocal cords, the system will automatically seal them. It would seem that everything is prudent and simple. She takes care of him so sweetly, worries, trying to protect his only opportunity to communicate with all his acquaintances and warns about it in advance. But naturally, Sunyan is simply shocked by this information. He opens his mouth in surprise, looks with huge eyes, in which capillaries have already burst with might and main right at her, unable to even utter the slightest sound, remaining completely mute for a while, while lightning flashes sharply next to him, which, apparently, speaks of a painful process that only it had just begun and was clearly not going to end any time soon. Immediately, the huge body of the black dragon falls to the ground, he himself begins to roll painfully on it from side to side, trying to squeeze his own body with his paws, making at least some attempts to calm that hellish and ever-increasing agony, because of which tears even appeared in the corners of his eyes while he was floundering, like the most a real child. The girls who are watching him from the sidelines only silently drill the writhing waters JR, with their eyes before Selina finally decides to give at least some sign that she still sees everything that is happening here and reacts accordingly, because she is a little interested, they say, he is so happy, or something. And suddenly, abruptly, his former scales begin to peel off and crumble. 
pieces of old scales crumble, forming a new one. Instead of the former bright and shiny surface, the new dragon scales become more fiery and dark. Soon his whole body is covered with characteristic bright, yellow and red stripes, almost cracks, which indicate that his body is changing and becoming different. Flames are sparkling around him, which surround his hind legs and tend to twist around him more than ever, drawing the silhouette of a black dragon that slightly tilted his head forward and clenched his paw into a fist carefully looking at himself with the white gaze of his eyes, before another notification pops up with a characteristic ringing, which informs that the explosive dragon has been installed. This modification increases the following characteristics, namely total muscle strength increased by 50%, bite force increased by 200%, speed reduced by 10%, scale protection increased by 30%, limb flexibility increased by 100%. And apparently, not only his new look scares the girls, but also the huge speed of fiery sparks and tongues of fire, which also rush to them and burn. Burn clothes, exposing their breasts, because, of course, it could not have been any other way, but completely exposing, makes them squint from slight pain and blush from possible awkwardness and embarrassment. Anna immediately shouts with Selena in embarrassment, twitching to the side and simultaneously trying to somehow get away from the burning and painful flame. Waters Jr. It seems, begins to notice that something is wrong and literally after some fractions of a second, the opportunity to speak returns to him again, which he decides to use, straining himself along the way. Again, sweat slides down his temple when he slightly squints his eyes and looks at the flames that are dancing right in front of his muzzle with might and mane, before he finally finds the strength to call out to the system again and ask what it is and where it came from, because the old acquaintance again begins to explain to him, highlighting specific information in the window, along the way adding that the temperature of his heart of melting fire can reach as much as 800 degrees, at close range you can get burned. After that, the system finally adds that at such a close distance, she recommends that he add a modification of the core of the spiritual nine islands, acting as a cooling radiator, on which only 10,000 points are needed. And now it definitely looks like sucking money and everything that can only be taken from a poor and unhappy black dragon. That's what Sunyan himself thinks, who instantly changes in his face and is clearly set up, if not for a scandal, then for a couple of complaints for sure. He immediately opens his mouth wide in an instant, frowns and almost growls when he loudly wonders what the hell kind of thing it is, what kind of cooling radiator it is, before he begins to prove to the blue status window with the same loud shouts and exclamations that he is a dragon, a dragon, and not a system unit, this the same is clearly cross promouche. But the system did not lose its head, although, apparently, it even managed to strain itself from such loud and wild screams before finally almost tearfully begs and begs its owner to calm down a little, explaining everything by the fact that after installing the radiator, the core temperature of the melting fire, when it does not explode, will drop to 38.8 degrees, and besides, she added casually, he will receive as a gift one layer of a protective biological membrane, and it seems that this is really not for long, but calms her owner who decides to distract himself with what happened to his girls. He leans out from behind a corner or from behind some bushes, looks at Anna with wide and big eyes, literally devours her with his gaze, while he slightly opens his mouth and allows himself to pull out his tongue, silently watching how the blonde elf continues to blush, pressing her chest to him with her palm, trying to hide at least somehow those places where the fabric has once again already managed to burn out. It seems that after watching enough, Waters Jr finally comes to a conclusion about what should be done before he sighs in amazement and says that if it's necessary, then so be it, radiator means radiator. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now informs that the current number of his points is 18,995, Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selena's sympathy level is 170. Then, out of nowhere, come jets of water that envelop everything around him. It is as if he is covered by a huge wave, from which the black dragon can only stare in surprise at this event, opening his eyes wide and still continuing to look at what is happening with the same surprise, while those lava scars or just cracks even begin to acquire an increasingly darker shade, as if they are really someone than I extinguished it and now they are not going to light up anymore. Sunyan, who is surprised not only by this, abruptly leans back a little, frowning his eyebrows and focusing his gaze on what is happening right in front of his nose, when he notices that something that is right in the middle of his chest begins to abruptly burn with a bright and yellow light, like real lava, the lines of which lead along his entire torso and scales, which now stood out against the background of the remaining body. 
he notices out loud that there is no such burning sensation anymore, and the breeze has blown so pleasantly, and then suddenly mutters that although he spent a lot, really a lot, but it's still very cool. Immediately a blue window, already familiar to everyone and not only, pops up, which congratulates its owner and informs that the modification of the explosive dragon has been completed. The power of the combined explosion has been increased by 50%, the power of the eruption has been increased by 50%, and he himself has become much more formidable and dangerous. This also makes him think a little not only about the words of the system, but also about what literally happened to him recently which is why the black dragon slightly raises his paw, continuing to frown and look at it. Before, as if not at all impressive, he says that it's all good, of course, but then it is decided to ask the system what kind of combined explosion force is this. But then the voice is once again given by the system, calling out to the owner and asking how about he himself tried to exhale and find out what it feels like and how to use it for specific purposes. He opens his mouth wide and continues to frown thoughtfully as he looks ahead before a huge stream of scarlet flame and breath abruptly comes out of his mouth at the same moment, which swirls around and a little further than his own muzzle, heading towards his own goal, which, perhaps, was not even set with from the very beginning. And so, no matter how unexpected it would be, Anna and Selina appear right in front of him, who continue to awkwardly try to cover all the parts of the body that have become visible due to the fact that the flame recently burned both fabrics and left them in worn and not very comfortable outfits that opened up a view of everything that only it is possible. The elf herself is almost whimpering behind her friend, trying to cover her chest and lower body, but the magician, on the contrary, only seeks to get closer, simultaneously calling out to the dragon and making a claim to him, shouting that because of him all the clothes were ruined. Selina is distracted from her complaints at the same second, because she looks up in surprise when she feels and realizes that the wind has suddenly intensified, and with such power that it carried away not only the nearest leaves, but also tore off her hat forcing her to fly away, simultaneously lifting the hair of the unfortunate. Why she immediately she screamed and rushed to return her hat, or at least to make attempts to do so, pulling her hand sharply up and grabbing the fabric with it, tightly squeezing and holding it in the air, while the gusts of wind due to their old acquaintance only intensified and were not going to feel sorry for anyone, especially them. Soon these same gusts also bring flames and many sparks, because of which their clothes have suffered again, completely becoming no longer necessary and able to cover them only those parts of the body where it is so necessary. Anna generally tries to hide and hide everything with her own hands, while Selina squints and shouts that this is very, very hot, blushing slightly, and her friend does not lag behind, also squinting and calling out to Mr. Dragon, trying to tell him or somehow convey that this should not have been done, since it really hurts and is unpleasant. But the dragon, apparently, does not care, because his face doesn't really express any emotions, and he just raises his paw up and immediately shows his thumb while he blushes slightly, along the way adding loudly that wow, how cool is it, while the system itself pops up again with a bright and blue window, informing him about that a cooling radiator has been added, and now his body can automatically adjust the temperature of the eruption. But then after some time, probably within a few seconds, he suddenly notices that both of his acquaintances just suddenly found themselves in the water, which literally forced Waters Jr. to sit down next to them. He bent his head closer to them, asking why they were in the water. Anna only tried harder to dive into the water, blushing and looking pitifully at their interlocutor, simultaneously blowing bubbles out of there, while Selina awkwardly looks away and also blushes, trying to smile a little and telling him that, in fact, he ruined all their clothes, and now he also dares to ask why, and the black dragon suddenly decides that he has never actually seen Anna in a swimsuit, which means that it is necessary to find her something to dress up, for which he immediately uses the window of the system, which opens immediately in front of him and expands, it seems, at the same time opening a store where Sunyan can immediately contemplate with a thoughtful face, three swimsuits, simultaneously poking his huge claw into the lowest one, saying about himself that here they are. Another notification pops up with a characteristic sound, which informs that the owner bought exactly all those three swimsuits in the amount of 1,000 points. And after a couple of moments, the black dragon had already settled himself inside the crater with warm water, which only relaxed the body more, forcing Waters Jr. to just lean back, leaning on the earthen rim, while he himself was covering his eyes quite well. He was already wearing a new swimsuit before he himself gives out that he didn't even think about the fact that they have large-sized swimsuits for dragons. Anna, who, apparently, was sitting a little further away, reports with a smile that yes, 
How convenient. While she was laughing loudly and smiling fervently, while blush shone on her cheeks and a pink swimsuit was on her body, Selena generally decides to dive under the water column, holding her breath and squinting her eyes, and tries to shout out loudly that she has never tried it like a savage, and then adds that it's generally very cool and cool, and this swimsuit is really very comfortable to swim in. But then abruptly the black dragon suddenly has an idea that you can tell by his face, which immediately lit up. He literally jumps off his seat, which causes large waves and streams of water, before offering to arrange a tug-of-war competition for them, which, like a bolt from the blue, just took and appeared in his hand. The girls who have just finished their business and literally surfaced to look at all this, just look at their master, sweating a little and feeling obviously uncomfortable. Meanwhile, in the temple of Santalista, the bright sun is shining with might and main, which penetrates through a glass fresco near the statue of some powerful goddess, until soon another girl appears in sight, a blonde elf, if judged by her ears, who is holding a staff with a slightly strange shape in her hands. But for some reason she frowns and he turns his head to the side asking his interlocutor if they still have the strength to resist. Another girl with red hair obediently gets down on one knee in front of her and bows, lowering her head down, says that the main knight Alicia Elucutors is returning from the first fortress with an army to help. It will take her about three days. But then she turns to her highness before suggesting she just run away together. The girl standing in front of her begins to tremble violently with her whole body from anger, squeezing her staff harder, while she decides to ask again if she understood what she wanted to say at all, before she decides to add another question wondering how many people they can take with them. Her servant and informer begins almost to speak in a whisper, along the way literally wildly and plaintively apologizing, saying that she asks her majesty for forgiveness, before she sadly informs them that they will not be able to take a single person with them. She suddenly turns to that very huge statue before she kneels down right in front of it and puts her hands together as if she is going to pray. And she stubbornly replies that she will not go anywhere. She generally remains to pray that the gods protect Synth. Allest and her people, all to one. Then she decides to turn to the goddess after all, saying that she asks her, but her own servant does not let her finish, who suddenly sharply and loudly calls out to her highness. Her face has already turned slightly blue. Her eyebrows have furrowed and converged to the bridge of her nose. A drop of bi has appeared on her cheek, while she herself looks up at her from under her brows, before loudly adding that she should not ask the gods again, since they abandoned them. And then something happens abruptly that the blonde definitely could not have expected. The pink-haired one literally runs up to her quickly and abruptly, and then tries to grab her wrists in order to subsequently take them to the sides, interrupting all her prayers. Her majesty opens her eyes in surprise and almost falls back when she is so attacked from the front and from above. She even opens her mouth slightly, trying to push her away as quickly as possible or pull her wrists away altogether. But this does not happen. Instead of all this, she literally screams and asks what she is doing, but then after almost hysterically starts yelling that no, it's all wrong and she should stop, the queen or princess herself literally begs her to stop, but the servant does not answer. The pink-haired one only tries to squeeze her hands harder, calling out to her highness again and saying that even if it is against her will, she will still protect her, because this was her mission from the very beginning. She instantly throws someone else's body over her shoulder, holding the blonde by the hips and rising completely from her seat before looking forward with a frown and a dissatisfied look. And naturally, this is what happens, because her majesty suddenly starts floundering and fidgeting in place, twitching her legs and other limbs. The blonde turns her head in her direction and immediately blushes profusely, opening her eyes wide and ordering in a trembling voice to let her go. And immediately, out of nowhere, a huge, bright and blue circle begins to form, which covers the entire nearest radius, and on it itself is depicted a six-carbon star with a variety of symbols and meanings, as if it were the same portal that even the hero himself used earlier. Its components gradually begin to burn all brighter and brighter, spreading bright sparks of lightning on all sides, becoming more and more, starting from the very middle. The girl who was watching this phenomenon suddenly opens her eyes wide, clearly in complete shock from what she saw. Tears begin to form in the corners of her eyes, and she even opens her mouth a little before she shouts out in surprise and to some extent even admiringly that this is a divine miracle. Her bodyguard, who did not expect this at all, only turns her head in the direction from which the bright and bluish light came, before she opens her eyes and mouth in surprise, feeling a drop of sweat still trickling down her cheek, while she can only exclaim loudly and questioningly, they say what it means. Her majesty only still looks in surprise in the direction of where all these rays came from 
But now there was not only a statue there. The same huge, bright and blue circle that covers the entire nearest radius was now with the dragon. There stood Waters J.R., himself, who was still in the same white swimsuit, still with the same rope in his hand and just stared ahead at the elves with exactly the same surprise as they look at him. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now informs that the current number of his points is 17,995, Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selena's sympathy level is 170. All in the same church of Santalista, they all come to their senses after a clash with each other. The same huge, bright and blue circle on which the black dragon himself had stood quite calmly before, simply disappeared, leaving him in utter bewilderment and misunderstanding of what was happening. Behind him, still not moving, there is a huge statue of the goddess, the rays of the evening sunshine from the window, while Sunyan himself does not look as joyful or understanding as before. His eyes widen even more in surprise as he looks down at himself, before he decides to ask, shouting loudly and wondering what this place is and why the hell he even ended up here. The blonde is only silent, but the pink-haired one immediately throws a glance at him as soon as she hears the voice, and then opens her eyes in surprise, looking in his direction and slightly turning her head there, while the black dragon instantly throws aside her swimsuit and then frowns and presses her paw to her chin, thoughtfully stroking and looking ahead, exclusively at the same rectangular and blue window that appeared in front of him when he called out to the system and asked her in a completely friendly way to explain to him what is going on here and how did he manage to be in this place at all. But the elves notice these changes in their real world in the form of a huge black dragon, who now for some reason stood quite calmly next to the statue of their goddess, almost immediately. The pink-haired woman instantly turns 180 degrees before opening her eyes in surprise, almost shocked, while she continues to look towards the new guest in their place. Meanwhile, her servant can only point in the direction of Waters Jr. in a literally trembling voice, confirming all the guesses that only they had, loudly shouting that it was a dragon. But unfortunately, apparently, all this fear and surprise make the elf randomly unclench her fingers and reduce the pressure on her majesty's waist, which she only held on her shoulder until recently. But now the moment has come when the princess will be able to escape. Apparently, having lost her balance on someone else's shoulder, the blonde soon just falls down. But apparently, more frightened, she begins to shout loudly that she is in pain before falling with her fifth point on the dark tile, which causes a characteristic rumble that makes the other who had just continued to stand and stare at the dragon like an idol, finally pay attention to the unfortunate and beaten. She literally shudders and almost instantly rushes to her queen, at the same second falling in front of her almost on her knees. The bodyguard immediately raises her eyebrows in concern to the middle of her forehead and leans closer to her, trying to somehow bring her to her senses, while she shouts at herself that such a servant is worthy of death, before calling her highness no less anxiously, wondering if she is all right. The latter finally begins to open her green eyes at least a little bit, simultaneously blinking one and slightly trembling and shrinking until crocodile tears begin to shine in her very corners. But then she throws her gaze aside and thinks that is really the messenger of the gods. This is the same black dragon, which appeared literally in front of them in a fraction of a second. Meanwhile, he still continues to chat with his system, not paying attention to either the screams or the elves in general, because right in front of his muzzle, the blue window of the system was still shining brightly, which just informed his master that he himself had told her. After hearing the call, it was worth automatically accepting his, that's just Sunyan, apparently, was not happy. That's why he sat in front of her all frowning, boring her with his dark eyes and muttering something under his breath, something like the fact that the system really carries some nonsense. But instead of a response, the system just calmly thanks him from the bottom of its heart for the praise, which is why the black dragon just explodes, immediately hysterically shouting out who is praising her here at all, before it starts waving its paws maliciously, while steam is pouring out of his ears from indignation and anger, and on his temple already the vein swells, while the emotions continued to beat with a key. But finally, after a certain amount of time, he still manages to calm down completely, which is why soon he just turns his head to the statue, and he mutters to himself with displeasure that he has just literally passed an important stage, and here you have another task. But the blonde elf, who, as it turned out, has already completely recovered after a recent fall, raises her admiring gaze at Waters Jr., continuing to examine him before abruptly betrays that the gods have heard her prayers and apparently sent him to save Saint Aulus. But the last part of the sentence is already being served even more like a question, because she keeps looking at him with admiring sparks in her eyes. She folds her hands on her chest, slightly clenching her fists, 
or in a gesture of prayer, still closely watching her new guest. That's just the latter, for the first time in all his time in this temple, finally pays attention to her, and only because she came closer and spoke to him. The black dragon turns to her and opens his eyes wide in surprise before he raises his paw, and even points at himself a little, supposedly wondering if she really meant him. But apparently body control is still not given to him, because Sunyan does not follow his huge tail at all, which swings from side to side, and then swings at all so much that at some point it just hits the edge of the statue with its whole carcass, which is why it just breaks abruptly at the point of contact, starting to fall down, while cracks are spreading through it with might and main. This only makes the dragon's eyes open even more when he turns his head in the direction of the roar, which he himself accidentally arranged, before trying to slightly remove his tail. And now two elves who watch this from the side are just looking at the whole incident in surprise, while the blonde one is only plaintively and can shout about the statue. After some pitiful fractions of a second, they both grab their cheeks, looking at this incident with complete horror and shock, in the corners of which tears were even visible, since it was her goddess, to whom she had only recently prayed, along the way, still loudly continuing to shout about the statue while her bodyguard can only do that shouting back at her that she had fallen. But Waters Jr. himself feels only tension, which he tries to hide along the way, pressing his paw to his chin, thinking about what exactly should be said at the moment, before finally deciding to at least clear his throat in order to draw attention to his person, before adding that actually, they are God. It is unclear what this means, maybe it means we are God. But then he continues that he, in fact, does not like this statue himself, as if completely relieving himself of all responsibility. And after that, he finally leans forward, closer to them with his muzzle, and then literally shows his sharp claw at himself, carefully looking at the elves who are standing silently in front of him and he himself only decides to ask them why they still call him. Her majesty presses her hand to her chest, looking at him sadly with her blue eyes, before plaintively replying that she is the holy virgin of Santalista and it was here, on the southern mainland, that there used to be a peaceful state, but only the notorious dark beast mercenaries invaded it. They attacked innocent people, waving their swords and riding horses with might and main, while people, being completely frightened, simply rushed to run, not even able to find a decent place to hide from such terror. They, the mercenaries, not only killed and robbed, but also founded the so-called country of service. And then, for some reason, suddenly both elves just took and fell on their knees right in front of him, squinting piteously and almost crying out loud, while the Holy Virgin turns to him again, almost begging him to save her people and then she will swear allegiance to him. Because of this short event, a window is displayed, which informs that 100 more have now been added to her sympathy points. Sunyan just continues to gesture with her paws, frowning slightly and looking away, quite calmly informing her that they understood her request, and then decides to add that she now swears allegiance, and they will destroy all her enemies. The blonde elf, apparently completely desperate, suddenly decides to pull out some sharp dagger from nowhere, before the girl brings its blade to her neck, while tears were flowing down her cheeks, when she calls out to the great lord and informs him that Celestine grants him her loyalty, and her soul. Why again a blue status window pops up, which again informs that the level of her sympathy has increased by 100 points. And then another one comes out, where the system already congratulates its owner, informing him that the level of sympathy of the special character Celestine has reached a maximum of 300 points. And then, apparently, having considered that the elf is really ready to sacrifice herself for the sake of her own people, the hero sharply hits his tail right on the hilt of the dagger, which makes him immediately break out of someone else's palm and jump up forcing the girl to freeze in surprise. The Holy Virgin immediately screams loudly, clearly not expecting such an action on the part of her new master, before turning her head to the side and opening her eyes in surprise, looking at how the dagger just clatters and clinks next to her foot on the floor. And apparently, such an act on his part very upsets the unfortunate lady. She immediately turns her head back to him, while tears begin to appear in her eyes again, while she presses her hand to her chest, starting to mumble about what is so wrong. But she is immediately interrupted by Waters Jr., who leans even closer to her with his muzzle, and then points with his a sharp claw in her direction. Sunyan says that he does not need her loyalty after death, he only needs her when she is alive. And if she obeys his orders and does not betray him, then he will gladly ensure their safety. And then he suddenly straightens up and rests his huge paws on his sides, 
simply looking at her with displeasure and frowning his eyebrows, while he begins to think to himself that, they say, from his side she looks like she will stupidly believe God, and if nothing can be done, then she will just have to kill herself, to sacrifice and offer your loyalty at the same time. So I also got this terrible knife somewhere. The girl looks up at him again, slightly opening her mouth, before completely agreeing with him, calling him already a divine dragon. Immediately, a notification window pops up again, which informs that Celestine's sympathy has increased by another 100 points. Then the next one appears, where the system congratulates its owner, informing him that the level of sympathy of the special character Celestine has reached a maximum of 300 points, so he gets 3,000 points for such a great cause. And then another window pops up, where the system informs him that in a nutshell, he should definitely teach her how to increase female sympathy to the end. And naturally, such an achievement is almost a pride for the Black Dragon himself. But then his face immediately lights up with an even brighter smile when he opens his eyes wide and suddenly remembers something. And this is something, apparently, very important, since he instantly calls out to the system again and is interested. And those are the abilities that they agreed on. This fool is there a special NPC. But immediately the system responds to him, calling out to his master and advising him not to worry about it at all before adding that when he fulfills all her requests, he will receive special abilities. This information, of course, makes him react very negatively, because he immediately furiously clenches his fist and frowns, but with such force that he begins to boil again, while he shakes his fist into the void and thinks that the system is actually getting more and more cunning, understands how to persuade him to murder. Therefore, he immediately immediately turns back to this blue window with his muzzle and frowns even more, trying to portray a smile on his face and threatens his friend and raises his paw, shouting that she didn't say that at all before. But then soon this whole system world disappears, as Celestine sharply calls out to the divine dragon and so sweetly asking if she said something wrong, which made Waters J.R. Even confused for a while, looking at her with wide open eyes in surprise and raising his claw slightly before he turns away and starts walking towards the exit from the temple, while the black dragon himself only tiredly pressed his paw to his muzzle and just stared stupidly ahead, still continuing to strain only more from this whole situation and calm himself down in his head, saying that he just scored. After all, whoever called, the sooner he finishes, the calmer, so now he just needs to go and destroy the mercenaries, maybe even have time to play tug of war with Anna. And then he finally decides to get out of this damn temple. His massive body almost gets stuck in an already huge passage, but the ornament of the building just begins to disperse with cracks and gradually collapse. And while he continues to walk, soon the Holy Virgin reaches him from the side, and then so nervously brings her palms to her face to call out to the Divine Dragon and inform him that Gus Jet is leading the mercenaries of the soldiers of the fourth rank. He is very cruel and has more than 3,000 people under his command, so she already asks him, literally begs him to be more careful. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now informs that the current number of his points is 17,995, Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selena's sympathy level is 170. It remains only a mystery why the points were not added and a new mark on the level of Celestine's sympathy did not appear. After some time, the black dragon turns his head to her again, slightly awkwardly scratching himself with a claw on the muzzle, before turning back to her, asking her to better tell first about how far from her royal capital the mercenaries are, what forces they have, what she has, how many soldiers are left at all. Sunyan is already interested in all this being in her castle, holding, apparently, her recent swimsuit in her paws. The girl stands directly in front of him, raises her head, pressing her hand to her chest and blushing slightly, calling out to the divine dragon and informing him that there are more than 3,000 people under the command of Gus. The powers are diverse, from goblins with the lowest level to ogres with the highest. But then she somehow adds more sadly that now they should have already captured the sacred fortress of Felra. It's a day's journey to the capital. And then Celestine begins to say that here is under her command. And he pauses for a while, turning slightly to the side, but then she awkwardly turns to him again and starts poking her fingers, blushing more from embarrassment and embarrassment, already adding much more quietly that now she no longer has an army that could be used. Waters J.R. S. eyes almost popped out of his head from such a statement. He opens them in surprise, as well as his mouth, before loudly repeating after her and shouting that there is no army, while the thought arises in his head that it is not surprising that the girl prayed to the gods, in such a situation, only remains to ask the gods for protection. 
But then, it seems, all the recent tension or excitement simply goes away, as the black dragon immediately closes his eyes and quietly exhales, while he himself says that fortunately, he does not have time to worry, because such people are not at all like new players, they are much stronger than ordinary soldiers. Celestine just continues to stare at him in surprise, not even knowing what to say to such a thing while Sunyan himself soon comes completely back to normal, along the way nervously swallowing, slightly wrinkling his nose, adding out loud that moreover, they have ferocious soldiers of the four stages. And then he realizes that it remains only to develop a good plan, which is why he immediately gets into a characteristic pose, pressing his paw to his chin again. Meanwhile, in the sacred fortress of Felra, the situation looks just as deplorable as it seems possible at all. The majestic walls that once protected its inhabitants from enemies have now been destroyed by time and forgotten by fate. And then suddenly some kind of mossy door is knocked out by someone's purple foot, and almost a paw with huge claws. An orc of the same color comes inside after, and his face is just extremely satisfied. He grins broadly, pressing his palm to his chin, and then begins to say that it is worth saying that the women of St. Allist are so important that it is not for nothing that this is generally a seaside country. He himself soon goes outside, leaving behind a blonde girl whose body was just lying lifeless on the floor, it was all torn. With many scratches and abrasions, dried blood was already flowing from her mouth, and frozen tears were pouring from her eyes. And then, in the darkness of the room, a dark silhouette suddenly appears, which literally runs at the speed of light towards the corpse of the girl. And as soon as it stops near her with the light from the open door, you can see that this is exactly the same ordinary guy who was just dressed in a kind of armor, and was with weapons until he himself continued to look at the unfortunate victim somehow sadly and silently. And this angers the guy so much that he shouts loudly that they are all creatures, before hitting his fist right on the wall with all the dope. While from such force the stone immediately begins to grow cracks. But as it turns out afterwards, it's not just an NPC, it's a player. And this can be said because he frowns and grins his teeth, looking at the blue window that opened right in front of his face before he informs that the leader of the monsters of the 28th level is the last. But it also turns out that he communicates with his friends and acquaintances, who are visible on a kind of video link on the other side of the screen. The one with the huge sword on the edge immediately frowns his eyebrows and informs that they have accepted everything, before calling out to Ashlyn and asking him to stay undercover, as they have increased their speed. And in a maximum of three days, they will finally kill all this biomuser. But the guy almost immediately explodes from his friend's message, frowning harder and almost hysterically shouting whether he understood correctly what exactly three days later, and then lowers his gaze down. His eyes darken, his hands shake, and his teeth grind against each other as he continues to say that it's been five days since he infiltrated the mercenaries. And then he decides to ask if at least his interlocutor knows about what he had to go through during these damn five days. Alson looks again at the blue status window, where his friends clearly began to strain from such an emotional explosion, while he continued to prove to them furiously and violently, and hysterically ask them that he would stay here for another three days, would watch all this human hell, free walking idiots, and then he also shouts again that they can be reborn, roughly waving their hands, clearly intending to give someone a good thump. He clenches his fist and squints until droplets of tears begin to form on the edge of his eyes, and the player himself only opens his mouth wider, continuing to say that even if they are reborn, of course, the number of times is very valuable. But do they have a heart at all? But then another guy finally enters the conversation, raising his hand with a dark look and calling out to Ashlyn, asking him to calm down and be patient a little longer. The hero, who frowns again, clenching his fists harder, continuing to talk and communicate right in front of the girl's corpse, before he decides to shout out loudly and ask why he would calm down at all, but then it seems that the conversation stops, or his recent anger comes to not a little, because the guy has the opportunity where then find the nearest blanket, and pull it right on the corpse of the blonde girl, while he himself was again squinting and clenching his teeth, asking her forgiveness and giving some kind of promise that he would definitely avenge her. But the blue window immediately begins to answer. Someone calls out to him beforehand and informs him that they are not their own here and therefore let him forget about it. Their last goal is to seize this territory, win the game and protect their own home. But the interlocutor does not have time to finish, as Ashlyn immediately looks disgustedly in their direction and asks them to completely turn off the group channel, which makes the window immediately begin to close and narrow, forcing the interlocutors only to repeat the last part of the sentence about their main mission. The young man is standing on the ground, his gaze fixed intently on the lively monster camp in front of him, which now did not seem like that at all. 
He grips the hilt of his sword tightly before casting another glance in the direction of the whole place, while his pupil immediately narrows under the dose of another rush of adrenaline, and then he immediately rushes forward, bringing the tip of his sword up straight to the sky, while his body begins to frame bright and red aura, and he himself frowns his eyebrows more and more and opens his mouth wide, instantly rushing forward literally like an arrow, shouting that these creatures die and it is immediately clear where exactly and who he is going to run to, because right in front of him sits just the same purple orc, namely the leader of the monsters, who quite calmly drinks something from his wooden mug. And immediately, in an instant, the purple orc begins to laugh loudly, while he throws his head slightly back and shouts that he did not even think that a traitor would suddenly appear among the mercenaries, and even so stupid as to run into their networks himself. And in fact, this was clearly meant to offend the guy, but instead, Alcine only frowns harder and clenches his teeth, continuing to drill the enemy with his gaze, before again loudly shouting that he should die as soon as possible. And then, as soon as he continues to rush forward, as from somewhere else a loud sound is heard from the side of the fence, which almost immediately attracts his attention, which makes the guy freeze for a while and turn his head towards him, still frowning before suddenly wondering aloud what kind of sound it was. But only not only the hero himself reacts to it, but also the leader of the monsters, who finally leans out of his tent and also rudely yells what kind of sound it was. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now informs that the current number of his points is 17,995, Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selena's sympathy level is 170. It remains only a mystery why the points were not added and a new mark on the level of Celestine's sympathy did not appear. Meanwhile, somewhere to the side is the same level 35 Gus, who is a knight of black valor. He frowns his eyebrows and wrinkles his lips while the black dragon analyzes him, which can be told by the huge shadow that hangs over the man and covers him from the sun. And that's when Sunyan really starts to get angry. The whole air begins to be saturated with the energy of rage. His eyes, usually sparkling and full of sparkle, now turn a deadly bright red. He addresses this person, saying that this fortress wall was chosen by them as their own domain, and his presence here upsets them very much. So today they will only give them a warning. If next time they arrive and they will be here, they guarantee that they will turn them into ashes. At least, that's what waters JR himself promises Gus, who now looks completely unfriendly, because he opens his mouth wide and continues to blaze with fire, frowning his eyebrows and wrinkling his nose while his sharp pupils were focused exclusively on the person in front of him. But Gus just smiles broadly at him and puts his palm to his chest, as if speaking almost from the bottom of his heart, before turning to the great dragon and saying that he thinks there was some misunderstanding between them. This fortress is Alista, not theirs, they are just attacking this kingdom before he walks away from him and immediately presses some girl to his chest, and in his hands he holds some kind of package with very interesting contents that could be identified as some minerals or, even better, crystals, while Gus himself is still smiling brightly, not expressing absolutely there is no hostility towards Sunyan, saying that he likes to make friends with strong beings most of all, and besides, he himself is not one of those who likes to brag. In the end, he may notice something in his hands, as if the man specifically focuses on this, and then adds that, in short and simply put, they want to conclude an alliance with him. And then he raises his index finger importantly, as if casually adding that after the capture of Santalista, they will share his wealth and women. He, the Black Dragon, will get as many as nine shares, which is already a lot, well, and one will be enough for them. And this is what makes Waters J.R. really think about it and calm down his anger, which he showed initially. The hero lowers his head, but at the same time continues to frown, crossing his huge paws on his chest and averting his gaze, as if really thinking about his proposal, that's just not where it was, as they say. His eyes immediately fill with a fierce flame, shining with a bright red veil reflecting inner anger. He opens his mouth wide, literally growling, calling out to the greedy man and asking, so it turns out that they still want to grab one share, but all twenty shares belong to them. When they return, they should see that all the treasures and women are left in the kingdom, otherwise they will burn them to ashes. A huge creature tilts its head and opens its mouth, and a roaring sound begins to sound from the depths of its throat. From the burning abyss and the dragon's breath, a bright fire is gaining strength, blazing with bright red and orange flames. When a dragon releases a fiery breath, 
Fire bursts from its mouth, burning and devouring everything in its path. Meanwhile, something is happening at the sacred fortress of Felra. The sentry, who was standing right on the tower, suddenly opens his mouth in surprise, even almost choked when he decided to ask himself what it was there, while the silhouette of a familiar black dragon continues to fly forward, right at them. Naturally, soon the silhouette becomes closer and closer and the ability to see what kind of creature is heading in their direction appears, and this is Sunyan, who just continued to look ahead and confidently fly to the set goal. The sentry on duty narrowed his eyes and frowned, immediately feeling sweat trickling down his cheek. Immediately, the guy notices loudly and with a slightly trembling voice that it is a dragon, before immediately turning around and shouting towards his brothers that they are being attacked by enemies and advises everyone to run away, also continuing to shout that this is a warning for everyone, so they urgently need to inform Captain Gus. People suddenly all became alarmed clutching their weapons in the form of spears and shields more tightly, while one of them, perhaps the commander-in-chief of the detachment, shouts out to them to quickly seek shelter, and then adds that the fiery breath should not be neglected. And naturally, absolutely all of them rush away as soon as they have the opportunity, and waters J.R., himself, flying over this fortress, only grins almost to his ears, loudly shouting to the system points, that is, to people, so that they run even faster before adding that although the forces are not equal, with their number he cannot stand, but the quality is good. He stops and hovers right in the air, frowning slightly and raising his hand to his chin, thinking about something, along the way, still occasionally flapping his wings, while he begins to think aloud to himself that it's worth saying that the captain of the Black Beast mercenaries is really smart. Their camp is very dispersed, there is even soundly built channel. It also continues to hover in the air, flapping its broad wings before slightly tilting its head down. When the dragon opens its massive mouth, a huge column of spark flame begins to emerge from the depths of its throat. The fire breaks out powerfully, and various thin streams of fire mix, forming a fiery whirlwind rushing forward. When the flames capture everything that is possible, rushing completely down, embracing all those who fall under his hot hand. Two goblins and a man who immediately get numerous burns and scream loudly in pain and agony, throwing their hands up and still trying to somehow escape from it. But in the end, nothing happens. They are still screaming loudly, opening their mouths and eyes wide, while bright flames, along with sparks, embrace their bodies, shower them with heat and make them writhe from everything that they have only managed to experience at the moment. And soon their leader appears on the bridge itself or from above who frowns and looks discontentedly in his direction before calling out to the dragon and asking why he is attacking his mercenaries. The dragon was extremely angry. You could tell just by the look he threw in Gus's direction when he turned just his head in his direction. Waters Jr. just abruptly soars even stronger and further into the air, continuing to flap his wings, while behind his muzzle bright fiery sparks were all over the sky. The commander of the mercenaries suddenly starts to get nervous, shouting loudly what? before baring his teeth and pouring drops of sweat, resting his hands with a bang on the stone parts of a kind of bridge between the towers, until some fighter suddenly approaches him, who himself is tense from the whole situation, and then calls out to the captain and is interested what are they going to do now, and there's a girl standing behind the man himself somehow excitedly. Gus himself only frowns harder and looks ahead before he loudly grunts and thinks out loud about what can be done but then he himself does not answer his question, as he continues to look ahead, thinking that he does not even have the slightest idea why he appeared here this is the black dragon. There hasn't been a single dragon here for a long time. But then, it seems, the man takes all his will into his fist, as he immediately turns his head in the direction of his comrade, boring him with his displeased look and ordering in a rude tone that he should inform all elite fighters to prepare for an attack on the capital of Santalus, and several servants will remain in the feller itself, before then he dares to add that the main thing is to prevent the appearance of reinforcements. The girl behind him continues to stand silently, slightly squeezing her hands, while the servant to whom he instructed to do all this only squeezes his palms in a characteristic gesture, and then bends slightly, tilting his head down and informing the captain that he is obeying, while Gus himself abruptly pulls the sword out from behind his back, tightly squeezes its hilt in his hand, so much so that it even begins to tremble, while he himself continues to look forward and frown his eyebrows, clenching his teeth harder and putting the blade almost directly to his face, saying that it's all because of the damn dragon. There has never been a single living being who could provoke him like that without paying for it. He advises his new acquaintance not to return to his doom, otherwise. And then he begins to laugh loudly and viciously, clearly intending to avenge everything that is possible. 
Meanwhile, Sunyan, who has already managed to fly away, suddenly sneezes sharply and loudly or coughs, before asking himself who it was who decided to call him names and vilify him, and in general, to say all sorts of other nasty things. After some time, he finds himself again near Celestine, who only looks at him awkwardly and continues to blush, standing on her knees and taking off her cloak while he was looking at her. She was already flying and sitting on his back, while the dragon himself just grins at her and continues to fly among the clouds, slightly putting his front paws forward, while he calmly tells her to relax, as he is sure that they will definitely get out of there quickly. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now informs that the current number of his points is 17,995. Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selena's sympathy level is 170. It remains only a mystery why the points were not added and a new mark on the level of Celestine's sympathy did not appear. Meanwhile, the two of them go to the sacred fortress of Felra, but they are still in the wilderness, and while they are flying, the dragon finally decides to start telling her that they will protect the fortress and cut off the escape routes and after most of the troops leave, it will not be difficult to bring Felra back. The girl's eyes immediately light up with admiration when she presses her hand to her chest again and blushes slightly, answering him that this is how it is, and she didn't even think about it. Celestine calls out to the divine dragon again and tells him how cool he is after all. He turns his head to her and grins, deciding to ask, as if by chance, if her princess knight would come, because he wanted to give her the defense of Felra at the time, so that everything would be perfect for sure. The elf immediately clarifies with him, asking if he is talking about Alicia before blushing again, and then adds that she is indeed an extraordinary knight, since the image of a red-haired acquaintance immediately flashes in front of her, but she is distracted from various thoughts by Waters J.R., who adds that later her turn, and then turns her head back to continue flying. The Holy Virgin is naturally a little alarmed by such a statement, which is why she looks at him uncomprehendingly and presses her finger to her mouth, asking if she heard him correctly and whether her turn will really come, to which the black dragon immediately quickly nods and informs that everything is right, and she will need to seduce them. The blonde immediately blushes even more than before and grabs her cheeks, shouting out whether she understood correctly that they would need to be seduced while she was already all pink. After some time, they both arrive at the sacred fortress of Felra, on the spire, where the girl is already standing on the ground and stretching out her arms, begins to shout loudly that they are vile and insignificant people, and then orders them to surrender. But she is standing at the very height, which is why the monsters that were standing below only look at each other uncomprehendingly, as if they did not expect this at all, and then decide to turn around after all at the loud scream that they just heard. And then they see Celestine, also beautiful, in a white dress and with her staff, which she continues to hold in her hand, standing on the very edge. And of course, it has an intoxicating effect on them. They both immediately start drooling and look at her with a very strange look with desire, instantly telling each other how cool she is, and even came by herself. But then she suddenly begins to tremble all over, folds in half and frowns, loudly saying that she warns them not to approach. Otherwise, that's just the elf does not have time to finish, because both of these friends appear right in front of her, who literally hover over the unfortunate girl and instantly begin to tease her and laugh at her, wondering, otherwise, what she will do, kill them, and then they start laughing loudly, while the holy virgin is still trembling from their presence, especially so close. She immediately begins to lean back, showing the full spectrum of disgust on her face, before deciding to ask how they even know what she was going to say at that moment, but the monsters do not respond. The goblin pulls his clawed paw towards her, right to her chest, adding aloud how tender the skin is, while the girl is still trying to pull away, shouting loudly, saying no and ordering him to fuck off. And then, when both clawed hands overtake her, she shrinks and folds her palms in a gesture of supplication, starting to cry and scream, loudly calling out to the divine dragon and begging him to come to the rescue. And then suddenly a bright flash of light flashes in the sky and a couple of explosions are heard, which makes the goblin look up in surprise, and noticing that this is happening, he wonders what it is, while the elf continues to cry and blush. And either from this very flash, or from the other side, Sunyan suddenly appears, who is also in the sky and looks down at them, wondering aloud how, if he is in the mood to kill them. The monsters immediately raise their surprised glances at him now, visibly tensing, while one of them says in a trembling voice that it is a dragon, and then shouts even louder that the black dragon has returned. But they don't have time to do anything else, as Waters J.R. immediately opens his mouth and directs a huge plume of fire at them, forcing them to cry out loudly in pain, 
while from such a temperature they literally immediately turn into ashes. Celestina, meanwhile, only covers herself with her hand and squints slightly, shouting that it's hot, watching the bright flames continue to play next to her. After some time, still in the same sacred fortress of Felra, near the Posad, some guy falls exhausted from above right on top of some huge pot with a strong roar. And as it turns out later, this is Alcine, who soon sits down on the ground and exhales, saying aloud to himself that he at least managed to survive, before asking himself where the black dragon came from in the first place. But then he is suddenly distracted by a bluish status window that appears right in front of him, and from there someone loudly tries to call out to him, repeating his name all the time, and then wondering what's going on there, before he calls the guy by name again and asks him to answer. But the hero does not answer, since from where then the bleeding corpse of some monster falls sharply, to which he immediately pays attention and tries not to vomit from such a sight, holding his mouth with his hand, before finally turning to face the status window and his friends with whom he talked before, deciding to report that the mercenaries have already gone to the royal capital of Santalista, so he no longer needs to be undercover. His interlocutor immediately begins to be concerned about why and what happened in general, before he screams loudly at all, asking, they say, did he really give himself away? To which Alcine answers more calmly, looking at the screen, that it doesn't matter anymore. The Black Beast mercenaries were suddenly attacked by a black dragon. They seriously injured. Besides, this dragon will come back. He frowns slightly, continuing to look at them and report that, according to his assumptions, Gus will no longer linger. He will directly attack the royal capital. He will not even stop on the way to have fun in the villages. Meanwhile, in the village of newcomers number three, Heavenly Dynasty, there is some kind of meeting, at the head of which a bearded man sits and asks if he understood correctly that it was all a dragon, but then grins at something of his own and looks at others before adding that it's very good, and then he decides to ask if they have a chance to pacify him. Ashlyn, who apparently reported all this, frowns and says that he sent the video, so let them watch it first before he thinks irritably to himself. They say, what kind of jokes are these? Because this dragon already has level 32 and stage 4, there is no one who could subdue him. After some time, a guy turns to that man, who raises his finger to the blue window with the download icon, calling out to his teacher and informing him that Ashlyn sent a video with a dragon, to which the latter only whoops, clearly ready to watch it. Indeed, soon a dragon appears on the screen, but in a very strange pose that does not really correspond to reality, before immediately other students are horrified, shouting that this simply cannot be. A level 32 monster of stage 4, someone in general admires what an amazing body he has. The man, noticing this, frowns before starting to talk about what he heard that the village of Sakura newcomers was destroyed by a dragon. Apparently, they underestimated the strength of the aborigines of this world, especially this legendary beast. He is immediately approached by some other old man who asks him if he is exaggerating, and then begins to say that he only defeated Felra, judging by the information provided by Ashlyn. The defenders of the fortress were just cannon fodder, but the teacher frowns and shakes his head, quite calmly saying that there is no need to be afraid of a ferocious monster. Who is really worth being afraid of is the human mind, especially the dragon mind. After following him for enough time, you can notice that the dragon specifically flies away, then returns, and also understands what a false attack is. He suddenly frowns harder and looks ahead, continuing to say that if in other worlds all the legendary beasts were like this, he is afraid that it would be difficult for them to win the game, so they will not only subdue the people of this world, but also the monsters. Immediately, a notification about the system is displayed sharply at everyone, which says that a news update has arrived and a new boss of the world has appeared, which makes them immediately shout what loudly and in amazement, staring at the screens. After some time, Celestine stands with the hero again and calls out to the divine dragon, blushing slightly and starting to say that it is about half a day's journey from the sacred fortress of Felra to the royal capital, and then wonders what they should do before Waters Jr. asks her to order the villagers to take shelter at home, because so they can avoid unnecessary deaths, and they themselves will wait by the sea for the weather. The holy virgin immediately agrees, again calling him a divine dragon. But then, with a characteristic ringing, a notification comes to him, which says that a new boss of the world has appeared. This immediately makes Sunyan himself grin loudly, while he pokes his claw directly into the blue screen, 
Before saying out loud, they say, let him see now what kind of unfortunate monster and who was so quickly marked as the boss of the world. And there, of course, is his photo, but he does not recognize himself, also saying out loud that the new boss of the world is too disgusting. But then he brings his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and suddenly begins to tense up, adding to himself that it's strange in general. But why does he seem so familiar to him? Immediately, a characteristic sound is heard again, which speaks of a new notification that came from his system, which informs that his relatives destroyed the village of newcomers, and the reward is only in the process of delivery. He opens his eyes wide in surprise, clearly not understanding what is happening and what it means, before immediately grabbing his head, screaming loudly, What the hell? He's the unfortunate one and his relatives. He doesn't know at all what they've done in these two days. He immediately panics when he falls to the ground and begins to literally roar, howling and saying that he will not survive, while an elf woman approaches him from behind, who looks at him uncomprehendingly and again calls out to the divine dragon, asking if he is okay. But Waters Jr. doesn't listen, looks up and thinks that it's not even worth going back, and their Anna doesn't even know what's going on. In the evening, he will return for a minute, and assumes that everyone already knows that he is the boss of this world. A huge, bright and blue circle begins to form, which covers the entire nearest radius, a portal that glows with fire, while Sunyan himself stands in front of the elf and clears his throat, clearing his throat before saying that they felt the spirit realm calling them. They will leave for a while, but don't worry, so how they will return immediately. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now informs that the current number of his points is 17,995. Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selena's sympathy level is 170. It remains only a mystery why the points were not added and a new mark on the level of Celestine's sympathy did not appear. And soon the black dragon with the help of this portal moves back to his cave, and as soon as he comes out of it, he immediately strives towards the cave, loudly calling out to Anna, Selena and even Ippolyclea, before asking himself about himself that there really is no one, but then turns his head and sees how one of the monsters just he sleeps with his back pressed against the wall, holding his spear, before shouting loudly and calling out to him, calling him to wake up, which makes the latter immediately jump up in his place and shudder, opening his eyes wide and loudly asking who dared to enter. And there comes a moment when they just collide with each other's gaze, silently looking at each other for a while, before the mustachioed Hippolytus immediately rushes to the black dragon almost at his feet, immediately starting to cry loudly and joyfully calling out to the owner, saying that he dodged, and then immediately begins to report that that's when he saw him and everything immediately became fine. Waters Jr., who didn't seem particularly impressed by this, just decides to ask while he was gone if anything happened to which the monster immediately straightens up and wipes his tears, calling out to his master again and saying that he disappeared so suddenly that they thought he was possessed some kind of evil force. So Anna and the leader decided to head east to look for his tracks. Meanwhile, the black dragon realizes that they should be in the number one novice village right now. Meanwhile, there is still the same complete devastation. Only the cooling fire and stones indicate that there really was a small massacre with a dragon. Both girls are standing in the moonlight on some plain, Looking ahead, before Anna calls out to Hippolytus and asks if there are still traces of Mr. Dragon, to which he simply kneels in front of them and bows his head, answering in the negative and confirming that there is still nothing like that. The girl remembers how some beaten man, apparently, who got it from herself, only answered loudly that they did not see any black dragon, and in general, she made a mistake in the place, to which she immediately lowers her head down and remarks aloud with sorrow that it looks like he I didn't lie. He really isn't here. Here, the elf girl gets into a pose and points her finger in the other direction, shouting that then they should go forward, before some voice loudly calls her name, which makes Anna immediately turn her head towards the source of the sound, which makes her open her eyes in surprise and mentally notice that this voice belongs to her Lord Dragon, and Waters Jr. is really hovering over them right now, slowly landing back while he quietly exhales and thinks that he returned on time. Anyway, he did not think that she, it turns out, had such a talent in military affairs. He'll come back in the evening for a minute and thinks he can drive Henrius away. As soon as he lands, Selina immediately runs up to him, who pokes her finger at him and calls out, asking where he ran away at all, before adding that he disappeared so unexpectedly when they were bathing in a hot spring, to which Sunyan tries to prove that he didn't want it at all, but the girl only he snorts and says that she doesn't want to know anything and then adds that Anna was very worried about him. The black dragon only thinks to himself with disappointment that the damn system is to blame for everything. 
and then the voice is given by the elf, who immediately blushed wildly for some reason and begins to speak in a stuttering voice that if everything is alright with Mr. Dragon, then everything is fine. But then he suddenly feels and sees some bright yellow glow, which he immediately turns his attention to, and then begins to squint and think to himself what it is, and even so he blinds his eyes before he even opens his mouth, while this incomprehensible glow becomes stronger. But when he opens eyes, then he sees huge piles of gold in front of him, and another Hippolytus, who salutes him and calls out to the owner, saying that it was all taken away from the villagers, to which Sunyan is only surprised to think that it turns out that it was possible to play like that. And who else is the evil dragon here? He may often lack perversions, but they are definitely alien to him. He instantly opens his mouth wide and begins to literally suck all that gold into himself with a rapid flow of air, which immediately pops up a status window that informs that the owner has absorbed 497,000 grams of gold. The absorption of a high level will now be analyzed. And then the system congratulates him, informing him that gold increases the strength of the scales by 1.1% and the resistance to fire by 1.7%. She also congratulates the owner once again, informing him that he also receives one fragment of the core of the village of novices. After congratulating him for the third time, informing him that he also receives 20,000 system points. Immediately, the dragon examines its slightly golden scales before the system calls out to its owner again and asks him if he can't buy a system back, and then warns that then he will easily lose everything, to which waters JR in his head only threatens her and tells her not to even think of him like that easy to hold. Meanwhile, in the capital of Sant Alista, where the sun is shining brightly, Alicia enters the castle, who calls out to her highness and informs her that the mercenaries are approaching the capital, before she wonders where the divine dragon has flown to, to which the second elf only pitifully raises her eyebrows and looks at her, loudly crying out whether she understood her correctly, and in general, why so quickly, shouldn't they were to come in the evening? Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now informs that the current number of his points is 17,995, Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selena's sympathy level is 170. It remains only a mystery why the points were not added and a new mark on the level of Celestine's sympathy did not appear. Alicia comes closer to her and calls out to Her Majesty again, before she starts talking about how since the mercenaries left the village to loot, they did not have more soldiers to stop them. They accelerated. From such information, the girl almost jumps, and then looks at her and blushes slightly, sadly noticing that but the divine dragon returned the sacred land last night, to which her commander-in-chief only opens her eyes in surprise and shouts what, still looking at her, before reaching out to the saint the virgin calls out to her majesty again, saying that they can still leave, but she tilted her head for a second before looking at her again and raised her staff up before intently asking, run away. After some time, a guy and Gus are sitting on horses in front of a huge castle, who informs him that the royal capital of Santalista is ahead. His interlocutor only frowns with displeasure and remarks that it is very strange that they have passed so many villages and there were no traces of troops in any of them. There was not even anyone to fight them back, so did they all escape quickly. But then suddenly, with a bang, the end of the staff hits the ground, which makes all the guys nearby shudder and look up, which makes them see Celestine in front of them, who frowns and continues to squeeze her weapon heading forward, looking down at them, while the guy who was standing next to Gus immediately starts calling out his captain, reddening along the way, and asking him to look before loudly announcing that the Holy Virgin has come out on the city wall. And then suddenly the door to the castle creaked and began to open little by little, before a variety of girls who are dressed in specific outfits appear from there, all blushed, and immediately began to shout loudly to them, informing them that the soldiers had come, and then they stretch out their hands to them and with the same loud exclamation ask them to go to him, as if enticing, like real incubi. And immediately the guys who were standing in front of them begin to blush themselves. One of them rushes forward in an instant, calling and shouting to the captain that they will attack the city directly. They already have no soldiers at all. There is nothing on the wall. They can easily break them. The others are happy to support him in this, loudly shouting yes, yes, before Gus immediately turns his head to them and orders them to shut up in a rude tone and shout, before asking if they really followed him for so long that all their brains fell into their pants. What idiots. And then he starts saying that something is strange here, it's definitely a trap. Before he orders to gather all the soldiers and send water to the moat, they will not attack the city, but will besiege it, cutting off all supply lines. In less than a few days, they will come out begging them. 
His accomplice immediately grins broadly and calls the captain very wise, shouting that only a strategist like him could come up with such an amazing plan. He himself grins, calling out to the Holy Virgin and ordering her to stop resisting and voluntarily become a vassal, and then maybe he will let her crawl between his legs. Immediately, loud guffaws and laughter are heard, while Celestina herself clenches her lips and says that they only dream, because they have slaughtered her people, invaded her kingdom, and now they also want to desecrate the capital of Santalista, and even if she dies, she will take them all with her to hell. But Gus only asks her if this is true before he grabs a girl standing closer and says that all her people are in the villages nearby, then they will hang them at the city gates. He presses the tip of his sword to the neck of the unfortunate girl, grinning and asking her to look into his eyes, continuing to say that the death of men, the rape of women, will she easily watch this, again calling out to Her Majesty the Holy Virgin. She only awkwardly begins to mumble that there is no, and then turns to the mistress, begging her to save her, because she absolutely does not want to die. Celestine just frowns. What? What scoundrels? The girl looks very angry, but then suddenly opens her eyes wide and blushes when she hears a familiar voice that says that they, of course, have come up with a perfectly good idea, but they will just die. The elf raises her head up and literally begins to glow all over, smiling brightly and shouting that yes, the divine dragon has returned. And indeed, now Sunyan is looming over the kingdom, who is trying to dive down right into the crowd. While they look at him and start shouting that this is the dragon who attacked them in Felra, he is with the Holy Virgin. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now reports that the current number of his points is 37,995. Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selina's sympathy level is 170. It remains only a mystery why the points were not added and a new mark on the level of Celestine's sympathy did not appear. The black dragon, blazing with fire, shouts that everything is right and it's them. Gus raises his head at him and clenches his fist, saying that it's no wonder he attacked Felra, damn it. Sunyan is spinning in the air and continues to shout that the sun is beautiful today, but their hearts are cold and unclean, so they will gladly help them. And then he turns to the scorching core, saying that he has disappeared among people. And then the hero opens his mouth, releasing a huge fiery breath, pointing directly at the guys, who immediately run away from the line of fire, shouting to others and ordering them not to stand still and run away. And the man then shouts loudly that he should not forget that he himself is a warrior of the fourth level. But this will not surprise Waters Jr. He just asks, and so what if the opponent stretches out his arm and shows his biceps, asking if he dares to go one-on-one, -on -one, before adding that they are both of the fourth level. And although humans are not rivals to dragons, but he is not like everyone else. He is a battle-hardened captain of the Black Beast mercenaries, and then adds that pikes are the best weapon. After that, he stretches out his hand to the goblins and shouts for them to give him a pike, and as soon as it is in his hands, he gets into a pose, continuing to say that sometimes skill can compensate for the difference in strength by concentrating it at one point and attacking the Achilles heel of the enemy, even if this enemy is a dragon. The man shouts that he will definitely die, throwing the spear with all his might directly towards Sunyan. But he calmly dodges the weapon, beating it off with his paw and looking down. Gus opens his mouth wide and yells that this can't be, while thinking to himself about how a dragon can have such strong scales. What kind of creature is this in general? He instantly grabs a couple dozen more spears, which he immediately throws towards his enemy, saying that this is a long-range attack of chain pikes. The hero calmly fights them off with his wing, asking if toothpicks are also called weapons now. Why the enemy lowers his head and wonders if it's worth using that technique. While a boy runs up to him from behind and asks the captain, they say, is he really going to use this technique? And then the man grabs some ball and he shouts out that it's fine and now there will be a strong reception. The dragon catches the ball with its claws and wonders what it is, while smoke starts pouring out of this object with might and main from which Sunyan starts coughing, shouting out what the hell is this, and even stings his eyes. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now reports that the current number of his points is 37,995, Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selina's sympathy level is 170. When the smoke dissolves, Gus is no longer in place, and the black dragon just screams that yes, this show-off would go to hell since we agreed one-on-one, -on -one, and he ran away. Goblins start crying to the side, calling out to the captain and literally begging him not to leave the squad, since they will not survive without him. But then the muzzle of Waters Jr. appears behind them, from which everyone freezes in horror. 
he instantly opens his huge mouth, in which a bright flash of flame can be seen, which immediately heads in their direction, while they continue to shout that they should run and how hot it is. Meanwhile, Celestine calls out to the Divine Dragon and asks him if they should catch up with Gus and his mercenaries who escaped, to which he turns his head to her and replies that it is not necessary, since they will not escape. Gus is already running at the sacred fortress of Felra, who continues to shout that they say, Here's a damn dragon, the damn duchy of Santalista, they will all wait for him. He will climb the eastern mountain again, and then. But someone's voice does not let him finish. Who is interested from above, and what will happen next? Before Alicia Lucuters appears in front of his eyes, why the man raises his head at her, calls her by her full name and asks if she is not in a border fortress, how she ended up in Felra and then adds, what is clear is that this is his territory. Immediately, Waters Jr. appears from above, who shouts that it's all because Felera has been captured by them. He calls him a pathetic worm and opens his mouth to shoot out his dragon breath. He looks at it in horror and asks how it is, before he is completely overtaken by fire. And then a blue status window appears, which says that he has successfully destroyed the Black Beast mercenary squad. He is awarded 6,000 points. After some time in the capital of Santalista, the elves immediately bow down to him, saying that they are very grateful for the help of the Divine Dragon. But then he turns to Celestine and asks her to stand up, saying that they helped her state to repel this catastrophe, so as a reward she will become his vassal, and swear allegiance to him. She immediately turns to the Divine Dragon, informing him that she, Celestine, on behalf of Sin. Allis from today voluntarily becomes his vassal and now she was completely at his service. A notification pops up that informs that the host has fulfilled the request of a special S-level character Celestine. The vassalage agreement came into force. If the vassal dies, then all his powers will be transferred to the master. If the master dies, then the vassal will die next. The current status of her sympathy, fanatic, as well as a channel for appeals has been established. The system congratulates its owner that he gets 3,000 points. The Black Dragon notices that there are only 3,000 points, although the difference between the characters is quite large, and then calls out to the system, wondering how the special ability is this time and if there are no additional conditions. She immediately calls out to the owner and asks, they say, they trust each other, before congratulating him on receiving a new ability, the hot power of the dragon. The dragon's hot power makes his dragon power fiercer. It can not only make his enemies tremble with fear, but also increase damage when attacking. The hot power of the dragon represents an increase for a special character of Celestine's level. You can download now, no changes are required, as well as pain trials. The system asks if it is worth downloading, to which he immediately agrees, saying that now they will see what quality this hot dragon power is. Immediately, the window informs that it has been downloaded before he immediately uses it, jerking his body sharply. The girls try to cover themselves, shouting loudly and just talking about what a strong wind it is. The dragon only looks at his paw, where vortices are formed. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now reports that the current number of his points is 37,995, Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selena's sympathy level is 170. But then he awkwardly scratches himself on the back of the head and asks them for forgiveness, saying that he could not restrain himself, before he begins to think that although the dark golden flame does not really have any power, only a change in Dragon Kai, but it is beautiful. The status window pops up again, informing you that all skills have been increased by 15% during the use of dragon power. Celestine calls out to the divine dragon, wondering if he is flying away, to which he immediately responds positively, saying that he is flying away, but first you need to do some business. The elf immediately wonders what the matter is and whether she can help him with this, but he only asks in response if they have a witch here, to which the holy virgin asks in surprise if she understood everything correctly. Sunyan responds positively, saying yes, and then adds that maybe even a healer, to which Alicia already approaches and asks him if he means the mysterious witch Huey, who lives in the fortress, but she never lives in one place. Besides, during the whole this war, they could not find out exactly where it was. She calls out to the divine dragon and says that it would not be better for him to stay here for a few days, and they will try to find and bring Huey to him. The hero agrees, adding that it looks like this is the only way, to which Celestine happily says that then she will immediately order that his chambers be prepared. Soon the girl is lying on the bed in her chambers, thinking about what a divine dragon is brave, but then she hears a sound at the door, from which she rises slightly and asks in surprise who is there. Her majesty is hailed by Alicia, 
who informs that it is her, to which she immediately receives an invitation to enter. Going inside, she calls out to her again and asks how she can sleep at such a time, while the elf looks up at her, calling her by name and asking what happened. Did the mercenaries attack again? And when she is about to get up, the girl calls out to her again and says that she did not say that. And the fact that her heart desires a divine dragon. Celestina blushes in an instant and begins to answer that no and let her not say stupid things. But the interlocutor again tells her majesty that maybe if her heart doesn't say that, then she doesn't want the divine dragon to stay. The girl replies that of course she wants this very divine dragon to stay. She bends down to her ear and begins to whisper that then she can. But the elf immediately pushes her away and shouts that she can't, and how can you seduce a deity at all? Alicia crosses her arms over her chest and asks, they say, does it mean that she really wants the divine dragon to leave? And then shrugs and adds that one way or another, she only suggested that she choose what to do. Celestina moves to Sunyan's chambers, thinking out loud that the divine dragon will not be angry with her for this, and then adds that she only has to think about her new acquaintance leaving before adding that it's enough to die, so die and then opens the door, calling out the black dragon and informing her that she had business with him. Meanwhile, another status window pops up again, which now informs that the current number of his points is 46,995, Anna's sympathy level is 300, and Selena's sympathy level is 170. The Sacred Fortress of Felra, the Wilderness After most of the troops left, the dragon reported that it would not be difficult to bring Felra back. They will defend the fortress and cut off the escape routes. The girl was thinking that she hadn't even thought about it before. The divine dragon was very masculine and as unusual as she thought. The dragon was interested, asking about the princess knight, addressing the girl. After all, the dragon wanted to hand over Felra's defenses to her at the time, so that everything would be perfect for sure. The princess guessed that the dragon was probably talking about Alicia, and the princess thought that Alicia was indeed an extraordinary knight, remembering her. The dragon informed that then it would be the princess's turn, addressing the girl. When she heard about it, she was very surprised, and the dragon informed her that this was true and that she would need to use her feminine charms. Upon hearing about this, the princess was very confused. At that moment, they were just looking towards the sacred fortress of Feller, they were near the spire. The girl started screaming that they were vile and insignificant people and had to give up. The orcs and goblins, hearing her, turned to the girl's call. At that moment, they thought about how beautiful she was, and even came to them herself. The girl was trying to play her role. The princess stood on the fortress, holding her weapon in her hands. And showing her weapon, the girl screamed, warning her opponents not to approach. Otherwise, before they could finish, they were already next to her, wanting to hear more. Coming closer to her, the orcs thought that she would probably kill them. They started laughing at her. The girl was shaking with fear at that moment, not understanding how they knew that she was going to do exactly that. At that moment, they tried to touch her by looking at her snow-white skin. The girl, seeing how they were pulling their paws towards her, immediately began to scream, because it was, of course, unpleasant for her. With tears in her eyes, she prayed and asked the divine dragon to come to her aid. At that moment, a dragon came at her call. There was an explosion in the sky, which attracted the attention of the princess's opponents, that they were distracted from her and turned their gaze to the sky. Goblins and orcs looked at the place where the explosion was, did not understand what it was. And the dragon, who had already appeared in the sky at that moment, was wondering if he was in the mood to kill them today, asking these questions out loud and turning his attention to the despicable orcs and goblins. The orcs and goblins, after looking at him, now realized that it was a dragon, and not just a dragon, but a black dragon that had returned. The opponents were terrified and our hero, taking advantage of the moment, decided to attack them with his flame, spewing it at them. The princess was hiding only from this flame, being nearby, near the sacred fortress of Felra, Posad. The young man who hid from the dragon was very glad that he at least survived, not understanding where this black dragon came from. Then someone called his name, like Ashlyn, trying to figure out what was going on there and he was persistently asked to answer. At that moment, the young man saw the bodies of those whom the dragon had recently incinerated fall in front of him. Ashlyn saw that the mercenaries had already gone to the royal capital of St. Alista, so therefore it would be necessary not to be undercover anymore. But a voice answered him on the screen, not understanding what had happened. They thought that the young man must have betrayed himself. At that moment, Ashlyn, who was talking with several young men who communicated with him through the system, decided to tell everything. The guy explained that it didn't matter anymore. The Black Beast mercenaries were suddenly attacked by a black dragon, and they were seriously injured. 
In addition, this dragon will return, as far as the young man understood, and according to his assumptions, Gus will no longer linger. He will directly attack the royal capital. He won't even stop on the way to have fun in the villages. Beginner Village Number 3 Heavenly Dynasty Having gathered at the table, at that moment people were discussing the dragon, because it was very good. They probably, as they thought, had a chance to pacify him, the chief said, addressing everyone else. Ashlyn, addressing his friends, explained that he had sent them a video, and they had to watch it first. The young man thought to himself that he did not understand what kind of jokes they were, because this dragon already has 32 levels, stage 4, and there is no one who could subdue him. Addressing the teacher, the young man reported that Ashlyn had sent a video with a dragon. At that moment, a video appeared on the system screen, where a black dragon was clearly visible. When everyone looked at him, they couldn't believe their eyes, because it was a level 32 monster of stage 4. He had an amazing body and they were all scared, of course. The teacher heard that the village of Sakura newcomers was destroyed by a dragon and apparently they underestimated the strength of the aborigines of this world, especially this legendary beast. The man next to him was trying to figure out if the teacher was exaggerating, because the dragon had only defeated Felra, and he reported that judging by the information provided by Ashlyn, the defenders of the fortress were just cannon fodder. The teacher explained that the ferocious monster was not worth being afraid of, and what was really worth being afraid of was the human mind, especially the dragon mind. After following him for enough time, you can see that the dragon specifically flies away, and then returns. It was also noticed that the dragon also understands what a false attack is. If all the legendary beasts in other worlds were like this, the teacher would be afraid that it would be difficult for them to win this game. Therefore, they will not only subjugate the people of this world, but also the monsters, the confident teacher reported. Then a news announcement appeared on all screens and a new boss of the world appeared. All the guys looked at the screen in surprise and tried to figure out who it was about. Meanwhile, the princess was thinking about what they needed to do, turning to the divine dragon for help. After all, it's about half a day's journey from the sacred fortress of Felra to the royal capital. It was necessary to order the villagers to take shelter at home, so as to avoid unnecessary deaths. The dragon explained that after that they would wait for the right moment. The girl agreed with the divine dragon. Drac was distracted by his screen, and the dragon also got a notification that announced the new boss of this world. The dragon was interested to see what kind of unfortunate person was so quickly marked as the boss of the world. And at that moment, the new boss of this world appeared to him on the system, and he was a dragon too. It seemed to our hero that he was so disgusting, but at the same time, this new boss seemed very familiar to him. The system reported that his relatives were destroying the village of newcomers. The reward is in the delivery process. When he heard this, he realized that this unfortunate man was himself. And speaking of his relatives, he was completely unaware of what they had done in those two days. Seeing that the dragon was upset, the girl did not understand if he was okay. He tearfully reported that he simply would not survive. He thought to himself that he shouldn't even have come back, and their Anna doesn't even know what's going on. The dragon decided that he would return for a minute in the evening. He believed and so everyone knows that he was the boss of this world. The dragon reported that he felt them being summoned by the spirit realm. Addressing the princess, our hero said that he would be away for a while, so he asked not to worry, because they would return immediately. At that moment, the current score was 17,995. Anna's liking level, 300. Selena's liking level, 170. The dragon moved into the cave and summoned Anna and Selena, as well as Ipoliclia. But no one responded to his voice and he thought that probably no one was here. At that moment, he saw the guardian sleeping and the guardian waking up trying to figure out who was trying to pass him by. Our hero looked at the guard carefully and realized that he had screwed up. The guard saw that the owner had returned and rushing to his feet reported that the owner had returned. He saw him and everything became fine. The only thing the owner was interested in was whether anything had happened while he was away. The guard said that the owner suddenly disappeared and they thought that some evil spirit had possessed him. Therefore, Anna and the chief decided to head east to look for their tracks. Our hero realized that they should have been in the number one novice village by now. The number one novice village was in chaos. The two girls who were looking for our hero and I politely understood that there were still no traces of Mr. Dragon. The young man, bowing his head in front of the girls, reported that he was still not there. They didn't see any black dragon, all the people they interrogated reported. The girls were very upset, because it looks like the dragon really wasn't here and then it was necessary to move forward. 
At that moment, they heard a familiar voice. When they turned around, the girls heard that it was the voice without the Dragon Master. When they saw him in the sky, they realized that he had returned. Our hero is watching two girls and what they were doing. Because he returned on time, he did not think that the girl had such a talent in military affairs. The dragon will return in the evening for a minute and thought he could drive Henrius away. Well, when the girls saw the dragon, they did not understand where he had run away. The dragon disappeared so suddenly while they were bathing in a hot spring. Selina didn't know anything, but she was very worried about him. Our hero explained that he didn't want this, it was just the system's fault, he thought to himself. At that moment, Anna was thinking that if Mr. Dragon was all right, then she was glad. Then something began to dazzle his eyes and he saw that a lot of gold had been taken from the villagers for the owner. When our hero saw this mountain of gold, he thought that it was probably possible to choose like that. But who the evil dragon was here, he did not understand at all. He might often miss it, but they were definitely alien to him. Our hero started collecting all the gold coins he had. So the system reported that the host had swallowed 497,000 grams of gold. The absorption of a high level is analyzed. The next moment, the system congratulated the host. Gold increases the strength of scales by 1 and 1%, fire resistance by 1.7%. The system also congratulated the owner, because he gets one piece of the core of the village of beginners. The host was also congratulated for receiving 20,000 system points. If the owner couldn't buy a system bag, then he would easily lose everything. Our hero tried to inform the system so that it would not even think about spending it in this regard. Meanwhile, in the capital of St. Alista, heading towards the building, the girl saw that her highness was reporting that the mercenaries were approaching the capital. But where the divine dragon had flown to, she did not understand at all. Her friend did not understand why so quickly, because they were supposed to come in the evening, as it seemed to her. The current number of points was 37,995. Anna's liking level, 300. Selina's liking level, 170. Addressing her highness, her ward explained that since the mercenaries had left the village to loot, they had no more warriors to stop them. They accelerated. At this moment, the princess thought that this divine dragon had returned to the sacred land last night. Upon hearing this and addressing her highness, it was explained to her that they could still escape, but the girl was not ready to escape. Meanwhile, the guys finally saw the royal capital of St. Elise in front of them, which was right in front of them. But it was all very strange, as it seemed to them, they had passed so many villages and there were no traces of troops in any of them. There wasn't even anyone to fight them back, they were thinking that maybe they had all run away. At that moment, the princess gathered her entire army, and the guys, turning to the captain, offered to look at the holy virgin who came out on the city wall. At that moment, the girls asked them to come in here as soon as possible. Turning to the captain, the guys believed that they would go straight to the city. They already didn't have any soldiers at all. Speaking of girls, they were all on the wall and they could easily smash them, said one of the soldiers. The captain asked them to calm down, because they had been following him for so long that they must have completely despaired. The captain thought it was strange, and that it was definitely a trap. It was necessary to gather all the soldiers and poison the water in the moat. They would not attack the city but lay siege to it, cutting off all supply lines, the captain thought this was the best idea. The captain believed that in a few days the girls would be begging for mercy themselves. It seemed to his guys that the captain was so wise. Only a strategist like him could come up with such an amazing plan. They praised him. The captain only thought that the Holy Virgin should have given up resisting and voluntarily become a vassal, and then maybe he would let her crawl between his legs. The princess was watching them from the wall at that moment, thinking that they could only dream about it. After all, they had slaughtered her people, invaded her kingdom, and now they wanted to desecrate the capital of Santalista. Even if she died, she decided that the princess would take them all with her to hell. If the princess really thought that, then the men thought that in the villages nearby, everyone was her people. Then they would just hang them at the city gates and offer to look them in the eye. After all, the death of men and the bad attitude towards women, which she easily observed this, addressing her highness the holy virgin, the captain asked. At that moment, he was holding one of the girls in front of him, and this girl asked the lady to save her, because she did not want to die. The princess didn't like the way the men behaved very much. She thought they were scoundrels. At that moment, she heard a familiar voice that reported that the guys had come up with a good idea and decided that they would just die soon. The princess understood that the divine dragon had finally returned, and the soldiers realized that it was the same dragon that attacked them in the filter when they saw him and they realized that he was with the holy virgin. The singing holy dragon was already ready to attack them. 
At this point, the current score was 37,995, and Anna's liking level was 300. Selena's liking level was 170. The system informed our hero, as always. The dragon understood that they were afraid of him now and decided that they should be even more afraid of him. The soldiers understood that it was not surprising that he was the one who attacked Felra. The dragon kept talking about how beautiful the sun was today, but the appearance in the heart is cold and unclean, so he will gladly help them. At that moment, he began to spew his flames directly at the soldiers in front of him. The soldiers began to run away in panic, so as not to be buried under this flame. One of them shouted that our hero should not have forgotten that he was a level 4 warrior, but of course this did not scare the dragon. The guy the next moment offered the dragon to fight one on one, because they are both level 4. And although humans are not rivals of dragons, but he believed that he was not like everyone else. The soldier considered himself seasoned. He was the captain of the Black Beast mercenaries and reported that pikes were the best weapons, asking the assistant to give him one of them. Taking a pike, the soldier said that sometimes skill can compensate for the difference in strength. By concentrating her power at one point and attacking the enemy's Achilles heel, even if that enemy was a dragon, the soldier believed that the dragon had to die by throwing this pike at him. For our dragon, it was nothing, and he just threw back the peak with his wing, to which the knight could not believe that the young man had done it so easily. The soldier did not understand how dragons could have such strong scales and what kind of creature it was in front of him. Therefore, he decided to attack him again, taking another pike and using a long-range attack of chain spades. The dragon, easily throwing them away, could not believe that the toothpicks that were thrown at him should now be called weapons. It was just ridiculous to him. At that moment, the soldier thought that he probably should have used the very technique he was thinking about. Looking at the captain, his colleagues could not believe that he was going to do this. The captain decided that it was a great idea, and decided to use his strongest technique. At that moment, he threw a small ball at our hero. The ball hit him and grabbing him, our hero did not understand what it was. The next moment, gas began to be released from the balloon. After inhaling it and clearing his throat, the dragon realized that his eyes began to sting. At this point, his current score and Anna and Selena's liking level remained the same. The next moment, when our hero realized that the smoke had cleared, he saw that only fog remained in the place where the soldier had recently stood. Our hero was very unhappy that the young man began to show off, because they agreed to fight one-on-one, -on -one, and the enemy himself ran away. The dragon held in his hands the pikes that had recently attacked him. His eyes were red and he was unhappy that such a situation had occurred. The goblins, who remained standing and looking at our hero, asked the captain not to leave them because they would not survive without him. They were all very upset and scared at the same time, looking at the dragon that was right in front of them. Then the dragon, descending, and looking at the orcs, who were very scared, decided to attack them and the very next moment he spewed his flames at them. They tried to escape in fear. The dragon's flame was very hot, which could incinerate to the bone, and they understood that they would not be able to survive under this dragon flame. Meanwhile, after seeing how he dealt with the goblins, the princess asked the divine dragon, Gus and his mercenaries escaped, as she saw and did not understand whether she needed to catch up with them or not. At that moment, she was watching all this from the wall. The dragon suggested not to do this, because they simply would not run away from him. At this moment, his gaze was full of determination and he was ready to attack his opponents. Meanwhile, the young man who had recently fought with our hero was running near the sacred fortress of Felric, cursing the damn dragon and the damn duchy of Sin. Allis, he believed that they all had to wait for him thinking about how he would deal with them, running away. The young man was very unhappy. He believed that he would be able to climb the eastern mountain again and then deal with all of them. But he decided that he thought about it to himself and heard that he wanted to do something later. A voice suddenly appeared on the wall, trying to figure out what the man was going to do next. He saw that a girl named Alicia was standing on the raised platform of this wall, and looking at him contemptuously, to which the young man did not understand what she was doing here, because she was supposed to be at the border fortress. But since she ended up in Felra, the guy was asking questions. He stared at her intently, waiting for her to say something. The young man was unhappy that she appeared on this wall, because it was clear that this was his territory. Meanwhile, the girl looked at him attentively and then the dragon appeared again, saying that everything was because Felra was captured by them. When he saw the dragon that was in front of him, the young man was scared, because he thought that earlier he had been able to escape from it. The dragon was unhappy that the guy ran away calling him a pathetic worm and was preparing his attack against him again. Seeing how he was gathering magic in his mouth, the young man watched in horror, not understanding how this could happen. 
The next moment, the flames were already heading towards him and the system informed our hero that he had successfully destroyed the Black Beast mercenary squad and he was awarded 6,000 points. The capital is Saint Alist. After the battle, our hero went to the capital and sitting in the palace, he saw how everyone knelt before him, being grateful to him for his help, turning to the divine dragon. Also, the princess, along with her army, bowed her head to thank the powerful dragon. Seeing this, the dragon asked her to stand up, because they helped her state to repel this catastrophe. As a reward, she would become his vassal and swear allegiance to him, the dragon informed the princess. The girl listened attentively to him and, addressing the divine dragon, Celestine, on behalf of Sin, Aulist, voluntarily became his vassal from today on. The girl was at his service, the girl was happy to inform him. Then the windows of the system came out. The host fulfilled the request of a special character of the Celestine level. The contract came into force. If the vassal dies, then all his powers will be transferred to the master. If the master dies, the vassal will die after him. This is what appeared in the system window, but that wasn't all. The current status of the Fanatic Sympathy Channel for Appeals was also established, and the system congratulated the host again. He received 3,000 points. Of course, the dragon was very upset when he heard about only 3,000 points, although the difference between the characters was quite large. At this moment, the dragon was carefully looking at the system window, because this system might provide him with a special ability. It seemed to the dragon that there were no additional conditions for this. The system was unhappy that the host was asking this. The system asked sadly, hoping that they trusted each other. They also congratulated the owner on obtaining the hot power ability of the dragon. The dragon's hot power makes his dragon power fiercer. Not only can it make his enemies tremble with fear, but it will also increase damage when attacking. Also, the burning power of the dragon provides for any character from the Sterestina level, upgrades, and could be downloaded now without requiring any changes, as well as experiencing pain. Since the system offered to boot up now, our hero wondered if he needed it. The dragon wanted to see what quality this hot power of the dragon was, so he agreed. The next moment, the system reported that the dragon's hot power was loaded. Our hero decided to test it right away by going out on the field in the palace, and the next moment showed it to everyone who was watching him. The girls who were standing near the dragon felt how strong the wind was. And then, together with the princess, they began to hold their dresses so that they would not fly away from them. Our dragon was carefully watching its power. The current number of points has become equal to 46,995 levels. Anna's sympathy remained at the 300th, and Selena's sympathy level became 170. After that, our hero understood what he had done and that the girls were not very comfortable. He apologized to them, he just couldn't help himself. Although he actually thought to himself that the dark golden flame had no power, only a change in Dragon Kai. But it was very beautiful as it seemed to him. Here the young man found out, as the system explained, that during the use of dragon power, all skills were increased by 15%. After that, when our hero tried out all these techniques, the princess thought that probably the divine dragon should have flown away. The dragon, turning to the princess, explained that he was really flying away and first he had to do some business. The princess insisted on her help, because she would be very happy if the dragon took advantage of her. Our hero decided that this was a great opportunity, asking if they had a witch here. The girl asked again about the witch and then our hero decided to explain that he needed maybe a fortune teller. All the wars next to the princess thought that maybe the dragon meant a mysterious witch who just lives in the fortress. Our hero realized that perhaps there was such a girl, and began to listen carefully to what one of the princess's confidants was saying. And at that moment, the girl added that this witch never lives in one place. Besides, during this whole war, they could not find out exactly where she was, the girl said thoughtfully. The divine dragon had to stay here for a few days, as it seemed to her, because that would be the best solution. They will then try to find and bring this witch to him. She bowed down to him so graciously and informed him about it that our hero decided that it might have been a good idea. The only way he needed to use it. While he was looking into the distance, the princess decided that she would then immediately order his chambers to be prepared. The next moment, the girl returned to the bedroom. Celestine, lying on her bed, she thought about the divine dragon, which she imagined was so brave. She was overwhelmed with feelings and emotions from what she saw today, and she was glad that she had the opportunity to watch the dragon. The next moment, when Na was spending time in her chambers, someone disturbed her by knocking on them. 
and there was Alicia outside the door. Realizing that the girl needed something urgent, the princess invited her to enter. Upon entering the princess's chambers, Alicia, looking at the princess in surprise, did not understand how her majesty could sleep at such a time. Seeing that she was lying on the bed, her majesty is addressing Alicia. I thought that something might have happened if the girl arrived so quickly to her chambers, and perhaps the mercenaries attacked them again, the girl said with horror. Alicia explained that she hadn't said that at all, but that her heart was lusting after the divine dragon was really true. At that moment, she approached the princess so quickly and said this, which made her very confused. The princess, turning away, asked Alicia not to talk nonsense. She was very confused by her words. Alice also believed that her majesty could, if her heart did not say so. Then she probably did not want the divine dragon to stay. The girl was interested. The princess explained that of course she wanted the divine dragon to stay. At that moment, she was very confused again and Alicia decided to tell her something and whispered in her ear about it, what the princess could do. She listened attentively, and the next moment tried to push her assistant away, saying that she could not do such a thing. The girl was very confused by Alicia's proposal and explained that it was impossible to seduce a deity. Then Alicia thought that maybe the princess really wanted the divine dragon to leave them, addressing her being very serious. The princess tried to listen attentively to Alicia. The same one explained that one way or another, she only offered her to choose what to do, while making a very snide face. So the princess had no choice anymore and might have had to follow her assistant's advice. Meanwhile, in Su Nian's chambers, the princess still followed the advice of her assistant and hoped that the divine dragon would not get angry. She put on very beautiful clothes and moved towards his chambers. After all, as soon as she thought about the divine dragon leaving them, she immediately became very sad. But the girl decided that she had to stop behaving like that, and if she was going to die like that, she would die. The next moment, gathering her strength, she decided that she had to do what was offered to her. Bursting into the dragon's chambers, she addressed him as a divine dragon and informed him that she had business with him. The girl was very embarrassed, but she did it anyway. Meanwhile, our hero's stats remained unchanged. Sunayan's chambers. Seeing the girl burst into his chambers, the dragon was very surprised and his girlfriend who was standing next to him. At that moment, the princess made a mesmerized look, explaining that she wanted to discuss something with him. The girl hoped that the divine dragon must have understood the hint. If he accepted, then he could call her by name. After seeing how angry his girlfriend was, our dragon tried to understand, asking the system what was the matter, so as not to harm both girls, he wanted to figure it out and tried to figure out how long this attack would last for the princess. The dragon hoped that she could be cured. At this moment, the princess kept trying to seduce our hero by streaming his eyes. The system asked the host to calm down, saying that it could be related to his dragon Kai. It strongly affects the person who signed contracts with him, even leads to such situations. At that moment, Anna was already ready to deal with our hero, and he thought about what he was interested in about the dragon's breath, and to somehow resolve this situation, trying to find a way out. The system immediately started shouting that there was a cure, after all, it was a special S-level character. If the dragon just killed her, he would only get level 4 magic abilities, and that was very little for him. And in fact, he can only move away from the person who signed the contract with him. Then the Dragon Kai will drop to a minimum and the person who signed the contract with him will return to his normal state. Our hero thought that this was probably the way out and turned to Celestine. Celestine carefully wanted to listen to the Divine Dragon, explaining what she wanted. After hearing what she wanted, our hero did not understand at all what she wanted. The Dragon believed that she needed to wake up, and at that moment he was carefully watching Anna who was standing behind him with a sword, ready to tear him apart. And then Celestine saw the girl behind the dragon, and she was very curious who it was. Our hero explained that it was his wayfarer. At that moment, the girl was already starting to get very angry, but she didn't say anything. The dragon asked what business the princess had with him. Celestine, hearing that it was her wayfarer, was incredibly surprised, because the divine dragon already turns out to have a companion and she had just disgraced herself so much. Thinking quickly, Celestine wanted to discuss how to reorganize and strengthen the army, tighten training. That's all she wanted to know. The girl looked away in embarrassment, trying to figure out if our hero had guessed what she wanted to do with him. After hearing all this, the dragon thought that this world would quickly slide into ruin. The dragon could not defend the country all the time, because he was also very busy, and this, of course, depressed him. 
Turning to Celestine, our hero believed that it would be better if the princess herself thought about the next steps. At that moment, Celestine was watching him closely. Then the dragon told everyone about it and the princess decided that it was time for her to leave. When Celestine left, our hero finally exhaled, because the girl left him alone. Turning to Anna, who was standing behind him, the dragon tried to justify himself to her. Ida, too, looking away in embarrassment, thought that perhaps Mr. Dragon did not like the one who was his companion. The capital of Sint, Aulist, the palace. Turning to the divine dragon, he was informed that they had found a witch named Huey. -E. The dragon listened carefully and asked the girl to bring this witch to him. The dragon looked thoughtfully at his claws, sitting on a throne in the middle of a huge hall, waiting for the witch he needed. Two men brought the witch and placed her palanquin in front of our hero, from which the girl was supposed to appear in front of him. Of course, it was clear to the young man that this was the world of Western fantasy, but he did not understand why it was so diligent and strange to do at all. A witch appeared in front of him, hiding her eyes. She told him that she should not see people. The witch hoped that the divine dragon would excuse her for this. Meanwhile, the system reported that the current number of points of our hero was 46,995. Anna's liking level was 300. Selena's liking level was 170. The witch, without leaving her carriage, decided to talk to him like this. And our hero thought about the fact that she does not come out because she is scary or because she is plotting something. Carefully looking at the card in front of him, and turning to the witch, he asked her if she would examine the patient. The witch agreed with him. Then the dragon was wondering if she could see what happened to Anna. At that moment, he was bringing the girl close to her palanquin. The witch explained that there would be a lot of people here, so it would be inconvenient for her to conduct an inspection. The dragon had to let go of everyone who was standing in the hall. The guards left and left our hero alone with Anna and the witch. When they were alone, our hero suggested that they start. Anna, looking at him in fright, turning to Mr. Dragon, asked him not to look, because she was very shy about it. She was also scared. The dragon asked Anna not to be afraid, looking at her frightened face, because he was with her. And in the end, there is an increased resistance in Anna that lasts only a month. And since our hero has not found any solution, then in a month she will lose health points. At this moment, our hero was looking closely at Anna, seeing how much health the girl had left. At first glance, of course, there was no danger. Here they began to approach the cats who had recently held a palanquin with a witch. Anna thought about how cute they looked. Then the witch began to use her magic and the cat, getting close to the girl, received a magical talisman. After the magic talisman was well attached to the cat, the cat grew up next to Anna. The girl saw how he turned almost into a human. Then, coming up to her, the cat opened his mouth wide, pointing it directly at Anna, and the girl began to scream, calling for the help of Mr. Dragon. The next moment, Anna was in the cat's mouth, and only her legs were sticking out. Seeing this, the dragon tried to figure out what was going on. The cat began to run away, and our hero, heading after him, called him various words that he knew and suggested that the cat spit out Anna immediately. The cat was just running away from our hero, who kept running after him, asking the cat to stop. He tried to catch him, but he couldn't do it. The cat slipped out of his clutches every time, which the dragon was, of course, displeased with. The happy cat, running away from him, only purred in response. Our hero, exhaling heavily, did not understand what was happening. Addressing the witch, he ordered her to make the cat spit out Anna. The witch asked the divine dragon not to worry, because it was such an inspection. Carefully watching the talisman, which was in his hand, the witch said that a strong curse lay on the girl. But she should have died sooner. The witch realized that the divine dragon had been helping her all this time. The divine dragon did not understand what had happened again and asked to release Anna immediately. His patience has limits too. The dragon tried to break up the palanquin in which the witch was, being absolutely angry at the situation that had just happened to them, and the fact that the witch did not want to make concessions to him in any way. Breaking the palanquin, our hero saw the face of a witch who appeared right in front of him. Our hero's stats were still unchanged. Looking at the witch in front of him, our hero was very surprised and the girl realized that the dragon had seen her and her palanquin was broken. The witch, frantically looking from side to side with tears in her eyes, realized that she had been discovered and there was a world of people in front of her. The dragon was trying to calm her down, not knowing if she was okay. At that moment, the girl sitting on the floor was screaming about how scared she was, waving her arms. And the only thing our hero came up with was to put a helmet on the girl so that she would not see this world. Our hero thought that she probably had a fear of 3D characters. The next moment, when the helmet was on her head, she calmed down. 
the dragon decided to laugh at the girl and again taking off her helmet, trying to test his theory. At that moment, she started screaming in panic again, getting up from her seat. She used her magic and a matryoshka doll appeared in front of our hero, in which the girl hid. Surprise! The dragon thought that it was probably some kind of new technique. After tapping on the matryoshka doll, the dragon hoped that Anna was inside, because he absolutely did not understand how he was going to react to all this and whether the girl would be able to help him. The witch, opening a hole in the doll, gave our hero a talisman. Catching the talisman, the next moment a flash formed and Anna appeared in his hands. Anna was muttering something about how delicious it was while summoning Lord Dragon. Being in his arms, the girl was apparently asleep. Our hero did not understand what she was talking about. The dragon held her in his arms, but the girl was just sleeping and did not answer him anymore. All that remained for our hero was to turn to the witch and try to understand what she had done to her. The witch explained that the girl was just sleeping, she sent her a good dream, that's all. And also the witch was wondering if the dragon wanted to know why the girl was cursed. The dragon, of course, tried to figure out what it meant by addressing the witch, since she had already revealed this secret to him. And the witch explained that this curse steals talent. The source of the curse is in the heart, surely someone close to you has imposed it. Only by finding the person who casts the curse can it be lifted, otherwise her powers will go out overnight and her life will come to an end. After a little thought, the witch informed me that there is one way. And realizing that there was a way out, our hero asked to tell him about this method. And with sparkling eyes, the witch told me that the easiest way is to replace the heart. The dragon thought that just replacing the heart was a good idea, and then realizing when the words about what had been said reached him, he realized that it was not as easy as buying cabbage at the market. He was furious that the girl had offered him such an absurd idea, and then the witch explained that his companion was ill, and therefore the ideal option would be a dragon heart. She said it very carefully, trying not to look at our hero. The same one, having heard about the dragon's heart, stared at the witch in surprise again. And the next moment, the dragon was frantically screaming that he was the only dragon in the area, and she was just telling him to give her his passport. Indignant, our hero did not understand why the witch could talk about it so easily. Meanwhile, our hero's stats remained unchanged. The girl explained that only if he could find the creature that had cast a curse on his wife. Our hero thought about it, because he will not be able to find the person who cursed her. If she can do it, he will reward her well. The witch could try, but she did not guarantee that she would definitely be able to find this person. Sticking one hand out of the matryoshka doll, she called her talisman again so that he would go and find the one who called the curse. When she did this, the witch saw the magic spells, and then the one who did it. When she saw this, she was scared and couldn't believe it. At that moment, the one who cast the curse on Anna got to the witch, grabbing her by the throat. Using his power, he destroyed the shell she was in. The witch, not expecting such a force, flew off to the side, straight to our hero, who managed to catch her in time. He didn't understand what she saw. Addressing our hero, the witch explained that she had failed and their opponent was too strong. But even if she knew who the person who sent the curse was, the opportunity to find him was already gone, as our hero realized. Turning to the system, he wondered if there was any modification to grow more hearts. The system explained what the system can do to make him have as many hearts as he wants. Upon hearing this, our hero caught fire, finding hope in it. He could have a mechanical heart, a devil's heart, if he had enough system points and powers, then a divine heart. But he had only one heart belonging to him. Upon hearing this, our hero immediately wilted, not understanding what the system meant. But as the owner noticed, this system modifies only the most basic things. It is impossible to create something out of nothing in the host's body, only on the basis of the original organs available to him, from which mutation was possible. Our hero asked about the lava heart, what it was. At that moment, our hero was looking at the lava heart that was inside him, and then the system told him that this heart was not quite a real heart. The heart controls his blood circulation and the lava heart controls only the energy core. Our hero understood that if he gave his heart to Anna, then obviously he would die and in theory it was so, but the system wanted to tell him something. Our hero, unable to stand it, already asked the system to speak directly, how he could make sure that he did not die after he gave his heart to Anna. The dragon asked not to tell him nonsense, because he has no money and he has no points. The system, hearing how our hero was unhappy, remained silent, and the next moment showed him a hidden object that turned out to be a golden apple. The golden apple is an item hidden in the store, although it can imitate an organ, but it needs to use a similar method and special attention for its growth. 
When the apple grows to the size of a heart, it will be possible to replace the heart. After seeing the cost of this apple, our hero realized that it was equal to 100,000 and he thought that the system was probably mocking him. She takes these prices out of her head. The system, offended by its owner, explained that this system was an honest trader. The current score was 46,995. Anna's liking level, 300. Selena's liking level, 170. Our hero was very angry at the system. He did not understand why it was honest. Why did she say that about herself? She should have already called herself a speculative system, as he believed. At that moment, he was very unhappy and then, interrupting his discontent, he heard someone call him. He heard that it was Anna's voice. Anna, in a dream, turning to Mr. Dragon, asked that she always wanted to be with him. Our hero thought about the fact that if it were only possible to extend control over the curse without replacing the heart with an Adam's apple, then Anna would have a chance to be saved. Turning to the witch, our hero explained that since they did not find the one who sent the curse, then she probably has a way to help them prolong control over the curse. A little embarrassed, she explained that there was one way in the ancient books, but they needed to trust each other unconditionally. Hearing that they had to trust each other unconditionally and looking at the witch, who was confused, our hero was also confused and trying to figure out what she meant. At that moment, imagining Anna, and looking at her, the young man thought that he was ready for anything and asked the witch to tell him quickly what he needed to do. The witch was trying to figure out if he was really willing to be completely trusted. Our hero believed that full trust should have been easy. Then, apparently a little embarrassed, and then becoming serious again, it turned out that the case was worthy of a divine dragon. If so, it's much better to connect him with his life partner right now. After hearing this, he did not understand if she was also with them. The witch explained that she was just a bystander. She is responsible for activating the field and the bonds. The girl decided to explain to him how it all works. At that moment, she was very inspired to help our heroes. The divine dragon should have understood that as soon as the bonds were activated, the weak side would begin to draw vitality to keep itself alive. If one of the parties died, then that person got all the strength by turning to the divine dragon and telling him this situation. The witch was trying to figure out if he was ready for this. For our hero, it looked like linking a phone, and of course he was ready so he asked the witch to start. It was written in ancient books that a rope was needed before the ritual, and they would completely make sure that there was not a single mistake. The next moment, the witch tied up our hero and he thought that really in ancient books people are really fans of such things. And he did not understand whether it was worth trusting such a person at all. After seeing how the witch tied him up, our hero looked at her carefully, trying to figure out what to do next. While waiting to see what the witch would do next, the young man could only watch her. And the next moment, the witch was screaming for the field to open using her magic. There are very few people in the world who can do this. All the secrets of the past will be completely transferred to the other side. Even she is not capable of such a thing. The divine dragon that was in front of her and whom she sincerely admired. At that moment, our hero simply did not understand what was the difference between full trust and viewing his entire history in a browser. The next moment, he was very confused and asked the witch to stop. The witch with tears in her eyes, smiling, and thought that even though the divine dragon was suffering such pain, but he allowed her not to stop. Such sacrifice was truly admirable. Next to the Jadate forest, being deep in the mountains and remembering her life, the girl opened her eyes and remembered herself as a little girl. She remembered herself crying in the arms of the moon, whom she missed so much, realizing that it was her sister. Meanwhile, our hero, who was actually the moon, realized that he had turned into a girl by looking at himself from the outside. Our hero saw little Anna, who, addressing the moon, wanted her to bring her sweets. Our hero, looking at this, thought about how cute it was, because it turns out she was so cute as a child. Touching her cheeks, the young man could not hide his admiration. At that moment, he understood that a witch named Huey e. had told him that the bond would reveal the most intimate secrets. Then this is the secret realm of Anna's dreams, into which he has now fallen. But our hero couldn't help but take advantage of this opportunity, because his sister's body was just beautiful, and he thought that he could completely touch it and feel all the softness and warmth of a female body. He now understood how it felt when he could touch himself, but he completely forgot that little Anna was right in front of him. Anna, looking at her sister in surprise, tried to understand why he was smiling so strangely. The sister explained that because there is actually something strange. And then Anna drooped and bowed her head in front of her sister, and she watched her, waiting for what the girl would say. Anna told Luna that she was very afraid that the awakening ceremony would begin soon. If she could not awaken into a high elf, then she did not understand what she needed to do. 
When our hero heard about this, he did not understand what kind of high elf he was talking about. Then a girl interrupted them. She was looking for Anna because her sister had been searched for a long time. Why she ran away from the forest was unclear. After all, there were a lot of monsters here and it was very dangerous. The girl shouted that they had all gathered for the awakening. The elder was waiting only for her. At that moment, she ran to Anna, grabbed her by the hand, and dragged her along. Anna, addressing a girl named Z. She understood that everyone had already gathered and, of course, it was very exciting for her. Z asked Anna not to worry, because she would definitely awaken from a lower elf to a higher one. So they came to the place where the ceremony was to take place and our hero followed them, realizing that the scene had changed in the realm of dreams. So things change after Anna, as he guessed. At that moment, he, along with all the residents, was watching what would happen on the hill that was right in front of him. The man who stood in front of Anna explained that she was already trying to wake up ten times today. If she still fails, she will not be able to continue studying at the Middle Elven School. Besides, they will expel her and all her relatives from the heart of the Jadate Forest. Anna understood that she had a great responsibility and sadly replied to the man that she would try harder to wake up. The next moment, the man hit her. He was angry that she woke up ten times and she couldn't do anything. She had already spent so much of the mortal breath left over from King Esfield, even for a little bit. But she was not offended, she was just a disgrace to the entire elven people. Our hero could not tolerate such an attitude towards Anna, and turning to the old man who was right in front of him, he grabbed him by the beard, not understanding how he could even talk like that to his sister. Especially when our hero saw what he did to her, he couldn't control himself, got up and tried to protect her. After our hero did this, it was announced that from today on, Anna Hathaway and her relatives were banished from the heart of the Jadate Forest and allowed to live only on its outskirts. Taking his sister, our hero and Anna moved on. Luna asked them not to worry, because they would kick out this bunch of old idiots who prevented them from living there together. The next moment, Anna calmed down a little and decided to pick fruits, bringing them to the moon. She thought that her sister was probably hungry. Then she saw red burning eyes in the darkness of the forest voices that reported that Anna Hathaway had spent so many of their resources and the girl should not have thought that she would not have to compensate them. The voices said that they were all low elves and did not understand why she was suddenly allowed ten attempts to awaken, and they were only three. If they had been given ten attempts, they would have awakened a long time ago, and it was all the girl's fault, as they believed. In their opinion, she stole their resources. She would give them back everything she owed them and pay for it. Anna at that moment saw three elves who jumped out of the bushes in order to deal with her. Falling on her knees in front of them, the girl apologized with tears in her eyes. Then her sister ran up to them, or rather our hero in her body, and after dealing with everyone, he offered them to get out of here faster. If they dared to offend Anna again, he would deal with them all one by one. All the guys had to do after that was run away from our hero. Anna, along with Luna, went on. Then they saw the house and looked at it. Our hero thought that he must have built this house, and it looked absolutely good, which pleased him. The next moment, our hero felt the scene change again and in front of him was Anna, who was locked in the closet. He didn't understand why she was hiding there and thought that maybe she was being bullied again. He thought about what the guys who had offended her earlier probably wanted to get from her again. The next moment, when our hero, being in the body of Luna, Anna's sister, tried to open the closet in which the girl was hiding, he was pierced through by someone's hand. Our hero realized that it was all the work of a witch. The next moment, all his dreams ended and opening his eyes, he realized that he was lying on the cold ground, still in the same room where he had been earlier. He heard Anna crying and begging him to wake up. The girl asked him not to die, the girl was so upset. She wanted to do something to help him, but all she could do was cry and call him by his first name. The witch who was next to her reported that it was pointless, the divine dragon would not wake up. Hearing this, Anna tried to figure out who was right in front of her. The girl, closing her eyes, introduced herself as the witch Huey. She shared with Anna that the divine dragon saved her and went into hibernation. Of course, when Anna heard this, with tears in her eyes, she did not understand why the Divine Dragon did this, because it was not necessary to do this. Anna didn't think she was worth it and just kept crying. She hugged our hero and he felt her warmth, a little embarrassed before she hugged him to her. The dragon knew that, as it turned out, pretending to be asleep was very good. With tears in her eyes, the girl tried to figure out if it was possible to wake up Mr. Dragon. And the witch, reacting quite calmly to the whole situation, explained that it would not be superfluous to try a conversation and talk to the divine dragon, then perhaps it would begin. Anna told Mr. Dragon that Anna had been dreaming something strange. In the dream, there was a glowing iron plate, 
and girls in swimsuits were painted on it. Some person was talking about a 32 gig archive and that he liked the browser history and what would have been very wonderful. When she wanted to continue her story further, our hero immediately woke up the next moment. He completely forgot that he was pretending, asking Anna not to say what she had already begun to tell. The young man was so confused by what she could say next that his nose bled. Being completely embarrassed, he even jumped away from Anna. When she saw that Mr. Dragon was alive, the girl was very happy with tears in her eyes, and the witch, joking with them, believed that as it turned out, the conversation was very effective to wake up the dragon and bring him to his senses. Our hero imagined a lot of girls who greeted him. At that moment, distracting him, Anna was trying to figure out what he had just said to her, because she completely did not understand any of this. He just remembered and remembered his dead youth, the dragon told her with tears in his eyes. Meanwhile, the capital of Sint, Aulist, the temple. There was a statue of a dragon in front of our hero and the princess, pointing at it, explained to the majority of the dragon that they had put a statue in honor of him. Upon seeing her, the dragon was unpleasantly surprised. The princess looked at his imposing figure every day in search of his blessing, looking a little embarrassed at the dragon, she said. Our hero also thought about the fact that really they could not change the pose of this statue. She seemed very strange to him and, of course, the dragon was a little annoyed that he was not asked about it. The princess did not hear what he was saying and asked the divine dragon to just stay here longer. And our hero explained to Celestine that since everything was quiet here now, they had to return. Our hero, along with Anna, was returning to his home and the princess was very upset that they were about to leave. With tears in her eyes, she addressed the divine dragon, saying that she would miss him. Moving into the dragon's lair, our hero saw that everything was fine while he was away. The monsters are very well settled. His subordinate, Ipoliclius, rushed to him again, because he saw his master. With tears in his eyes, he was glad that the dragon had finally returned. Our hero stopped him, because they were having a conversation while he was trying to hug our hero with all his might, greeting him. The dragon explained that he was just tired for today and was ready to rest. Anna, seeing how the dragon behaves, seemed to her to be unusual. Then she noticed that the dragon was lying down next to her, and then she thought that something must have happened to Mr. Dragon. It seemed to her that since he usually did not behave like this, he probably had something in pain. The dragon assured him that he was fine, he was just a little tired. Trying not to upset Anna, he said. But the dragon himself did not understand why he had a fever and was dizzy. All this was very frustrating, and so he decided to turn to the system, because she probably knew whether the dragons were sick too or not. And the system told the owner that because of the bond, his condition had changed. Heart failure, weakness for 72 hours, spasms, curse of the stolen heart. The system also showed that our hero had a curse of lying poison, the curse of the destroyed spirit. The combined effect of all this, curse, stolen heart, lying poison and destroyed spirit, imposed simultaneously, can deprive the curse of the soul and absorb spiritual forces. After reading all about it, our hero realized what a big negative effect he had received today, and it was hard to imagine such a deterioration, and she was even so worried about him. The girl was at that moment next to him and hugging the dragon, she hoped that he would be alright. The dragon was very confused by her actions, not understanding what she was doing. Anna asked him not to move, she only wanted to take his body temperature, and addressing Mr. Dragon, she moved closer to his forehead. The dragon told Anna that people with dragons had different body temperatures and apparently the girl did not know about it. Anna, a little embarrassed, and moving away from the dragon, of course, stammered that she knew, but it was a lie. And turning to Mr. Dragon, she asked him to wait for something, because Anna wanted to make a decoction for him. She knew that it was supposed to help him well. After hearing this, our dragon became interested. Anna recalled the witch who told her that if the divine dragon was going to feel bad, then it would be necessary to try what she had told her. After all, it helps very well, of course, Anna decided that she would do everything on the advice of the witch. When she began to cook it, the princess, who saw everything that Anna had done, did not understand what it was all for, especially all those bugs that were crawling all over the cave. Anna said that it would all go into a decoction that she would make, a decoction for Lord Dragon. When Anna was cooking it, she was very proud of herself, stirring this broth in a cauldron over low heat. Meanwhile, the village of newcomers cherry number two. The man, looking at the heads, admired them. Looking at his heads, tried to figure out where they needed to be put. Here, addressing the senor, his subordinate came to him, explaining that the player George wanted to meet with him. The center explained that if the guy did not see, then he enjoyed the art and did not want any meetings for today. 
but the guy did not slow down. He believed that the senor would definitely like this news, because the guy George said that he knew where the dragon was. Of course, the news about the dragon interested the senor and he asked to call this young man to his chambers to ask him about it. Dragon Cave Anna came to Mr. Dragon in the night and asked him to wake up, because it was time to take medicine. In the light of the moon, she looked so intimidating, and standing over him, along with a bowl, that our hero should have been scared. But he was very brave and when he woke up, he looked at Anna. The dragon said that he used to fight the disease alone, but now he finally has people who took care of him. Seeing how Anna sat down next to him to give him the decoction, the dragon believed that the girl was very kind once, she took such care of him. But when she sat down closer to him, showing him the decoction that she had in a bowl, the dragon looked at this bowl with horror and thought that it was probably not too late to pretend to be dead. He was very scared of the contents, because it smelled very strange and looked too. The dragon wasn't sure if he should have accepted it. Anna insisted on her own. Turning to Mr. Dragon, she asked him to eat it, because she had been cooking it for a long time. At that moment, the girl looked so happy that our hero could not refuse her in any way. But then another friend of his appeared to save him, and Selina explained that the dragon should not have refused Anna's broth, because she cooked it all night. Of course, the dragon joked that he had to pretend to be dead and, a little embarrassed, he took the decoction. The dragon felt that Anna had really been cooking it for a long time, because he even smelled that it was burnt. But he decided that if he was going to die, he was going to die, and taking a bowl, he poured all the contents right into his mouth. A little time passed, the young man felt the taste, thinking that this was probably the taste of death that he had just felt. The dragon had no idea that Anna had given it to him to get revenge. At that moment, he was holding onto his stomach, feeling how sick he was. Anna did not pay attention to his pain. She told Mr. Dragon not to hurry, because she cooked a whole cauldron, pointing to the cauldron that stood behind her. The dragon, looking at this cauldron in fright, was afraid that he would have to drink everything. Meanwhile, in the village of novices, cherry number two. The guy who came to meet with the center now understood why it was said that his bravery could not be compared to anything. At that moment, the senor attacked the young man so that he bowed his knee in front of him, and the young man fell to his knees, and the senior explained that he most of all did not like to look at the faces of weaklings. The young man who fell on his knees in front of him was sitting waiting for what the senor would ask him, and he reported that he had heard that he had been beaten by inferior monsters in village number one. Of course, the guy said that everything was wrong. These monsters were influenced by the black dragon. They've become ten times cooler, downright demons. The young man argued to the senor to let him join him, and he would lead him to the dragon's lair. The senor asked him to calm down, because he probably didn't know everything yet. After all, the young man himself said that in this world this dragon was declared the main boss, then what was the point and he had to join them. This was certainly true, the young man could not object to this, but it made sense to join them. After all, the dragon has a low elf, she is beautiful both in face and body. Her head will definitely please the senor, the young man added. And in order to entice the senor, he even showed him a photo of this elf, and Anna was depicted in the photo. The senor saw her and immediately jumped up from his seat. Looking at Anna's photo, he saw snow white hair, fluffy ears and a beautiful work of art in the face of this girl that was right in front of him. The senor couldn't get enough of this photo, and after looking at it for a while, he realized that he would certainly put it on his right hand and the dragon's head on his left. He imagined himself sitting on his throne, with the heads of the dragon and Anna in his hands on both sides. The young man understood that the spectacle was beginning and it did not matter who would win, but he could get his benefit from it, realizing that the center had taken his bait. Anna, lying with her eyes closed, was breathing heavily, because something was bothering her and something was touching her body. The girl resisted this, because she was not comfortable, but Selina was sleeping next to her, who touched her body, and she really liked it. In her dream, Selina mumbled about it, telling the owner that she wanted these two. Our hero, watching them from the side, realized that Selina was probably having some interesting dream again, since she was clinging to Anna so tightly. Anna had been cooking medicine all evening, she must be tired, and they needed to give her some sleep. Therefore, taking Selina, the dragon decided to move her to another place so that Anna would be more comfortable. I dreamed that she was choosing something from the products, as our hero guessed. After all, the girl in the dream said that this product was solid and that it was definitely spoiled. Our hero, dragging Selina carefully so as not to wake Anna, thought that it was better for her to sleep. Then, looking at the decoction, he remembered that yesterday's decoction tasted disgusting. 
but after taking it, he really felt much better. At that moment, when he thought about having another drink, but then he was informed that there was news and he saw his subordinate who came into the cave. He told the owner that he was interested in how he wanted to punish the captured prisoners behind the mountain, because our hero had completely forgotten about them. Therefore, I turned to my subordinate and I Polyclius. The dragon asked, counted the young man how many there were, thoughtfully looking up. Ipolicles said that there were 213 people who were pale in total. Hearing that there were so many of them, the dragon hoped with horror that these people had been eating something all these days while he was away. And the subordinate said that they didn't even think about it when talking about food. And Polyclius said that they didn't have much food themselves, so when they wanted to eat, they looked for grass, leaves and the like. While there was no dragon, they also chewed flowers and leaves from trees. Our hero at this moment thought about the fact that people could not even imagine that after they surrender, they will starve to death. Therefore, I turned to I Polyclius. I asked them to take a look at these people with one glance. The dragon felt very bad that everything had gone wrong according to the scenario that he had come up with for himself. They used the examples, building village number one and built the prison themselves, said Ipolyclius, escorting the dragon to the prisoners. Every day they took turns on duty, and every 10 meters there is a warden, so that there would be no riots and they locked all the disobedient in a black room. Seeing the building that stood in front of the dragon, our hero thought it looked good, and he thought that perhaps Ipolyclius already had plans for prison. After all, they were able to create it so quickly, and people were so hungry, as if a combined harvester had walked on the ground, because there was not a blade of grass. And looking at the place where the field had been recently mowed, now there was a desert. And it was really true, the dragon believed that it was worth forcing these people to sow fields, so you can raise the standard of living of monsters and guarantee work to prisoners so that there would never even be a mental mutiny. To himself, Ipolyclius also wondered how he had not thought of this before, because truly it was a real dragon, only he could think of everything like that. And Polyclius, as always, looked at our hero with admiration. But then he came to his senses and wondered what the owner wanted them to sew. Calling the system window, the dragon also thought it was necessary to decide what they needed to sew. Looking at the screen in front of him, he saw potatoes. The dragon believed that they could sow potatoes. She had good survival and yield, it would be easy to start with her. The system reported that the owner bought potato seeds and spent 500 points on them. Meanwhile, while our heroes were starving and thinking about what to grow, people were feasting in another cave. The man who was sitting in front of the fire was eating someone's meat. Captain Zhu Shan, who was in front of the youth who was carrying another meal, reported that they had eaten all the food supplies for a month. Of course, the captain knew about this and asked them to come to him so that they could bring him more food. The guys who helped him were already very tired of bringing him food. One of them, of course, used to think that going after the coolest member of the squad from the village of beginners, they would not know grief. But no one could even think that a normal person eats in a month, Zhu Shan can eat in just one week. The guys reasoned that it might have been necessary to escape quietly, because sooner or later this person would eat them at such a pace. If they don't have any more supplies left, then it will be like this. While they were discussing this standing not far from the captain, he got close to them. He was wondering what the guys were talking about. He was so close to them that they were afraid that he had heard everything and now they would definitely be in trouble. So they tried to lie to the captain that they didn't talk about anything. They just received an invitation to the second village of beginners, and they were wondering if the captain would go there. There were several people at the table and the senor sat at the head. Addressing the center, the guys said that he invited them and made them wait until such an hour. There were probably more important people than them if he did this to them. The senior laughed at this moment, because they were all joking in this world. The invitees who do not come on time should not have been so swaggering. At that moment, the center heard that someone came up to him from behind, and when he heard a familiar voice, he was immediately afraid of what might follow. Turning around, the center did not understand when this man managed to appear behind him, because he and those sitting did not feel anything at all. Looking closely at the man in front of him, the senior realized that he was David Zhu Shan, the shadow assassin. He had a well-deserved reputation. The center himself introduced himself as Valdali. He was with the lord of these lands. He had heard about Zhu Shan's strength for a long time, so he apologized for not coming out to meet him. The young man who was standing next to him, looking at the man who was behind the senor, realized that this guy was huge and at least 200 kilograms in him. How he could be an assassin? The young man absolutely did not understand. Realizing that the young man was talking to the assassin too boldly, the center explained that it was all the fault of his watchdogs, who had called him badly. 
he kicked him forward, right at the assassin's feet. Realizing his transgression, the young man stared in horror at the man who was right in front of him. The latter, realizing that the guy was afraid of him, laughed at him, because this watchdog is too special, as it seemed to him. Squeezing the young man in his arms, he said. The center wanted to find his gratitude and of course he was happy to give the young man to him if he liked him. And then another guy came to the cave. Turning to his friends, he believed that they had not seen each other for a long time. Since everyone has arrived, the center wanted to speak directly. He invited all the brave players to kill the black dragon boss. Everyone opened their mouths in surprise, because no one expected that they would talk about the black dragon of the boss who recently appeared in this world. The young man who stood next to the assassin, gasping from his embrace, thought that he had run over to them. He had become their babysitter, and therefore they should not blame him. Addressing the center, George knew one way to safely and effectively capture the black dragon. Of course, the center was interested in this method, because he wanted to make do with less losses and quickly earn money, leaving completely unscathed. George said that the elf he had shown him earlier in the photos was a favorite of the dragon, and if they captured her, the dragon would definitely surrender to them without any resistance. And then the center will be able to get as many as two beautiful skulls. Of course, the young man knew that as soon as these idiots grabbed the elf, that dragon would only get even angrier. They will wait for the baptism of fire from the green dragon. That was his plan, so that everyone would fall into his trap and he tried to drive them there as carefully as possible. When someone remembers someone, that person starts sneezing. That's exactly how Anna was sneezing now, because somewhere in the distance they were talking about her, but the girl didn't even suspect it. At that moment, they were in the forest with the dragon, and the dragon thought that Anna was probably feeling unwell, and perhaps it was all because she was tired of cooking medicines. The dragon asked her not to boil the broth anymore, otherwise he would be very worried about her. He thought to himself that he definitely shouldn't have allowed Anna to make medicine anymore. Even if she had the potion of life, he wouldn't drink it anymore. The girl looked sadly at the dragon and tried to assure him that she was alright. Addressing Mr. Dragon, I just felt some kind of cold and malicious intent. Our hero, meanwhile, having heard about the evil intent, wondered why he did not feel it. At that moment, he looked away in embarrassment, thinking that there really were outsiders who could probably crack their whispering aura. He interpreted Anna's words in such a way that when... Probably, she was talking about the cold. She hinted that he needed to hug her. Interrupting his thoughts, Anna told Mr. Dragon that there was one thing she kept forgetting to give him. Looking at the girl and her beautiful figure, our hero wondered with embarrassment what kind of thing she was talking about. Anna stuck her tongue out at him and asked him to guess, because it was the thing he really wanted. Upon hearing this, our hero thought twice about what such a beautiful girl wanted to give him, and even more so what he wanted. After a couple of moments, Anna stopped wrapping him up and showed him the key. Seeing the key in his hands, the dragon tried to figure out what this key was for. Perhaps it was the key to the chest, as he guessed later. Happy Anna said that he guessed correctly. Anna took off the key from the sorceress Melinda today, which can open silver chests, and it seemed to her that it was incredible. Selina appeared here, interrupting our heroes. She said that this was not all, because she took it from Daniel's hands. At that moment, she had a bunch of several keys in her hand. Looking at her, our hero was surprised to understand how she could take so many keys, and how she did it. The girl said that in fact everything was very simple, laughing while watching our hero. She crossed his arms and legs and broke them all, after which she managed to take the keys. The girl was very happy that she had succeeded. Our heroes looked at her dejectedly, realizing that she was doing the wrong thing. Meanwhile, in the dungeon, the prisoner thought that it was all the young man who was next to her. If he hadn't told these fake news, she would still be the elder of the novice village number 6. The guy who was imprisoned next to her was lying on the floor, saying that everything was clear that she herself was still a jerk, and blamed him for everything. The girl thought that it just couldn't go on like this. If she couldn't kill herself, then she had to look for a way to escape from this dungeon. After talking to this guy, she thought about it and asked Daniel how many aggression points he had. When the girl asked him such questions, she took a very interesting pose that, looking at her, Daniel was even a little shy, saying that he only had 500. He had to spend the rest to buy the key. Even if he was beaten to death, he explained that he would not give it back. Starting to get mad at him again, the girl believed that the young man was an idiot. After all, if he gives it away, he will die. But if he does not give it back, he will also die and there is such a difference, they could still be reborn. Therefore, she offered to just give her the key, because he probably did not want to deceive her, as she thought. She decided to ask about this young man. Looking at her, the guy was unhappy with what she was saying, because it was all nonsense. After all, 
her limbs were not torn off, and the young man himself was without hands, lying on the floor. The girl calmed down and said that she had one way and it was better for him to give the aggression points, and she would run away and get him out of here. The young man looked at her incredulously at that moment. Meanwhile, the center, watching through his telescope, saw that the dragon's lair, which he had been informed about earlier, should have been in the direction he was looking at. Addressing his subordinate George, he asked him to go and bring him this elf. George, surprised by such a request, wanted to object to the center because he did not expect that he would be given such a task. But no buts could be said here, because once he joined them, he had to demonstrate his strength, the assassin believed. Moreover, it was George's idea to kidnap the elf as far as they all remembered. Making a snide face, the assassin offered him not to be afraid, because his abilities allow him to hide in the shadows at night, and no one will see him. Of course, George was scared by such pressure, but he had no choice and so he was sent out into the night to steal Anna. Approaching the cave, George saw the sleeping guards, realizing that they were really fast asleep. He could pass them by. The next moment, when he released his gases, they still felt it, not understanding why it smelled like that here and began to quarrel with each other. Meanwhile, the guy was moving further along the cave and saw Anna. The elf was right in front of him, and he was very glad that he had finally found her. The deal is completed. At that moment, the handcuffs fell off the girl and the young man said that he had given her all his aggression points and asked her not to forget to come back for him. She, of course, informed him that naturally she would not return but she would put him out of his misery. At that moment, the young man realized that the girl was just a witch, and she, in turn, killed him. The next moment, when she dealt with the body, she decided to get out of this prison. Meanwhile, Anna, moving along the corridor of the cave, began to fall and was picked up by an assistant. She sadly reported that she had accidentally twisted her leg, and was very glad that he picked her up and was able to help her. Of course, the Guardian reported that he was always ready to help her and it would be an honor for him, also trying to understand what Anna was doing near the exit of the cave. Anna said that when she was here in the afternoon, she dropped something, and at the same time checked whether they were standing guard in good faith, the girl said, moving through the cave. The Guardian explained that he had always stood guard conscientiously. And when she noticed it, she realized that there was no one near the exit. To which the guardian asked her not to worry, because he would immediately run there. And it's good that she bought a transformation potion. The witch who was previously imprisoned, now everyone saw her as Anna. This is the only way she has a chance to escape. But who knows, maybe she will be able to get close to the dragon and kill it with her own hands. George, moving through the cave, did not understand where this elf had gone, and why he blinked and she disappeared. At that moment, he touched someone, trying to figure out what happened. The girl screamed loudly and did not understand, falling down, where the wall was from, looking forward. The young man thought that he didn't even have to try. There was Anna in front of him, whom he needed to catch. It was a damn good night. Grabbing Anna, he ran with her straight out of the cave. At that moment, one of the guards, addressing the owner, reported that they had seen Anna. She was heading towards the Silver Forest and had also heard devils. To which the owner explained that this simply could not be, because it was clear that Anna was here. But at that moment, looking at the bed, the dragon saw only Selina sleeping. But Anna was not there. The dragon immediately got angry and looked at the cave. He tried to figure out why the Aura Whisper did not find it. It was clear to them that she had disappeared somewhere. At this point, his system was showing that his liking points and current score were unchanged. Our hero started calling Anna, trying to find her in the forest, but everything was unsuccessful. At that moment, people noticed that it was a dragon and it looked like it had found them. It was these guys who tried to steal Anna. Calming them down, the assassin asked them to calm down because he would not be seen with him. He must have been looking for an elf, and it looks like George managed to steal her. And apparently the boy was useful, as the center understood. But the situation is by no means rosy, because the dragon does not look at all like the image of this system. The dragon seemed stronger, and also the guy who was on the side of the center noticed that the dragon already had the fourth step. But this did not frighten the center, although they had never met such a strong beast. But after all, all the others died from his bloodsucker blade taking out the blade, and at this moment showing his might, he informed the rest of the guys. The senior reported that he only needed to be brought alone to the center of the seal, and there would be no difference between a metal dragon of the fifth stage and a lamb for a spell. Besides, he has a secret weapon, the center noticed, while everyone was looking at him in shock. Meanwhile, our hero was trying to find Anna. He flew through the sky and stopped in places where Anna could possibly be. At that moment, he heard someone running at him trying to attack him, and then he realized that there seemed to be invisible armor in front of him that was flying right at him. 
but it was the senior who used his power and attacked the dragon, offering him to die. The dragon dodged his attacks, as the assassin believed. And the next moment, when the senior thought that the dragon had been killed with one blow, and everything worked out for him, our hero stood up from his seat, and looking at the man who was right in front of him, tried to understand what the man was thinking, what he had done. The senior could not believe that the dragon in front of him had not fallen and that his bloodsucker had apparently not worked on him. Our hero thought at that moment that his opponent was probably talking about this broken knife that he had just thrown away. He added that his opponent had no military honor at all. Their legs had only been taken away, and they had inadvertently stumbled. The dragon was saying only to himself in the third person, to which the center did not understand how such a thing was even possible. Meanwhile, the system was reporting that his lightning throw ability had been activated. During a lightning throw attack, the target takes one point of damage. During the attack of the mad dragon thunder, when the target is wounded, the target loses, receives zero damage points. The strength of his bloodsucker blade was zero and it was broken. The dragon, looking at him, thought that this pathetic one had come to their lands and offered him to prepare to die. At that moment, he felt something attack him from behind and the dragon saw a small bullet. And since it was a bullet, he realized that it was a weapon and looked at it in surprise. The guidance system has been activated against the dragon. This dragon had such thick scales that a bullet would only scratch it. The young man, who was also in the team with the senior, thought, and taking his rifle, he decided to attack the dragon from the side. Keep watching him, through his weapon, the guy realized that a minute ago the dragon was right in front of him, but now he had disappeared somewhere and only the body of the senior lay in his sight. At that moment, the dragon was already behind his opponent, thinking that he was probably looking for him. The guy, realizing that he was overtaken, decided to try to escape from him by attacking our hero from a distance. The dragon, using his strength against his bullets, asked to remove the weapon. The next moment, the guy who had recently shot at him realized that the weapon did not obey him at all. It flew out of his hands, and he was left unarmed. Having caught this moment, our hero decided to rush into the attack. Starting from his place, he flew straight at his opponent. At the next moment, he attacked him, trying to break him apart. And when he had already decided that it was necessary to finish with his opponent, then someone stopped him. It was the center who, addressing our dragon, probably wanted to kill the one he was holding hostage at that time. At that moment, Anna, who was standing next to the center, asked that they not do this and that she not be killed. Therefore, the dragon immediately spat his opponent out of his mouth after seeing that Anna was being held hostage. Angry, the dragon suggested that they let her go, otherwise their death would be terrible. At that moment, the dragon was really serious, realizing that Anna was in danger. The center thought that it was very scary, and laughing, offered him to save her if he had the courage. The next moment, Anna, who was still standing next to him, began to fall into the abyss. Falling, the girl asked for help. She called for help, saying that she was very afraid of heights. At that moment, our hero, picking her up with one of his paws, was able to save Anna. And the next moment, while in the magic circle, he was trying to figure out what had happened by looking up at him. Realizing that he was trapped, he tried to break this magic circle with his tail, and they thought that they probably wanted to stop them with a simple seal. The next moment, Shan attacked him through this seal, saying that our hero should prepare his head, because he would definitely try it. Perhaps they could have been deceived, because this dragon did not look at the fourth step. His tail was able to break the magic seal, and it is used to bind monsters of the sixth stage, explained one of the guys who recently attacked our hero with his weapon. At that moment, he was watching the window of his system carefully, trying to figure out what was going on here. Reading the information about our hero, he also saw that the dragon's scales were very thick and was afraid that the seal would not hold him for a long time. Then the senior ordered everyone to attack and not stand still, because they could lose time like that, and also lose this battle. All of his companions began to use their magic. One of them used a fiery explosion, another an icy squall, and the third a lightning attack. After looking at them, our hero understood that the dragon language and print did not work for them. Anna was here, so dragon breath could not be used either, as far as he understood. Anna, meanwhile, was also watching the attack that was heading for our hero. She understood that this seal would not withstand the players and she had to run faster. The next moment, when she tried to climb on the dragon and something pierced her, the girl did not understand how such a thing could happen. Seeing how Anna was amazed, our hero could not believe it and looked at the girl in shock. The next moment, when she fell, the senior and everyone else who was watching was shocked. 
but the senior was also very angry that they were all blind idiots. The witches who were on his side recognized his words in such a way that they had to attack with full force. They looked at each other and realized that they must have overworked. The senior explained that they were even more idiots because he said to attack the dragon, not the girl. Our hero, angered by what had happened, began to rage, shouting to everyone that he would tear them all to pieces because of what they had done to Anna. When they saw that the dragon was angry, everyone realized that it was bad and all they had to do was run away. But there was nowhere to run, because the dragon was going to overtake them everywhere. Catching up with them, he was going to pour out his lava on them, and they had nowhere to run. At that moment, I dealt with the witches who attacked Anna. Meanwhile, the assassin used the instant shadow kill seal sphere, and several copies of it appeared in front of our hero, who began to attack him. For our hero, this was something and after seeing it, the assassin did not understand what was wrong with this ability. He ran away, although he feels a little sorry, but at least he was able to hold the dragon for a while. This was what the assassin thought, but in fact our hero saw through his movements and asked the system to use the lava heart. The next moment, he used an attack. In the silver forest, the system was congratulating the owner. He destroyed all the invading players with the summon task, he received a reward of 15,000 points. Our hero, having dealt with all his opponents, decided to go to the dragon cave. Meanwhile, when he returned, night had fallen. I meet the owner and Polically informed me that Anna has returned home. Our hero sadly reported that, of course, he knew about it, remembering how Anna was killed recently. Turning to Ipolyclius, he asked if he really thought that Anna's spirit had already returned to the forest. And Polyclius thought about another catchphrase that the dragon uttered. And he didn't understand at all what our hero was talking about. Meanwhile, Anna was cooking sweets for our hero. Smiling, she stopped in front of her dragon master, informing him that she had found swamp honey. Now the medicines for it will not give off bitterness, telling, she was all sparkling with joy. The dragon just stared at Anna in surprise, thinking that he must have had plausible hallucinations, starting to cry. He thought that perhaps the memories were also part of the hallucinations. Turning away from Anna, he tried to wipe away his tears. The girl, watching him, did not understand why he was crying. Turning back to Anna, the dragon, patting her cheek, thought that the hallucination was very good to the touch. She did not understand what our hero was saying, and only looked at him in embarrassment. Meanwhile, Ipolyclius was addressing him. The assistant reported that two captured players were not in sight, but a bottle with a potion appeared. At that moment, he was showing him a conversion potion. Our hero turned to him and realized what it meant that the girl turned into Anna and was very angry, because for her sake he had to deal with opponents and spend his strength on it. But the next moment he realized that Anna was not dead and, all embarrassed, turning to Anna, he was very glad. Anna, looking at him, realized that as soon as she went out for a while, the dragon was already telling everyone that she was dead. Of course, the girl was unhappy with what had happened. Our hero tried to understand that she misunderstood everything and, a little embarrassed, asked to listen to her, because the girl did not let him insert a word. Although in fact the situation was terrible, remembering her death, and when he realized that she was alive, then all the bad things were over. Meanwhile, the dragon's current score was 46,995. The level of sympathy between Anna and Selina remained the same. The capital of the Kingdom of Henrius, the Royal Palace, addressing his majesty, he was told that the ambassador of the Aaron Kingdom had arrived. As it seemed, the knight believed that he had come to bring back Master Masont. The king was displeased that they still had the audacity to send people. He believed that this mason was, in his opinion, just a jerk. I spent so many people and resources, but I didn't even bring a dragon hair. The king was very angry that no one even appeared now, apparently he had already escaped a long time ago. And turning to the knight, he ordered to tell his man from Aaron that Maesant was buried in the dragon's mouth. All that remained for the knight was to obey his majesty, who gave him an order, and bowing, he was about to leave, but then the queen appeared. The queen asked me to wait. When the king saw her, he did not understand why she had returned. Bowing her head in front of the king, the girl said that she had heard that a big incident had happened in Henrius, so she completed her visit to family and friends, and headed back. The girl was also pleased to ask his majesty, because she had heard it said that the king, in order to cure the prince, sent people to Aaron to kill the dragon. The queen was wondering if it was true or not. Curtsying and smiling at the king, she asked. Realizing that the princess had found out everything, the king asked to listen to her. At that moment he was a little nervous. The queen flared up, not understanding what explanation he had. 
After all, he took advantage of the fact that she was not there, built a huge mess here. People are dying in their possessions, and he did everything to make the two kingdoms start a war. Sad and with a slap on his face, the king took offense at the queen, because he only wanted to cure the prince as soon as possible. Therefore, the princess, hearing this phrase, ordered the knight to leave and invite the ambassador. And the knight obeyed the queen again, this time he ran away from the hall. The knight immediately brought the one who was needed for the king and queen. A young man appeared in front of them, who greeted their royal majesty, and he understood that the queen was really as beautiful as they said, having seen her for the first time. The knight tried to smile at them to make a good impression. Privately, the young man thought that there had been rumors for a long time that the king of Henrius was an absolute nobody, so General Catherine sent Maisont. But he kept all these thoughts to himself without giving any sign, and only smiled. He knew that this useless magician had returned but he could not have thought that he had such a beautiful queen. Although the queen was smiling, she was glad that the man had given her such a compliment. The young man apologized for his bluntness, but said that he had heard that the army he had sent had lost to the dragon and no one had survived. Therefore, now his majesty is preparing to give people away or pay compensation, as far as he tried to find out. The girl tried to resolve the situation, realizing that the king at that moment was only muttering something indistinctly. Looking at the queen in horror, and trying to figure out how he could get out of this situation. The queen explained to his excellency that the army had indeed lost, but Magister Maisont was definitely not dead. The girl also said that after returning, the soldiers say that before entering the Silver Forest, they did not see Maisont. So the ambassador decided to check on her majesty, and meant that Maisont must have deserted. Covering her smirk with her fan, the queen thought exactly that. She asked not to misunderstand her, after all, from the very beginning they wanted to resolve the problem peacefully. The girl said that they had sent people to investigate and of course it would be better for the ambassador to stay for a few days. If Magister Mason actually died in the battle with the dragon, then they will negotiate compensation. When the ambassador left, he hoped that they would be faster because he could not stay here for long. Meanwhile, in the dragon cave, our hero, sitting on a stone, thought about the fact that Anna had not been paying attention to him for two days. And turning to the system, our hero asked if there were any beginner villages nearby. He will destroy them all so that they do not cross one by one, and do not disturb his peace. The system asked the owner to calm down and she suggested that he not arrange a large-scale attack on the player's villages, otherwise his status as the boss of the world would become eternal. When our hero heard about this, he did not understand what personal status the system was talking about. The system said that if the host is marked as the eternal boss, teleports will automatically appear in his vicinity, and players will be able to teleport through them to the Silver Forest. Imagining this situation, our hero was horrified, because he destroyed the villages of newcomers, just the opposite, so that there would be no danger. I turned to the system. Our ancient one understood that if you can't attack the village of beginners, then how could he earn points? Meanwhile, in the number one newcomer city, the Heavenly Dynasty, Ashlyn, watching his system screen, saw that the boss had been updated. It was probably the dragon that was clearly not killed, or perhaps someone stronger than him appeared. The young man thought that apparently the battle with the dragon had to be postponed for later. He hoped that he would survive, calling him a worthy opponent and exhaling heavily. Meanwhile, in the dragon cave, the analysis of the host's publicity was completed and since the reason for the decrease in publicity was unknown, the specific reasons had to be investigated themselves. The system also gave a hint that the decrease in publicity may be due to the appearance of a hero and a legendary level. The dragon was offended by the system thought that they had been together with it for so long, and whether there was something that she could not tell him directly, wiping away tears, despite the screen our hero was thinking. After all, she was so secretive these days, he couldn't do it anymore. At that moment, he pretended that he was offended and exhaled heavily again, waiting for the system to tell him. The system, addressing the host, said that this system can only assess the decrease in the host's publicity. The system cannot investigate the specific reason for what happened in this world. Our hero began to look at her sadly. At that moment, the system, already tired of explanations, explained that the system was not an artificial satellite. Our hero understood that there was no point in making this cute facial expression anymore, understood everything and decided that since the publicity had decreased, then now he can continue to fly around the villages of newcomers. But the most important thing that mattered to him was making money. Our hero was very serious about this issue when asked the police to gather soldiers, they were preparing to leave. And Polyclius, who obeyed his master immediately, was ready to fulfill his every request. 
But at that moment, he decided to ask where they would go, mysteriously watching his master. And the dragon said that he was going to go to the north of the Mulligan Desert, attack the village of newcomers number two Cherry. And by the way, referring to the system, he asked if there was anything that would help him and his subordinates strengthen the modifications. Our hero looked at the system carefully, waiting for an answer. After all, he meant that, as he believed, when he evolved her, then his assistants should have evolved with him. The system said that there is a modification that meets the needs of the owner. This modification is on page 14879, paragraph 67 of the Neural Modifications, and there is an article of the modification The Will of the Swarm. The initial level of Roy's will is worth 100,000 points. When the host adds a modification, 1,000 living organisms below his level will develop with him, as the system explained to our hero. The dragon thought about the will of the swarm and it would be okay to put this thing in the body of a huge dragon. The system has had big margins lately, it seemed to him. The system, spreading its hands again, explained that this system does not deceive anyone. She thanked him, but this system refuses the counter price that our hero offered in order to somehow convince her. Meanwhile, in the palace of Queen Henrius, while collecting the princess, the maids, preening her, and combing her hair, then applied makeup. At that moment, a woman entered their chambers and greeted Her Royal Highness. Then turning around, the Queen saw Shalista, who had finally arrived. Realizing that their conversations could be interrupted, the Queen asked the maids to leave and also ordered that no one enter her chambers without her orders. The maids obeyed and left the princess alone. Then Shalista reported that it was a bracelet in her hands from her missing sister, showing her find in her hands. Turning to her majesty, the girl hoped that she could really find her. The queen, approaching her subordinate, assured her that of course she could do it, but only for a reward. And Shalista offered her 10 years of her youth, only asking for help to find her sister Selina. Such a payment was acceptable to the queen and therefore she asked her mirror to help her find a girl. Seeing that the queen had an unusual mirror, the girl was surprised and the mirror from which the hand appeared, and took away the bracelet that the queen had recently brought to him. Wondering about herself, the girl carefully watched the bracelet disappear into the depths of the mirror. A moment later, the mirror showed that the dragon was looking at Shalista's sleeping sister, who was lying in his cave. The queen was also watching this situation. Meanwhile, our hero's current score was 61,995. Anna's sympathy level is 300. Selena's liking level was 170. Mulligan Plain, our hero, along with his charges, headed for the mountains. Turning to the dragon, his ward believed that the owner must have been hot and probably needed to rest a little. Our hero tried to prove the opposite to them, but he understood that he was probably deceiving himself, and even others, because he himself is like a huge stove. Our hero sadly thought that the girls were on his back and probably got sunstroke. Both girls were lying on the ground at that moment. Selena and Anna got really weak sunstroke. So, as the girls traveled on the back of our dragon, they were completely fried under the sun. Having found the riverbank, the dragon took the water and decided to water them so that the girls would feel much easier. So, feeling the pleasant streams of water on their bodies, both Selena and Anna felt much better that they were able to open their eyes and even talk to the dragon. Anna didn't even understand at first why she was wet, saying that it was very hard. Our hero, seeing how beautiful she looked, being in wet clothes, decided that he had to help her. When suddenly they heard screams, someone was screaming and calling for help. It was a woman's voice. At that moment, the girl was lying in front of a level 25 Indian player, and another level 25 Indian player, who offered her to scream as much as she wanted, no one would save her anyway. But our hero noticed the Hindu players not far from himself and the girl. But the map did not show him that there were beginner villages nearby, Perhaps it was a system error, as far as he understood. At this point, the system reported that there were no errors in this system, and once the owner encountered such a situation, the system would immediately begin explaining. The system decided to tell him that the camps of players from different worlds have different abilities. So Hindu player camps have the ability to hide the location of their novice village. At the moment, they know the ability of the Cherry Camp a militant spirit that increases the military power of the team and transmits the spirit of fearlessness to the players. Beauty camps have scientific and technical analysis that helps them create techniques. The owner must have already noticed that they had created a gun. Our hero remembers all this, and now realizing the abilities of the camps, and realizing them, he did not even suspect that they could do this. No wonder the map didn't show him that. Realizing all this, our hero decided to ask what abilities the camps and other villages of newcomers had. 
The system said that since the host had not yet come into contact with other player camps, the system did not know about this information and it was temporarily unavailable. Meanwhile, the guys were trying to undress the girl, who clearly did not want to and took her sword, she thought it was time for them to die. But then our hero also went on the attack on two opponents. When they saw it, they tried to repel it, but nothing came of it. The girl also saw a dragon in front of her, which grabbed her. She was glad, because her plan was successful and she finally found him, and she didn't even spend a lot of time. At this moment, the girl was carefully examining our hero, who tried to help her. The current number of points and the level of likes were unchanged. The Hindus were trying to figure out who it was. One of them asked the other about it and the guy reported that it was a brave time he was able to push him into the water. At that moment, the dragon that caught up with them explained that it was them. When the guys saw the dragon, they even stopped and no longer knew where to swim. The dragon tried to attack them with a jet that he had recently collected in this water, so that the Indians could no longer attack the girl who was sitting on the ground and watching all this. She was thinking that, as everyone said, dragons were by nature the same as all men. She only needed to get close to it, and seducing him would be easy. When the dragon came up to her, the girl was about grateful that he decided to save her. Addressing the divine dragon, and introduced herself as Ayana, she wanted to devote her whole life to him. Our hero even began to let smoke out of his nostrils and the girl noticed it. She realized that he probably couldn't even stand it. He was probably already ready to submit to her beauty. When she was bragging to him, she opened her eyes and saw that the dragon was no longer there, it had flown away. And as he flew away, he shouted that he would do a good deed and would not leave his business card. But if she wanted to know his full name, she could just call him Lei Fenam. After hearing that her name was Sunyan, the girl realized that it didn't matter where he ran away. She would still find him and kill him with her own hands. The girl was unhappy that the dragon could not buy into her beauty and left her alone in this together. Meanwhile, in the Mulligan Desert, and Polyclius, along with his subordinates, heading forward, addressing the owner, he said that there was only a desert ahead and they saw small monsters in front of them, which could be trampled with one movement of their foot. There was no one else in this desert but them. But it was said that it was very dangerous there, because ferocious monsters often hide there. When our hero heard about the ferocious monsters, he informed Ipoliclius that he had to remember the motto of their army. If they explode in the midst of enemies, then let them die there. These words were like an order, and Ipoliclius immediately obeyed his master, thinking about what a thoughtful motto the dragon had come up with. The lair of the brass dragon. The brass dragon, meanwhile, used his power to gather foliage from the trees. And our hero, addressing Ipoliclius, called his assistant, so that at his call he immediately ran to the dragon, thinking that there must have been some kind of instruction to them. Our hero believed that they needed to stop for a rest and Polyclius had to pass this on to all his subordinates. The girls, meanwhile, wearing glasses and their swimsuits, standing under an umbrella, asked the dragon why he had such a sudden stop. Our hero only felt the irritating smell of hot metal, it was similar to the smell of brass and copper dragons. Our hero had a bad feeling, and turning to Ipoliclius, he asked if they could get around the grass that was in front of them. After all, he did not want to use his strength and fight these dragons, hoping that this could be avoided somehow. The current number of points and the level of likes were unchanged. Addressing the owner, Ipolikli said that the easiest way would be to get along the only path leading to the north of the Mulligan Desert. The dragon agreed with him, but then at first he decided that he was scouting the situation by taking off into the air. Anna, along with Ipolikli, were supposed to stay here and rest for now, but he will fly there and come back quickly. Anna, saying goodbye to the dragon, asked him not to forget about his safety. The dragon, flying into the air, felt the smell, which became stronger and stronger. Apparently, the dragons he had been thinking about earlier were already very close. The brass dragon's lair was just nearby. As expected, our hero found it. Dragons are very territorial creatures and they won't just let you pass, as far as he guessed. While he was thinking about it, Selina stretched on his back and asked the dragon if they were in place. To which the surprised dragon, seeing Selina next to him, did not understand why the girl was next to him. She explained that she had inadvertently sprawled on his back and therefore fell asleep. But the girl did not understand why they were still in the desert. At this moment, since they had wandered into the territory of the brass dragon, he appeared in front of them and watched his opponents. When Selina saw the dragon, she didn't understand why there was another dragon here. He must have been his relative, the girl thought, pointing at him. Our hero only sullenly kept silent in response. The brass dragon, addressing them, informed them that they were the lord of the Mulligan Desert and the Rolls-Royce August Tourmaline. 
addressing the unknown dragon that was right in front of him. The brass dragon did not understand why he had invaded his domain. Our hero listened to the dragon, wanted to explain everything gallantly to him. Sunyan began to tell him that he and his subordinates wanted to pass through this place, and they did not want to offend his right to ownership. If the dragon allows, then our hero can pay a couple of gold coins for disturbing his peace. The dragon, of course, agreed. If our hero was willing to pay, and he wanted 100,000 gold, and also had to leave this person to chat with him, point to Selena next to our hero. When our hero heard about 100,000, he thought that 100,000 was demanded from him again but he didn't even have that kind of money. And turning to the system, he thought that perhaps the brass dragon was being reborn, and how much money he could have spent at all. He thought with tears in his eyes. The brass dragon explained that if a person couldn't talk to him for three days, then he wanted to be replaced with a new one. At that moment, he was showing one of the people who was already tired of talking to him. And our hero thought that maybe Selena could have done it. But Selena interrupted him and tried to figure out why the dragon needed her. Meanwhile, Selena, having heard that the dragon wanted to ask her about it, after her question, explained that she did not want to and would not stay with this dragon here. When our hero heard this, he said that he could give him coins, but he could not leave the man, talking about the girl who was standing next to him. The dragon was saying that for the honor of all of them dragons, he had to let his people through. To which the brass dragon, hearing our hero talking, called him a vile depraved dragon. He also compared himself to them, metal dragons, which clearly did not please him. The dragon thought it was a humiliation on the part of our hero. Then, after all, our hero decided that if the brass dragon did not want to be nice and since they could not agree, then she was waiting for a battle. Our hero's current score remained unchanged. The level of sympathy between Anna and Selina was the same. After hearing that our dragon wanted to fight him, for the brass dragon, it was a laugh and only that a pitiful level 4 dragon dared to fight alongside him. Selina tried to protect our dragon, realizing that a fight was about to break out between them, and the brass dragon was ready to attack our hero. When he attacked him, the next moment the brass dragon noticed that our hero had already disappeared from his field of vision, not understanding why he did it. The dragon was trying to look around, looking for our hero. Our hero still thought that the brass dragon was too slow compared to him, and biting his neck, he flew with him straight down to the ground. Selina wanted to help the dragon and use a put spell. Since the girl did not use the spell too well, she chained our dragon for the opponent's place, and of course he was unhappy with this, asking the girl to aim better. Of course, Selina apologized to him, just asked him not to do it anymore. The brass dragon, flying away from our dragon, believed that they were eager to perish under the paws of the conqueror of the desert. When our hero heard about this, he thought that there was going to be a sandstorm. The dragon couldn't open his eyes at all, and neither could Selina who was also hiding from the sand that attacked them both. The next moment, when our hero managed to open his eyes, he saw a giant stone flying into them, realizing that the girl would not have time to dodge him, because she could not see anything because of the storm. Our hero was able to grab her to save Selina and himself. Despite the fact that he tried to save them, even for our hero it was very difficult, because because of this sand he couldn't see anything at all. The brass dragon has already gone beyond the magic of the dragon tongue. As far as he understood, the system was supposed to help him, and our hero was wondering if there was a modification that allowed him to see through the sand. The system offered the owner to buy an all-seeing eye. It maximizes his field of vision and allows him to see through small objects. Only 70,000 points are needed. Of course, our hero did not have such a number of points, and therefore he asked the system if he had any other way, because he did not have money. The system was able to help him here, it offered the owner to freeze for 3 minutes and then the modification would cost only 10% of the total price. This option suited our hero, because he could agree to this and the amount of money was allocated, so he agreed with the system and asked to help them. The system also deducted 7000 points from our hero, and after completion, the solidification will end with a modification, and the report has begun. Our hero froze in place and looked around. He now understood where the dragon was. It only took three minutes and he could finish him off in a flash. The brass dragon, watching his storm, thought about how quickly everything calmed down. He thought that everything would be cooler, but he could not escape his clutches. The next moment, there was an explosion and stones flew at the brass dragon. The latter, jumping off his pedestal, tried to understand what had happened and why so many stones were flying in his direction. Our hero at that moment held one stone directly above him, addressing his relative. He hoped that he was hungry, because there was a food delivery right in front of him and he could eat to the brim. 
attacking his relative, the Brass Dragon. Our hero asked what his name was, he could not remember in any way. Going over the names in his head, it seemed to Sunyan that the opponent in front of him was named Rolls Royce Phantom Tourmaline. The dragon was unhappy that our hero behaved this way with him, calling him despicable, because he was unworthy to be a dragon and he attacked surreptitiously and insulted his name. And because our hero behaved like that, the brass dragon was now really angry, as he jumped up and talked about it to our hero. Looking at the brass dragon, our hero was very surprised. It seemed to him that the dragon was not just angry, but even stomping his paws out of anger. And in the next moment, the dragon realized that it was quicksand and the dragon's wings could not withstand such force. Therefore, Selene, coming to his aid, told the dragon that they were trapped. At that moment, her feet were also being sucked into the quicksand. The current number of points of our hero has changed, because he spent strength and coins to resist the brass dragon. Now the number of points was equal to 54,995, and the level of Anna and Selena's sympathies remained the same. An underground cave. When Selena opened her eyes, she realized that she was alive, and when she looked in front of her, she saw a skeleton that was sprawled right on her chest. He looked so creepy that the girl even screamed in horror, not expecting that someone could sit on her. She thought that maybe it was a ghost. An underground tunnel made of snake bones. After looking carefully at the tunnel in front of our hero, the dragon also survived. He was lying in the tunnel, opening his eyes, clearing his throat. He tried to figure out if there was something under the ground in quicksand, and it seemed to him that what he saw looked like some kind of snake bones. Selide, who got rid of the skeleton, looked around, thought about how dark it was in this tunnel. Selina only hoped that the dragon could also survive. As she made her way through the tunnel, the girl tried to call the dragon. She hoped that he heard her. The next moment, she heard the sounds that were behind her and thought that maybe this was the dragon she was summoning. Turning around, the girl hoped that it was our hero, but she saw in front of her only a skeleton, something like the same one that had recently been lying on top of her. Using her magic, she tried to summon all her powers to fight these opponents. Looking at the tunnel, the girl did not understand why there were so many corpses here, looking at the skeletons that tried to attack her, lighting their way with their staff. Having dealt with the skeletons, she decided to go further and at the moment when the girl decided that everything was in order, she tripped over a crevice in the floor, and the next moment she began to fall. Landing in a not very successful way, Selena felt how painful it was for her to fall to the ground. While the girl was exploring the maze, our hero heard some sounds and then thought that it was probably in his stomach, looking sadly at the system and realizing that he was very hungry. But then he decided to think about Selena and hope that the girl was alright. Referring to the system that he had called, the young man realized that since the system did not tell about Selena's death, then Selena should have been alive. At this point, the system seemed to decide to refute his words, explaining that the system does not work that way. In the meantime, our hero decided to ask the system that it was probably very far from the surface from here, as he understood. He wondered if he could break through the sand layer with dragon's breath and get out. Turning to our hero, the system asked the owner to abandon this idea. This is a huge desert structure, as unstable as possible and such an action will only accelerate his death, she warned him. At that moment, the phrase about the search for his death, which was addressed to our hero, was burning on her screen. He decided that he had to give up this idea and it was time to go ahead, because maybe he would find a way out of here if he tried to look. The system was silent all this time while our hero talked about what he needed to do. And then there was a sound, and the system, addressing the host, explained that the analysis showed that there was an unknown force ahead of them. After hearing about the unknown force, our hero hoped that it was not dangerous. At that moment, an exclamation mark was lit on the system screen, but the system reported that maybe it was dangerous, or maybe not. After all, nothing was clear, she could not warn our hero what was waiting for him next. The young man was unhappy that the system could not help him in any way, because he believed that she was here to help him. But lately she had been talking a lot of nonsense, and nothing more, which made our hero very upset. But there was no time to get upset and he decided to head deeper into the cave. As the dragon advanced, a giant red crystal appeared in front of him, which protruded from the mouth of a huge snake. There was a silhouette in this crystal. Our hero saw him and realized that there was a snake skull in front of him, and there was someone in the stone. There was indeed someone in the stone, and in front of our hero was a beautiful girl who was sleeping in captivity. Our hero tried to read what was written on this stone, and coming closer, having carefully examined what was in front of him, turning to the system, he decided to ask, because this is probably the unknown force that she talked about earlier. 
But turning to the system, our hero realized that the signal probably does not catch here since the system does not respond to him at all. He was left completely alone next to the girl who was imprisoned in this crystal. Meanwhile the girl began to slowly open her eyes, which our hero did not notice and only continued to call the system further. Meanwhile, the current score is 54,995. The level of sympathy between Anna and Selena was the same. While our hero was trying to figure out what he could do to get out of the cave, Selena also wasted no time. The girl drew attention to the stones that stood next to her. Seeing the ancient magical writings on these stones, of course, she was surprised by her find. Turning closer to the stone, the girl decided that she could look at it more closely, and then saw that it was the legendary code of the dead that all magicians were looking for. Selena realized that it was luck. After all, she who the sorceress will have a chance to read the code of the dead. The girl realized that it was her winning lottery ticket, and forgetting about everything in the world. She moved closer to the stone, wanting to find out what was written on it. Then she noticed the skeletons, who were roughly following her, moving closer to the stones and wanting to read something. The girl noticed that probably all these skeletons were wizards who died in the struggle for the code. She realized that they had some severe wounds, looking once more at the skeleton to be right in front of her. When she got closer to him, she became quite emboldened and took the skeleton by the hand, apologizing to him to move his hand aside. After looking closely at the stone, the girl realized that everything was written in blood and perhaps it was a dying will that was written on this stone. She decided that she needed to read the writing, which clearly meant something interesting. And when she started reading, these writings said that it was dangerous here. The evil spirit was sealed and there was no way to read it out loud. Our hero, at this moment, was next to a girl who opened her eyes, watched him closely, and Chelsea Tara was in front of him. It was not a bad name. At that moment Selina continued to cast spells on the stone and it was reported that in no case was it possible to look into the eyes. Meanwhile, our hero, who was next to the girl, looked carefully at the fact that she finally woke up and opened her eyes. Therefore, our hero stared at her in surprise with all his dragon eyes. Meanwhile, Selina was trying to figure out what was written on these stones and it seemed that it sounded a little strange. Getting up from her seat, Selina decided that it was necessary to move on and the next moment, looked deep into the cave, she felt sand get into her eyes. The girl could not look forward for a long time, scratching her sore eyes, which itched from the sand that was in them. At that very moment, when the girl was rubbing her eyes, she felt tremors in the ground. They were strong enough that she had to take her mind off all her studies, and the next moment our hero noticed that everything began to shake right in front of him. At that moment the stone stood motionless. Our heroes, who were both in the cave at different ends, felt this movement and tried to understand what was happening to them. Perhaps they were both in danger, wanting to find out what kind of tremors were at that moment and all over the earth. The current number of points is 54,995. The level of sympathy between Anna and Selena was unchanged. As soon as the tremors became stronger, the floor began to collapse and Selena began to fall into it. Falling down and praying that she would stay alive, the girl fell right on the head of our hero, who turned out to be on the floor below her. Landing softly, Selena sat on top of the dragon, which was breathing heavily from the fact that something had fallen on it. His breath was so hot that it became difficult for Selena to control herself. Sitting straight on the dragon, the girl tried to breathe fresh air for a minute. The next moment, she jumped up and realized that she was not lying on the ground, but there was a dragon in front of her. She was so glad that she met him that she immediately started hugging him, because they finally met. Selena was very glad that he wasn't dead. Feeling Selena clinging to him and expressing her emotions, our hero was even a little embarrassed. The level of sympathy, just at this moment, was added plus 50. When they finished rejoicing that both were alive, our hero, getting up from his seat, did not understand how Selena could have fallen on top of him. And the girl said that after they were sucked into these quicksand, she ended up at the top of the cave. There were many corpses of wizards, and also an ancient coat of the dead printed by black magic. When our hero heard about the coat of the dead, he immediately became inflamed and wondered if it was written in this code how to get out of this cave, in which they were now prisoners. Our hero's eyes were shining and he was looking at the girl a little embarrassed, waiting for an answer. Selena said that she didn't really feel anything like that. She also didn't see anything that could help them. Then Selena would like. Suddenly, she remembered that one magician had written something before his death, namely that an evil spirit lived in this cave. Our hero, listening attentively to Selena's story, tried to understand what evil spirit the girl was talking about. 
and in the next moment, he decided that it would be better if he could show everything so that she would not explain it to him for a long time. Opening his huge mouth, our hero took out of it the very crystal in which the girl had been until recently. He decided that maybe Selena was talking about this stranger who was right now in front of her, trapped in this crystal. It seemed to our hero then unsurprisingly that the girl was sealed in a crystal. At that moment, he was thinking hard about what could have happened next. Selena understood that what she had read on the stone meant and was the very truth that the magician had written. The girl came closer to the stone in which the stranger was sealed, looked at her and thought that everything was completely covered with the corpses of magicians upstairs, it could very well be that they were trying to seal her. Selena told all this and studied, continued at this moment to look at the sleepy stranger. But then, exhaling heavily, Selena decided that everything was fine, all they needed was not to read aloud the name and not to touch or look into the eyes. Then nothing will happen, the girl noticed. At that moment, she was all beaming from the fact that she knew what they shouldn't have done, told our hero about it. After hearing all the phrases that Selena uttered, the dragon watched her dance in shock and decided to ask, by the way, what would happen if all this could not be avoided? Selena understood what he was getting at and immediately asked what they had done. Our hero, she was very scared that he could really do all this. And meanwhile, the girl who was in the crystal was sleeping peacefully. At that moment, the crystal began to break off and a second later our heroes decided to snuggle closer to each other. Scared out of fear, they screamed at the whole cave. The whole point was that they felt this force, the force with which the girl got out of this stone, the force that could be heard for many kilometers. It was so strong that even the dragon's scales were pierced. Our hero, covering Celine at this moment, carefully watched the girl who was in front of them. Although it was dark and scary, I wonder what the stranger will do. Meanwhile, Selina clung tightly to our hero, afraid for what could happen. The girl was not touched by this in any way, and using her magic, she finally felt free. At that moment, her eyes were burning with fire, and she was trying to figure out who was here in this room, taking off into the air and trying to look in the direction where our heroes had recently stood. And at that moment they were already hiding right behind a rock. The dragon closed his mouth not only to himself but also to Selina, fearing that the girl might make some kind of sound. After that, they will be found immediately. Meanwhile, they were still standing behind the rock, waiting for their opponent to leave. And while they were waiting, the system told them that a special female character had been discovered and asked the host to determine a strategy. When he heard that the system offered only to discuss strategy, our hero thought that if she really knew what needed to be done, then he asked her angrily to offer him everything. The dragon did not understand how he should act in this situation. The system was only supporting him, asking their owner to believe in himself and he would definitely succeed. But she would go, because she was already called. At this very moment, when our hero was communicating with the system, he did not expect any attack. But just at this time, a stranger who had recently awakened found our hero along with Celine and decided to attack them. The dragon felt that the only thing they could do in this situation was to run away. Turning to Selina, he suggested that she do just that, so that they run out from behind the cliff, and run wherever their eyes looked to escape from a stranger who clearly was not friendly to them. Meanwhile, the current score was 54,995. Anna's liking level has not changed, but Selina's liking level has grown to 220. Meanwhile, in the lair of the Brass Dragon, sitting on his throne, the Brass Dragon carefully decided to listen to what his subordinate would tell him who reported on the situation that was happening in his lair. The dragon's tail, which had nowhere to put it, was visible between his legs, because the throne was not exactly designed for a dragon. A throne that did not take into account the features of his body and it might even look strange to others, but not to the dragon himself. After listening to his subordinate, who reported to him, the dragon realized that he had been informed that the black dragon had an army of monsters and it stopped near his domain. It was funny to him, of course, because the black dragon had died and surely these low-level monsters didn't know it yet. Sitting on his throne, he saw how stones began to fall from the ceiling and perhaps it was an earthquake, as it seemed. The next moment, something like a huge skeleton burst out of the ground. Meanwhile, there are armies of monsters in the desert. Anna, using her power, felt where Mr. Dragon flew pointing at it. And Polyclius and his subordinates, having listened attentively to Anna, now also hoped that everything was not lost. Anna, on the other hand, was uneasy at heart. Privately, the girl hoped that Mr. Dragon was fine and nothing had happened to him. Of course, she was always very worried about him and was even a little embarrassed by how much she was worried about the Black Dragon. Desert. After our heroes escaped, the dragon lay unconscious and the girl who had recently been imprisoned in a vessel in the cave appeared in front of him. 
In front of him was Chelsea Tara, she was SS class. Her condition was with a lack of strength. Her sympathy level was minus 10. Her age was unknown. The race was evil, and the abilities were also unknown, as shown by the system's scoreboard that appeared in front of her. Our hero opened his eyes and after reading this, he realized that there was an SS class in front of him. Meanwhile, the girl turned to the dragon and was unhappy that he ran away, because she did not want to eat him. Tara was angry that the dragon couldn't talk to her, but just ran away. Meanwhile, our hero, shaking with fear, thought about what huge powers the girl had, and she was still lacking strength now, as he had read on the screen earlier. But she made it to the surface with ease, despite the fact that they were almost drowned under the whole tunnel. Our hero, thinking about it, looked at the girl carefully. Without thinking twice, she climbed on top of him. She thought it was very comfortable and he had very beautiful scales, complimenting the dragon and sitting on his back. Our hero was surprised by how easily she climbed on top of him and maybe she was looking for his body. Looking at the girl a little embarrassed, our hero thought, but he definitely decided that he would not obey this beauty. Meanwhile, Chelsea revealed that it was all because of those damn magicians who wanted to kill her snake. Looking mysteriously at the sky, she wondered if our hero would become her new pet, touching his scales, sighing heavily. She wondered what the dragon thought about it. Now our hero remembered, if she was talking about a pet snake, maybe it was the same snake skeleton in the cave that they saw recently. At that moment, our hero's nose even bled from his thoughts, and he looked confusedly at the girl who was sitting on his back. And while he was thinking about it, a picture appeared in his head, he was sitting on a leash in front of Chelsea Tara with a loving look looking at her. Meanwhile, Chelsea was giving him commands, just like a dog, forcing him to sit down or do what she said. And imagining this, the dragon was, of course, pleased, but he understood that he could not show this to the girl. And therefore, turning around and throwing her off his back, our hero, turning to her, did not understand who was supposed to become her pet here, because he was a dragon. Meanwhile, the girl, falling from his back, was unhappy that he did not obey her and believed that good pets should not have done so. Sympathy minus 10, the system said, while the girl concentrated her magic in her palms. Scared, our hero decided to look at the system window, because he did not even suspect that sympathy could decrease and tried to find out from the system what was going on. The system, addressing the owner, said that this time the goal of conquest is quite dangerous. Before sympathy rises to level 1, it is very unstable, trying to calm our hero down. After listening to the system, the dragon decided that he would believe it, and at that moment, when he was distracted, he saw how the girl who had recently been standing nearby began to attack him with her fire magic trying to dodge it. Our dragon realized that it was quite dangerous. The lair of the brass dragon was immediately destroyed by the attack of Chelsea Tara, who used it as punishment for our hero. But she accidentally overworked and destroyed the dragon's lair, which at that moment was sadly looking at what had become of his house. Cursing our hero, he knew that the black dragon had survived after all and he also found help to destroy the lair he had probably built. Saying all this, of course he was unhappy. At that moment, Chelsea Tara was closely watching the dragon that stood in front of her. Our hero thought that she was probably helping him so much. But how this genius should have thought of such a thing? Looking at his kinsman, our hero thought sadly. But he also kept his eyes on his new girlfriend, who was standing not far from him, waiting for more attacks from her. The black dragon, addressing the brass dragon, said that if he wanted to think like that, then he was powerless here. And this is his captain, since he was so capable. He should have been looking for her, but he wanted to tell him that he would not be able to defeat this girl. Pointing to Chelsea Tara, who stood next to him and listened attentively to the dragons. Meanwhile, our hero's current score was 54,995, and Anna's liking level was 300, and Selena's liking level was 220. A new character appeared in his system this is Chelsea Tara. Chelsea's liking level was minus 20. While they were at the ruins of the brass dragon's lair, they were all trying to come to some common benefit and somehow resolve this situation that they had. Of course, the brass dragon was unhappy that the black dragon was trying to rampage right in front of him. Jumping down from his seat and heading towards our hero, the brass dragon wanted to show why he was called the Dragon Lord. Meanwhile, our hero asked not to break down in any case. The girl, who was standing right in front of the brass dragon, listened attentively to our hero, who said that the young people did not listen to his advice at all. Turning to the brass dragon, Chelsea Tara asked if he wanted to become her pet or not. Of course, the dragon had no choice and time was running out because the brass dragon was already attacking her directly, concentrating its energy in the pace to make its lunge. The next moment, he had already started attacking Chelsea Tara 
who did not expect him to do so. Our heroes, watching this, expressed their respect because it was a wonderful fight. The Black Dragon really enjoyed standing on the sidelines watching this. Chelsea Tara was very angry that the dragon cut off her hand, and she certainly did not expect this initially. But there was nothing to do when she understood that she would have to fight. She thought that the dragon was probably looking for death since it boldly attacked her because now she wanted to make him her pet. Tara said earlier that the pet had to obey. The angry girl began to transform. Using her magic, she believed that a particularly ugly pet should have obeyed her. She began to look a little different. Her eyes burned red and her strength was so powerful that after attacking the brass dragon, he realized that he could not move his whole body. At that very moment, the dragon was already hanging in the air next to Chelsea Tara. The girl was so aggressive that our hero looked at her and realized that they would not be able to cope with her and asked the system if it was possible to calm her down somehow. A window of the system appeared in front of him and she told him that the owner could use the field of the subordination agreement. But for this it was necessary to transfer some part of the body to the victim as a container. After listening to the system, our hero asked about the subordination field, namely how much it cost. After all, as he knew, the system always gave him the very prices that he could not support in any way. This time, the system explained that this field was inexpensive, only a thousand points. But the signatory of the submission agreement must remain in the field during its creation, otherwise it will not work and system points will not be returned. Meanwhile, the girl began to whip the dragon, trying to make it her pet. The brass dragon could not cope with his opponent in any way and had already begun to call for help. While he was hanging in the air and Chelsea Tara was dealing with him, Selena thought that they probably needed to take advantage of this moment and quickly escape from these two. Selena realized that the dragon was not listening at all and had recently been standing next to her. He had already disappeared somewhere. Selena, opening her mouth in surprise, did not understand where our hero could have run away so quickly. And the strangest thing was that the dragon didn't even tell her anything and just disappeared. Meanwhile, energy appeared next to Chelsea Tara. It was so hot that the girl even singed her clothes when she tried to dodge it. Turning to our hero, who was next to her, she thought that he had already escaped a long time ago. Now Tara has directed her gaze at him, offering our hero to become her pet, hoping that he will accept this offer. Our hero, having heard that she had previously said that he had escaped, said that there was no such word in his dictionary and he was ready to bet on this, the battle. Selena, who looked at everything that was happening from the side, said that the dragon was running from completely the wrong place where they needed to go, and hiding behind the slope, suggested that he hide right here. Our hero, of course, thought that it was possible to escape, but decided that he was dragons, and he had to deal with his opponents. The black dragon believed that since he had released Chelsea Tara, he would personally defeat her by informing the girl about it. Of course, Chelsea was very interested in what the dragon was going to do. At that moment, another dragon was in her power and hung in the air next to her, but she didn't mind another one, her worthy pet. Meanwhile, the system showed that the general characteristics of our hero remained unchanged at the moment. Tara threw back the brass dragon, which had recently been hanging next to her in the air, and, flying away towards our hero, the black dragon managed to dodge his kinsman in time, who was already falling next to him on his stomach. Looking at the brass dragon, who was still like the king of the lands, but was now amazed by one girl, he tried to ask if he was alright. Softening up, the dragon, defeated by the girl, informed our hero that he was fine and thanked him for this care. Our hero suggested that he not be so grateful, he just had to remember that salvation is worth something. At that moment, he was handing him a paper on which was written a decent price for his help. Looking at it, the brass dragon saw the price of a billion gold. And when he read how much our hero wanted to get for his rescue, the brass dragon bulged at him. And the black dragon thought that he should have been fine, because it was just over 100 million, offering to pay him this price. But the brass dragon just fainted from so much money. Interrupting their quarrel, Tara reminded of herself and asked our hero not to be distracted. At that moment, she had a weapon glowing with red energy in her hand and decided to attack our hero with it. The whip she used was so long that she could reach the black dragon in the air, so trying to fly away from it. To a safe distance, our hero decided to observe what kind of weapon the girl had in her hands and how she could be dealt with. But he didn't have much time, and Selena warned our hero that Tara was behind him. An attack overtook him, inviting him to turn around, because the girl who had recently been in front of him had already come from behind to attack our hero. Meanwhile, the black dragon was calling the system, saying that he needed to summon the submission contract field. 
the owner successfully acquired the field of the subordination agreement and spent a thousand points. As the system informed our hero, the field creation time should have been 10 seconds. At that moment, our hero was already standing on the magic circle, which was visible only to him. The dragon immediately realized that he only needed to keep her in the field for 10 seconds, then his whole idea would work. When Tara decided to attack him with her whip, our hero was able to grab her with his teeth in time. Seeing this, Tara was surprised that he was able to resist her attack and even so skillfully, and decided to attack him again. She fell into his very trap while in the magic circle with our hero. Landing directly on his back, the girl realized that something was wrong. At that moment, our hero put her right on the magic circle, holding her with his paws so that the girl could not resist in any way, and could not escape anywhere. Then she noticed that she was lying on the magic field, realizing that our hero apparently wanted to hold her. But Tara was not so simple, summoning her earth magic, which she also skillfully wielded. Quicksand appeared from it, which headed straight for Selina and a snake could be seen from these quicksand. The snake was already ready to attack Selina, who was standing nearby, watching our hero's battle. Meanwhile, the current score of 54,995 was displayed on the system screen. Anna's liking level, 300, Selena's liking level, 220, Chelsea's liking level, minus 20. Meanwhile, the black dragon realized that he still had 19 seconds left, and Selena, who fell from the onslaught of the snake, thought only that she did not want to die. With tears in her eyes, the girl looked sadly at the ground, unable to lift those eyes forward, because the last thing she saw was a huge scary snake. At that moment, a sound rang out and the system congratulated the owner. The field of the subordination agreement was created. Our hero grabbed the skeleton of a snake, and the system congratulated him again. The capture was interrupted. The field lost its power. Our hero understood that he almost had enough. At that moment, he was standing right in front of Selena, whom he managed to save from a giant snake that was about to tear the girl apart. Selena was very happy and with tears in her eyes, she thanked the dragon for coming to her rescue. The system reported that Selena's likes had increased by plus 80, and the current level of sympathy was 300. The system congratulated the owner, because he reached the third stage of sympathy, received a special skill sleeping gas. The system also congratulated our hero for getting 5,000 system points. Our hero, flying into the air in front of Selena, saw her crying and asked her to calm down. The girl could not cry, she needed to hide in a safe place as soon as possible. She thought about how handsome he was, and thought that people with dragons were also nothing. Therefore, Selina, obeying him, informed him that she would go and hide. At that moment, she was running away, and hiding her face from embarrassment, after her thoughts, unable to face the dragon. Our hero, watching Selina's strange behavior, tried to figure out if the girl was really so afraid of what had just happened. Meanwhile, Selina, running faster to safety, being too clumsy, tripped over a stone and fell straight to the ground. Having hit her face, she was lying on the ground, unable to stand up. But at that moment, when she gathered her strength and lifted herself up, the girl noticed that there was a ring in front of her. The ring of the magician who wrote the warning on the stone in blood. There was a skeleton's hand in front of her, and she thought that it might be useful to her. Meanwhile, Tara did not think that our hero could create a human field of submission. Of course, she was sorry that any field requires strength and time to create, and he did not have them at all, as the girl correctly guessed. Already being in the air next to our hero, she decided that she would attack him. The black dragon did not expect Tara to appear so quickly next to him and was attacked by her, flying straight to the ground and hitting a rock. At that moment, Tara believed that it was worth becoming an obedient pet, and since he did not obey, she would do whatever she wanted with him. Namely, he will skin him and make a new snake for his snake. Tara was sitting not far from our hero, watching him from a cliff. The dragon realized that imminent death could await him when he saw the red whip. Tara, who she was pointing at him and therefore suggested she stop so they could discuss the situation. When she tried to touch his red-hot scales, she realized that it was not a necromancer spell binding to the earth, and why it appeared here, she did not expect in any way. After all, the girl destroyed them all a thousand years ago. But at that moment, the black threads began to obstruct Tara's attack. Our hero saw this as a good moment. Therefore, I turned to Selina. He asked her for help. Selina tried to help the dragon as soon as possible. The girl still used the ring that she took off the hand of the skeleton that had been right in front of her until recently. Selina screamed that she couldn't stand it for long. She asked our hero to do something as soon as possible, and our hero called the system, buying the field of the subordination agreement to try to bind Tara again. 
The previous time obviously failed because she tried to attack Selena, and our hero was distracted. But this time he believed that everything should have worked out. The system, making rattling sounds, told the owner that he had successfully acquired the field of the subordination agreement and spent a thousand points again. Also, as he had learned earlier, it took 10 seconds to create the field. The system began to operate and the field began to bind the container. Tara, being in chains, understood that she had fallen into a magic circle and, of course, was unhappy with this because she was tied up again. The system reported again that the capture was completed, the field was created and she asked to choose a container for the victim. Meanwhile, the current score was 54,995. Anna's liking level is 300, Selena's liking level is 300, and Tara's liking level was minus 20. Remembering the words of the system that the dragon needed to choose a container for victims, our hero thought about it a little bit and decided that he would like to choose in his claw. He pointed at his paw, and the system reported that the owner, as it seemed to her, believed that the claw could only be considered a horny layer, and everything except scales and horns could be considered a receptacle. Meanwhile, our hero began to have strange thoughts. It seemed to him that perhaps these were hallucinations, where Taro wanted to make him listen to her and tried to interfere with our hero, but he decided that then he would use his left hand to hold the girl. Pointing his hand at her, or rather his paw, our hero touched Tara. The girl was very unhappy that our hero was leaning his hands directly against her and looked away from him in embarrassment. Meanwhile, our hero didn't care about such things. He only listened to the system, which reported that the contract had finally been concluded. Chelsea Tara became the master's servant. There was a powerful gust of wind and our hero squeezed his eyes shut, waiting for what would happen next. Selena, at this moment, covering her legs from the dress that was lifting up, tried to withstand this strong current of wind. And then, opening her eyes when it was over, she was happy because they had succeeded. After waiting a bit, the girl decided that there was something she hadn't done yet and took off the ring. Our hero was closely watching what she was doing. Selena drew attention, along with our hero, to the one who was behind. They saw a corpse that must have been the previous necromancers, and there was still magic in his ring. Fortunately, with the help of the ring, Selena was able to use necromancer spells of binding to the earth. The next moment, when the ring was removed from her hand, she put the ring on the very hand that had recently helped her. Leaving the ring, she decided that this was the end of it. But the black dragon believed that the girl clearly had an innate potential for necromancy. Selena assured him that she would become the most powerful sorceress. And being a necromancer is cool, of course, but it wasn't her dream, she told our hero. At that moment, the girl was proud of herself that she was able to help him resolve this situation. She looked at him carefully. Our hero, at this moment, thinking a little, thought that he would not have said at all that he should refuse because of fear of corpses and the undead. Probably the girl just didn't want to tell him about it, but our hero decided to keep these thoughts to himself. While they were standing in the desert, it seemed to the dragon that he had forgotten something and thought about it. Then suddenly they were distracted, and interrupting his thoughts, he heard a familiar voice. Looking to the side, he saw Anna running towards them. The girl called Selena and our hero to her. Everyone was very surprised that Anna came to them here, and behind her was an army with flags. Selena and the dragon looked at Anna carefully, and Anna said that she had heard that Mr. Dragon had run into trouble, and therefore she immediately led an army of monsters here. Having made his emphasis on the fact that Anna had heard that they were in danger, and that they had run into trouble, our friend, he was surprised to try to figure out who the girl could have heard it from. After all, they were very far from each other and no one could tell them. But then Anna, coming closer to our hero, whispered in his ear that she had met a hiding dragon on the way. At this moment, both of them were carefully looking at the brass dragon that was sitting in front of them and turned away. And our hero, approaching him, remembered that he had completely forgotten about him. Addressing the brass dragon, our hero sarcastically reminded them that he owed them a billion gold. The dragon, looking at our hero in horror, thought that he could not escape this reckoning. Therefore, I decided to do something, saying that it was unfair. Our hero, looking at him menacingly, reported that there was nothing to be done. The dragon's legacy. He gave him two options, or he became his relative and worked for the black dragon until he paid off his debt. Or the dragon stretches out its veins, peels off its skin and becomes its weapon. He pulls out his organs from the depths of his heart, insists on vodka and makes rice with vegetables out of it. Upon hearing this, the dragon flared up, not realizing that our hero probably wanted to kill him. But he's a member of the Dragon Guard Union, and if he kills him, the Union will put him on the wanted list, the brass dragon said. Meanwhile, the system was showing the current number of points of our hero, which was equal to 54,995. 
as well as the levels of girl's sympathy. Anna's liking level was 300, Selena's liking level was 300, and Chelsea's liking level was minus 20. When our hero heard the Dragon Protection Union, he just laughed loudly in response to the brass dragon, trying to figure out what he was talking about and what kind of union he was talking about. Our hero hinted that the dragon would share this information with him, because he had never heard of it before. The dragon said that the whole point was that there were fewer and fewer dragons. During the time of lawlessness, the birth rate of dragons decreased and decreased. When Brass left Dragon Island there were less than a hundred of them, which means the black dragon had to understand what it meant. The brass dragon explained to our hero that the whole situation was such that if this continued, the dragons would simply die out. He also told him that a few 1000 years ago, there were tens of 1000 dragons on Dragon Island. There were a lot of dragons, they flew quietly in the sky and had offspring when they wanted. No one interfered with them and they lived for their own pleasure on their island far from people and from all other monsters. They dragons grew up slowly, as the brass dragon explained, although they needed sleep so that they could grow up. But now people are increasingly hungry for the bodies of dragons and often there were many merchants. But there was no one to sell, the brass dragon explained to our hero, hoping that he understood him. When people found Dragon Island, they decided that they could kill a couple of dragons and then they would definitely get rich. If they tore out their hearts, they would be able to get the materials in general, because the dragons had so many excellent materials that they could not lose it in any case. The distraught people only wanted to make money when they got to this island, and the brass dragon was like that himself. Remembering the whole terrible story, he looked at the death of his parents. At that moment, he managed to hide and could only watch from the sidelines as people dealt with his relatives, and most importantly, dealt with his family, and he could do nothing. He went on to say that the more dragon slayers appeared, the fewer places they could survive. The dragon said that he had not lived here since he was born, talking about these mountains. His parents were killed by dragon killers and to buy them time. He ran away with his brothers and sisters to Henrius. While telling this, he was so sad and stern that it was impossible not to notice how painful it was for him, and that the story was not easy for him. But the brass dragon continued, explaining that those dragon killers who killed his parents followed them on their heels, killing his relatives one by one, until he was saved by the Union for the Protection of Dragons. The Dragon Protection Alliance was created by the adult red and silver dragons. They want to protect the remaining dragons. It doesn't matter if the dragon was golden or colored. If he follows the rules of the Union, he can join and receive protection. But the brass dragon said that now only the red dragon Kaiser remained in the Union. Besides him, there are no colored dragons who voluntarily joined the Union. The brass dragon was so angry about this, because he thought that these arrogant fools would sooner or later be destroyed by the dragon killers. They only know that they sleep and eat and vice versa, they do not care about the world, they do not care about their relatives, they only fight among themselves for power, without stopping doing it at all. Angry, he decided that he needed to control himself in order to continue addressing the black dragon. And the brass dragon, addressing our hero, informed him that if he killed him, the Union would soon issue an arrest order against him. In the end, he will be banned from prison, where he will eat stinking bugs day after day. Our hero, watching him, and after listening to his whole sad story, thought about whether it was really a threat at all or not. The next moment, our hero, kicking his kinsman on the ground, informed him not to cry to him here, turning to Rolls Royce. He decided that he would still give him two options, either he becomes his kinsman, or he cooperates with him. But if he doesn't want to, he will seal his mouth so that he won't be able to speak, and he will eat nasty bugs every day, showing his paws, something from which the dragon had to immediately agree to his terms. The dragon was so scared that he immediately began to bow to our hero, informing him that he was the great dragon Rolls Royce Phantom Tourmaline, and that he would serve the black dragon that was right in front of him. The next moment, still bowing his head, the brass dragon informed the black one to swear to him by the colored dragon, the dragon mother of Tiamat and Bahamu, and asked not to seal his mouth and not let him eat stinking bugs. Our hero, observing this pitiful picture, agreed with him, and he addressed him as soon Nyan Waters Parternak swore to the dragon mother Tiamat and Bahamut, and if the brass dragon served him faithfully, then he would not seal him to fall and would not give him smelly bugs. Touching the brass dragon, he promised that the Rolls Royce Phantom Tourmaline, under these conditions, wanted to become a kinsman of the black dragon Su Nyan. This is how our hero ended his journey in this den by concluding a peace treaty with the brass dragon. Flying out of the cave, it was already completely dark, our hero was carrying Anna in his paws, 
who was sleeping peacefully at that moment. Meanwhile, looking at one of his paws, he saw a stain on it and probably thought that this crack was a trace of the contract he had signed. A system window immediately appeared, informing him that for unknown reasons his degree of publicity had decreased, so he asked to study the specific reasons on his own. Our hero did not understand how the publicity could go down again, because he just rested and that's it, not understanding what happened outside, since such a thing could happen. Meanwhile, the system was calculating the current number of points, which was 54,995. Anna's liking level was 300, and Selena's liking level was also 300. Chelsea's liking level remained at minus 20. Meanwhile, Anna woke up, and addressing Mr. Dragon, she believed that something must have happened. At that moment, the girl was rubbing her eyes sweetly and looked beautiful in the moonlight. Therefore, after looking at her, our hero asked him to calm down, because everything was fine and he reported that he was just bitten by a mosquito. Therefore, turning to Anna, he begged her to sleep. The girl couldn't sleep and felt that the dragons were bothering her, so she tried to get closer to him. The next moment, when she sat astride him, approaching his very muzzle, the girl kissed him somewhere in the cheek area. Having felt this, our hero could not believe what Anna was doing. The girl said that all this was so that his bite would not hurt and suggested that he sleep well today, addressing Mr. Dragon. She was smiling again and looked very cute, which made our hero barely keep himself in control. Inflamed, he offered himself to hold on. To himself, he only thought that soon he would become a man and then he would be happy. The Village of Newcomers Secura Number 2 When our heroes had slept well and the night had already passed, approaching the village of newcomers, they saw what a beautiful village lay in front of them. Its tiled roofs were glowing and everything was so good that our hero did not believe it, and decided to ask the system if it was absolutely sure that this was a beginner village. He decided to explain his concern by saying that when he looked at it from above, if you compare the scale of this village with 1 and 6, then it had grown too much, as it seemed to him. At that moment, he was looking in surprise at the city that was in front of him, along with the moat and towers, which were not at all like a village in his mind, especially considering what he had seen earlier. The system, addressing our hero, decided to tell him. After all, due to the fact that the owner turned all his attention to the villages lying near the Silver Forest, this became the usual rate of development for players. Upon hearing that it was a normal speed, as the system told him, our hero looked at the village again with horror. Watching her closely, he realized that according to her words, there are many more villages like this and even better, as he concluded. The system said that it could be said that the players behave like colonialists, who first need to become stronger themselves in order to gain a foothold on this land and become its masters. After listening to the system carefully once again, our hero understood what the system meant by saying that this village is more like an invading species that has no natural enemies in nature. At this point, our hero thought about what he could do with the problem hanging over him. The forest thicket, near the village of newcomers Secura Number 1. Our heroes decided to hide in the foliage and develop a plan to infiltrate this village. And just addressing the owner, and Polyclai, who went with him, covering his nose from the terrible stench, said that the ammunition was ready. Our hero, meanwhile, also covering his nose, looked closely at his ward, trying to understand what he was carrying in his hands. And then Ipolikli said that this is a new development. Exploding balls with sharp feces, they are ten times more powerful than bombs with poisonous gas. At that moment, the ball that was in his hand exuded a terrible smell, so Ipolyclius tried to keep it away from his nose, as well as from the nose of the owner. Turning to Ipolyclius, our hero decided that he should have informed him that progress was good, but next time it was better to get rid of this terrible smell that accompanied these ammunition. After all, otherwise you will have to get rid of their bodies. Our hero could barely restrain his vomiting, watching this ammunition, which was held in the hands of his subordinates. The next moment, realizing that everything was ready, our hero decided that they could move to attack this village. Flying out of the bushes, the dragon went first and Ipolyclius remained standing below, watching our hero, who shouted from the sky that everyone should have thrown balls with feces directly into the village. On the orders of our hero, everyone immediately began to do as the dragon said, namely, to throw the weapons that Ipolyclius created against their opponents. They also all shouted as one that they needed to attack the village and kill everyone. Armed, our hero's army was ready to deal with the goal set by their boss in the person of the Black Dragon. 
and when they entered the city, people started shouting that they were attacked by monsters. Entering the castle, they looked furious and terrified that people immediately began to run in different directions so as not to fall into the hands of their opponents. Everyone was shouting that they were being attacked by monsters. The next moment, when the other people on the tower felt the weapon falling on them, they covered their mouths and noses in horror, not understanding what it was. After all, it just gave off a terrible smell, which made people's eyes water. They were unable to resist this smell. One of the soldiers, being still in a normal state, realized that it was probably poisonous gas. Although he felt bad, but addressing his subordinates, he asked to inform the master about it faster. I hope that at least someone will be able to do it. Meanwhile, while everyone was attacking the castle, our hero, turning to Rolls Royce, asked him to use dragon breath with him and direct him to the very center of the city. The brass dragon thought it would only get worse. Addressing the owner, he explained that these people did not provoke them. He did not understand why they should kill. Recalling his terrible past, the brass dragon believed that if these people had been the first to go into conflict, it would have made sense to respond. But he believed that this was not the case. Our hero thought otherwise, that his partner was an idiot. Spewing flames from himself, he explained that how did he think about why there were fewer and fewer dragons? Did he think about it so deeply to figure it out? At this moment, our hero dealt with one of the opponents, and the man who had recently become in front of him was defeated. At that moment, the dragon, hearing what our hero was talking about, wondered why there were really fewer dragons. After all, he did not mean what kind of answer was supposed to follow now. The dragon blindly followed our hero and trusted him. The statistics were unchanged. As the black dragon realized, the brass dragon did not understand at all what he was talking about. Then he decided to remind him that the dragons were getting fewer and fewer precisely because of the people they were attacking now. The black dragon explained that humans had taken over their space for survival, destroyed their kingdom for life, and killed so many of their kin. Our hero decided to go all out, telling us what terrible things people did against dragons in order to encourage the brass dragon to attack people and not feel sorry for them. As they did not spare their dragons once, killing them, they tore into their hearts, cut off limbs, made tinctures, crumbled and created armor from them. If one day the brass dragon lets his opponent get away, he will lead the dragon of murderers to his lair, make a bag of gold out of his corpse, and rattle weapons. He will loudly celebrate that he has defeated the dragon and brag in front of all the people who will surround him. The brass dragon again recalled these terrible things that our hero was talking about, because he still remembered how he was a child and saw the death of his parents, which it was hard for him to forget until now. Remembering this horror, the dragon began to rage and informed our hero that these people had to die. Black Dragons noticed that his partner was really angry now and was very happy about it. Looking at him with her malevolent gaze, realizing that his plan to incite this dragon on people had finally succeeded, the Brass Dragon was ready to go into battle. Since the dragon understood everything now, he had to destroy this human village with it. Our hero at that moment looked sternly at the Brass Dragon. He was ready to go with him to the village of newcomers Sakura Number 2. Our heroes, together with the Brass Dragon, incinerated the city. While they were doing this, hovering over the streets of the city, people who were fleeing, as well as soldiers, noticed these dragons. Addressing the young gentleman, the guys who ran away with weapons recently said that two dragons had arrived here. Looking up at our hero and the brass dragon that tried to incinerate this village with him. Turning to the young master, he really saw that there were two dragons in front of him and, numb from what appeared before him, the young man reported that all the magicians had to prepare for the attack. First, it was necessary to distribute shields to the soldiers, and then immediately recite their most powerful spell, addressing all magicians, the young man reported. The magicians listened attentively to the guy who gave them orders. The same one continued saying that it was necessary to allocate two magicians to cast spells on the dragons to slow down. The magicians had no choice but to follow the young master's instructions. There were two of them who were ready to do it. Addressing the young master, the magicians reported that dragons have a high resistance to the magic of the elements of the deceleration spell. They won't last long, shouted the magicians, who at that moment were trying to deal with our hero and the brass dragon that hung in the air, watching them. The young master, meanwhile, despite the fact that their attack was not successful and everything was not going as he had planned, did not understand why the dragons suddenly attacked their village. The young man was very unhappy with the way the whole situation was developing, realizing that he did not know what to assume anymore just what to do, seeing that the magicians were also powerless in front of these dragons. Then he was called and turned around and saw a young man in front of him, 
who explained that a few days ago the young man's father had brought people to attack the black dragon, but he did not know if this was the dragon that was taking revenge on them now. The young man reported this to the young master very carefully, so as not to anger him even more. Behind him were his subordinates, who were ready to justify him and summarize that this was indeed the case. The young master thought to himself that he could not believe that his father had recently been defeated. But it was not surprising that there had been no news from his father. Apparently he started a battle with these monsters and lost. The young man seized on this idea, decided that he would avenge his father and turning mentally to him, asked not to worry, because he would definitely avenge him. Addressing the soldiers, the young man also informed them that even if they could kill these dragons or not, they had to keep an eye out, taking out spears, aiming at the dragons at an angle of 45 degrees. People had to prepare to throw them with all their might to deal with their opponents. Meanwhile, the guys who stood behind him listened attentively to what the young man was saying to them in order to carry out his order. Taking the spears, they were ready to attack at the command of the young man and prepared to look in attentively at the dragons that were in front of them. The next moment, taking aim and at the command of the young master, they began to attack their opponents in the person of the black dragon and the brass dragon. Our hero was not so simple that he was just hit by spears and using his voice and strength. He offered to disarm these weapons. The next moment, the copies that had recently been flying straight towards him began to fall down immediately. The dragon was just watching from the sidelines, and people couldn't believe that it had happened, that it simply couldn't have happened, because they had calculated the entire attack. The young master turned to the magicians, again asked for their help and invited them to raise their shields. Meanwhile, when the mages along with the knights began to run away from the arrows that flew at them, they began to hit their targets, but it was very difficult for people to hide from them. The young man shouted that he needed help to raise the shields, the spell did not recover and all the people ran straight towards the castle, asking for help from our hero and someone who could save them. The dragon, meanwhile, watching his opponents, believed that they had overestimated themselves, concentrating power right in his mouth to strike back after they tried to attack him with pikes. Addressing the owner, the brass dragon reported that he had a question while they were frozen in the air, and taking a break between attacks on people who in turn were running away from them, and could not resist them in any way. And our hero was carefully ready to listen to his new ward, whom he pointed in the opposite direction from him. Our hero looked carefully at where the brass dragon was pointing, and realized that it looked like these people couldn't possibly die. He saw with his own eyes how the players he trampled came out of a room right in front of him. Since the brass dragon paid attention to this, he will tell you everything about these people. After all, the world in which they lived is not the only one, Besides their world, there are others. Since our hero was from another world himself, he spoke calmly about it, instilling confidence in his brother. After looking at him, Su Nian wanted to see the reaction of the brass dragon. Meanwhile, he explained to Brass that he had to understand that this world had fallen into the possession of dragons. The dragon, upon hearing our hero, noticed that apparently the black dragon meant that these people came from other worlds, being absolutely surprised by what our hero had told him recently. The Black Dragon's current score at the moment was 54,995. Anna's liking level and Selena's liking level remained unchanged at around 300, and also the level of Chelsea's sympathy still remained at minus 20. So the system reported to our hero every time, showing a summary of his condition. The village of newcomers Sekura number 2. One of the witches, addressing the young master, decided to tell him that she thought these dragons were too ferocious and they could not cope with them in any way they should have fled other villages sooner. The young master, hearing this from the strongest witch who was in his squad, was shocked, because he thought about other villages, because there were probably beginner villages nearby, as she said. The girl said that there really was one nearby, Camp Asanya, although it is not on the maps, but it also seemed that they had invisibility. The witch told him this, knowing that it could put everyone in danger. But when the young master heard this, he decided that they could take advantage of this chance. He believed that if there was an invisible village, then they should no longer wait and immediately leave the battlefield. The witch was wondering what people were doing in that village, she wondered aloud, but the young master was not interested. After all, no matter what they do there, they do not regenerate, they live among the green mountains and are not afraid to become firewood hinting that no one dealt with them and they were not attacked by dragons. The young man, addressing the witch, suggested that she wait until the dragon flew away, and then they could rebuild this village. The witch could only agree with the master and thus, by casting a protective spell, she was able to protect them. 
and then they could move. Being outside the village of newcomers Sekura number 2, the young master, along with the witch, tried to escape from the bombing, which was staged by the brass dragon along with the black dragon. They ran away so fast that the young man didn't even bring anything with him. Looking back at the devastated village, he knew that he would certainly return. The young man was so angry that he completely forgot about his safety, but the witch who was next to him asked the gentleman to move faster from this village. After all, the invisibility only worked for 10 minutes, the very spell she cast on the two of them while they were deciding what would happen to this village. And the village of newcomers Sekura number 2, our hero, along with the brass dragon, informed him that, as he should have noticed, these people were not from this world at all. They came here to capture, that's all. If they had succeeded in conquering them, then their world as used things would have been in danger or even destroyed. At that moment, he raised his hands to the crystal that was found in the ground. Meanwhile, the brass dragon listened attentively to his leader, because now he seemed like that to him. Meanwhile, the black dragon explained to brass that this was the reason why he attacked them. In addition, each of these people was a professional, as he believed. But from there, the dragon only listened to him attentively, looking in horror at the black dragon who seemed so wise to him. The black dragon continued to say that it was much easier for people to become stronger. All they had to do was kill a couple of monsters, that is, their dragons. At that moment, he placed the crystal in the ground again, telling all this to the brass dragon, trying to explain to him why he did this. The brass dragon, after listening to our hero, made only one conclusion, thinking that they were in great danger. Talking about them, he meant dragons that were on the verge of extinction. At that moment, Rolls-Royce was so scared that our hero asked him to calm down, noticing how he was restless. It seemed to the black dragon that the brass dragon didn't look like a dragon at all. He was of no use, he only looked like a tangle of nerves. On the orders of our hero, the brass dragon immediately calmed down and then Sunayan explained to him that he did not know how other places were opposed. He only knew that he would gather all the local monsters here, destroy the village of strangers and build their own city of monsters. At that moment, he was reaching for the crystal again, thinking that this little thing looked very important. After taking the crystal out of the ground, the brass dragon saw it and decided to ask what the black dragon had raised and the black dragon explained to him that it was a crystal. A crystal that can help them gain the ability to build cities, but they could only get it by destroying a human village. That's why he explained to Rolls-Royce that for this they were uniting and for this they needed human villages to build their own kingdom. Truly united, they will build cities for monsters together and drive out these invaders. People who exterminated them all the time and did not let them live in peace. Looking at the black dragon, the brass dragon listened attentively to his kinsman with tears in his eyes, because he was saying what the brass dragon dreamed of hearing, and he could make his dreams come true. Therefore, turning to our hero, the brass dragon Rolls Royce wanted to become his kinsman. He swore to Bakhmut to follow him until his death. After hearing such incredible speeches from our hero, the black dragon holding the crystal at this moment listened attentively to what Rolls Royce told him. At this moment, Rolls-Royce bowed its paws in front of him and lying in front of our hero, said that the dragon's breath, wherever he walked, left ashes. At that moment, 300 units of sympathy were expressed, as well as admiration. Our hero was very happy about this and turned to Rolls-Royce. He said that he had been waiting for this day for a very long time, seeing how he worshipped him. But before that, our hero believed that they should have tried to become stronger. Here the system also appeared, congratulating our hero. She congratulated the owner for destroying the village of newcomers by the roots. His publicity has also increased. Our hero was very upset recently that his publicity was lowered. But when he heard that his publicity had increased, he looked at the system very surprised and questioningly, trying to understand how it works. But then he relaxed, knowing that a boss had appeared in the new world and so far there was no need to be afraid that the players would come to him. Spreading his hands, he thought it was great for himself, and a little embarrassed, he exhaled, relaxing. Anna appeared here, and shouting, addressing Mr. Dragon, the girl told that and Polyclai sensed that two people had escaped from them. After all, our heroes have been holding prisoners hostage so far, and the girl said that they sent people after them in pursuit. At that moment, she was very worried, telling all this to our hero. He drew attention to Anna, who was telling him all this, and decided to stop her. Addressing Anna, our hero reported that there was no need to chase, because they would find people and let them follow them quietly. They had to see where they could escape to, hinting that these people probably knew about another village that our hero had not heard of before. At that moment, he only looked at Anna thoughtfully, realizing that it was only beneficial to them, 
because they could destroy more villages that way. Meanwhile, the system was giving the summary to our hero again. The current score was 54,995. Anna's liking level remained the same and was equal to 300. Selena's liking level was also the same and was 300. Indian novice village number 4. The Hindus thought it was such bad luck, because this time they would not be pitiful with this dragon, who had run away from where the hell, remembering the black dragon that chased them last time. That's what one of the Indians said, because no one knew, but maybe that beauty would fall into their hands. Meanwhile, a black dragon and a brass dragon flew into the novice village number 4, trying to incinerate the entire village to the ground. They wanted to revive a place where only dragons would live and dealt with people as soon as they could see them. The brass dragon walked in front of our hero, trying to figure out so that he wouldn't get his paws dirty on these people. Anna also helped them, and meanwhile, while our heroes were trying to deal with the village, the Indians, who were watching from the sidelines, thought that they had probably come to the wrong place. Hiding in the bushes, they tried to figure out if what had recently been their village was now similar to what they were seeing now. The captain shouted that the monsters were attacking them, they had to run. At this moment, the guys who were always with their captain were trying to figure out why they had to run away from the holy dragons, because they could be reborn as soon as they died, so they saw no point in running away. After hearing what the subordinates were saying, the captain considered them fools. Hitting one on the cheek, he tried to reason with them. After all, the guys should have seen the last post about the strategy. Watching from the bushes, he said. At this moment, the dragons were still trying to destroy their village. The guy informed them that the players from the village of Sekura, due to the fact that the time of rebirth was too long, died of hunger without water and food somewhere in the corner of the peace square. At that moment, the Hindu imagined these people in horror thinking that they did not want the same thing to happen to them. The Indians knew that the captain was telling the truth, so they had to escape from here as soon as possible. Stop watching the village, and running far into the forest, one of the subordinates, addressing the captain, said that the dragon that is now attacking the village is the same dragon that threw them into the river when they were trying to deal with the girl. At this moment, the young man was trying to figure out how the dragon was able to find their village, and even brought help with him. Making his way through the forest, the captain communicating with his subordinates, of course, could not know the answer to these questions. Meanwhile, while they were walking straight through the thicket of the forest to escape from these dragons, a girl overtook them. When the Indians saw her, they immediately jumped back, not understanding where she came from right in front of them. But this was the very beauty they wanted to meet again and they were very happy to meet her. The girl just heard that the guys were talking about the black dragon. And since they were talking about him, they obviously saw him and she was wondering where he was now. After demanding information from them, she decided that they would tell her about our hero. Holding out their hands to the girl, the Indians reported that the dragon was uninteresting, like their brother with whom the girl was supposed to have fun. Realizing that they were holding out their hands to her, she dealt with her opponent in a second and only pieces remained in his place. The captain was the only survivor and turning to the girl, he asked her to have mercy on him because he did nothing. She was going to let him live, of course, because now he could take her to the very dragon she needed. Meanwhile, in the village of newcomer Indians number 4, our heroes tried to incinerate everything they saw, and while the black dragons incinerated the houses, the system congratulated the owner that he had finally destroyed the village of newcomers. Then the system continued to reward our hero, congratulating the owner that he had received a fragment of the core of the novice village, in one piece. In front of our hero again lay that crystal in the ground, which he found in the previous village after its destruction. The system also said that his fame had increased and if he continued to destroy the newcomer villages, he would be marked as the boss of this world. Due to the attack of two novice villages in a row, he received 200,000 points, which our hero certainly did not expect, having taken the crystal of this village. He only thought that he had finally collected all four pieces and how difficult it was to wander back and forth in search of them. At that moment, a little embarrassed and rejoicing that he had done this, he carefully pressed this crystal to his chest. Meanwhile, the girl who was previously saved by our hero has finally discovered him. After all, the young man had led her straight to the goal. She had not thought that they would meet this dragon so quickly. The girl believed that the bloodlust of this dragon was incomparable. 
apparently, it was necessary to find the right moment and get closer to him. Meanwhile, our hero's current score was 254,995. Anna's liking level is 300, Selena's liking level is 300, and Chelsea's liking level remained minus 20. Watching from the side, the girl finally saw what she needed, namely, she was lying in wait for the Indians who were standing nearby, hiding behind a tree to make a scene in front of them. Then she started screaming and pretending that she was in pain, calling for someone to help. Of course, it was addressed to our hero so that he would notice her. And the dragon really noticed her. When he heard the screams, he turned to the place where the girl had screamed earlier, and immediately descended from the sky to protect her. He flew so fast and landed next to her that it seemed to the girl that Mr. Dragon had pinned her down. To which our hero immediately recoiled from the girl, apologized to her, hoping that he had not hurt her or invaded her personal space to prevent her. The girl apologized to our hero, saying that everything was fine and nothing terrible happened. At that moment, she was thinking to herself about how polite our hero was and apologized to her. He was probably pretending, so she decided to take a look and thought to herself that she would be able to expose his lying face. Using all her feminine charms, the girl thanked him for saving her, wanting to follow him and also serve him. Our hero using his system immediately opened a window, and the window that appeared showed that the girl's name was unknown and also her age was unknown, the level, race, state of talent and current level of sympathy were also unknown. After looking at these statistics, our hero did not understand why everything turned out to be unknown to him. When she saw that he was looking at her intently, she thought that he had taken her bait. If she used her beauty to get close to him, after he gained her trust, she would kill him. The girl was thinking about what a wonderful plan she had made in order to get this dragon. At that moment, our hero was watching the girl make faces, not understanding why she was doing this. He thought it was better to stay away from such an incomprehensible creature, because her antics were very embarrassing to him. He didn't understand it. Having stopped watching the girl, our hero turned to the side where the Indians had been standing recently to see why they were attacking someone again. When they saw the black dragon, they all immediately froze, addressing the great dragon. They explained that they had not intentionally insulted him, and this girl might be the best food for him, because she was much tastier than them. Our hero, hearing them talking about this girl, did not understand who gave the word to small bugs like them, and how they had the courage to bargain with him. Approaching the guys, he used his infernal flames and burning eyes to try to scare them. After all, they also tried to pollute his taste preferences with their dirty meat, it was simply inexcusable. At this moment, the Indians all looked at their opponent in horror, realizing, that they had very little time left. All they could do was apologize to Mr. Dragon, because they could give him their treasures and give him various information. Wanting to bribe the dragon, the guys shouted. The next moment, when the dragon moved even closer to them, they hoped that he would not eat them, telling him about what they could not give him. Then the dragon was really interested in the treasure they were talking about earlier, and also about the information they could give him. Therefore, he asked them to spread everything and then the great dragon would not burn him, addressing the young man who stood in front of everyone. He immediately took out a million plates out of nowhere and offered the great dragon to be kind enough to taste their traditional delicacies. After all, each of them has a wonderful taste, they had a thousand year exposure, and also this taste was clean and healthy. A second later, the dragon incinerated all this food and the young man with tears in his eyes tried to hide from its fire. After all, his curry had just been burned, and the dragon explained that he was giving them three seconds to tell them what they knew, otherwise they should not have resented him that he would burn them all to embers. Of course, the guys had no choice, and bowing in front of him, falling to his knees, the young man shouted that the great dragon should have had mercy on him. After all, they only knew that the Storm King of Worms had recently appeared on the western shore of the Henrius Kingdom. This worm is very cruel, it also destroyed four human villages. And as they said, the King of Hearts is crawling towards the Kingdom of Elirin to attack. There will be even more human casualties very soon. After hearing this information, the dragon believed that his information was absolutely worthless. For the dragon, what is said does not matter at all. He wanted to know where the gold coins were and where the jewels were. If the person didn't know anything, then all he had to do was burn it. At this moment, he was showing him his flame, which was about to pour out of his nostrils, as well as from his mouth, and burn this man to ashes. When he saw the flame, the young man, sweating all over, tried to turn away from it, shouting that he knew something. Addressing the great dragon, he also said that the Storm King of Worms had committed many atrocities, attracted a bunch of mercenaries. These mercenaries came from different places and each has incredible strength and luxurious equipment. 
but comparing with him, that king of hearts, that mercenaries, they were all trash. Therefore, the dragon only had to wait for them to kill each other, and he would be able to win this way. Our hero was thinking at that moment that this storm king of worms should be marked as the boss of the world and in the end he killed four villages. The difference with him is one, if not for the awakening of the system, then now the boss of the world, behind which all the players are, would probably be him, our hero thought to himself. But the guy had no more information for our hero, and turning to the great dragon, the Hindu said that although he now has no information, but they agreed to give him even more information about the various villages at any time later. Congratulations to the Heavenly Dynasty player for reaching level 30. The young man became the first player to reach this level. The reward, the equipment of the great master and two scrolls with a choice of military features. The system also asked for attention, because a player who has reached level 30 has been detected. The reality of the world is increased. All players have increased pain sensitivity from 0 to 10%. The player who received this notification, who was standing in front of our hero at that moment, understood that it was bad. Our hero, addressing the bug, namely this young man, tried to understand why the guy's face had changed so much. Was he really hiding something from the great dragon? The system apologized to the host and asked to pay attention, because the sensitivity of the player's pain increased by 10%. Our hero was very surprised at this moment that the players felt pain. But it was even for his benefit, at that moment he thought about it to himself. If players are sensitive to pain, even a 10% increase weakens them very much. And it looks like now the dragon will be able to open up a lot more interesting gameplay, as he realized. After reading the notifications from this system, he thought, looking at the young man who had recently experienced painful sensations from increased interest rates. The young man tried to lie to the great dragon, saying that he just suddenly wanted to go to the toilet. But he doesn't hide anything from him, he never hid anything from him. Our hero pretended that he agreed with this, and if a person is confident and true to his word, he will not burn it. At the moment when the guy agreed and was about to walk away from our hero, he stepped on him with his feet. After all, the dragon only said that he would not burn it, but our hero did not promise him anything else at all. At that moment, the girl saw that the true dragon nature had appeared. Then Anna and Selina came up to him, addressing Mr. Dragon. They were very happy that they saw him and informed him that they had finally returned. When she saw two girls running up to our hero, the stranger thought that two more girls were suffering from a malicious dragon and apparently she would need to save them, looking at both of them, she thought. Meanwhile, Anna informed Mr. Dragon that she felt such unbearable dirt on her body, and she wanted to go home as soon as possible to wash up. And when she did this, the dragon saw in his mind how to address Mr. Dragon. Anna suggested to him that she help him wash. Our hero, having presented this, asked to inform Anna and Policlia that they would immediately go home. At that moment, he was so distracted that even drool flowed from his mouth, and he looked absolutely unhealthy. The girl, addressing Mr. Dragon, stopped him, she asked him to take her with him. She wanted to donate her precious thing to him. Anna saw how a stranger was protecting her, and did not understand why the girl stood up for her. The same one, spreading her cloak, protecting Anna with her body, addressed our dragon. Selina was also unhappy with what she saw, as was Anna, who, when she saw the new girl, looked at her carefully. Selina added that they were finishing the battles, and he was kidnapping girls here behind their backs. It was unfair. Our hero understood that his girlfriends were unhappy. Turning to the system, he asked if there was any way to get rid of her, talking about a stranger who wanted to go with them. The system turned to our hero, told him that the owner could release a soporific gas. As for ordinary people, it is estimated that the time before she wakes up will be enough for him to return to the lair. Our hero heard that there was still a way out, and quickly, he asked to release this gas quickly so that the girl would fall asleep, and they could safely leave this territory. The system warned our hero, asked the owner to think carefully about it, whether he really wanted to release the soporific gas. Our hero did not understand why the system was forcing him to think about it and asked her to do it as soon as possible. The next moment, when our hero asked her to do it faster, the system warned him, but still the young man asked to do it, and therefore the system could not contradict him. The next moment, standing in front of the girls, our hero released gases through the only hole that was available to him. All three girls who stood in front of him were shocked by what our hero had just been able to do. Petrified by what had happened and unable to move, they continued to stand right in front of him, not knowing what to say. The black dragon, realizing what had happened, was also shocked that it had happened. Turning to the system, he tried to understand why this happened. 
the system decided to explain that since the host does not have special glands on the skin that release gas, it was only possible to do it this way. Our hero, feeling terrible after what happened, did not understand why she did not tell him earlier, because he had just lost all the dragon's honor as it seemed to him. With tears in his eyes, our hero cursed himself and the system that had not told him earlier about how it all worked. After all, he was standing right in front of the girls, and he was very ashamed that this had happened. After that, the system, turning to our hero, asked if the dragon wanted to connect the four fragments of the core of the novice village. If he connects, he will get the rights to build beginner villages. After hearing that the dragon could finally do it, our hero asked the system to connect the fragments. When all this connected, our hero saw that the connection was completed. The system congratulated the owner, because he had received the pure core of the novice village and she asked him to choose to participate in the village. Our hero couldn't believe his luck, because finally, what he was doing all this for was starting to work out. In Type 1, Entry Level Fortress, a fortress appeared in front of the young man, which looked like a defensive fortress and also looked like a castle in some way. Next, there was Type 2, Entry Level Dragon Lair. It looked like the lair that our hero had until recently. In Type 3, Entry Level Underground City, it looked like a really gorgeous city that was underground. Our hero didn't like Option 3 very much and turning to the system, he decided to shame her, because her underground city was very bad. Walking back and forth from city to city every day, that's how much time he needed to spend. He didn't understand how he would be able to make up for all his lost time. A whole day without sunlight, if he was in this underground city, then he could get sick so easily. Addressing the owner, the system explained that a portal could be built in the underground city and he and the monsters under his care could leave and enter the city as he wished. You will only need to spend points on the construction. In addition, it is not dark at all in the underground city, the optical field concentrates ground sunlight. An imitation of the sun is created and the host can adjust the brightness of the light. When he listened carefully to the system, our hero thought about what kind of idea he had to make, but he understood that the system told him in great detail about the underground city and about its advantage. Our hero decided that then he would choose the underground construction of the city, informing the system about it. Next, the system asked you to choose the entrance to the underground city. Our hero thought that the entrance would be just in his lair. It seemed to him that this would be the most convenient option, and if the time came when the players dared to go camping on him, they would fall right into his endless matryoshka doll. It seemed to him that it was quite funny. Meanwhile, there was a passage in his dungeon and all his subordinates were very surprised by what they had just seen in front of them, because they did not know what our hero was up to. Meanwhile, turning to her brother, Anna explained that it was probably an earthquake, not understanding where they needed to hide. Our hero explained to her that there was no need to hide anywhere. It was their new house, which was now under construction and everything would be fine soon. He tried to assure Anna. The girl asked him not to make a new house, they could hide somewhere else. It seemed to her that this maze would soon fall apart, and at that moment, with tears in her eyes, she looked at our hero. Here the system said that the construction of the underground city had been completed. The owner had a chance to teleport all the monsters to the underground city and asked if he wanted to start teleporting. Turning to the dragon, of course, he wanted to do this and asked the system to start. The next moment, all the monsters began to teleport. But, of course, they did not know about this and did not understand what was happening, thinking that they were probably attacked by people. But the next moment they moved directly to our hero, who was sitting in the very center, being at the top, and watching his subordinates, who moved directly to him. The Palace of the Dark Lord of the First Level While staying in any of the palaces of the underground city, the palaces of all the characteristics of the owner increase by 50%. The system was telling our hero, who was very interested in this information. The system further explained that the current open skill is Palace Guard. The host can appoint one guard within a 500 meters radius of the main palace. The guard receives a 20% increase in all stats. Possible candidates for the guard, Anna and Rolls Royce. The rest of the skills need to be unlocked. Upgrading the level 2 Dark Castle Palace costs 100,000 points, and 8 shards of the novice village core or 2 whole cores are also needed. Our hero, watching this, tried to understand why every palace guard has a little bit of the boss guarding something not understanding what it was. Turning to the system, the dragon tried to understand why it was possible to make only Anna and Rolls Royce guards. At that moment, while our hero was thinking, the system also noticed his current score, explaining why our hero could only make either Rolls Royce or Anna guards. The system said that the levels of other creatures did not yet meet the requirements of the guards, but the host can put other creatures in the maze. Thus, our hero decided that he would make a Rolls Royce guard for now. 
Meanwhile, Rolls-Royce, looking around, being absolutely surprised by what was happening to him, realized that he had a feeling as if power had poured into him. The dragon shouted to the whole neighborhood that perhaps he had evolved by carefully observing himself. Our hero, too, watching the Rolls-Royce, felt that he had made a mistake, realizing that the dragon was completely useless. But he decided that there was already nothing he could do, and then he would go check out the rest of the underground city, flying out of his dungeon. The cobbled lair is level 1. The system said that cobbled productivity has been increased by 100%. Their maturation period has been reduced by 50%, and the combat effectiveness of newborn cobolds has been increased by 20%. There is also a null lair, which was at level 1. Null productivity has been increased by 20%. The maturation period has been reduced by 20%, and the combat power of newborn dwarves has been increased by 20%. The Eagle's Nest, located at level 1, also received a 50% increased efficiency of the birth of demon birds. The maturation period has been shortened by 100%, and the combat power of newborn demon birds has been increased by 20%. The system told our hero all this, noting that now it all worked much better. Our hero thought to himself that this is the lair of various animals, so their appearance here was not surprising, which means it will be easy to form a fighting force in a short time. Of course, he liked this option very much, because now he could attack villages much faster. Then the system asked him to pay attention to the Black Prison of Pain. A creature imprisoned in a black prison is subjected to constant torment, and receives one torment every day. Each torment increases his perception of pain by 5%, up to a maximum of 10 torments. There was also a reincarnation pool next to the black prison, which was on level 1. At the moment, the system said that the owner can spend system points on the reincarnation of ordinary animals. Not far from them was a dark wheat field, which was also on the first level. It increased the ripening rate by 100% and next to them there was an underground river, producing cool groundwater suitable for drinking. After looking at all this, our hero noticed for himself, a black prison of pain, a pool of reincarnation, a dark wheat field, an underground river, and all this was much better than the dragon's lair that he had before. He now possessed various advantages that could give him a rapid increase in his level, as well as his associates. Our hero, laughing and also shedding tears of joy, was very glad that he chose the dragon's lair. After all, according to the nature of the system, most of the functions in the dragon's lair would be designed only for dragons. For example, he recalled an increase in the probability of pregnancy in dragons and an increase in the safety of dragon eggs. At that moment, he imagined this sight, and he felt somehow uncomfortable. Interrupting his thoughts, the system turned to the owner, found that the owner had built his own gathering place for animals and asked if he wanted to hide the coordinates of the gathering place. She noticed that the host could hide the location for one week, after which the gathering place would be visible and appear on the maps of all players. Upon seeing this notification, our hero couldn't believe his eyes. He was so angry that the only thing he could do was swear at the system. He did not understand how it worked, because when he tried to destroy the village of newcomers, the system did not allow him to do it, saying that he would be marked as the world boss and thus prevented him. And now she was offering it to him. After all, now that he had barely managed to build an underground city, she told him that he had voluntarily revealed himself, or in seven days his lair would be revealed, not understanding what kind of nonsense it was. And he didn't understand what the difference would be between him and becoming a world boss if it was all about the same thing. The system asked him to calm down. The discovery of the underground city was inevitable, because the fragments of the core of the novice village are, after all, its main product. However, after the discovery of the underground city, the host will not be marked as a world boss, a portal will not be created and the host will receive new characteristics. After listening to all this, our hero heard about the new characteristics and began to get angry again. He understood what the system meant, and then she decided that our hero would have to explain everything again. And she decided that she would explain everything to him in some detail so that the dragon would not ask her any more questions. Characteristic one of the legendarity of his underground city and its stories will begin to spread throughout the continent. The characteristic of the two contenders, no matter which contenders are players or app, the stories involved will increase his level of legend when he dies in the underground city. They will also give him double system points. The system also said that the legend level is associated with the improvement of the underground city's structures, and higher legend levels allow you to unlock more advanced functional structures. After listening to all this, our hero still did not understand at all what the system was talking about. He was reborn and was creating a project in another world again, it was kind of strange for him. 
The dragon did not understand if the existence of the black dragon was to be constantly deceived by players and locals. Our hero understood that there was nothing to do, so turning to the system, he asked to hide the location of the underground city, even if it was for one day, but he decided that let it be so. He did not want anyone to bother him yet, because he was very tired. The system, addressing our hero, reported that the dungeon was hidden, and five towers of archers were discovered, which are not in the underground city, asking if he wanted to move them. So far, the towers are not needed, as our hero decided. The system should have told him how to get out of here and where the portal was. The system immediately replied that creating a one-way portal requires 20,000 system points. Only one one-way portal can be created at the current level of the underground city. The system was so tricky that our hero was dissatisfied again and turning to the system. He informed it to build him and curse this system again. An underground maze. While in the underground maze, Selena began to scream. She thought there was a ghost here, but Anna told Sister Selena that it was just a shadow and she had nothing to fear, when the girl hid behind her friend at that moment. Meanwhile, the system was talking about the level 1 Labyrinth of Darkness. The Labyrinth of Darkness, which is the first line of defense of the underground city, is practically indestructible, and any intruder who wants to enter the dungeon will have to go through its trials and tribulations. Characteristic 1 of disorientation in the Labyrinth of Darkness. The creature's sense of direction is lost. Characteristic number two, the chance of killing in the labyrinth of darkness. The combat effectiveness of the beasts increases by 10%. They receive the status of invisibility when they are stationary. Other features have not yet been unlocked, as it was written on the system window. Addressing Ipolyclius, our hero, showing where he needed to move, asked him to stand in a corner and not move until he told him. Of course, Ipolyclius agreed with the owner and moved to where he said. At that moment, Selina saw that Ipolyclius, who had been standing in his place until recently, had simply disappeared. Anna thought it was strange. Addressing Mr. Dragon, she said that she did not understand how Ipolyclius simply disappeared, because he was standing right here quite recently. But at this moment, all of them together were closely watching how the teleporter was working. Our hero was in the underground city, talking with the girls. He tried to explain to them that everything was fine and that they could not find him. Speaking about Ipolyclius, our hero explained, because it was a feature of the labyrinth of darkness. Any animal that stands still for five seconds goes into an invisible state. And Polyclius also heard what our hero was telling and was delighted with it. After all, he now understood what it meant that the great master who built this labyrinth of darkness possessed such power. He was very happy, because he had an idea. They could set traps in the labyrinth of darkness, or they could send several beasts to guard it, offering this one to the dragon. And Polyclius explained this by saying that in this way, thanks to the Labyrinth of Darkness, they would block the way inside to the enemy. As expected from Ipolyclius, he was a real expert when it comes to dirty tricks, our hero thought after hearing his suggestion. Turning to Ipolyclius, our hero thought it was a good idea. He left this to his loyal subordinate, at the same time had to send potatoes to a dark wheat field and order human soldiers to grow them. Those who had previously disobeyed had to be taken to the Black Prison of Pain and locked up for 10 days. After 10 days they could deal with them. And Polyclius obeyed our hero and went to carry out all his instructions, which the dragon entrusted to him. At that moment, Anna was next to the dragon, having carefully listened to everything he had come up with and all she could do was stay by his side, listening to how our hero was going to improve their time together in their new home. After buying the golden apples, 5,000 system points remained in reserve. Distribute the rest of the system points to more profitable products for him, as the system offered him. The strengthening plan that can best increase his strength, our hero told the system, addressing it. After listening to him, in accordance with the requirements of the owner, the system selected the most appropriate improvement program that meets his current capabilities and physical needs. It is recommended to strengthen the muscles, 10,000 points, plus the initial level of the will of the swarm, 10 points, plus the golden apple, 10 points. The system also said that there are 5,000 system points in reserve. At the moment, the owner has 44,995 system points left and the system was wondering if our hero would like to start strengthening, turning to the dragon, wanting to hear his further instructions. Addressing Anna, our hero, hugging her, told her that he would start improving right now. Anna looked at him sadly and realized that Mr. Dragon would improve again. But she informed him that everything was fine, because she would protect him. Turning to Mr. Dragon, she invited him to sleep peacefully. This time our hero believed that he would not have to sleep. But the process itself can be more painful, so he asked to go play somewhere else, because he was afraid that he would scare her. 
Anna believed that she would not go anywhere and stay here, because it was said that the evolution of dragons is a very dangerous thing. An accident could happen at any moment, and she would stay here and protect Lord Dragon. The girl was so inspired, and said that she would stay by his side, that our hero had no choice but to agree with Anna. He then suggested that she stay by his side. After all, the girl was so proud that she could be with him. The dragon decided that she could stay close to Su Nian, but terrible things could happen with the improvement. When the evolution process was going on, she needed to stay away from him because he was afraid that he would hurt her. Anna looked at our hero carefully and understood everything, and the dragon, addressing the system, suggested that she start. Having paid attention, it was required that this is a comprehensive improvement affecting many organs throughout the body. The carrier will be accompanied by severe pain, our hero's system warned. She also said that in order to prevent an accident with the owner, this transformation will seal his vocal cords, as well as remove his limbs. The transformations will begin soon and therefore our hero had to prepare for them. Having heard that this would remove his limbs, our hero did not expect this at all. At that moment, it was too late to change anything, and he saw how his limbs began to be cut off. The next moment, he was lying on the floor right in front of Anna. Seeing this, the girl wanted to rush to his aid. With tears in her eyes, she watched as our hero began to improve. The dragon felt the pain. Twisted in pain on the floor, he lay and could only think about what could happen to him next. Turning to the system, he mentally tried to figure out if he could just lose consciousness. Of course, it could be done as the system said, but it cost 1000 system points, and if it was 1000, from 1000 he would not feel this terrible pain. The system plunged our hero into a deep sleep, spending a thousand points. Addressing his master, he fell asleep, and after a while, our hero opened his eyes, trying to understand what was happening to him. He turned to the system. The young man only spent a thousand points and closed his eyes. The next moment, the system, addressing our hero, asked the owner not to worry, because there was another reason for his awakening. Our hero looked closely at Anna, who was in front of him at that moment, and he saw that Anna was using healing magic on him. He understood that this was not what he needed and asked Anna to mentally stop, but he absolutely could not talk to her. Turning to the system, our hero at that moment began to shed tears, because he just hated it. Everything went completely wrong, as he expected. Two hearts started beating as one. The next moment, when our hero opened his eyes, he felt that he was in the world of consciousness. There were white threads around him and carefully examining them, the dragon was surprised by what he saw in front of him, because he saw it for the first time. Touching the threads that were right in front of him, referring to the system, our hero tried to understand what kind of threads they were. The next moment, he felt like he could hear the thoughts of other monsters. For example, one of his subordinates thought that there were potatoes for lunch today, and he loved potatoes. He thanked the great master for giving them potatoes. At that moment, he was praising potatoes, talking about fried potatoes, and boiled potatoes. After listening to this, our hero realized that it was connected with the consciousness of that guardian. After carefully looking at the threads, he tried to touch them again. When the system appeared near him, it reported that the owner had created connections with one creature, and it was also possible to establish a connection with 999 creatures around him. The system told me that in order to establish a connection with a large number of creatures, I had to improve the consciousness of the pack. Now our hero understood what the consciousness of the pack, which he had heard about earlier, meant. He could establish a connection with 999 creatures, so he had to make the most of it. At this moment, looking at the screen of the system, our hero tried to understand, referring to it, where was the thread of consciousness and the symbol that he needed. And when he saw a white thread that began to glow in front of him, our hero reached for it. A second later, he saw the thoughts of Ipolyclius, who imagined his darling and looked at her in love. At that very moment, when the girl reached out to him, our hero jumped aside in surprise, realizing that it was not the most pleasant feeling when he got into the head of Ipolyclius. Then he realized that, as it seemed to him, with the help of the pack's consciousness, he could not only listen to the thoughts of others, but also control their bodies. After all, it was when he did not like what he saw that he and Ipolyclius jumped aside. Meanwhile, the system said that Ipolyclius, Crooktooth, is in the process of accelerating. The countdown is 593,614 seconds. In Polyclius, the crooked tooth inherited 0.1% of the attributes according to the concentration of consanguinity. By agreeing, Ipolyclius received an inheritance, a skill, iron armor. All these thoughts of his surfaced right in front of our hero. 
As expected, the dragon grows stronger as the dragon's level increases. The concentration of dragon's blood in the blood and glycol increases with these words. The dragon enthusiastically grabbed the system screen and watched it closely. Although there are limitations to this increase, the advantage is that there is no need to resort to blood in the heart. For the rest of the animals, our hero now began to examine other threads that glowed with other hearts and he was able to contact the knoll, the fiery rabbit, the demon bird, the entire underground city that he had was now connected to our hero. Having finished his manipulations, our hero finally opened his eyes. The first thing he saw in front of him was Anna, who was very worried about him and was glad that Mr. Dragon had finally woken up. The next moment, she fell unconscious in front of him and our hero managed to grab her in his paw so that the girl did not hit the ground. Turning to Anna, he understood that she had used healing magic, so she was very weak. I laid her on the bed and invited her to rest properly, carefully covering her with a blanket. Our hero at that moment immediately received Chelsea's sympathy level, plus 20. The level of sympathy reached the requirements of stage 1 and the system congratulated the host on gaining the ability to absorb improvements. The system also congratulated the host on receiving 2000 system points. Our hero was trying to figure out what happened by looking closely at the system screen. The underground palace. Looking closely at the system screen, our hero did not understand why the level of sympathy suddenly increased for unknown reasons. As the master improves, the servant will follow his physical development according to the context contract. The system informed our hero. Now the dragon understood what was the matter and was very surprised that it was possible. After all, it feels like someone is parasitizing it. After all, he was not in danger, as far as he understood, trying to clarify this system. The system asked him not to worry. As long as the contract exists, there is no danger. Theoretically, the contract can only be terminated by the death of the owner. Our hero asked the system not to curse him so that he would die, he was very unhappy with this. Having put aside your dissatisfaction, now it's time for the last step. Besides Anna, Rolls-Royce is the only one who has not yet received an inheritance. After all, Rolls-Royce is a dragon, so he should be allowed to choose which ability he wants to inherit. At that moment, our hero was flying around his possessions. And looking into the Rolls-Royce palace, the brass dragon meanwhile saw that his first human friend, he was the first to hear this story, in all his many years, addressing the person next to him. The story began with the copper dragon breaking out of its lair. The man at that moment asked someone to shut up this dragon, because he didn't want to hear it anymore. The brass dragon was unhappy that the person he was using to tell him something, he did not look him in the eye, because it was an elementary respect, as he believed, addressing the young man who was dressed in maid's clothes. The man's pleas were heard and our hero appeared in front of him. Addressing the brass dragon, he descended directly towards it. After seeing the great master, Rolls-Royce wondered why the black dragon had appeared here. Then he noticed that his aura had become stronger and his size even larger, referring to the black dragon, as the brass dragon had noticed. Our hero felt that indeed, after this improvement, the destruction of two novice villages, he reached level 38. Having felt this power, he will be three more levels and will be at the level of a young dragon, will be a step closer to becoming a young dragon. And then, together with Anna, he will be able to do what he has dreamed of for so long. At that moment, he was so lost in thought that he even forgot about why he appeared near the brass dragon. Clearing his throat, our hero explained to the brass dragon that he was here because he wanted his kinsman to make his choice. Touching the thread of the brass dragon, he felt that he could choose dragon's breath, iron armor, or strengthening muscle strength. After looking at these words that were above him, the brass dragon tried to ask what it was, addressing his master. The black dragon invited the brass one to choose one of the skills he needed from those that were presented to him. The system immediately appeared and asked to pay attention that since Rolls-Royce is a pure-blooded dragon, abilities can be inherited, and the effect will be greatly reduced, the improvement was limited. The dragon said that he was a dragon, so he already had iron armor. At that moment, he put the man next to him, and the brass dragon, trying to figure out what he needed to do, turned all his attention to our hero. Rolls-Royce was looking at what he was offering him. Also, as for the dragon's breath, he already has the breath of drowsiness and the breath of anger, one for control, the other for attack, very useful and there is no need to change them. The brass dragon mused. Therefore, he chose to strengthen a powerful force, so he would become stronger and bigger but of course not master black dragon, but at least there would be one third of it. Pointing to the strengthening of the muscular system of the brass dragon suddenly began to change and felt the power inside himself turning to the great master thanks to his gift. He now felt two times stronger. 
He thought that if a giant of thunder appeared in front of him, he would cope with it. It was certainly not bad, as one of the best fighters in his underground city. Our hero, flying away from him, hoped that he would continue to work hard and observe discipline, protect his home. The brass dragon, seeing how our hero quickly flew away, did not understand where the great master had gone and where he had so hastily decided to fly. After all, he hasn't told you who the thunder giant is yet. Having flown out of this castle in time, our hero fortunately knew that he really left on time. If he had stayed late, then this brass dragon would have chattered incessantly again, and then he would not have been able to leave. And while there is free time, Su Nian decided to check how Anna was feeling there. Henrius's palace. Meanwhile, in Henrius's palace, the king realized that a lot of time had passed, but there was no news about the black dragon. The special envoy was here again. The queen only watched her husband closely and asked him to calm down, giving him a slap in the face. Of course, the king was unhappy with the way the queen was showing her anger, but she immediately asked her lover to calm down, clinging to him. The queen has ordered advertisements to be posted all over the country to select those who dare to fight the dragon. She is sure there will be good news soon. The ad said that they had to kill the dragon and save the princess. The victorious hero, bring profit and they will receive wealth and status. Meanwhile, Henrius's palace, the king, carefully watching the announcement that the queen gave throughout the country, explained that they did not have a princess, as far as he knew. And the queen told his majesty that she remembered that before she bought her, the slave girl gave him her slave contract and this contract depicts her appearance. She is indeed an unsurpassed beauty, and Anna was depicted in this painting. When the king saw the empress and what she had proposed, he thought that it was just an excellent idea. But this girl was a half-elf, she has animal ears and a tail. The girl explained to the king that they could redraw the portrait by hiding the ears and tail. At that time, the king did not understand what he would do when the traveler killed the dragon and realized that everything was wrong. And the queen explained that there was nothing to do. He was the ruler of this country, the palace is their territory. When the traveler returns, regardless of whether he gets a half, dead girl, when a person dares to enter the palace, they will have a hundred ways to kill him. At that moment, the king realized what the empress really was like, and he was afraid. In the underground palace, meanwhile, Anna was sleeping soundly, after which, waking up from the fact that someone was licking her, she asked Mr. Dragon not to do this. Anna's hair became wet, but when she turned around, she saw a giant sheep next to her. The girl was horrified, thinking that Mr. Dragon had evolved and turned into a ram. Our hero, fanning her with a leaf, now saw that Anna had finally woken up. He was in front of her and the girl at that moment, seeing the old dragon, thought about how he scared her. After all, it must have been a dream, as it seemed to her. But if Mr. Dragon had turned into a lamb, he would have been very cute, she thought, imagining what it would look like. When our hero heard that Anna thought that if he turned into a ram, he would be cute, he was very surprised. At that moment, Anna did not understand how Mr. Dragon heard her inner voice, because she did not say it out loud, but only thought about it. And the dragon, having forgotten to tell Anna about it, now told her that this is a natural skill after development. And Anna was very embarrassed that she would no longer be able to hide her thoughts from Lord Dragon. Our hero, a little embarrassed, asked Anna to let him hear what she was thinking. She believed, addressing Mr. Dragon, that it was wrong to eavesdrop on Anna's thoughts like that, otherwise she would get angry. At that moment, the girl was really worried that he would find out what she was thinking. Interrupting their fun, the system revealed that a large number of players were detected approaching the underground city area. Now the dragon has two options. Option number one is to let nature take its course. In this case, there is a chance that the player will not be able to find the entrance to the underground city or will refuse to attack the underground city. Option two guide. If the guide enters this underground city, then his dungeon may be in danger. Our hero, after looking at the options that the system offered him and what it reported, could not even imagine that people would come so quickly. After all, he wanted to rest a little more and his underground city was so big, the structures were so magnificently built. If he enjoyed it alone, then it would make him a little lonely. Our hero believed that they should have given the players the opportunity to have fun, so he used the guide, choosing the second option that the system offered him. Anna, addressing Mr. Dragon, was wondering where they were going to go, and our hero reported that the guests had come, of course, they needed to meet them. At that moment, the girl climbed on his head, and they had to go together to meet the guests. 